You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. On a cold and gloomy day in LaGuardia Field, Ken and the chief stand watching a great transatlantic plane take off. Well, there he goes, Ken. Yeah. Off to London. Sir Robert Beaumont. Mm, Chief, I don't know. Don't know what? Whole thing's simple enough. Oh, sure. The British Air Ministry makes arrangements ahead of time. Their representative arrives here and presents his credentials. The Army hands him blueprints of the new supersonic missile. And he catches a plane back to England. I agree with you, Chief. It is simple. Then why worry? Oh, call it a hunch. Anyhow, we can't do anything here. Come on, Chief. Let's grab a taxi. If you're looking for a tax, and if this isn't the one, then, then what is it? Felschmidt. Pagan, oh, no. Hello, Mr. Thurston. It's about time you noticed me. What, the... what are you doing out here? <laughs> I just told you, driving a taxi. Come on, get in. Won't even put the flag down. <laughs> I'll bet the owner would like to know about that. Oh, him, it belongs to Uncle Ahmed, and he's in jail for reckless driving. Come on, I got special rates for very dear friends. May as well get in, Chief. The only cab around. Very surprised at you, Mr. Thurston. Saying goodbye to such a no good crook like that that Count Heeland fellow. Heeland? Why, Pagan, that was Sir Robert Beaumont. Huh? No, when I knew him in Istanbul, he was a spy. Uh uh. Good Lord, Ken, it can't be. Oh, as it can, Chief. Pagan, drive to the office of the Bureau and make it fast. Must be it, Ken. Uh, here, here, you take it. Thanks, Chief. Hello. It's your call to Wimbledon, England, Mr. Thurston. Good. Hello? Who is it? Sir Robert, my name's Ken Thurston. Huh? You don't know me, and I haven't got time to explain. No, in which case, sir, I fail to understand what business Nor you Nor can have. I understand how you were able to pick up some blueprints here in New York, then be back in England to answer your phone two hours later. You're mistaken, sir. I've not been away from Wimbledon. What about the supersonic missile designs to be delivered to the British Air Ministry? I know nothing of any such designs, Mr. Thurston. Then I think I'd better call the Air Ministry. No, I, I strongly advise you against any such foolish proceedings as calling the Air Ministry. In regard to the matter you mentioned, I assure you that everything is quite in order. I, uh, uh good day, sir. Well, Ken? Pagan. You say you were a friend of that, uh, Heelan fella? Well, not exactly a friend, Mr. Thurston. He's a crook, you understand, so of course it was a very slight acquaintance. Oh, sure, yes. Well, uh, starting right now, you're out of the taxi business. Come on. We're going to England. Pardon me, is this uh, cab engaged? Why, no, sir. You are welcome to its services. Thanks. Get in, Pagan. Do uh, you know where Beaumont Manor is? Oh, yes, sir. It's about uh, three or four miles from here. Good. Well, that's where we're going. Oh. Oh, I say, Jenkins, you're already engaged. Well, huh? sorry, Mr. Norman. Uh, uh, but perhaps these gentlemen wouldn't mind sharing with you. They're going to the manor themselves. Oh. It would be a great help if you would, you know. Uh, my name is Winston Norman, down from London, you know. My name's uh, Ken Thurston, Mr. Norman, and this is Mr. Zellschmidt. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? I'd be glad to have you along. Oh, thanks very much. Awfully well, decent of you. I was so afraid that I... Oh, oh dear. Thurston, look. You, um... You dropped your gun, Mr. Norman, here. Uh, thanks. you clumsy of me. I'm not used to getting one, you know. All right, driver. Uh, it's not customary at all. I mean, I hope you don't think that I was... Something fishy about you, mister. 
Maybe you're going out there to bump off old man Beaumont. Sir Robert? Oh, I say now, after all, he's, he's practically my father-in-law. I'm engaged to his, his ward, you know. His ward? Yes, Lisa. Lisa Thompson. So uh, that's why you're going to the manor? No. Mr. Thurston, I have reason to believe something may be wrong up there. Yes, I have one or two reasons like that myself. Just what business are you in up in London, anyway? Packing a rod. Oh, I'm not in business at all, Mrs. Elschmidt, if you mean the trades. As a matter of fact, I'm in the office of the Air Minister. How long do we have to wait here, Mr. X? This room gives me the creeps. I don't know, Pagan. According to the butler, Sir Robert wanted to see Mr. Norman first. Oh. Hey, somebody's coming. Yeah. Well, Mr. Norman? Mr. Thurston, Sir Robert would like to see you in the billiard room, alone. Fine. See you later, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, don't leave me here with this assassinator. Talk to him. Entertain him. Tell him about your Aunt Tallulah. But, Mr. Thurston... <laughs> Excellent shot, Mr. Thurston. You're quite a proficient billiard player, you know. Thanks. But, of course, I didn't come here to play billiards, Sir Robert. I dare say you didn't. Uh, perhaps against the far cushion with a slight spin. Oh. It's too bad. It takes uh, pretty steady nerves for a shot like that. Quite so. Why did you come here, Mr. Thurston? Let's say I didn't want a certain set of blueprints to fall into the wrong hands. And what, may I ask, would you consider the wrong hands? For the gadget as deadly as that supersonic missile, any hands might be the wrong ones. It's your shot, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Now let's uh, try for the cannon off the cush. Amazing. You're either very skillful or very lucky, Mr. Thurston. This kind of a game takes a little of both. Where are the blueprints now? Don't you think that's really the concern of the Air Ministry? After all, the man who received the plans in New York carried the proper credentials, didn't he? Yes, yes. And he also carried your name. I have no explanation, no comment. I see. It's, um, your shot, Sir Robert. <laughs> What a spooky house. Probably haunted. I wish Mr. X would come back. Or even that Mr. Norman character. At least he had a gun. Such pictures they got on the walls. Ha, they're people. Give anybody the heebie-jeebies. Huh? Somebody's there. They're coming this way. Who? Who's there? Get your hands up. But... Don't move. But... but... Still, Schmidt. Huh? Oh, oh, Count Yeland, my old friend. Never mind that old friend stuff. What are you doing here? Oh, I came here with, with Mr. Thurston. I mean, oh, I... Oh, what? Who's Mr. Thurston? Oh, why, he's the one... Oh. Oh. oh, no, no. No, no, I can't tell you. Not for a thousand bucks. Haven't changed, have you? Well, it just happens that I have a thousand bucks here. Oh, I couldn't possibly... Ooh. Who is Thurston? No, I couldn't. I... Who is he? He's the man called X. So that's it. 400, 500, and 600. Oh, sure, sure. And 700. What are you going to do now? Nothing, Pagan. Just going to get my thousand dollars back. Huh? Oh, no. Wait. Oh! Too bad, Sir Robert. You jerked the cue just as it hit the ball. Probably a nervous reflex. It's out of the question, Mr. Thurston. I can't discuss it with you. What, the billiard, sir? You know quite well what I mean. I have very good reasons, but my ward, Lisa, I, I simply can't. You, you dropped your cue, Sir Robert. Here. What about Lisa? Can't you leave the subject alone? Won't you simply accept the fact that I can't talk to you about it? No. With a secret as deadly as that on the loose... I won't accept any kind of lying. I beg your pardon, sir. With all due respect to your name and your age, one way or another, you're going to talk. Very well. I'll tell you what it's all about. It means relying entirely upon your discretion, Mr. Thurston. 
It's a dangerous business. And if anything goes wrong, then heaven help all of us. to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken's hard-driving questions at last paid off, and Sir Robert Beaumont agreed to tell what he knew of a certain highly secret set of blueprints delivered by the United States Army to a man posing as Sir Robert himself. But according to Pagan, that man is really Count Helan, a dangerous international crook. Just how dangerous, Pagan discovered later, much to his own misfortune. Pagan. Pagon, snap out of it. Rather nasty blow someone's given him, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Come on, Pagon. Wake up. Huh? I'm, uh, uh, Mr. Thurston, I've been... Uh, I've been robbed. A whole thousand dollars, gone with the wind. You're delirious. Where'd you get a thousand bucks? Why, for telling him that... Uh, I mean, I... Uh... Oh, Heeland, huh? I didn't mean to tell him, Mr. X. He beat me. He, he threatened to kill me. He, oh, uh, pipe he... down. Oh. Well, Sir Robert, he's been here now and he knows who I am. You've got to move. Move fast. One thing must be clear, Mr. Thurston. We can't let anything happen to Lisa. I'll go with you on that. Lisa? Pagan, your friend, Heland, is holding Lisa Thompson a prisoner somewhere. Ha, I told you he was a crook. Yeah, but why? To force me to turn over my credentials from the air ministry and keep still while he went to New York and picked up those plans. What a low life. And then he stole a thousand bucks from me. Uh, Heland used to keep a flat up in London in the neighborhood of Covent Garden, a few doors from the Tavistock Hotel. I have the address in my files. Well, we've got to start looking somewhere. All right, Sir Robert. Let's have that address. Easy now. This is the house. <laughs> but maybe he's in there, Mr. X. Right behind the door. But they can't... Well, I've got one, too, so we're even. Stand to one side. Good. Nobody home. Who is it? Miss Thompson. Are you alone? Yes. Who are you? I'm Ken Thurston. A friend of your guardian. I've come to take you home. Oh, thank heaven. I can't let you in, you know. I haven't the key. And stand back. We'll give it a try. Come on, Pagan. Sure. Oh. What, you've all hope of ever getting out of here? It's been more than a week. Oh, well, it's over now, Miss Thompson. Is this the only room? No. There are three. Just this one door. Oh. Has Helen been here today? Helen? Yeah, the man has been holding you here. Oh, but that couldn't be. Uh, well, I mean, I didn't see this man's face. He disguised his voice, but it couldn't be Helen. I, I know him. He's Sir Robert's chauffeur. Mr. Thurston, somebody's coming. You're wrong, Mr. Zellschmidt. I'm already here. Pull up your hands. When? Mr. Norman. That gun's going to get you into trouble. Are you all right, Lisa? Am I in time? When? Darling, Mr. Thurston just broke in to rescue me. Of course I'm all right. But I thought... Miss Thompson, he... this man with this guy's voice, could it have been Mr. Norman here? Oh, you don't understand. When and I are engaged, we're going to be married. Yes. What a perfectly silly idea. Uh, I, uh, I guess it was of that. All right. Let's go back to Beaumont Manor. Oh, my dear Lisa, you've no idea how I've suffered during the past week, not knowing where you were nor what might have happened to you. Thank heaven you're safe now. Yes, yeah, thanks to Mr. Thurston. But I don't understand. He says it was Helen. Oh, yes, Lisa, dear, I'm afraid it was. Was it for ransom or what? Uh, Lisa, darling, you, you, you don't want to hear about it tonight. You must be terribly nervous after such an ordeal, eh? I was. But now that I'm back home, you know, I... silly, of course, I'm just hungry. Well, well, we can soon take care of that. I'll have Arthur bring you something. We're very fortunate it all ended as happily as this. I think you're forgetting something, Sir Robert. As long as those plans are on the loose, the thing hasn't ended. So, I'm going to sit up and wait for Helen to appear. Well, what? But I don't follow you, sir. 
Why do you expect Heelan to come back here? Oh, there might be several reasons. Revenge, maybe. Or when he finds Miss Thompson's escaped, he might try to get her back. And, of course, it could be that he finds this place attractive. I do. <laughs> Billiards, Mr. Thurston? Yeah, I am, yeah. Seldom get a chance to play, though. Huh? Nice shot. Don't you want the champagne can? I poured it for you ten minutes ago. Oh, yeah, I forgot all about it. Thanks. It's quiet here with everybody in bed. Isn't there at least a family ghost in the house? <laughs> I've never heard of one. You think you'll really come here tonight? Who? Oh, Heelan. Hmm? Oh, I'm pretty sure of it. I suppose they ought to be scared. And I'm not, will you hear? And there's Mr. Norman, of course. He's a nice boy. Would you like some more champagne, Ken? Uh, no, thanks, Mr. Norman. I, uh, sheesh, I feel a little um, dizzy, as a matter of fact. Dizzy? Something wrong? I don't know. I, I, oh, it's strange. I feel like... Uh, Ken! Ken, can you hear me? Ken! Good. Shh, why not? Come on, Pick me Lisa. Lisa. Now you come. The bill at all. Off the stella. A person is unbewusst. Yeah, well. In the good part of good. <gasps> you. That's right, Lisa. It's a gun. It's not unconscious. No, I probably would have been if I hadn't dumped that champagne behind the table. All right, you're more clever than I thought. How did you find out? Oh, Lisa. One look at that flat in London. I knew you had to be in on it. Two street-level windows with a bobby walking his beat in front of him. And you claimed to be a prisoner. We didn't count on anyone coming there. Not even possible customers. <laughs> he even turned the plans for that supersonic missile over to you, didn't he? I don't remember. Did you care to search me, Ken? I might later. After I get your partner. What makes you so sure he'll come here? For one thing, I heard you call him on the phone, remember? So? What are you going to do? Wait here, fun, that's all. It won't be a very long wait, Thurston. Now drop the gun. What? Well, Heeland, you made a quick trip. I didn't have far to come. I suppose that's an inter-house phone. You were already here, huh? Yes, at the gatehouse. What happened, Lisa? You said he was unconscious. He was only pretending he knew all the time. Kill him now. Well, that's an interesting suggestion. It's probably the best idea. Be all right if I try a shot or two here while you make up your mind? <laughs> Go ahead. If your nerve is steady enough. Better kill him now. I tell you, he's clever. But, my dear Lisa, so am I. Nice shot, Thurston. Steady nerves and a little luck. That's all it takes. Maybe. Only your luck has all run out. <laughs> In the language of your game, Thurston, you're right behind the eight ball. You must be thinking of another game, Heeland. There isn't any eight ball in this one. Now. I suppose the idea is to sell the plans to the highest bidder, is that it? Oh, it's a much better idea. I'm going to sell them to all the bidders. Any reason for the question? No, just making conversation. It helps things. Oh, sorry. Don't cut it. <laughs> Drop the cue. Maybe you're not so calm after all. No, leave it lie. I'll use another one out of the rack. This one ought to do just as well. My... No, 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 Lisa. I'll take that gun, thanks. I'll get back. What are you going to do? You you won't shoot me. You can't turn me in. Oh, no, can't I? Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, where are you? In here, Pago. Huh? Well, I got it all taken care of, Mr. Thurston. We got the joints surrounded. Scotland Yard is all over the place. We'll catch this double-crossing. Hey, what's happened? Argument over a billiard game. You're too late. It's all over. It's Count Heeland, huh? Out like a wet blanket. Mr. X, did you find the blueprints? Oh, I'm pretty certain Lisa's carrying them. Well, then, that's that. And all's well that ends well. Yes, what Lisa said. End of good, all is good. Only it hasn't ended yet, Pega. Because here and there... 
All over the world, there are people like these two who are always ready to sell out to the highest bidder. As long as fair-minded humans are being put behind the eight ball, then we can't expect very many things in this old world to end well. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks, Wen. Tonight's something of an occasion because it marks the beginning of the second year with us of two people who've meant a great deal to our Frigidaire program. One is Johnny Green, whose fine composer and conducting have given us such outstanding music week after week. And the other is our director, Jack Johnstone, whose able guidance is seldom fully appreciated outside the studio. We owe a great deal to them. We think a great deal of them. And we would like you to know it. Next week, our story is called Spirit of the Snows, and I think it's a honey. As usual, of course, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Air's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Three months ago, in a wind-battered tent clinging precariously to the snow-clad slopes of Mount Lambaparbat in Bhutan, a letter was written. Tonight in a hotel room in Chongqing, China, a telephone rings. The connection between them? Well, listen. Hello. New York, United States is calling. Mr. Ken Thurston, please. Good. Put him on. Yes, sir. Go ahead, please. Hello, Ken? Well, hello, Chief. Ken, what's the idea of changing your plans? I thought you were coming straight home from Chongqing. I was, Chief, until you changed my mind for me. I changed your mind? Sure, by forwarding Bill Conrad's letter to me. Conrad? Oh, that doctor friend of yours who's on some uh, mountain climbing expedition. Eh? That's right. They're tackling Mount Lamba Pabat over in Bhutan. I'm going to pay him a visit. Now, look, Ken, if you need a vacation... Ever I'm... heard of uh, psittacosis, Chief? Psittacosis? What in blazes is that? Well, parrot fever, you know. Oh, sure, sure. A nearly 100% fatal tropical disease. Bill writes he's come across some on Lamba Pabat. So what? What's parrot fever in the northern province of India got to do with us? Plenty, I think. Remember a few years back when we thought the enemy was experimenting in biological warfare? Oh, sure. The idea of enemy bombers blasting our cities with deadly germs had us plenty worried. Yeah. And we were looking for a certain specialist in tropical diseases. Specialist in... Professor Reader. Right. But I thought you'd trace the professor to Karachi and aboard a private plane for Chungking. I had. But the plane never got there. So, where's Reader? And Bhutan happens to lie almost midway between the two cities. Mm-hmm. 
missing scientist who specializes in tropical diseases. Psittacosis on Lamba Parvat. Yep. No, Ken, sounds like pretty slim evidence for you to chase to Bhutan. Because parrot fever can be found anywhere you can find parrots. You're so right. But there's one thing I forgot to tell you. There are no parrots on Lamba Parbat. Mr. Thurston, do you have to keep flying in and out of those mountains all the time? I get dizzy from high places. It's a manic, you understand? Well, you should have thought of that before I was going away on this plane, Pagan. Well, you wouldn't take me with you, so how else could I supply you with my invaluable assistance? And how was it to know you were going someplace like this? Look at that. Look at that thing over there. It must be ten miles high. Nothing but snow and stuff on it. That's uh, Mount Labatabat. Hang on. Mount Labat? Mr. Rex, we're falling. Relax, you idiot. We're going to land. On that pile of rocks? We'll be crushed to death. Not on that landing strip, we won't. Oh, you mean ahead there? Beside the prison or something? That's the castle of Salal Chowda, backer of the climbing expedition. Bill Conrad's on. But why are we going to see him? To find out what he and Bill can tell us about Professor Reader. And about psittacosis. Huh? Hold your hat, we're going in. Go in and pay our respects. It's cold out here. Nothing but icicles should live in such a place. Hey, what was that? Thunder. You always hear it around these mountain peaks. Wind, snow, thunder. You know too much. Oh, what a joint. At least you'd think the people would be hospital enough to meet us. I don't know about people, Pagan, but there's a young lady coming this way. A young... Hey, you're right. Some cute cookie. You are fools. You are blind, stupid, idiotic fools. Huh? Wow. Go back. Return where you came from before you too fall victim to the spirit of the snows. Is that a standard pitch you give to all arriving guests? Wise men do not make light of serious warnings, Saib. Your friend, Dr. Conrad, is proof of that. Bill, what about him? He would not listen either, Saib. And now Dr. Conrad is dead. We cannot tell you, Thurston Saeed, how deeply we regret you're making such a long journey only to find your friend gone forever. Bill Conrad will be missed by more than me, Sir Lyle. Right, Thurston. A good doctor could be missed by all humanity. I felt fortunate indeed when he volunteered for my expedition. Your expedition, Huxford? John Huxford is the real leader, Thurston Saeed. I merely supplied the financial backing. I see. You said uh, Bill slipped and fell in a crevasse? So it would appear. Though none of us saw it happen, we merely missed him from his tent one night. The next morning, my ward, Marlies, discovered his body. Is that not so, my dear? Yes. Yes, that is right, Sir Lau. Just another link in the chain of ill fortune that's followed this expedition. You've been having tough luck, Huxford? Well, we've lost some valuable scientific instruments. Conrad's death was a major blow, of course, but I'm referring specifically to a strange, virulent malady that's been attacking our native bearers and helpers. Oh, what's that? It's a mysterious fever. Practically always fatal. I think we've tried work, son, and we've lost so many men, the others refuse to accompany us any longer. They claim that Lumber Parbat is being guarded from desecration by foreigners, being guarded by the spirit of the snows. Uh, yes, yes, yes. However, we're, we've convinced half a dozen or so that their superstitions are foolish. They're at the base camp now, preparing for another drive upon the summit. They, they will never reach it. Never. Marlies. The superstitions are not foolish. The spirit of the snows is enraged. Malice. Ask the Lama if you will not believe me. Ask the Lama. He will tell you. Lama? Yes. Lama Sholto of the Temple of Buddha near the camp. He keeps filling the heads of my natives with this nonsense, trying to keep them away from the mountain. And now Marlis, badly upset by your friend's death, is beginning to believe it. There doesn't seem to be much nonsense about parrot fever, Salal. Parrot fever? 
What gave you the idea that it's psittacosis? That's what I understand, but someone went into it up here. A professor, Reader. Reader? No, no. And who is he, Thiston Said? I only know Reader by reputation, Sir Lal. But I've heard the professor is quite an authority on tropical diseases. In this case, your informant was quite wrong. The disease is definitely not parrot fever. Pretty sure of it, aren't you? Thurston, I once studied medicine at the Sorbonne in Paris. And though I live in the snows of Lumber Parbat, I too am quite an authority on tropical diseases. I don't get it, Mr. Thurston. What are we doing out here riding those overgrown goats anyway? Hagon, we're going to visit the base camp for the climbers. But it was so comfortable back in the castle. Besides, what's all this business about fevers, spirits, parrots? I'm not sure yet. But I got a hunch that something's brewing up here. Something that might affect the whole world. You mean this spirit in the snow? Uh, more like the spirit of war. Huh? Oh, look. Tent. Yeah, it's the base camp. But, Mr. X, there's nobody there. Probably in that tent over there, getting out of the wind. Hello? Anyone around? Nobody's home. Must have gone to a movie or something. <laughs> Come on, let's take a look. Hello in there. Hello? See? Just like I said, nobody home. Double feature, man. Let's go in the tent to make sure. You see? Only some piles of old blankets. They... <gasps> Those blankets. They got faces. Yeah. Those were natives, Pega. Mr. Rex. Look at them. Emaciated skin, all... Uh, raspberry marks on their faces and hands. But what happened? What does it mean? It means that Salal was wrong. The base camp's been wiped out in sub-zero weather by a tropical disease. Psittacosis. Mr. Rex, that noise. Yeah, I was wrong, too. There are parrots on Lamba Parbat. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. In response to a mysterious letter from his friend, Dr. Bill Conrad, Ken Thurston has gone to far off Bhutan. There he learns Conrad is dead and finds a seeming paradox in nature. For the virulent tropic disease, psittacosis, parrot fever, has wiped out the camp of a mountain climbing expedition on the wintry slopes of Mount Lamba Parbat. Now Ken and Pagan stand in the desolate camp, watching a screeching parrot waddle away to the snows. Mr. Rex, you mean that parrot bird killed all those men dead? Pagan, somebody helped it spread a deadly virus among them. But who would do a thing like that? And why? Maybe a certain Professor Reader can answer that. Huh? Reader's here all right. Must be. Somewhere on Lumber Pabat. Still trying to turn the world into a wholesale slaughterhouse. There is no hope huh? for the unbelievers of this world, O evil one. Mr. X, look. Yeah, we've got company. Oh, but he's got his gang with him. They're pointing those rifles at us. Who is he anyways? Pagan, I think you're looking at the Lama Sholto. Yes, unbeliever, I am Lama Sholto, guardian of the temple. Too bad you didn't spend your time guarding the men of this camp. Looked like they really needed the it. The curse of the angry spirit struck them down, as it is going to strike you who brought the shadow to this land. You are coming with us now, the place of sacrifice, at the temple of the spirit of the snow. Uh, Mr. Rex, what does he mean? Pagan, I think he means to take us for a ride. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Thurston, 
I, I don't like this being tied down on a stone bench. And that stage over there with the big ugly bird on it. Yeah. A statue of Buddha with a parrot's beak. The llama goes in for demonology. Show's about to begin, Pagan. Watch the llama. He, he's kneeling down on his knees in front of that statue. What's he doing that for? Quiet, listen, listen. We call upon you, old Padma Sambhava, in our hour of greatest need. From the seven heavens, tell us, Almighty One, what we must do. That the anger in your heart may dissolve as the sun dispels the mist on Lamba Parvat. What is your desire, mighty one? Will you speak to us? Will your voice be heard? I shall speak, Shalto. My voice shall be heard. Mr. Rex, that, that bird is talking. Quiet, will you? Oh, but what? My spirit must be appeased. The sacrifice must be made. Deliver their souls to me. Now, just a minute, boys. Let's get one thing straight. The only spirit that needs appeasing around here is the spirit of humanity. The wholesale sacrifices you're cooking up won't save the world. They'll help to destroy it. Blasphemer. Unholy blasphemer. I call upon you, mighty one, to let me end this desecration. Allow me to silence these miserable tongues. Speak, mighty one. Proceed. With the sacrifice. Mr. Rex. Mr. Rex, look. He's got a knife. He's going to slice us dead. Oh, 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 do something, Mr. Rex. Do something. Dead. Oh, I'm, I'm dead. Shut up. Oh, but he shot me with his that knife. He, hey, hey, that llama's guy's gone. He's come out of here. Yeah. Behind those curtains on the dais. The shot scared him off. They did? Lucky for him, my hands were tied. I have shown him a couple of things or two. Maybe you'll get your chance. Sounds like he might be coming back. Huh? Coming back? Oh, no, no. Preston. Preston. Are you in here? That's right, Huxford. Over here. That English guy. Yeah. Preston, you're all right. Then I fired in time. How did you get the inspiration, Huxford? I'll cut the ropes. I I, I rode out to the base camp, saw those beggars snatch you. Followed here... When it looked like things were going to get rough, well, I thought I'd better try something. There, there you are. Thanks. Uh, that's, that's much better. What the blazes was that voice business? Had my hair doing tricks, believe me. Are you kidding? More like a microphone and speaker behind that curtain. So that's it. Then this fake spirit bloke must have been... Look out, Thurston, look out! No! What's the matter, Huxford? Trigger happy? Someone just poked a gun out from behind that curtain. But I think I potted the blighter. Huh? Well, let's take a look. Good Lord. Yeah. He had a gun, all right. Uh, still frozen in his hand. But, Mrs. Thurston, it's that loud chowder. You mean he was playing this spirit ghost? Why don't you try asking the parrot sitting on his shoulder? Oh, no! We're all packed. Nothing to do but give this place the brush up. Not quite, Pagan. We've got to make sure that phony spirit of the snows has finally laid to rest. What kind of a crack is that? Chowder got bumped off, didn't he? Sure. But the llama, Malice, and Huxford are still around, aren't they? But you told me yourself dead men don't hurt anybody. Listen. Chowder's pistol was frozen in his hand. That means rigor mortis had set in. That usually doesn't happen until quite a time after death, and... Huxford had just shot him. So what? So we're going to find out why. Back at the Temple of Buddha. Mr. Thurston, why are we taking this dark passage anyhow? Because it started behind those curtains, Pagan. I want to find out where that llama was going. But miles under the ground, what can be done here? Look along that cross cut and see for yourself. Hey, look at that. Cages. Cages with parrots in them. What are they doing down here? There's a door in that wall. I think we'll find the answer inside. Look at this place. A junk shop for bottles and old gas burners. Pagan, it's as modern a research laboratory as I've ever seen. What are these racks? Full of these tubes and... uh... Don't touch them! What's the matter with them? 
Those tubes are full of concentrated death. Psittacosis cultures. Hmm? Professor Reader was experimenting here with that stuff. That's what killed those natives. He was using human beings as guinea pigs, trying to develop a weapon for biological warfare. So you have discovered the real answer at last, Mr. X? Mr. Thurston, that girl's here again. Hello, my niece. Decided to be in on the finish? There is little use in starting something if one does not see it end. So I followed you here. Mr. X, she's the professor. How about that, my niece? No. No, Mr. Thurston, I was the one who found Dr. Conrad's letter the day after he died and sent it to you. Then I began to suspect that he'd been murdered. I grew afraid. That is why I tried to warn you away. Then that crack potted llama must be the guy. Wrong again, Pagan. It's John Huxford. Huh? That right, Huxford? Quite right, Thurston. You, but... He's got a gun. Yes. You know, I was doing quite well with my little experiments here until you came along. Yeah, your mountain climbing provided a swell excuse for bringing in scientific equipment and supplies. I suppose Conrad tumbles for you to get rid of him. Exactly. But how did you, uh, tumble, Thurston? Why would a mountain climber in Bhutan be interested in silicosis? You were. And your melodrama in the temple backfired. You thought Salal would make a perfect alibi, but you forgot one thing. Rigor mortis. Rigor mortis? Sure. It proved that he'd been killed much earlier. A dead man can't shove guns through curtains, Hertford. And you couldn't have known he was there unless you would put him there yourself. One can't be perfect in everything, Thurston. At least those test tubes and their cultures are perfect. There are nations, you know, that will pay me millions for them. Yeah, too bad you'll never get a way to sell them. Put down that test tube, you fool. It contains enough virus to destroy a city. That's what I figured. You made one more mistake, Huxford. You forgot that glass is breakable. <sighs> You've smashed it, you idiot. That virus will kill us all. Let me out of here. Not so fast, Huxford. <coughs> nice work, Mr. X. Yes. Yes, you have, Professor Rader, Mr. Thurston. But what good will it do us? You heard what he said. That virus is deadly. Yeah, but there's nothing deadly about distilled water. Distilled That's what it says on the rack I took that tube from. Huxford was too panic-stricken to notice. Phew. They were not going to die after all. Well... But, Mr. Thurston, are you sure he was that spirit in the snows? Yeah, Pagan. I'll guarantee it. I only wish it was easy to get rid of another spirit. Spirit of war. That's the deadliest of all viruses in the world today. One that could spread like a plague all over the globe. That's the disease we've got to get under control before it destroys us. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that my lease was played by Kathy Lewis tonight. Next week, our story is called The Rane of Shalaka. And Mr. X runs into two of the strangest characters in his entire career. Plenty of suspense, too. And as usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zelschmidt. Just one last thought, friends. A lot of people in the world have learned... The freedom is something that can be lost. Let's protect that freedom by being good citizens. By taking an active interest in government. Your help is vital because, remember, freedom is everybody's job. That's all. Oh, and be sure to join us next week when again I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Band Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center.
You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. North of India, in the shadow of the great range of the Himalayas, lies the tiny forbidden land of Shalakar. Its narrow streets swarming with men of a hundred tongues and races. Holy men from Lhasa, firewalkers from the Ganges, and beggars, jugglers, and yogis from the plains of Bengali to the south. Dark pagodas hide away the idols of gods long forgotten in the world outside. Little known beyond its borders. Such is the last land of mystery, Shalakar. In regard to the charges of fraud and false dealing made against you, Mr. Norris, and against your American Eastern Export Company, the High Court of Shalakar finds you guilty. Now, wait a minute, Panchin. You are therefore ordered to leave Shalakar within five days and never to return. Look, I got permission to prospect here in Shalakar from the old Maharaja himself before he died last year. And if you Mr. think... Mr. Norris, one... the permission is hereby revoked. Okay, I'll take this whole thing to the Rani herself. I am so sorry, Mr. Norris. The order is signed by the Rani. But I tell you I'm innocent. I don't even know what this is all about. know yet what it's all about, but gentlemen, there's one thing certain. I'm innocent of those charges. Yeah, I think you are, Fred. Too bad, Chief. Yes, it is, Ken. What about the American consul, Fred? Did he... Well, did you take it up with him? We don't have a consul there, Ken. I was the only American in Shalakar. And you say the Rani refused to talk to you? Wouldn't even see me. As a matter of fact, she seldom does receive visitors. I've only seen her twice since her father died last year and she took over the throne. Oh, boy. Huh? Gentlemen, I think the Rani of Shalakar is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Which is, of course, beside the point. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. But one fact remains. Somebody falsified the business records that were entered at my trial. Who, I don't know. That's what I hoped you could find out. Well, I uh, sympathize with your position, Mr. Norris. But this kind of problem isn't really the concern of the Bureau. I don't know, Chief. I think maybe it is. Fred has discovered more new oil lands in remote parts of the world than any other man alive. Oil? Well, Ken, why All didn't right. you... As the only American in Shalakar, Fred Norris represented America to those people. As far as they're concerned, he is America. Yes, yes, I see what you mean. But there's not a thing the Bureau can do about it, Ken. Officially. That's right, Chief. We can't touch it. Officially. No, simply out of the question. Yeah. By the way, that, uh... Vacation I was going to take. I suppose I might as well start it today. Why, are you sure, Ken? There's nothing much doing right now. Two weeks be enough? Oh, plenty of. Well, I guess I'd better let Miss Brooks know about it. Yeah. Yeah, have a good time, Ken. Forget all about your uh, official duties. Thanks, Jeeves. Oh, Miss Brooks. Are you... Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, Pagon, what are, what are you doing here? I was only waiting to see if you needed my services. I don't. I'm going on a vacation. Oh. Mr. Zellschmidt was talking about my new dress. Do you like it, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> Gives it that, that new look. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> quite a dress. Well, when it comes to a new fashion, I'm just like every other woman. Maybe it's silly, but I simply can't resist spending my just money. Just a minute. Pagon, go on home and pack. Huh? I got a job for you. Sales representative for a New York designer. Well, that's a traveling salesman. <laughs> I'll be ready in ten minutes. Uh, hey. By the way, what am I selling? Ladies' underwear. Huh? Mr. Thurston, no, no! I will 
would be most happily pleased to publish your advertisement in the Royal Palace Bulletin, Saeed. But since you are American, perhaps you will pay in advance. <laughs> Anybody think I was a crook? Here. Ah, uh, thank you. Now, is this the correct wording? Monsieur Lezel Schmidt, New York designer, will stop for three days in Shalaka before continuing to Burma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusive models of the newest feminine fashions will be shown to a select clientele by appointment only. Call at Suite 27, House of the Golden Eye. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Wasn't my idea. Them, Mr. X. Snake charmers, acrobats, guys sitting on boards full of nails. <laughs> this town must be getting ready for a circus. No, Pagon, this goes on here all the time. Hey, look. You mean that pit with the fire burning in it? Sure. It's full of red hot boulders. Hey, maybe they're going to have a barbecue. It's a ceremony. Fire walking. The true, true believers walk through it. Huh? Oh, they get cooked like chicken. No. Some of them really do it. Oh, but how? It's that same beggar, Mr. X. The one you already gave money to twice. Yeah, so I see. I'm sorry if you will help a poor beggar, please. Sorry. You can't make a good thing last forever. You will give nothing to the chosen of heaven? Not this time. You hear him, my brothers? The dog has insulted me. Yeah, now, take it easy. He is American. He has come to steal from us. All right, calm down now. Mr. Thurston, he's got a knife. Yeah. Okay, you asked for it. Oh, now they're all mad at us. What are we going to do, Mr. Thurston? Back against the wall there. Easy, Pagon. I don't want to shoot unless I have to. They got knives, too. Oh, I should have stayed in New York. All right, now. You have to find it. Hold it behind you. Shots over their heads. Yeah. Looks as if you're right. Thanks. My name's Ken Thurston. Colonel Blake, sir, retired 25 years with His Majesty's service in India. How are you? Mr. Thurston, that beggar you knocked down, he's gone. Yeah, you really should have done the blighter in, you know. Saved yourself a lot of trouble later. Well, it's pretty rough treatment for a beggar who only lost his temper. Beggar? I hardly think so, Mr. Thurston. That fellow was a decoit. A decoit? Uh uh. Yes. A member of the cult of professional murderers. Somebody hired him to kill you. Oh, three hours now we'll wait up here in this room, Mr. X. If somebody's going to answer that screw advertisement, then why don't they? Give them time, Pega. Anyway, who is interested in new fashions in a place like this? Or maybe the Rani. At least I hope she is. Yeah, bet she's an old battle axe with a double chin. Fred Norris said she was the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen. Oh, well, uh, that case I, uh, uh, no, she won't answer. Maybe not. But one thing's certain. With the feeling that's got started around here, she's not going to let any American into the palace unless she's tricked into it. Do you think maybe she really will, Mr. X? I... Who's that? Come in. Good evening, Saeed. I am from the Royal Palace of Shalakar. I am searching for a Monsieur Le Zelschmidt. Ha! That's me! Her Royal Highness the Rani wishes an audience with you, Monsieur. You will come with me, please? But, 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 I, I mean, yes. I, I'm as good as gone. So long, Mr. Thurston. Good luck, Pagan. And before you pass out with ecstasy, don't forget to give her that letter. Letter? Oh, oh, sure, I'll remember. Uh, my good man, to the harem, and don't spare the horse. All right, come on in. Now, Pagan, I thought... Oh, Colonel Blake. Yeah. Good evening, Mr. Thurston. Sit down. thought Pagan had forgotten something. He only left here five minutes ago. I know, I saw him in the street. He's, uh... On his way to the palace of the Rani. Mr. Thurston, I uh, think you may be playing a much more dangerous game here than you realize. What makes you think so, Colonel? 
When a man spends his life in this part of the world, he learns to recognize danger. Yeah, I suppose he does. It was a mistake to hire a band of decoits, you know. They're treacherous. What gave you the idea that I hired any decoits? The evidence of my own eyes. When I saw Mr. Zellschmidt in the street a while ago, he was accompanied by six of them. What? Colonel Blake. You mean you didn't hire them? No. Somebody did. And there's only one reason for hiring decoits. Of course you knew that, though. Didn't you, Colonel? Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. An American company is convicted of fraud in the high court of Shalakar, and 140 million Americans thereby stand accused with no chance of defending themselves. On a two-week leave of absence from the Bureau, Ken Thurston has gone to the mysterious little country to look into the matter unofficially. An hour ago, Pagon fell into the hands of a gang of dacoits, a cult of professional killers. Right now, Ken stands in a room of the Rani's palace. So sorry to keep you waiting. Is there something I can do for you? Mm, so it's you. Yes, there is. Where's Pagan? I do not know of any Pagan. Oh, Monsieur Zellschmidt, then. He left to come here about an hour ago. With you. What happened to him? You are mistaken, Mr. Thurston. I have never seen you before, nor the man you speak of. Like that, eh? All right. I'd like to talk to the Rani. Certainly. If you would care to send her a letter stating your reasons, perhaps it might be arranged in a few months. Her Royal Highness, the Rani of Shalaka. Your, your Highness. I have just seen the most interesting... Oh, Panjim. Who is this man? Hardly one deserving your attention, Highness. Suppose I decide that for myself. But your Highness... That hi- will do. You will wait at the other side of the room. Very well, Highness. Panjim is... Sometimes an almost too faithful guardian. Guardian, who are you? My name's Ken Thurston. Thurston, nice. What did you wish to see me about? About a friend of mine. Apparently, Panshin kidnapped him. Panshin, is this true? The statement is false, Highness. Oh? He is American. Oh, I see. Mr. Thurston, I presume you have lodgings in the city? Yep. The House of the Golden Eye. May I suggest you return there immediately? And as soon as possible, get out of Shalakar? Otherwise, who knows? Perhaps you, too, might disappear. Maybe you're jumping to conclusions, Colonel Blake. I didn't say anything about going out looking for trouble. Well, after all, Mr. Thurston, when a man cleans and oils an automatic pistol, he usually has something on his mind. Yeah, I suppose he does it there. Ah. Be glad to go along and help, you know. I'll, I'm still a pretty fair shot. Wouldn't think of it. No point in you getting mixed up in this. Exactly what are your plans, Mr. Thurston? I don't know for sure. One way or another, I'm going to find Pagan or find out what happened to him. I'd be a lot of help, know the country and all that, and... I'd rather enjoy a bit of excitement, you know. Just it uh, gets frightfully dull sometimes, being uh, retired. Uh... Well, this will be anything but dull. Eh? Sit still. Well. Let me in, please, quickly. Well, by George, it's the run. Oh, Colonel Blake. I'm highly honoured. Never mind that now, please. I uh, maybe. I mean, I thought you would be alone, Mr. Thurston. Oh, I say, it's getting late here. I hope you won't think it rude if I say good night. Not a bit, Colonel. Good night. Well, I suppose you dropped in to make sure I got out of town. No, please forget anything I said earlier tonight. None of us can be sure when it is safe to speak the truth. You think it is safe with me? Yes. Please, come back to the palace with me, to my own quarters. We can be fairly safe there. Why? Why the palace? Because I have the papers from the trial of Mr. Norris there. Well, all right, let's go.
Well, that's that. If these business records were used as evidence in the Norris trial, they show one thing pretty clearly. The trial was a fake. There was pressure put on the court, Ken. I suspect you As far it. as I'm concerned, they proved definitely who was behind it. That's all I've been waiting for. Proof. Apparently, he stole nearly half a million dollars during the last year. Then thrown the blame on the American Export Company to cover up the fraud. Yeah, but there's more than that back of it, Your Highness. We yes. both know that. Yes. It is all a part of the plan to discredit the American company, keep out foreign ideas, hold the people in ignorance. And that doesn't fit in with your plans? Mine are the same as my father's were. He realized there were benefits in the outside world that could be given to our people. He knew it would take time. And I've tried to carry that on, but... He would never dare if my father was still alive. But in the Orient, Ken, thrown with a woman on it, this fair game for any man. Well, I don't see much of any way around that. It is a fabulous land lying out there in the moonlight, Ken. A land to challenge the will of a great man. It waits to be molded into something finer. That would be the work of a lifetime. And a pretty important work, too. By the customs of my people, a man who marries the Rani becomes the Maharaja of Shalaka. Mm-hmm. Don't you know what I'm saying? These are my private quarters of the palace, Ken. No man has ever been in this room before. Not even behind those curtains? Ken, there's a knife! Stand Look back, honey, look out! Ken, aren't you... Ken! He's gone. He got away. Yeah. I was afraid of hitting you. It was a decoy. I know. Same one I met earlier. What shall we do, Ken? He will know now we have found out about him. Where do you think he might be? Got any idea? Yes. Probably go to the Black Pagoda. Black Pagoda? It is the temple of the decoits. I think he has managed to get control over them. All right. Our best bet is to rush him before he gets organized. Come on. Let's head for the Black Pagoda. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. The Black Pagoda, eh? All right. I'll be there right away. Play him close to the table and be careful. Right. Goodbye. So it's out in the open now. This lad Thurston works pretty fast once he gets started. live here in the street? Don't they ever go to bed? They've been here all night, Ken. It is the Dakisha, the ceremony of walking through a pit of fire. It begins at the first sign of dawn. Well, we've got to shove through them some way to get over there to the pagoda. Go on, Your Highness. Ken, wait. There he is now. The Dakoit? No, he. On his way to the pagoda. He's seen us. Yeah, take it easy. Uh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Your Highness, I... Looks like a bit of excitement, eh? That's right, Colonel. You got a gun? Yes. Found him out yet? Over there. He's trying to speak to the mob. Circle the crowd around the fire walkers. Head him off from getting inside the temple. I'll go for him here. Right. And thanks for calling me. Wouldn't have missed this for anything. I'm going with you, Ken. Oh, no, you're not. Panshin would kill you just as soon as he would me. You wait here. Be careful, Ken. Please, be careful. I'll stand aside, please. Sorry, pardon me. Panshin! Excuse me, please. Panshin, stop! You haven't got a chance. Out of my way, will you? Wait, you fool! Look out! Good ah! Lord, he slipped and fell right into the fire. Tell me through. Let me through. One side, please. Oh, no. Can you see? Yeah. Oh. In that pit of fire. Oh. He lived about three seconds. Come on. Let's get away from here. He tried to jump across. I saw him fall. Well, forgive him. Forget him. I've still got to find Pagan. No. No, wait. There he comes now with Colonel Blake. Yeah. He's been in pretty good shape. Ken, before they get here. I mean, Norris can come back and go on with his work, of course, but... Well, we were talking about... About what? About the throne of Shalakar. And about other things. Ah, 
This is a fine kind of a vacation, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> I got knocked on the head, tied with ropes, and maybe even they were going to cut me in pieces. I saw from the temple steps what happened to Panchin, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, pretty rough ending, Colonel. Have any trouble with the guards? No. They took that to their heels when they saw their leader was dead. Mm -hmm. Mr. Thurston, I told you anybody would get cooked in that fire pit. You said they walked right through it. Only the true believers, Pagan. Tanshim didn't believe in anything except power and all the bad that goes with it. He kindled a fire in the ignorance of the people he wanted to exploit. <laughs> Isn't it strange how often men with their own hands light the fire that finally destroys them? Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, our story bears a strange title. It's called Carbon-14, which is the name of a substance known to science that may affect the destiny of the whole world. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. The university near Los Angeles looks peaceful and serene on its oak-studded acres. But in a small office in the physics building, a man is making a long-distance call to New York call that could affect the lives of millions of people. Hello? Hello, is that you, Mr. Thurston? That's right, who's that? My name is Bill Wilson. I'm a physics instructor out here at the university. You don't know me, but things are happening out here that... Mr. Thurston, you've got to fly to Los Angeles today. Oh? Suppose you offer some inducements, Wilson, such as why? Have you ever heard of carbon-14? Carbon-14? What about it? Would it mean anything to you if I said that a lot of it has been disappearing out here. Go on, Wilson. Well, I'm afraid to talk freely over the phone, Mr. Thurston, but I can tell you this. The carbon-14... Wilson! What's happened there? Hello, Wilson! Can you hear me? Hello, hello! Hello, Wilson. What's wrong? What's happened? Hello, hello! What is it, Ken? Something wrong? Chief... What do you know about carbon-14? Carbon-14? Well, let's see. A radioactive isotope that... Yeah, uh... that's right. One of the common elements they've been treating with active uranium. Sure, sure. Been using them as places, haven't they, to determine the cause of certain diseases? Chief, they might hold the clue to curing cancer, tuberculosis, any number of bacteriological diseases. Oh, well, no wonder they're called miracle workers of science. Yeah. We've only been able to make them for a year or so, and so far their use has been limited to this country. Uh-huh. 
So even small amounts of that stuff could be worth a fortune if sold underground most anywhere in the world. Sure, sure, but what's all this got to do with that phone call? I don't know yet. But from what that guy said before we were disconnected... Maybe I better go to the West Coast and find out. Now, wait a minute. You can't go chasing cross-country on the strength of an unfinished phone call from a man you don't even know. <laughs> Nothing but a wild goose chase. Chief, when you chase wild geese, the geese usually get shot, not the hunters. I'm flying out to L.A. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. My cigarette. Uh, could you be kind enough to furnish me with a light? Light? Sure. Yeah, here you are. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you. Here. No, that's okay. You can keep me. Excuse me. I, uh, I noticed, sir, that you just arrived here in Los Angeles on that flight from New York. You have been so kind. I'm lost without my tobacco. I... I thought perhaps I might reciprocate. Oh, forget it, then. If you excuse me. Uh, perhaps you do not have transportation. This airport, you know, is quite some miles away from things. I have my car. Perhaps I could assist you. No, that won't be necessary. Thanks for But I am driving out toward the university. The university? Yes. If by any chance we were going in that direction, we might have a very pleasant trip together. What makes you think I'm going in that direction? Why, nothing, sir, but if you are, it would cost me no inconvenience, yes, I assure sir, you. I would be more... From New York, flight 7, report to the dispatcher's office at once, please. Yeah, thanks for your offer, but I'm, uh, I'm making other arrangements. Maybe I'll see you around sometime. Yes. Yes, perhaps you shall, Mr. Thurston. My name's Ken Thurston. I believe you were paging me. Oh, oh yes, sir. This young lady wishes to speak with you. What young lady? How do you oh. do, Mr. Thurston? Well. I'm Carla Rayner. I must apologize for having you paged in this fashion, but I did not wish that foreign man to see me talking with you. Oh, why not, Miss Rayner? It was at Dr. Sherwood's request. Dr. Sherwood? Yes, he is head of the nuclear research department. At the university. I'm his assistant, and he sent me to meet you. It's mighty nice of him, but I still don't... You do don't... not want any of the staff to know that you are arriving, Mr. Thurston. The foreign man is Professor Udo of the department. Udo, I see. My car is waiting outside, Mr. Thurston. Shall we go? No, Miss Ray, no, I don't think so. Really? Is there some reason why you do not wish to go with me? A very simple reason. I didn't tell anyone, including Dr. Sherwood, that I was coming to Los Angeles. Bye, Miss Rayner. Pagan Zellschmidt. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to sunny California. Mm. Hop into my jalopsy and I'll take you right there. Take me right where, Pagan? The university. <laughs> where else? See, Mr. Thurston, I was temporarily embarrassed for fun. No. Yes. And this Bill Wilson offered me a job getting acquainted with this Professor Udo. Udo? Why was Wilson interested in him, Pagan? He didn't tell me, only that I should really case the guy. You understand. How'd you make out? <laughs> I didn't even get the third base. Now, who can understand that man's such a terrible accent he's got? So, so I told Mr. <laughs> Wilson to call you, and all I wanted is a small commission for getting you the job. Yeah. Thanks. How come you knew when I was arriving... Oh, oh, Dad, I was keeping with Miss Brooks over the long-distance telephone. She told me about your reservations. Accidentally, of course. Oh, sure. And you told everyone in earshot. Pig on, I order... Da, da, da. Look, 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 Mr. Thurston. There's the nucleus building of the university. Must be something plenty important going on there, eh? Could be important enough to cure millions of people who are dying unnecessarily. Gee, Mr. X. Yeah, hey, you better pull over and let that ambulance get past before it runs us down. <laughs> Smart guy. Thinks just because he's got a tin whistle that he can... Hey, look! He's going right to the nucleus building. Yeah. 
Someone must be hurt in there. Keep going. But I thought you said the stuff in there cured people. You can cure them, pig, or I'll kill them. Step on it. I'm sorry to welcome you to my office under such circumstances, Mr. Thurston. But one of our workers carelessly exposed himself to radiation from some isotopes. Even a tiny speck of those radioactive elements can prove deadly, you know. So I understand, Dr. Sherwood. Bill Wilson was telling me about him. Bill Wilson? Then you knew him? Knew him? Sounds like he's dead. Well, frankly, Mr. Thurston, he may be. Wilson has supplied the university with a mystery worthy of Sherlock Holmes. What's the story? Yesterday morning, Carla Rayner, my assistant, thought she heard shots from Wilson's office, but when she entered, it was empty. Oh? Uh-huh. A window was open... There was a blood stain on the floor, and Wilson was gone. He's been missing ever since. Well, you seem to be missing a number of things around here, Doctor. Wilson, isotopes. Isotopes? We're missing no isotopes. Where did you ever get that idea? I don't know, Doctor. Well, I won't take up any more of your time. Is it... Thurston! You hear that? Somebody's trigger happy out there. Let's get going. The ambulance! Well, look, Thurston, that's... Why, that's... Dr. Sherwood. Dr. Sherwood. What is it, Carla? What's happened out here? Those men in the ambulance. They were fakes. What's that? They have located the storeroom. They have taken the isotopes. Hundreds of thousands of dollars worth. Good Lord. Well, looks like you'll have to change your story now, Doctor. Yes. And I'll have to change my story about Bill Wilson, too. Wilson? What do you mean? He isn't missing any longer, Thurston. He was driving that ambulance. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Nuclear Research Laboratory of a university near Los Angeles, radioactive isotopes are being used, precious new tools of science. But shortly after Ken's arrival, the isotope storeroom is looted by an ambulance crew, apparently led by the missing physics instructor Bill Wilson. It's now an hour later. A steady rain is falling as Ken and Pagan stand in the night darkened shadows in front of an apartment door. Nobody's home at Mr. Wilson's seat. I didn't expect anyone to be. So? You didn't? Uh, then why did we come here in the first place? To see what a dead man who drives an ambulance can tell us about missing isotopes. Huh? Hey. Hey, the door was open. Yep. Go in. Look at this joint, Mr. Thurston. Boy, what a mess. Scrambled up like eggs, eh? Yeah. If there was anything to find here, some of this beaten us to it. Yeah. Relax, you idiot. It's under the telephone. But who'd be calling us here? You just silly. Hello? Bill, thank heavens I found you. I've been searching for you everywhere. Listen to me, Bill. I have that number that you asked me to check on. It is NC26X13. Have you got it? NC26X13. Yeah, I have it, Connor. Thanks. You are welcome, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Short conversation, eh, Mr. Ellis? Well, that was long enough, Pagon, for now. I'll continue it in person. You mean you're going to this Carla Reiner's house? Who's that? Uh, you realize, of course, it's running, uh, raining very hard at that. She lives way out in Coldwater Canyon. Yeah. Sure, so you need a car to get out there, and by a strange coincidence, because we drove it up here, my car's outside, so for a slight consideration, of course, I shall be very happy. Hang on, I wouldn't think of troubling you. There's a cab stand at the corner. Good night. But, but, Mr. Thurston! <laughs> How do you like that? After all he's done for me all these years, I get the brush up, huh? All right. Well, maybe he don't appreciate me, but there's other people. Yeah, I'll show him a couple of things or two. Hello? This is Pagan. Pagan Zelschman. Yeah. I got news for you. Mr. Thurston's on his way to Carla Reiner's house. That's right. Huh? Oh, don't worry about the thing. I'll stick to him like a bleach. For my usual consideration, of course. (laughs) 
Come in, Mr. Thurston. Thanks, Tom. Nasty night out, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. I noticed your car's parked outside. You going somewhere? I dislike talking at cross purposes, Mr. Thurston. What is on your mind? Radioactive isotopes and Bill Wilson. I have nothing to tell you about either. Too bad. I have a couple of theories I'd like your advice on. Theories? Yes. Bill Wilson could have called me in New York and faked a couple of shots to alibi himself. So he could disappear and not be connected with the stolen isotopes, huh? And what has this to do with me? That's my second theory. You could be working with him and helping him hide out. What do you think of him, Carla? You do not have to answer that, Carla. Well, Professor Udow. That is correct, Thurston. And if you wish any more answers, perhaps this gun can speak for both of us. I'll rest my case for a while, Udow. Very sensible. Carla, my dear, we have work to do at the research building. Dr. Sherwood wishes us to start preparing new isotopes at once. It will give us another opportunity for action. How about including me in your plans, Udow? Ah, but you are included, my dear Thurston. Like you uh... Wake up. Wake up, Mr. Thurston. Please wake up. Oh, it's all my fault. Mr. Thurston. Oh, she's dead. If I hadn't told her that he was coming here. Speak to me, Mr. X. Please speak to me. Say something, anything. I ought to wring your neck. Oh, Mr. X, you're not dead after all. Not even subconscious. I heard you sneak in here after Carla left me with Udo, and I gave you a chance to hang yourself. Who was it you tipped off about me? I'd be very happy to tell you, Mr. Thurston. Uh, only I don't know. Pagan? Yeah, I swear by the father of my father, Mr. Thurston. I, I just called the number Mr. Wilson gave me, and somebody answers. The next morning, there's cash in my mailbox. That's all. That number you call isn't NC2... 26X13. Now, is it? Huh? NC what? All right, skip it. Let's get out oh. of here. Hey, you're going the wrong way, Mr. Thurston. I didn't park in the garage. Nor did Carla. That's why I want to look in there. Here, yeah, let's look inside. Plenty dark in here, Mr. Thurston. Can't see a thing. Could be a light switch. Yeah. Well. Mr. Rex, there's an ambulance in here. The ambulance, Pega. Huh? You mean the one that robbed the Atom building? Yeah, let's look inside. Nothing in it. Nothing in it. It's empty. Mm. Whoever pulled this job moved the isotopes out of here fast. Mm, that cutie Carla. That's the one. Did she, Pega? <sighs> Look forward into the driver's seat. Driver's seat? What can be... Hey, hey. Mr. Rex, it's... It's Bill Wilson. And this time there's no doubt about it. He's really dead. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, please, won't you tell me? What are we doing here at this airport in the middle of the night? Looking for a DC-3, Pega. Huh? A twin-engine transport job. Huh? This one. What's the difference between that one and, and the other airplane? The number on the wing. The number on the... Hey, it's NC-26613. That's the number that cutie Carly gave you over the phone. Yes. Those license letters, NC, with the tip off. They told me what the number meant. So that's why you were calling all these aeroplane fields from the hotel, eh? Right. And now we've found it, let's get aboard. Hey, what if somebody sees us? Never mind that, come on. Now let's go back and look at the cargo compartment. Yikes, it's as dark in here like my Uncle Ahmed's soul. Oh, that flashlight helps. Yeah. There's the reason we came aboard. You mean all those little boxes? Little boxes. Those things are full of radioactive isotopes. Oh. But why isn't somebody here to guard them? That would attract too much attention. Oh, sure. Sure. <laughs> but what are they doing here? Waiting for somebody to fly them out of the country. They are, but why should anyone want to do that? Because somebody wants a few million dollars. He doesn't care how many lives it might cost. A few million? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Not that I want to sound monetary, you understand, but why don't we latch on this radium things and scram to Mexico ourselves? Quiet. Somebody's coming aboard. 
Yeah, so what? We could split with them. Maybe I'll, I'll make a deal with them. And get paid off like Bill Wilson? Bill Wilson. Oh, oh, no. Mr. Thurston, you turned off the flash. It's coming this way. Oh, it's coming in this hold. Hello, Carla. Oh, what are you doing here? Checking up on some missing isotopes and a theory. I see. And now you think you have proved it. I proved still another one, Carla. Wilson got scared when somebody fired at him in his office and he hid out. You were trying to help Wilson get to the bottom of this matter. Huh? Oh, yes, that's right, Ken. Only he didn't tell me. Yeah, but the person you suspected found Wilson's hideout before you did. The results in your garage. Yes, Ken, yes, that is the real answer. You had given me a lead on a license number of a plane, this one. That's why I came out here tonight to see if we... Mr. Rex, somebody's at the wheel. We're going to take off. I thought it was about time. Let's go up forward. Sorry, Doctor, there'll be no takeoff tonight. Why, Thurston... Here, let's cut these switches. You're not going anywhere. Well, I... I hope you have an explanation for this, Thurston. Sherwood, you're the one who's going to need explanations about the isotopes aboard this plane. Are you crazy? Wilson's the one you're looking for. Or Professor Udow. It won't wash, Sherwood. Wilson's dead. Well, your men parked him to cover up for you. And Udow was helping Carla. But he knocked you out, Mr. Red. Ah, it was only because he wasn't sure of me and wanted to play it safe. Look out, Ken. He's got a gun. Let's have it, Sherwood. No, no, you're not taking me. I... I'll kill you first. Those isotopes are mine, I tell you. They belong to me. They belong to me. Drop the gun. Drop it. No, I... That's better. I said it was all over, Sherwood. Well... Mr. X, listen. Another ambulance. Not this time, Pagar. It's the police. Sherwood, you made a bum choice when you decided to use nuclear science for your own profit. Because there can't be a choice these days. Just like those isotopes. It's kill or cure. And believe me, there's something we'd all better remember. All of us. Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that Carla tonight was played by Kathy Lewis. Next week, our story is called One Way to Macassar. And it's one I don't think you'll want to miss because it's packed full of excitement and mystery. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along in the role of Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And our Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. 
Far south in the last reaches of the great Pacific Ocean at the very back door of Asia lie tiny hidden lands of mystery called the Islands of Spice, Java, Sumatra, Borneo, Bali. Nearby across the treacherous swirl of the Java Sea moves a vessel whose cargo is death. Of course, Pagan Zellschmidt knows nothing of these things when he answers the phone in his room in New York. Mr. Pagan Zellschmidt speaking. Listen carefully, Zellschmidt, to what I'm going to tell you. Huh? Who are you? Listen. One week from today, the fish peddler will arrive in Batavia by boat. You got it? Sure. The fish peddler arrives in Batavia by boat in a week. So who cares? Mr. X might care. Mr. Who? I, uh, I don't know anybody with that name like that. If you know what's good for you, you'll get this information to Ken Thurston right away. But, uh, if you wanted him to know, uh, how come you didn't call him yourself? Because he'd have figured some way to trace this call. You're not that smart. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Thinks he's a wise guy. Well, it was very nice of you to give me a hundred dollars, Mr. Thurston. But, of course, I didn't really expect anything, you understand, just for delivering the message. Well, sure, Pig. I'll be forced it on you. Well, I... That is... Uh, Ken. Ken, this could be the break we've needed for two and a half years. Chief, it seems almost too good to be true. If it is true. It's the absolute truth. Now, how could I make it up? I don't even know who is this fish peddler. Oh, neither do we. That's the trouble. Huh? They only know what he is, all right. Or what she is, maybe. Yeah. The worst international crook in the whole dirty racket. The fish peddler has been back at the scenes in every war and revolution for the last ten years. Buying and selling information. Bribery. Assassination. Oh, but how could one person do all those things? He or she has got a string of agents scattered all over the world. Known as the net. And we don't know who any of them are. Well, this may be the chance, Chief. Wouldn't be the first time one crook settled an old grudge by squealing on another. Well, do you think that accounts for the phone call? Could be. Anyhow, Pagan and I are going to the East Indies and find out. Huh? But, Mr. Thurston... Pagan, I... if this turns out to be one of your bum's tears, I want to know exactly where to lay hands on you. Chief, I'll wire you from Macassar. Macassar? I thought that message said the boat would arrive in Batavia. The Dutch Airlines office says the only boat you in Batavia on that day is a cargo liner from Macassar. Makes a three-day run across the Java Sea. And I'm going to be on board. Thurston? Smells like a fruitcake. Spice market, Pagan. Oh. If you want a ton of cinnamon, here's the place to buy it. What would I do with a ton of... Ooh, ooh look, Mr. X, over there in that blue sarong. Pagan, Pagan. Well, I was only... Here now. Here's the Vistapo Cafe. Come on. Is this where that Captain Janssel hangs out? That's what the shipping agent said. Let's go in. To the Rest Apple Cafe. Thanks. Always look... glad to see a new face. Step right in and uh-huh. shake hands with Michael Joseph Zichitella, the Tom Cat of the keyboard. Hiya. The world's greatest hot piano player, bar none. Sit down, sit down. You ask me about Ellington, Fat Swaller, I never heard of. Here, take a listen. Just a load of them. How about that, huh? Yeah, well, that's. Uh, right, that's... yes, that is my theme. For 16 months at a nightlight club off Piccadilly. Went from there to the Follies Bird Jam. Played a full season back in 27. Hey, you remember this one? Ah, that brings back memory. Oh, sure, sure. Now, I wonder Just if you... call me Joe. Everybody calls me Joe. You know, this cafe job's only a filling, you understand. Got a big engagement over at the Opera House in Batavia next week. A solid 30 That's minutes. That's great, front... great. Maybe we'll we'll catch your act over there. But right now, I want to talk to... I want to find Captain John Soot. Uh, John Soot? Uh, somebody want to talk with John Soot? Wait here, please. Yeah, is that you? Yeah, yeah, Captain Jan Soot, uh, cargo liner Nempak, Macassar to Batavia. Uh, my name is Ken Thurston, Captain. Uh, happy to know you, man, here. Uh, you want passage, maybe? For two of us. 
Have you got room? Yeah, yeah, plenty of room. Only three, four passengers so far. Uh, we sail in the morning. Fine. If you will pardon me, Captain Janssel, perhaps huh? I should be going now. Uh, oh, oh, forgive me, man here, first. Uh, permit me to introduce Dr. Mohammed Singh. Oh, not Dr. Mohammed. Uh, Dr. Singh is, uh, <clears throat> how do you say it again? A uh, zoologist, Mr. Thurston, specializing in the study of reptiles. I have collected some specimens from the jungles here to take back to Batavia. Ah, snakes in boxes. <laughs> it's a funny business. You're sailing with us then, Dr. Singh? That is correct, Mr. Thurston. I hope the voyage will give us time to become acquainted. Oh, sir. See you on board, Doctor. Ah, it's a funny cargo sometimes I carry. Yeah, especially funny on this trip. Hmm? Captain, one of your passengers happens to be wanted by authorities all over the world. Oh, and you know who it is? Not yet. <clears throat> I may need your help. Manir, it is my business to haul cargo, haul passenger. It's no my business to catch criminal. If no bother me, I no bother him. I no want trouble with nobody. Well, I just mind... Take me to dinner? Oh, Johanna, I, I forgot you come here. Uh, Manir Thurston, it's Johanna. How do you do? How do you do? Is uh, this your daughter, Captain? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we go eat now, Johanna. <laughs> Glad to, Pop. I'm starving. Yeah, yeah. Well, come, come. I'm happy to have met you, Mrs. Janssult. You going with us in the morning by any chance? What? Yes, Mr. Thurston, I am, as a matter of fact. Why do you ask? Hmm? Oh, let's not bother with it now. We'll have a lot of time to talk about it before we get to Batavia. <laughs> I should have had that little cookie in the blue sarong on this trip, Mr. X. I never saw such a moonlight before. Yeah, it's like daylight. You can almost see the Java coast over there. You do what I told you to? Oh, sure, sure. Joe just plays that piano and talks about Broadway back in 1926. All that Dr. Singh thinks about is snakes. And Captain Janssult talks about eating. Uh, Johanna? Well, she, she spends all her time with you. Yeah, she's uh, very interesting. Mr. X. These people don't know from nothing. I don't think this fish peddler crook is even on board. <laughs> Anyhow, I'm practically broke. Yeah, the only chance you'd have of making any money is a way that's out of the question. Huh? You mean there is a way? Well, the fish peddler will probably pay plenty to find out who I am. You mean, uh, oh, 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 oh no. Like you said, Mr. X, it's, it's out of the question. Oh, I wouldn't tell a soul. Oh, I know that. Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> Thank God, as a matter of fact, I don't know who he really is. Tell me about it. He is the man called X. You don't say. Hm. How about that? Uh, maybe it's worth about uh, 50 bucks to find out. Joe, my friend. As a matter of fact, Pagan, my friend, I was wondering if I could borrow about five from you. Just until we get to Batavia, of course. I wouldn't tell this to another soul, Dr. Singh. But Mr. Thurston is really called Mr. X. So, I find this most interesting. Most interesting. <laughs> so maybe it's worth about a uh, uh, hundred bucks, huh? Mr. Zellschmidt, to a poor scientist, such an amount seems staggering. Oh, my good friend, please take my advice and never become a zoologist. Financially, it is most unprofitable. You... Ken Thurston, the man called X? Oh, sure, I know him for years. But then, who else have you told about this? Not a soul. I only thought you might like to. Hey, wait! I'll see you later, Mrs. Elspeth. But, but... Oh! Ken! Ken! Ken, are you in here? Is that you, Ken? Who are you? Who are you? Wait! No, don't! Oh, Captain Yanso. Huh? Oh, and you're first. Right. Well, I, I don't see you there. You, you wait for me, maybe? Yeah, I thought you'd show up here on the bridge sooner or later. Uh, here, mister, you take the wheel. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, good. Why you want to see me, Manir? Same thing, the fish peddler. 
But you don't even know who is it, this Swiss peddler. I may know pretty quick. Mr. Thurston. What is it, Peter? Mr. Thurston, come quick. Down to your castle. What's the matter? Oh, it's it's Johanna. My daughter. What is happening? Uh, come, come on, let's have it. She's, she's lying at the door of your cabin, Mr. Thurston. Somebody killed her dead. Blood all over her. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Following up a tip concerning the whereabouts of a mysterious international crook called the Fish Peddler, Ken has taken passage on a Java Sea cargo liner bound for Batavia. To draw the criminal into the open, he allowed his true identity to become known to the handful of passengers. And a short time later, the captain's lovely daughter, Johanna, was found lying on the deck at the door of Ken's cabin. Now Ken and Captain Jan Sul have carried the girl into the ship's wardrobe. Oh, I, I tell you what. And a roll of gauze, Pega. Here you are, Mr. Thurston. Oh, thanks heaven she knows he's dead. Manier Zilschmidt, you come to preach and say my daughter is dead. And oh, I, I think I die too, right there. Well, she looks kind of dead. You need some more bandages. What is that? Hey, maybe it's a torpedo or pirates or a miner. Captain, I think it's somebody called the fish peddler. The fish peddler? Now, the engine stopped. Oh, Himmel, what has happened on my ship? Precisely what I came to ask you, Captain Janko. Dr. C. Doctor! Oh, oh, the young lady has been injured? She'll be all right. Oh, good. Good, then, with your permission, I shall remove myself to the lounge. Right there. Pagan, why don't you go with him? Well, I was, I mean, I... Uh... Um... Well, sure, sure. Come on, Dr. C. Well, that's that. Now, we'd better get up to the bridge. Money of Thurston, if I know who is it done this, with these two hands, I break the bones in the... What was it? That was a shot out on deck. Oh. How about it, Captain? Can I count on your help? I do anything but you say. Good. Get on that radio in the next room and contact Batavia. Yeah, yeah. See if the Dutch authorities there can send out a seaplane with a doctor and a police inspector. Ah, no. What's the matter? The radio... All smashed to pieces, and look. Yeah, that lock has been forced open. What was in it? The ship's guns, three pistols, one rifle, all gone. Then we'd better get to the bridge, Captain. Come on. That's you, Captain Yonsel. Uh, what has happened, mister? Why the engine stop? Explosion, some of the low decks. Must have damaged the rudder, sir. Who stopped the engines, you? Nothing else to do, sir. She wouldn't respond to the wheel. Say, what's up anyway? Plenty trouble. Right away, you go below and see what happened. Well, I tried to, sir, but somebody shot at me. What? Do you know who it was? No, they fired from the shadows. And somebody's fastened down all the hatch covers. Whole crew's locked below decks. Oh, uh, no chance of letting him out now. A man would be too easy a target out there on the deck in that moonlight. Yes, sir. Do you have a gun? No, sir, but there's some in the radio room. Not anymore. Somebody's taken them. Yeah, but, but why? I think the fish peddler found out who I am and thought he was getting pushed into a corner. So... And here, Thurston, I make bad mistake before. I think criminal is no my business. This mistake, I no make again. Okay, then, come on. Let's see what's going on in the lounge. Control. Yeah, I can see it is, Peg, huh? Step right in, gentlemen. Benton here. Won't cost you a cent. Thanks, Joe. Glad to find you and Peg on in such a cheerful frame of mind. Why not? We're gonna get mighty, we're gonna get mighty, that's all. Don't you have a little drink, too? No, thanks, man. Where's uh, Dr. Singh? Uh, who knows? I was keeping a very close watch on him. But all of a sudden, that uh, poof, he was gone. Oh, sure. Then except for him and the crew below decks... All of us aboard are right here in the lounge, huh? Johanna, we, we forget about Johanna, Norman, here. It's all right, you think? I locked the wardroom door before we came in here, Captain. Oh, yes, right. I, I forget. Well, uh, what we do now? We identify the man I'm after. Huh? How you find out? Yeah. Who is he, Mr. Thurston? The only person on board besides me who's got a gun. 
It's all I wanted to know, Thurston. Don't move. Oops, a gun. Well, Joe, so you're the fish peddler. Smart guess, Thurston. Only it's a little late. I'll take your gun. Thanks. All right, now just take it easy and maybe no one will be hurt. You try to kill my Johanna, Shut you... up, Pop. You... Your daughter shouldn't have barged in on me while I was going through Mr. X's cabin. Well, Joe, what are your plans? Very simple for a spur-of-the-moment idea. It's less than ten miles to the Java coast, so I'm taking the power launch and heading in. I see. And with the ship's radio knocked out and the motor's dead, we don't have much chance of contacting anybody before sometime tomorrow, huh? That's right. Now, let's go out and lower the launch. If you do a good job of it, maybe I'll let all of you wave goodbye to me. Cheer up, my friends. In five minutes, I'll be gone and off your hands. Now, here. Gentlemen, what is happening? Dr. Singh. Been looking for you, doctor. Come on. Fall in with the rest of them. Mr. Thurston, why does this man have a gun? Tell you about it later, Doctor. Right now, we've got to help friend Joe get this launch into the water. All right, Captain Yansel, push out that stern davit. To help murderers escape is bad business. Say, we haven't got much choice. All right, let her down. Glad you're so good-natured about this, Thurston. I was afraid I might have a little trouble with you. What's the use? You're the one who's got the gun. Well, there she is, ready to go. Good. My deepest thanks to all of you. Now, move back down the deck. I don't want to get slugged with a wrench when I drop down into this launch. That's it. Keep moving. Are they yet? We will get away if nothing can be done. Don't be too sure about that. Oh. What the... Mr. Rex, in the school of rope. Guns. Pick them when you shut up. Oh, I should have... Oh, well, you found them, huh? Hit the desk fast. Give me that gun. He dropped down behind that hatch coming. Yeah, he's undercover. He can't move away from it. But these guns! I found the way he'd hidden them before we came in the lounge. I was waiting till he went over the side. All right, Joe. The game's over. Come on out. Thurston? I think we can make a deal. Not a chance. Not even for the names and addresses of the net, the rest of my organization? Huh? I've got a list of all 26 of my agents here in a notebook. Well? I can toss it to you or I can throw it overboard. It's up to you. What do you want for it? Your word that I can leave in the launch without being shot at. It's a deal, Joe. Let's have the book. I thought so. Here. Maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. So long, chums. What on you, Thurston? I'd always trade one crook for 26, Captain. Besides, we'll have him back again by the end of the week. There's no place for him to hide in Java. I no promise him nothing. Quick, give me the gun. No use, Captain. He's out of range. But don't worry. Ah, I... uh, Oh, well... If you will pardon me, Mr. Thurston, I might suggest the probability he will never reach the coast of Java. What do you mean, Dr. Singh? I overheard what was happening in the lounge, so before you came out, I took the liberty of emptying one of my specimen boxes into the bottom of the launch. Those snakes? Yes, yes, quite deadly. They were rather sluggish, but perhaps by now, the heat of the launch motor has made them very lively. Oh. Uh, and he won't even know about them until one of them hits him. Well. It serves him right, Mr. Thurston. He'd just as soon kill anybody as look at them. Yeah, you may be right at that, Pagan. Anyway, there's nothing we can do about it now. Here in the East Indies, there's an old proverb. Something about the conscience of an evil man is sharper than the fangs of a venomous serpent. Maybe Joe could tell us if that's true or not. Right about now. Now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Ladies and gentlemen... America's production of things you want depends on steel. Billions of jobs depend on steel. And to make more steel, America needs more scrap metal. So join the big drive. Collect scrap metal around your home, give it to a local scrap collection agency, or sell it to a scrap dealer right away. Now, next week, our story is called A Tiger for the Lady. 
And Mr. X runs into plenty of trouble in a little town called Porto Colombre, Panama. He also runs into his shadow, Pagon Zellschmidt, played as usual by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS... The Man Called X, and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. You're twice as sure with two great names. Frigid Air and General Motors. Frigid Air presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigid Air presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. The darkness of night covers the drabness of New York's east side waterfront as the headlights of an automobile search their way between rows of dingy warehouses. Finally, they slow and come to a stop. 177, 179. According to Pagan's letters, Chief... This should be the warehouse. Oh, Pagan's letter. Ken, just because that crook writes to you from somewhere in Panama... Or... Porto Colombre. Well, wherever it is. I don't see why we had to come down here. Chief, nobody I know can blunder into trouble the way Pagan can. He asked me to check up on the shipment of a small parcel for him, and he seemed pretty worried about it, so it uh, may be worth a look. Let me take a minute. Come on. Well, the only thing ever worried Pagan is the size of a payoff. And what's he doing in Porto Colombre? That's what I'm going to find out. Let's see now. There's somebody, Ken, working on that packing crate. Hi there. You in charge here? Hey, can't you hear me? I asked if you were... Look out, Ken. Well... Ken, what in blazes was the idea of that? You've got me, Chief. Let's look at that crate he was working on. Uh, See the address stenciled on it? Uh, Yes, yes. Senor Pagan Zellschmidt, Porto Colombre, Panama... Care of the Dalla Costa Import Company. And it's marked farm machinery. Yeah. That's no farm machinery. That's TNT demolition charges. And there are two more crates just like this one. Holy smoke. Now, what does Pagon want with that stuff? Ken. Chief, the United States troops have been withdrawn from Panama. We're giving up the air bases we need for defense of the canal. And Porto Colombo is only 20 miles from the Casal Zone. 20 miles from... Yeah. Yes. Chief, I think I'd better go farming in Panama. Gracias. For his dead. Gracias, senor. Muchas gracias. Vaya con Dios. For nada. Adios. Buenos dias, senor. Mm, well. Oh, you are Americano, senor. Yeah, that's right, Miss uh, Dalla Costa. Oh, no, senor. I'm Maria Shalaya. Senor Dalla Costa is a good friend, so I sometimes help him with his office work. I'm really a professional, you see, a dancer. I see. 
My name's Ken Thurston, senorita. The way you say that, senor, should I know the name? Maybe. I'm expecting a shipment of farm machinery from the United States. Farm machinery? I do not recall. Maybe you have it invoiced in the name of my, uh, my partner, senor Zellschmidt. No, senor, we're not handling any such shipment. Oh, sure you are. Or it just slipped your mind. If you'll check your records. Oh, but I'm positive, you see, we do not have any business with the United States. Oh? Huh? I swear that invoice on your desk has a New York address on it. Suppose we look at it. Do not bother, senor. Huh? Oh. Interesting little gadget you have there, Maria. 32 caliber, isn't it? See, si. At this short range, quite deadly. Batesare! Si, senorita. Was there something you wished? Batesare, this gentleman is most curious about farm machinery from New York. Perhaps you had better show him his curiosity than warranted. You see, senorita, I would be happy to. Like this. Oh. Oh. shipment from New York. This is Senor Zelschmidt calling. Pagan. Yes, that's right. Pagan Zelschmidt, I... Uh... Is that you, Mr. Thurston? That's right, Pagan. Well, imagine that. I called the Dalla Costa Company in Porto Colombo and get you in New York. <laughs> Must be crossed wires, eh? Huh? Listen, you idiot. You've got the Dalla Costa Company and you've got me. And you've got a lot of explaining to do. I have? Yeah. About those packages you're expecting. Oh, those. Well, I'm pretty busy right now. I have financial type executive, you understand? Maybe we could arrange an appointment, say, next week sometimes. Pagan. Uh... Okay, okay, it'll cost me money, but what's that? I'll meet you at El Diablo. El Diablo? Yeah, does it have a dancer by the name of... Oh, sure, sure, it's a nightclub type cafe uh, on the waterfront. I'll be there in half an hour. And you'd better be there, too. A most regrettable appointment, Senor Thurston. Most regrettable. Hello, where'd you come from? I've been here for quite a while, Senor. Ever since Senorita Chalai and Baldassare left. I am Captain Fosco of the police at your service. Yeah. What was that crack about a regrettable appointment, Fosco? El Diablo can be a dangerous place for strangers, particularly for a man called Thurston. Huh? How come you know my name? While you were unconscious, I took the precaution to check your identification. Huh. And I've reached the conclusion that we might possibly... Be here on the same mission. That'd be cozy. What's your mission, Fosco? Seeking El Tigre. El Oh, the tiger. Who's that? The leader of a large organization of bandidos, senor. They operate in this territory. Very vicious. Very dangerous. Too bad. But why should I be interested in your local thugs? For a very good reason, senor. El Tigre has been spreading anti-government propaganda among our people. A familiar pattern, is it not, senor? So that's it. You figure this El Tigre uh, wouldn't mind setting up his own little dictatorship around here? Huh? It would not be the first time a bandit leader has tried that trick. And the United States does have a slight interest in certain properties some 20 miles from here. It might prove unfortunate if the surrounding territory were unfriendly. Yeah, only it takes arms, ammunition to pull off a stunt like that. Any idea where this, uh, where the tiger's getting him? The steamer Santa Margarita is due to dock within two hours. I have reason to believe that she carries farm machinery, tractors, from the United States. Does that mean anything to you, senor? Mm -hmm. Suppose I give you my answer at the docks when the Santa Margarita comes in. Excellent, senor. But what will you be doing meanwhile? Keeping a regrettable appointment, Fosco, at Café El Diablo. <laughs> Senor, but uh, Senor Zellschmidt has not come into El Diablo as yet. If you would care to have a table and wait for him. Yeah, maybe I will. I, I... What is it, Senor? Is there something wrong? No, no, not at all. I just noticed your dancer. Ah, <laughs> see, si, see. Si. Talented, is she not, Senor? Yeah, very. Never mind that table. Oh, then the Senor is not going to wait. I'll wait, all right. In the dressing room of your dancer, Maria Shalaya.
Hello, Maria. So this is where you work when you're not helping De La Costa. Now that you have found me here, Senor Thurston, what do you wish? I just want to congratulate you on your act. Gracias. I do not dance too badly, I think. Maybe that wasn't the act he was talking about, baby. Well, didn't know you had company, Maria. There she has, Thurston. Me and this. Eduardo, not the gun. You promised me. It's no go, baby. You don't get anywhere just trying to scare the man called X. Yeah. You found that out a couple of years ago, didn't you, Lewis? There was a bum rap you hung on me in New York, Thurston. Oh, sure. You were only running a draft evasion racket. Counterfeiting war-saving bonds. Just kid stuff. How'd you break out and get down here, Lewis? I can wait. It's not at Lewis anymore. It's Della Costa. Ah, the big import man. You wouldn't have another alias, too, would you? Like what, for instance? Like El Tigre. El Tigre? Shouldn't have said that, Thurston. That was a mistake. Looks like I'll have to break my promise to Maria about the gun after all. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston is in Puerto Colombre, Panama, on the trail of explosives being shipped down there, disguised as farm machinery. Explosives, he suspects, are going to be used by a bandit chief named El Tigre, who has plans for setting up a little dictatorship within 20 miles of the Panama Canal. Now in the dressing room of the beautiful Maria Chelyai. Ken faces the gun held by Della Costa, the former New York hoodlum. You're not getting any answers here, Thurston. Maybe you don't scare off, but there's one way they won't miss. No, Eduardo, you can't shoot. You Give me that gun. Let go, Maria, before I blast you, not too. today, Della Costa. Oh. Ah, well, that's better. Thanks for the help, Maria, but how come? I'm not a particularly good person, Senor Thurston. I thought you were trying to take Eduardo back to the United States, so I tried to scare you away. But one thing I will not do is betray my country. And if he's truly El Tigre... I didn't say that, Maria. But whoever El Tigre is, he's got to be stopped. Then let me help you. I will work to find him and the explosives. Then perhaps he will not be suspicious of me any longer. Yeah, perhaps. Let me know how you come out. But you are leaving Diacosta here. Why not? I can't prove anything on him. Then what are you going to do? One way of making a tiger harmless is by pulling his teeth and claws. Captain Fosco will help me do that. When the Santa Margarita docks. But you are too late, Senor Thurston. She docked this morning. Her cargo is already ashore. You sure of that? Positive. We've already cleared certain items through customs. Let me have that phone, Maria. Here it is. Thanks. Police headquarters, fast. Enseguida. What is it? Ken, what are you going to do? Get some answers from Captain Fosco. Hello. Hello. Captain Fosco, please. Fosco, yes, that's right. Oh, I see. Is, is something wrong? Is he not there? Apparently never has been, Maria. There's no Captain Fosco with the Porto Colombre police. Well, I tell you, Senor, no one by that name has been in a customs office today. Of course, yes, I am certain. He what? He's coming in the door now? Uh, one moment, please. Uh, pardon me, would you be Senor Thurston? That's right, why? Oh, the, there's a phone call for you here, sir. Huh? If you would care to take it. Sure, hey. Hello. Hello, Mr. Thurston. You know what? I can't meet you at El Diablo. I was detained by important business, you understand? Those packages that arrived on the Santa Margarita? Yes, no. I'll contact you later. Goodbye, Mr. Thurston. Pago. Uh, was Senor Zelspit in here earlier? Si, senor. Paying duty on some imports. Uh, uh, you check them, of course. Check them, senor? Farm machinery from the United States? With a duty paid? Uh -huh. You wouldn't happen to know what he did with the stuff. Oh, but I do, senor. He was transferred to a fishing boat that was sailing for those flores. Those flores? See, si, a small island of the coast. Uh. There is nothing on it but jungle and the ruins of an old Spanish mission. Mm. Sounds like an ideal place to start a farm. I 
You are right. What would Senor Zellschmidt want with the farm machinery there? That's a very good question. Hello, Capitan Fosco. Uh, my dear amigo, Senor Thurston. I did not expect you at the dock so soon. I am surprised. Yes, yeah, so was I when I called the Porto Colombre police. Ah, uh, I see. The fact remains we are both concerned with El Tigre, and I believe I am correct in saying that we are both interested in the island of Dos Flores. Does that bush you're beating around have any point, Fosco? Senor, I have a speedboat waiting. We could reach Dos Flores well ahead of that fishing boat if you would care to trust me. Okay. Let's go to Dos Flores. <laughs> Pleasant journey, has it not, Senor Thurston? Not even the sight of another boat to spoil our enjoyment of the serene and peaceful sea. I'm more interested in what lies up ahead, Fosco, on those flores. Then we shall land, Senor, and find out. This stretch of jungle beach should do nicely. So, now we will go up to the old mission. Hold it, Fosco. Senor, someone is approaching. Our landing has been detected. You have a gun. Yeah, watch it. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to this floor. Pagon Zellschmidt. Mr. Thurston, when in Panama, why not do as Romans do? Why don't you call me by my right name? I can think of a lot of good ones right now. What's the one you have in mind? Ha, <laughs> what a question. El Tigre, of course. What else? <laughs> What a dope. How could I ever have been such an idiot? It wasn't too tough for you, Pagan. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. But when, when they promised me such big money to come here and work for them, how could I resist? And all I did was order those packages for them. All you did was let them use you as a front to get arms and explosives brought in here. So El Tigre could try to set up his own pretty little dictatorship next to the Panama Canal. How does it happen you called yourself El Tigre, Senor Joel Smith? Uh, this Baldassare told me to when he flew over here. He... he... It was a password to something. Could have been a password to the firing squad. Huh? Well. Mr. X. Still walking around with a gun in your hand, Dalla Costa? That's right. So you got things figured, huh, Thurston? Sure. El Tigre gets arms and explosives through your fake importing company. Then they're stashed away out here to be handed for the revolution. Simple. Right boy, Thurston. You got things figured out pretty good. Well, you're not getting away with it. Sure. Be a brave hero. Walk right into my gun, Thurston. Okay. You're close enough now. He's going to shoot. Don't, oh. Don't. Oh, oh, Mr. Thurston is dead. He's shot dead. I can't look. Oh, oh shut up, you idiot. Huh? Hey. Hey, it's the De La Costa that's got it. Ken. Ken, are you all right? Come yeah, on, you're not shooting. I told you I would work with you, Ken. I follow you in my own boat. Thank the Dios I got here in time. Senorita Chilai, what a debt we owe you. You have rid us of El Tigre. Thank you, senor. But uh, you must be Captain Fosco, eh? Ken, have you learned? Yeah. He's an agent for Panamanian intelligence, Maria. Si, senorita. Well, shall we return to the speedboat? I have a radio aboard. I shall tell headquarters to send planes to round up El Tigre's men. And that El Tigre is dead. Correction, Fosco. Tell them we're bringing El Tigre in with us. Huh? But this De La Costa is dead. Maria isn't dead. What is this? A bad joke? You said you followed us out here in your boat, Maria. But the sea was empty to the horizon when Fosco and I came out here. Of course, senor. She must have been on the island all the time. This is ridiculous. Can I save your life and you accuse me of this? You weren't trying to save my life. You were trying to save your own. what? You... You knew the game was up, so you tried to throw the blame on Dalla Costa. Make us think he was El Tigre instead of another stooge. Let's have that gun, Maria. For this, I Drop it. Drop it. No, it's better. You can relax now. They've killed you before. So, Senor X, the tiger's claws are really drawn now. It is over. The most dangerous beast in the jungle is tame. Yes. 
You know, there's a more dangerous animal than the tiger loose these days, Fosco. The human animal. Men and women infected with that old lust for power. And they are the most dangerous animals of all. Because they feed on their own kind. That's the breed we've got to destroy. All of them. Frigid Air Star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Listen, America's production depends on steel. Jobs depend on it. And steel depends on scrap metal. Help increase the production of the things you need. Help to keep employment high. Collect scrap iron and steel around home. Sell it into your local drive or call your local scrap dealer. Right away. Next week, we have a story I really think you'll like... Its title is Guns on the Niger, and that gives only an inkling of what it's about. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt, so join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigid airs serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And our Frigid Air presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, a man called X. Last night, a man died in his room in a small hotel in Lower Manhattan. Ordinarily, the Bureau wouldn't have been concerned, nor the police, in fact since the cause of his death was heart failure. But as they stand talking in the small bare room, Ken and the chief realize the police were right in notifying them that this case does concern the Bureau and maybe the world. Well, we've ransacked this room from one end to the other, Ken. Looks like that's all we're going to find. Well, that's enough to start on, Chief. The biggest break in the whole mess is the list the police found here. Hmm. 750 submachine guns, Model R-14, 1,000 automatic rifles, 5,000 grenades. It tell us exactly with a list of stuff that disappeared from that army warehouse in Dakar over two years ago. But we still haven't found anything to show where this dead man fits in. Yeah. Checked in here three days ago. Had a return ticket by airline to Akasa, Nigeria. Oh, sure, sure. And a canceled passage on some African riverboat called the Niger Queen. And that's all. So, where do we go from here? I don't know yet. The one thing's certain, if this, what's his name, Jules Von Els, 
hadn't been knocked off by a bum heart, we'd still be in the dark about that $2 million worth of stuff swiped from Dakar. And paid for, Ken, by American taxpayers. Yeah, but it's worse than that, Chief. The best place to sell $2 million bucks worth of illegal guns is someplace where there's trouble. Maybe the answer is somewhere in the African jungle along the banks of the Niger River. In a way, we can still... Carl. Uh, wait, Chief. Uh... Come on in, Pagan. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Thurston. Well, Schmidt. Well, I guess I'd better be going now. Oh, no, you don't. But, Mr. Thurston, I don't know nothing about from nobody. I, I never saw anybody before. I, I swear by the father of my Skip father... Skip it. But, but... Talk, Pagan. The truth. But I was only... All right. Somebody said there was a guy in this room that wanted to sell some guns. So I came up. To buy some guns? Well, he... I, I, I thought maybe I could be a middleman. I, I know a lot of characters who always go around starting revolutions. I see. Anything to make an honest dollar. Well. <laughs> All right. You've stuck your neck into this, so now you're going to stay in. We are going to Nigeria. But I never ever heard of it. You will. Chief, I'll send you a wire from Akasa. Come on, Pagan. I don't get it, Mr. X. Department stores, streetcars, telephones, and even this hotel. It's got ice water. If this is Africa, why doesn't it look like Africa? It will, Pagon, as soon as we leave the city. Now, we may get an answer to that ad, so you stay here in the room. The paper will be on the streets in ten minutes. But where are you going? To the Acasa docks. To look up a certain Captain McCarthy. Who is he? Only a name so far, signed on a canceled boat ticket in a dead man's pocket. <laughs> Nobody's going to answer such a screwy ad. Gun collector will pay top price for the car models in good conditions and over two years old. Oh, it sounds silly. There's nothing silly about two million dollars. Two million? What are we waiting for? But it may be dangerous, so watch yourself. Oh, well, uh, in, in that case, I... Uh, uh... Any better place for a middleman than right in the middle? See you later. But Mr. X... That's right, Mr. Thurston. I'm Captain McCarthy. Captain Mac, everybody on this river has called me for the last 20 years. Real name's Catherine, if it makes any difference. I see. Well, you have to pardon my surprise. Yes, I, I know. You expected to find a man. Well, I ain't. I'm a woman. A two-fisted woman. Anything I can do for you? Yeah, you might tell me what you know about Jules Von Elts. Von Elts? What do you want to know about him? You bought him down river a few days ago, didn't you? Sure, he bought a ticket. The Niger Queen will haul anybody as long as they buy a ticket. Where'd he get on? Bantu Landing. That's the end of my run, about 150 miles upstream. Anything there? Sure. The jungle settlement, native king, and the Lechner plantation. Which one of those was Jules Von Els tied up with? Mr. Thurston, in 20 years on this river, I've learned one thing. To keep my trap shut. That's why I'm still alive, while a lot of people that used to be around here ain't. <laughs> Mr. Thurston. Oh, Pagan, I see we've got a visitor. Mr. Thurston, I want you to meet my very dear friend, Monsieur Francois Levillard. How are you, Francois? The pleasure, Monsieur. <laughs> we only got acquainted accidentally, you understand. Francois was really hunting for some other room. Precisely, but it does not matter. Monsieur Pagan has been teaching me to play Jean Rami. I find it the most fascinating game. Well, with Pagan teaching you, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Already, I've won 237 francs. In a week, I'll have 5,000. Hey, I wonder how much is that in real money? You won't have a chance to find out. We're catching a boat upriver in the morning to Bantu Landing. Oh. Bantu Landing? That's right. <laughs> but no white man ever goes to Bantu. Jules von Elst did. This man I do not know, but he should not go there either. They have malaria, snakes, crocodiles, wild animals. Ah, maybe that is it. You are going to hunt. Yeah, I'm definitely going to hunt. In which case, you shall need a guide, a man who knows the Bantu country like the inside of his own hat. A man such as the one you see before you now, monsieur. Oh, no, I couldn't ask you to risk all those dangers you mentioned. Well, in return for my services and for exposing myself to the danger, I shall expect some slight remuneration, of course. There you go. Here's a man after your own heart. Oh, I, I think maybe I shouldn't get acquainted with people so easy. Come on, Francois, shuffle the cards. Hey, who's that? 
A good way to find out is open the door. Well. How do you do? You are the Mr. Thurston who placed the ad in the paper? You have some guns for sale? Hardly. I'm a reporter on the paper, Annette Collins. Miss Collins. I wonder if I might have an interview, Mr. Thurston. Sure. What would you like to know? Well, for one thing, how long you plan to stay here in Akasa? I'm leaving in the morning. Too bad. Where are you going? Up the river to Bantu. Bantu? I suppose you're going on the Niger Queen. Matter of fact, yes, yes. It so happens I'm taking that trip myself, just for the ride. Quite a coincidence, isn't it, Mr. Thurston? Yes. Yes, and I think this may turn out to be a pretty interesting trip. Any way you look at it. Hello, Captain Mack. Casting is allowed in the wheelhouse after dark. Sure, come on in, Mr. Thurston. We don't set up no formality on a jungle riverboat the way they do on ocean liners. Good, I like that. I want to know about John Lechner, this plantation owner at Bantu. What's he look like? Like a man that's tough enough to keep on living in the middle of a jungle with 5,000 savages all around him. Did Jules Von Elks work for him? Von Elks? You know, I just can't remember that name to save my life. All right. What about that native king you mentioned? Bacolo? Oh, he's quite a boy. Kind of likes to meet anybody that comes barging into his territory. You better look him up when we land tomorrow afternoon. I will. Too bad we can't send word ahead. He might cook up a royal reception. Oh, don't you worry about that, Mr. Thurston. You hear that off there in the jungle? Are those drums? Yeah, uh, signal drums. Been going since dark. You don't have to send word to Bacolo. He knows already. So? So they know all about you up there at Bantu Landing. Know you're coming, know what to expect. But you don't, Mr. Thurston. You ain't got the slightest idea what to expect. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. All right, you buzzers, get a line over that piling and walk her in. Cut the motors. Easy now. Good. Make her fast for enough. Well, there you are, Mr. Thurston. Bantu Landon, such as it is. Yeah, it's not much of a city, Captain Mack. Half a dozen shacks and a rickety wharf. Native village is about a mile inland, and the Lekna plantation's off there in the jungle. I see. And where'll I find King Bakulo? You won't have to. He's the tall one standing there by himself. Uh, oh, well, I'll, uh, I'll see you later. We'll head back for a casa tomorrow morning, Mr. Thurston. Passengers can sleep on board tonight. Thanks. And be careful. Oh, sure. Hey, Mr. Thurston, you want me to go with you? Better stick with your gin rummy, Pagan. You've got a good thing there. Good day, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to Bantu. Thank you. I understand your name is Bacolo. You have been correctly informed, Mr. Thurston. wonder if I could have a talk with you. I had been hoping that you would. Shall we walk? You knew I was coming across. Drums have told it for day and night. And have they told you why? They have called you Mighty Hunter from across the sea. Whispered you have two names. Uh, have they told you what I'm supposed to be hunting? Mm. Many kinds of quarry in jungles of Bantu. Bacolo... What do you know about the Lechner plantation? We need walk no further. I have heard it said that John Lechner is evil man who deals in unlawful affairs. To inquire more is dangerous. I see. And would it be dangerous if you told me if two million dollars worth of stolen guns are being stored on the plantation? Very dangerous to both of us. All right, if you want, you won't. However, if I were to answer a call for help from man with two names then the matter might stand in different light. Uh, Bacolo, how do I get to the Lechner Plantation? Very well. So the... 
crops are in excellent shape, Mr. Thurston. The jungle here is remarkably untouched, and the weather has been dry. But you did not come 150 miles up the Niger River to talk about those things. What is on your mind? All right, Mr. Lecter. But in our business, it pays to be a little cagey. Exactly what is our business, Mr. Thurston? Oh, let's stop beating around the bush. I'm in the market for guns. According to Jules Von Els, you've got some you picked up at Dakar. Really? And where did you meet this Jules Von Els? In New York. I'm willing to close the deal on his terms. But I've got to see the stuff first. Mr. Thurston, you've come to the right place. Good. One thing I can't understand is why Jules didn't send you to the boss in Akasa. He told me about the boss, but I was in too great a hurry. Oh, I see. Anak, Bambaku! There's really no point in delaying any longer. You may as well take a look at the guns. All right, let's go. Quite unnecessary. If you'll turn around, you can see two of them pointed at your back. Uh, <laughs> quiet devils, aren't they? Don't they know how to talk? They're paid to listen, to obey orders. Joe Candango, keep him covered. It was an excellent performance, Mr. Thurston. Until you said you'd been told about the boss. In that case, you'd have known that the boss came upriver on the same boat you did. Yeah. A dead giveaway, wasn't it? That's a nice choice of words. Dead giveaway. General Park, the bungay folk. Tie him up. Lock him in the south wing. The boss will want to talk to him later. Okay, low, back up. Hmm, Bacolo, huh? Now, where does that tin horn king fit into this? And just who is this Ken Thurston, anyway? You wish to cut the cars, Pego? French, sir. My friend, excuse me. I trust you explicitly. Deal him out. You are most generous, comrade. Uh, when is your friend, Mr. Thurston, coming back? Ah, uh, who knows? When he gets mixed up on some business, he even forgets to eat. Uh, precisely what business is he in, Pego? Why, he's the... Oh, no, Francois, you heard me tell this reporter, Miss Collins, already. It's very secret. Oh, sure, very secret. Maybe you and he are professional card sharpers, huh? <laughs> That's what you think. Why, if I told you who Mr. Thurston is, you'd fall down subconscious with surprise. Come on, then, Pagan. Surprise us. All right, he's... No, no. I, I think all of a sudden, I, I guess I'd better be going or something. Well, you'd better look for Ken Thurston while you're at it. Oh, Captain Mack, come on in. Have a drink. And things going on, on out there in that jungle. Them drums have been talking for half an hour, and Thurston ain't showed up yet. Oh, he's all right. Probably over in the plantation someplace. That's where you're going. Tell him to get himself back on board. Huh? Oh, no, it's dark out there. Zellschmidt, when I give an order, I don't want any back talk. You heard me. Get going. Yes, ma'am. Who's there? It is I, Bacolo. Bacolo, good. Can you cut these ropes? One moment. <coughs> There. Now, come outside. No one at Lecter's house has been wakened yet. I don't have a gun. Lecter took mine. Can you get hold of one? I have something better than guns, Mr. Thurston. What? Wait. Wanta, Benny Jack, your men. Two hundred warriors of Bantu surround the house. We have but to drop flaming arrow on the straw roof to force Lecter out. Good. Then it's about time for a showdown. Where you may lead, we follow. Okay. Lechner! John Lechner! Who's there? Lechner, the place is surrounded. You and your men come out with your hands up. All right, have at it. Bantu! Stand back of the tree, Mr. Thurston. We'll shoot flaming arrow. All right. There it goes, an arc of flame. So help me at court. Look at the spread of that blaze. Lechner, better come on wait, up while wait. you still can. Something happens to the house. Look. What happened, Mr. Thurston? The whole place blew up. What was it? The end of John Lechner, Bacolo. There were 5,000 grenades in there with those guns. But I was going...
going to come and find you, Mr. Thurston. Only when I heard all the shooting, I thought I'd better hide. I mean, I mean, wait here on the wharf until I knew where my services would be the most good, you understand? Okay, Pagan. Now, come on. Let's go on board. What happened over there, anyhow? Plenty. Lecter and his men are wiped out. Guns are destroyed. Well, good. Then everything is all over, eh? No, I wouldn't say that. What? Lecter was the only... the hired man. He wasn't the boss who was on board with us, remember? Hello, Captain Mack. Glad to see you're still alive, Thurston. What was all the ruckus about? Oh, some guns blew up. Guns you hauled up here to Bantu a couple of years ago. So that's what was in them cases. I didn't ask any questions about them. We can't all go around sticking our necks out the way you do. I guess not. Where's Miss Collins? Right here, Mr. Thurston. Yes, I had a pretty good hunch, huh? I thought I'd get a story for the paper if I followed you up here. You may get an even better one as soon as I talk to Monsieur Lavia. Francois? Yeah, he's the boss, back of the whole business. You see, Lechner let slip it was someone aboard this boat. But VR left the boat right after Zelschmidt. Haven't seen him since. Uh, he's got away, Mr. Thurston. And he owes me 3,000 francs. We gotta do something. Uh, Bacolo. Mr. Thurston. VR's gone into the jungle. Any chance of tracking him tonight? It will not be necessary. Stay back. Stay to bomb. Take it Oh, the drums. Jungle telephone. The word will be ahead of him before he's gone five miles. Mr. Thurston, do you think he can hear those drums out there in the jungle? He can hear them all right, Pagan. He'd hear them even if they weren't behind him. When a man sets out the profit on the weakness and the hate and prejudice of other men, he moves into a dark jungle. And as long as he lives, he'll hear the drums close behind him, like... Like heartbeats of humanity, justice, truth, and tolerance. And what man can escape his own humanity? you a letter from the superintendent of schools of uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Fine, Wendell, go ahead. It's addressed to you, and it says, Dear Mr. Marshall, on Sunday evenings I frequently listen to your program, The Man Called X. Usually I'm not moved to report on radio programs, but I do feel that yours is in a class by itself. It is my opinion that you are doing a lot of good in creating a better background of understanding for all peoples everywhere. Best wishes, sincerely yours, Loy Norix, superintendent of schools, Kalamazoo, Michigan. Well, isn't that fine, Wen? I just, I just say thanks to Mr. Norix and to so many others who have written us about the man called X. Thanks for being with us tonight, and I'd like you to know that Annette was played by Kathy Lewis. Next week, our story is called Operation Silver, and it concerns one of the most dangerous rackets in our country today. It's a thriller. As usual, of course, Leon Belasque will be along as pig on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. 
wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. More frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. In the sleepy little village of Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, the huge bulk of a fat man looms outside the door of Jonathan Small's antique shop. A smile of satisfaction crosses the man's face as he opens the door and enters. How do you do, sir? Good day, sir. Good day, Mr. Small. Uh, your shop is just as I remembered it, uh, exactly as it was some six years ago. Why? Do you care for a chocolate, Mr. Small? A chocolate? Why, why no, thank you, sir. Very I... well, as you wish. I have returned here, Mr. Small, to claim some property of mine. Property of yours? Exactly. You were paid well to keep it for me, a pair of silver candlesticks. Silver candlesticks? But the only... Schneider. Yes, my dear sir, Schneider. Now known as William Grant. But, but it's not possible. You you can't be. Yes, time and science have altered my appearance considerably, yes. Well, the candlesticks, please. But uh, it's been six years. Uh, I never dreamed after all that time. I, uh, I've just sold them. Sold them? Just this morning for $500. $500? Are you stupid idiot? They're worth millions. To whom did you sell them? Well, Quickly, man, to whom did you sell them? Uh, I... I have the sales slip right here on my desk. I, I, I'll give you the information. Now, Mr. Schneider or Grant, just stand where you are. Why are you pointing that gun at me, you fool? I didn't know who you were six years ago, but I do now. And I, I know who to call about you, too. I have his number right here in my address book. Yes, here. I, I, I'll call him. have that gun. No, no, I won't. You... Let's see that sail slip. Uh, no name, no address. If you were still alive, I'd... The address book. Huh. So this is who he was going to call. The man... <laughs> Why not? It would be ironic justice to make the call for him. Yes. And have the man I intend to kill find the candlesticks for me. I wish to place a long-distance call. To New York, please. Person to person. The name of the man I'm calling is... Mr. Ken Thurston. You see, Mr. Thurston, I am a collector of early American silver. Oh? Huh? Yes. And when I learned that Jonathan Small had a pair of silver candlesticks made by Paul Revere for George Washington, I went to Valley Forge to buy them. You call me from Small's antique shop, Mr. Grant? Exactly, sir. Mm -hmm. As I told you, I found him dying from a bullet wound. However, he managed to tell me two things. One, that a man named Schneider has returned and is after the candlesticks. Schneider? Why, Ken? Yes, yeah, Chief, yes. Go on, Grant. Yes. Well, secondly, that I should call you. And then he died. And there you have my story, sir. You could have told me that over the phone, Grant. Why come all the way to New York? Because I wish to help you find the Schneider, Mr. Thurston. I don't know who he is. I'm not interested. But I must have those candlesticks for my collection. It's an obsession with me, sir. I shall not rest until I have them. I see. Well, I'm not sure this is any concern of the Bureau's, Mr. Grant, but if we learn anything, we'll let you know. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Would either of you care for a chocolate? Hmm? No. Right. No. Thank you. Very well, gentlemen. I shall bid you good day. Uh, what do you think, Chief? Oh, nothing but a crackpot. Wealthy collector. Oh, I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about Schneider. Well, you, uh, you think it's the same Schneider we were after? I did trace him to Valley, For Valley Forge, only he got out just ahead of me and skipped the country. I still remember the file description. Short, 130 pounds, blonde, blue eyes, very nearsighted. Oh, say, that's not bad. Well, that was over six years ago. A long time. Yeah, not too long to wait for a few million dollars. Well, what are you driving Look, at? Look. We suspected Schneider of being a Nazi agent, arranging hiding places here for loot stolen from occupied countries. So what? So this. A lot of that stuff's never been recovered. 
They'd make a pretty good reason for Schneider to sneak back here now. Oh, sure, sure, Ken. But what would uh, George Washington's candlesticks have to do with it? Suppose I'll let you know, Chief. From Valley Forge. <laughs> We have nothing for sale at the moment. The owner of the shop has just died. Yes, I have heard. You a member of the family? No, I am Eva Masters, Mr. Small's assistant. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing to close up the place now, so if you pardon me, Mr. My name's Ken Thurston. Oh. Just one question, Mr. Masters. I'm interested in the silver candlesticks. I understood Mr. Small had a pair that were made by Paul Revere. They were sold yesterday. I'm so sorry. Oh, too bad. Do you have any idea who bought them? No, Mr. Small made the sale himself. However, perhaps there's a record in the office. If you care to wait, I'll check and see. Sure, Miss Masters, I'll wait. Oh, what? What's that? Well, Pagon Zelschmidt. Get out from under that counter. What the blazes? Here, let me take that thing out of your mouth. Police fire help the, the girl, the girl. What happened, Pagon? The girl, she did it. Count me subconscious. Eva Mastos, wait a minute. Oh, she must have skipped out the back door. Let's have the story while I cut these ropes. That story. She came in here asking for candlesticks. Was it my fault we didn't have any? But she conked me and ties me up here behind the counter. Uh, uh, there you are. So, Eva Mastos, wasn't Mr. Small's assistant? Mr. Thurston, the late demented Mr. Small had only one assistant. Me. You? Sure. I was here in the Valley Forge trying to get in on a sucker. I, I mean, on, on a tourist trade. You understand? What kind of gold bricks were you selling this time? Mr. Thurston, they were hatchets. The original hatchets G. Washington used to cut down the cherry tree. Yeah. I had two dozen on consignment from a hardware store in Philly. O -o -only, only they didn't sell so good, so... Oh, so I took this job with Mr. Small. So that's how you got my name and phone number. Pago, were you here when he sold those silver candlesticks yesterday? Oh, Sure. A Dr. Eckhart bought him. Eckhart? Yeah. He's a little skinny guy with glasses and, and an accent. <laughs> what a sucker. 500 mazumas for things to hold candles when you can buy electric bulbs for practically nothing. You happen to know this Eckhart's address? Why, it's, uh... Hey, why are you so interested in this silver gimmick? Huh? Must be pretty valuable stuff, eh, Mr. Thurston? They're worth a lot more than 500 bucks to a customer I know. They are? A, a lot more? That's right. Hmm, imagine that. Well, uh... Well, well, so long, Mr. Thurston. Drop around again sometimes when, when you're in the market for a hat. Wait a minute, Pagan. Won't do you any good to buy those candlesticks back. You don't know the name of my customer. Uh, why shouldn't we be stuffy about this, Mr. Thurston? Uh, let's make a deal. Okay. What's Eckhart's address? Room 304 at the hotel. Who's the customer? The United States government. So long, Pagan. Hello, Dr. Eckhart. Mind if I come in? Well, it's something important. I'm quite busy packing at the moment. Sir. Yes, the clerk told me you were checking out, but I think you've got time to discuss those silver candlesticks there on the dresser. Do you mind if I look at them? Uh, yes, you wish. That is far enough, Mr. Thurston. Well, little Eva. You had better luck looking for candlesticks here than you had in the antique shop? Much better. And as you notice, I have found a gun also. But you have found nothing but trouble. Not so, Doctor. Yeah, Eva, my Nishana. You are quite right. Uh. Eva, where's this man? A very dangerous one. The man called X. A, a man called... Yeah, Doctor. And I am one who believes in removing all danger. Coming to it last, my dear Thurston. Grant, what are you doing here? Waiting for you to regain consciousness, my dear sir. Would you care for a chocolate? I'd much rather have you put that gun down. 
Not just yet, Thurston. I have no wish to emulate the departed Dr. Eckhart. Doctor... Well, he does look dead. But where's the girl? Yes, Little... Dr. Eckhart has reached the end of his trail, just as you and I have. What's that supposed to mean? It's simple, Thurston. I have found my silver candlesticks, and you have come face to face with Schneider. <laughs> to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston is in Valley Forge, searching for an ex-Nazi agent named Schneider and some millions of dollars of loot stolen from occupied countries and hidden here in the United States. Now in the hotel room, Ken faces a gun held by the fat man, Grant, who claims to be a wealthy collector of early American silver. Yes, Thurston, I have found my candlesticks and you have come face to face with Schneider. You're wrong on at least one of those counts, Grant. Take a closer look at those things on the dresser. Closer look? Oh, well, sir, I shall. Well? Pewter. These candlesticks are pewter, shabby imitations, not the ones I was after at all. Yeah, a little local color, courtesy of the hotel. When I first came in, I was fooled by them, too. So, what about that Schneider crack and the gun? My apologies, Thurston, I... I came in after hearing the shots and took it for granted that the dead man, who called himself Eckhart, was Schneider. Go on. The gun was to defend myself, of course. Oh, of course, of course. By the way, does this uh, pocket hypodermic set belong to you? I found it beside um, Eckhart's body. Why, yes, it's mine. It must have dropped out of my pocket while I was examining him. My thanks for returning it. It contains insulin ampules, Grant. You are diabetic? Unfortunately, I am, sir. I carry the insulin with me at all times. Well, Mr. Thurston, I'll leave you now. I came down here thinking I could help, but I can see I'm well over my depth. I'll stick to my collecting from now on. That's a good idea, Grant, and don't worry. When I get the candlesticks, you'll hear from me. Thank you, sir. And again, my apologies for trying to play detective. Good day, sir. Uh, I I beg your pardon, Mr. Zellschmidt. Huh? You know me? All Valley Forge knows you, sir. Your ability at judging antiques is famous. It is? Uh, I mean, oh, sure, yeah. And, uh, and speaking of antiques, uh, would you possibly be interested in a hatchet? Good for chopping down cherry trees. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm more interested in uh, candlesticks. Those things again. Uh, say, what's on this kind of candlesticks, anyhow? That everybody... Zell Schmidt, I am willing to pay a substantial commission to the man who informs me the moment Thurston gets a lead on them. You are? Well, I, I don't sell myself for peanuts, you understand? Here's I... my card, sir. And here, a small retainer. Oh, no, sir. You'll have to make it at least ten bucks. Hey, a C-note. A hundred bucks. Precisely. May I depend on your, um, cooperation, Zellschmidt? Believe me, Mr. Grant, my dearest friend, not only will I cooperate, I'll even help you find them. <laughs> So Eva Mastos lives on Walnut Street in Philadelphia, Chief. That's right, Ken. The file shows she was a nurse in the Nuremberg Hospital. She got here by marrying a G.I. And what about Eckhart? Well, your call didn't give me much time, Ken. There's one Eckhart with the same initials and description in Austria. Famous plastic surgeon. That's all I have. That could be plenty. I still don't see what all this has to do with Schneider and those candlesticks. Chief, I'm still positive they're the key to the hidden Nazi loot. You just do what I said, and we'll wind this thing up tonight. Hey, your train for Philadelphia is ready to pull out. Now, thanks for the lift, Pagan. Huh? Meet me there later with the address I gave you. But be careful. I don't want that address getting into the wrong hands. You understand? Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. You can always depend on a Zelsh. That's what I'm banking on. See you later, Pagan. So long, Mr. Thurston. 
Hmm. Now I wonder what he meant by that. Oh, well. Bird in the bush, I always say. Oh, Zell Schmidt. Hello, Mr. Grant. What are you doing down here? I thought you might have some information as to Thurston's destination, so I followed you. Well? Well, Mr. Grant, I could say no, but uh, it's George Washington's birthday, so how could I tell a lie? <laughs> I'd be happy to give you the information. Good man. For a slight consideration. <laughs> Just a minute, Eva. May I ask why you have followed me to my apartment, Mr. Thurston? Sure, I'd like to talk over a little theory with you. So? Yeah, it's about a man named Schneider who had a scheme to come back to this country to cash in on a few million dollars worth of loot he had stashed away here. It involved plastic surgery and fake papers. But it was worth the gamble. Go on, Mr. Thurston. He went to a Dr. Eckhart for the plastic job. Eckhart had a nurse assisting him by the name of Eva Mastos. Very interesting. Go on, please. Somehow Eckhart and Eva learned what Schneider was after. The silver candlesticks that held the key to the treasure. You're right, Mr. Thurston. And I have them right here in this bag. But you must believe me. I don't want them for myself. It is for the people of my country for food and clothing and medicine. I must keep them. That's up to the courts to decide. You made a bad mistake when you tried to take things into your own hands, Eva. But what else could that? Oh, I don't know. I'm so mixed up. It all looks so simple at first, but now. Yeah. Well? All right. Can all right. Let us go inside and examine them. Perhaps we will be able to find what is in them or on them that they... Yeah, I know what you mean. Dark in here. Can I will turn on the light? Don't bother, oh. Eva. I'll turn them on for you. You... Hello, Grant. That gun's becoming a permanent fixture. It was nice of you to deliver the candlesticks to me this way, Thurston. I presume you've already guessed their little secret. Could be microfilm hidden in their bases. Schneider left them in the antique shop six years ago because I was after him. They were too hot to carry along. That is quite correct, my dear sir. That film contains a list of hiding places of ten million dollars worth of easily saleable jewels, paintings, rare objects of art. Now, Eva, my dear... Please be kind enough to give me the candlesticks. Eva? Better do as he says. But can this man? Do you realize who he is? Sure. He's Schneider. You disappoint me, Thurston. I thought I had altered my entire appearance. The plastic surgery was good. Yes, Schneider, but the uh, chocolates gave you away. The chocolates? A diabetic wouldn't be always munching on candy unless there was a reason. You were trying to pile on weight. You were using the insulin to help you. You're a clever man, Thurston. Unfortunately, however, not clever enough. The candlesticks, Eva. All right. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now I shall bid you farewell, Thurston. And you, Eva. You see, the race is not always to the swift, but to the wisest. Ken, he's going to shoot. Quite right, my dear. Goodbye, my friends. Yes. Get him, Chief. All right, let's have that gun, Snyder. Yes, this way. Get him, Wilson. Oh. Thanks, Wilson. Uh, you all right, Ken? Yeah, thanks, Chief. You timed it nicely. Well, you figured it. We were around waiting when Schneider came in. But I, I do not understand, Ken. How did you know he was coming here? Hmm? Oh, that was easy. I just told Pagon not to give him this address. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thurston. I guess the Chief and me cleaned up this mess for you, all right? Ken... You know, I killed Dr. Eckhart. Yeah, I know. Will I have to? Sorry. Sorry, Eva. Maybe it was justified, maybe not. That's something else the courts will have to decide. Yes. Yes. Well, Ken, I guess that winds it. Yeah. You know, Chief, none of this would have happened if Schneider had followed the advice of the man those candlesticks were made for. George Washington knew that silver and gold weren't the only coin... And he wrote it in his copybook when he was a boy. He said, Labor to keep alive in your breast that little spark of celestial fire, conscience. That's something for all of us to remember. All of us.
Frigid Air Star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. May I remind you again that America needs scrap metal in order to produce steel. Steel to make things you want and have been waiting for. Steel to keep prosperity and employment at a high level. So this week, collect scrap metal around your home and turn it into your community scrap drive or to your local scrap dealer. Next week, with the dubious help of Pagon Zellschmidt, Mr. Axe tackles an international counterfeiter to whom murder is only a sideline. Pagon, of course, will be played as usual by Leon Belasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Air's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So, till next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS. The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Shouldering upward into the clouds, looking out over the plains of four countries of Europe, are the great tumbled ranges of the Alps. Birthplace of the wind, a Roman poet once called them, those high mountain valleys of Switzerland. And so they are even today, birthplace of the wind. But when the man called X is concerned, they can also be the birthplace of death, which is exactly what two men are talking about in a hotel room in Paris. No, sir, Ken, the whole thing's a frame-up, and it's too dangerous. You ought to know that. Maybe so, Chief. What else have we got to work on? Yeah, millions of dollars in counterfeit United States bills pouring into France and Italy, and after ten days over here, we haven't been able to turn up a lead. This may be the lead. Chief, I know von Ormstein. I know his work. He made the plates these bills are being printed from. There's no question about it. Well, that still doesn't mean you've got to accept his invitation to Switzerland and get yourself killed. No, it's just that I think he's conceited enough to believe he can get me up there and convince me he's ready going straight. Well, you know he might be at that. The Swiss authorities didn't find a thing when they raided him. He never has any visitors and never goes anywhere himself. Ken, maybe he has retired. You want to bet? Well, he seems to be a pillar of the community up there. Even a check on his outgoing mail hasn't turned up anything. Outgoing, eh? If he is the brain behind this counterfeiting, then how's he doing it? That's exactly what I'm going to Borlach in Switzerland to find out. I don't know. If there were any other way, I... Say... I can't figure what the Sam Hill happened to Zellschmidt. Oh, he may turn up yet. Yeah, but you sent him over here two weeks ago to contact some of his crooked pals. He's apparently dropped out of sight. Yeah. Well, I've got to get on out to the airport. Then you're still going to see von Ormstein. It's our best bet. Well, it's our only bet. Chief, I'll call you from Switzerland. I'd like to pick up my ticket, please. Reservation on the next flight to Geneva. The name's Ken Thurston. Oh, oui, Monsieur Thurston. The plane to Switzerland. I'll look for it right Wait a second. Away. Monsieur? I'll be right back. But, Monsieur, I do not understand. 
Well, pay gone. Uh, Mr. Rex. How do you like Paris by this time? Mr. Thurston, I was just going to call you or, or wire you or something. Only right now I can't... Pagan? What's that package you're trying to hide behind you? Mr. Rex, I'm innocent. No matter what anybody says, I'm innocent. How should I know it's counterfeit money in this little package? I'll bite. How do you know? Well, I... I uh, Mr. Thurston, you've got to believe me. I don't know no, nothing from nothing. Where'd you get the package? From a guy named Smith at the little French hotel by the Swiss border. And right now I gotta go and deliver it to her. The only place you're going is Switzerland with me. You can't be trusted alone. But I gotta deliver this first. My dear friend Pierre Cornet is gonna be awful mad if I don't. Cornet? Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know him, Mr. X? Pagan? Cornet is the only one of the gang we've been able to track down in ten days. Oh, then he's been arrested. Uh, you got him? No. Somebody else got him. We found him in his room last night. Stabbed to death. Mr. Thurston. How soon can we get to Switzerland? And this again, gentlemen, is my study, which, of course, you've already seen. Yeah. Nice little place you've got here, Mr. Van Ormstein. My thanks, Mr. Zellschmidt. This completes the tour, then, is that it? In a manner of speaking, yes, Mr. Thurston. Now, please consider yourself at liberty, however, to look through any part of the grounds or through the chalet itself at any time you wish. Thank you, Mr. Van Ormstein. I only wish to convince you that I am no more than I seem, a man who has now retired from what may have been at times a somewhat evil life. I see. Yeah. By the way, I've been noticing your radio over there, quite a... Powerful transmitter, isn't it? Oh, fairly so. Uh, as you know, I've always been interested in amateur radio, though I seldom find time to use it anymore. I'm glad to hear that. A man could open it up once in a while and send a quick message in code without much chance being found out, hmm? Yes, yes, I suppose one could. Hmm. Just look at that view, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Mountains all over the place. Waterfall. <laughs> Boy, what a spot for a vacation. How did you happen to pick Switzerland, Mr. Von Ornstein, when, uh... You decided to retire? Well, it's a beautiful place, and uh, out of the way. Uh, my sister has owned this estate for many years, you know. Your sister? Uh, I'd like to meet her. Certainly. I'll go find her now, if you'll excuse me. I'll only be a moment. Pagan, get over there by the door. Listen for anybody coming. Okay, Mr. X. What are you going to do? Take a look at this telephone. Von Armstein was listening on it. First time he came in here. When he saw me, he hung up without saying a word. I'll be screwy about that, Mm-hmm. Line goes under the edge of the desk here. You found something, baby? Yeah. The way switch. Let's see what it does. And probable light snowfall to be expected in the Jungfrau sector after 9 p.m. tonight. Mm-hmm. Present wind velocities over this station are as follows. At 1,500 meters, none. At 2,000 meters, 8 to 12 kilometers per hour. Direction variable to all points. Predict falling velocities of wind oh. at all... You are Miss von Olmstein, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am Nashka. Mr. von Olmstein is my brother. What are you doing here? We're visiting your brother. Oh, you shouldn't. You should go away now. That would be the best thing. Yes, really, it would. What? Oh, uh... Come now, Miss Nashka. Go away and miss all the lovely things to see around here. Oh, yes. Yes, they are lovely, aren't they? Have you seen them all? The, the covered bridge and the rock garden and the weather station? But the weather station? Where's that? Up there on top of the ridge, Mr. Thurston. Mr. von Olmstein. Any reason why you should be particularly interested in it? Oh, I'm interested in meteorology, that's all. Any reason why I shouldn't be? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Anashka, I've been looking for you. Uh, Mr. Thurston's a kind of a policeman, you know. Uh, you mustn't tell him any of our guilty secrets. Oh, I've only been talking about the, the beautiful scenery here. Yes, and, and our waterfall, Mr. Thurston. I call it... The Rhine Maiden. You must forgive her imagination, Mr. Thurston. Its real name is the Zorchialen. But I like Rhine Maiden so much better. It's easier to pronounce, too. Mr. Von Olmstein, how does one go about getting up to the weather station? Well, there's a trail leading out of the valley here. Though I hardly think you would find it interesting. Oh, I don't know. I can't think of any better place to find out which way the wind's blowing. Wind that 
you hear blowing around the building is nothing more than a surface gradient, Mr. Thurston. 300 meters over our heads, the air is standing in a very dead calm. I happen to be the... What is the matter? Hmm? One other thing, I'm listening. Only I'm still surprised at finding a girl up here, Miss Rayner, running this station all alone. Oh, yes, but I love it. It is the most beautiful view in the world out across those peaks. I can't see half of Switzerland from here. Ha! Makes me dizzy just to look down. Yes. Would you like to see some of the wind maps? Yeah, very much. Here we are. This happens to be one of the very few spots in the world where wind velocity and direction is entirely predictable. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, yes, and quite dependable, too. You see this one here. It is a wind that blew steadily for three days earlier in the week, straight into eastern France. I see. Miss Rayner, what about reports? You phone them in somewhere? Oh, yes, yes, to Geneva four times a day. Uh Any chance the phone line could be tapped? But uh, I, I do not understand, Mr. Thurston... Who would wish to do anything like that? Miss Rayner, aren't you forecasting a dead calm overhead for the next 48 hours? Yes, but... Good. Now, listen. I want you to contact the authorities in Geneva and give them my name. What? Ask for their permission to cooperate with certain instructions that I'll give you later. You got it? Yes, yes, but I fail to see what... Never mind, you will. Come on, Pagan. Running up mountains. Running down mountains. I wish I knew what was going on around here, Mr. Thurston. Getting an appetite for dinner, Pig, huh? Yeah. Should be ready pretty soon. I'm afraid dinner will be delayed, gentlemen. Mr. Look, he's got a gun. Yes. Yes, I've been waiting for you. Step inside. Well, Mr. Von Armstein, things seem to be moving out into the open. I'll take your gun, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Very clever of you to find my little arrangement with a telephone, but you should have remembered I might be using it when you had Miss Rayner call Geneva. Yeah, maybe I should. Well, the next move seems to be up to you. I've made it already. We are waiting now for the arrival of the police. The police? Where do they fit in? As a respected member of the community, I felt it my duty to call them. You see, Mr. Thurston, I happened to look into my sister Nashka's room. Found it ransacked. Blood on the carpet. I'm charging you with murder. And now we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. When Ken accepted von Ornstein's invitation to Switzerland, he was reasonably certain of the man's guilt in flooding France and Italy with counterfeit U.S. bills. The only question being how the scheme was worked. He was certain, too, that von Ornstein was dangerous. And now the duel has come out into the open, and a criminal charge has been filed against Ken. The charge of murder. This way, monsieur. I have the police conveyance waiting there at the edge of the driveway. You are pleased to walk ahead of me. Okay, Inspector. Right now, you're the man with the brass hat. Mr. Thurston, this little gendarme is going to throw us in the hoosegow. Hey, what's the big idea? We didn't kill anybody, did we? Wait a minute. Huh? That waterfall. I think my own fine sister was trying to tell me something about that waterfall. So help me, that's got to be it. What are you talking about, Mr. Thurston? I don't get it. Here we are, monsieur. We're pleased to stand there until I unlock the conveyance. Look at it. Nothing but a dog catcher's truck. Pago. Pago. Yeah? Do you want to make a quick hundred bucks? In real money? Yeah, now listen. Tell this cop you want to confess to the murder. I'll straighten it out later. Well, I don't know if I... Pago, uh... I've got to get up to that weather station and then to the waterfall. I'll go ahead. Well, it's it's only for the money, you understand. You're pleased to enter, monsieur. Mr. Inspector? Sir, I want to confess. Huh? I done it all by myself. Monsieur... You are the murderer? Sure. Tell you all about it down in the headquarters. Now, Mr. Thurston didn't have nothing to do with it. See? I'm climbing in with my own free will. Lock the door and take me. Well, congratulations, Inspector. A confessed murderer. This will mean promotion for you. Uh, does Monsieur really think so? Oh, sure. Aha. Uh-huh. Stand back. I must take this killer to justice immediately. Hey, don't forget to fix it up, Mr. Thurston. Hey, what did they do to murder in this country, anyhow? I'm not sure, Pagan, but I think it involves a firing squad. What? Oh, no! Let me out of here! Mr. Gates! And if I understand... 
understand you correctly, Mr. Thurston. You wish me to send this false weather report over the telephone in place of the real one. Is that it? That's right, Miss Weiner. The people in Geneva said to follow my instructions, didn't they? But this report is not true. It is not true. It predicts a 40-kilometer wind blowing into northern Italy for the next 48 hours. Actually, there will be a dead calm during that time. I know, but there's a good reason for it. Now, excuse me. I've got a date with the waterfall. Hagar, I thought you were in jail. <laughs> I only agreed to confess I wasn't going to get myself shot. Well, how'd you get away? Ah, with my special Zelschmidt skeleton key. The lock on that birdcage was a cinch. Hey, where are we going now, Mr. Thurston? Von Ornstein's sister was really trying to tip me off. We are going through this waterfall. Huh? Through that? She kept calling it the Rhine Maiden. And the Rhine Maidens are best known as guardians of gold. They kept it underwater. So, wait till I get this flashlight under my raincoat. Mr. Rex, I, I hope you know you, what you're doing. Walking through a waterfall. Well, we'll soon find out. Take a deep breath now. All right. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh, where are we in now, anyhow? I don't know. Let's try the flashlight. There. Mr. Thurston, look. It's a cave. A cave in the back of the falls. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Complete with the turbine generator op operated by the water pagan. Yeah. The printing press. And there, there's where he's been making that no good money. Yeah. I don't see any, though. No. Looks like the floor's been dug up here. Hey, uh, what are all these gadgets piled up over here? Weather balloons. Balloons? Yeah. Special kind with an automatic timer. Controls the height and the time in the air. And look here. A small built-in radio transmitter to send out a continuous signal. Quite a scheme. Hey, uh, how about letting me in on the lowdown, Mr. X? How does he do it? It's not too hard to figure out now. By tapping the phone line from the weather station, von Ormstein gets a continuous report of air movements across the ridge here. No, no kidding. Whenever a favorable wind was forecast, he took some counterfeit money onto a balloon, set the control for the right time and altitude, and then release it. Probably after dark. Ah, oh, but... But how could an agent over in France or, or, or in Italy even find the balloon when it did come down? That's where the automatic radio on it came in. The agent could use a portable receiver and find the balloon without much trouble. I doubt if he lost many shipments. Not any, as a matter of fact, Mr. Thurston. Von Olsen? Oh, me. Get your hands up, gentlemen. Huh? Very clever, Mr. Thurston. Though you really should have looked around the cave before you became careless. One thing bothers me, Von Olsen. What happened to the plates you've been printing from? I sent them out by balloon an hour ago, right after I heard Miss Rayner's last weather report. You see, they might have provided, shall we say, evidence. I see. Well, where do we go from here? You and your friend aren't going anywhere. This cave is the end of the road. Uh-huh. What's the plan? I'm going outside, Thurston, and drop the gates of the little dam you may have noticed out there. Fine, go on. It diverts a part of the water to flood this cave and seal off the entrance. Mr. Thurston! He's going to drown us like rats. Yes. Gentlemen, I bid you adieu. Oh, oh me. Come on, Mr. Rex. We've got we to get out of here. Pagan, he'd shoot you before you got clear of the waterfall. So we better... Listen. Yeah. Move back. Here it comes. But we've got to do something. All we can do is run or be drowned. So come on, let's run. <laughs> I can understand your concern, but I've already told you that Ken Thurston and Mr. Zellschmidt haven't been heard from since they left to go hiking two days ago. Yeah, von Ormstein. Now, suppose you listen to me. I warned Ken about that invitation of yours before he left here. If you don't have him on this phone in 30 minutes, I'm coming up there and tear that joint apart. I can understand how you must feel, sir. As a matter of fact, I was beginning to worry a little myself. I'm planning to send out a search party. Oh, search party? It's no job for a search party. You know what's happened to him. I'm sorry, sir, but I really don't know what to say to you. I After all, you let me talk to him. Thurston. Huh? What did you say? <laughs> you thought you bumped us off, didn't you? <laughs> Pigeon. I'll take that phone for enormous time. Thanks. Keep your hands up. Go on, move back. Right. Hello, Chief. Ken, what the Sam Hill's going on up there? Never mind. Everything's okay now. I'll call you later. Yeah, but why didn't you... 
How did you get out? Oh, the cave opens on the surface a couple of miles back of the ridge. I thought it might when I noticed the current of air blowing through. All right. So you've broken up my scheme. But I got the plates sent off, and without them, you have no case against me. I have the plates. You're bluffing. They should have been picked up by my agent in Italy nearly two days ago. Yeah, and they might have been. If you hadn't sent them up in a dead calm. What? Oh, the balloon went up all right and came down over here on the ridge about two miles away. Pagel and I picked it up after we got out of the cave this morning. But the weather report. You can't always trust the weather report, especially when it's been tampered with. You still won't convict me. You can't prove I ever used the plates. Somehow I don't think the court's going to worry too much about counterfeiting. They'll be trying you for murder. My sister? <laughs> you can't file a murder charge without a body, Thurston. I got a pretty good idea that when we drain that cave and dig up the floor, we'll have a body for Nornstein. You want to bet? Are you? You're not going to take me even if I go back here. Do. Ha ha! Right on the button, Mister X. Colder than a mountain climber's nose. Ha! Ah. Well, well, that takes care of that. Yeah, Pagan, that takes care of that. Until the next time. And there'll be a next time. Other men like this one. Men who can live right in the shadow of eternity. Look up every day of their lives at that clean white snow on the peaks. And still wallow in greed and prejudice. Hate. What's the matter with us anyway? Aren't we ever going to grow up? <laughs> Air star Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And I'd like you to know that Carter tonight was played by Kathy Lewis. Ladies and gentlemen, America's production depends on steel. Jobs depend on it. And steel depends on scrap metal. Help increase the production of the things you need. Help to keep employment high. Collect scrap iron and steel around home. Turn it into your local drive or call your local scrap dealer. Right away, huh? Now, next week, we're doing a story called Passport to Danger. I think it'll really keep you on the edge of your seats. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as pig on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Air's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. With two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. There was no warning, no presentiment of impending danger. The counterfeiting case was closed and Ken was packing in his hotel room in Bern, Switzerland, when the telephone started to ring. Hello. Hello. Hello, Ken. That's right, who's there? Ken, this is Paul Desjardins. Paul? Paul! Must be three years since I've seen you. 
But I thought you were living in Luxembourg. I was, Ken, but I ran into Pagan Zelschmi the other day, and he told me where you were. So I've come to Switzerland to talk with you. Pagan? In Luxembourg? What the... Oh, well, skip it. What's up, Paul? Ken, do the names Overbeck, Kopik, Nashtol mean anything to you? Are you kidding? They're some of the worst war criminals, international crooks still at large. What about them? Suppose I tell you that all of them and more will soon be in the United States, free to come and go as they please. You sure about this, Paul? Positive, mon ami. You must act within 24 hours or you will never be able to stop them. Where are you now? At a small cafe called Le Coq d'Or. I called this... Then stay there. I'll be with you in 24 minutes. Bonsoir, monsieur. Welcome to the Coq d'Or. Merci. I'm looking for Monsieur de Jerry. Ah, mais oui, monsieur. He is in the private dining room beyond. Through that door. Yes. Well. I hope I can take that as a compliment, Mr. Thurston. Yes, yes, you certainly can, Miss... Um... Sally Dennis. Oh. I'm a friend of Paul de Jerry's, too. He'll be here later, but he asked me to talk over this uh, business with you meanwhile. Yes, I'd rather not hear. Oh? Why not? I'm allergic to dead bodies. What? Or do you think that foot sticking out of those draperies looks alive? What? Oh. Yeah. Uh, He's dead? He's dead, all right. Paul. How about talking, Sally? And fast? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, Those things have broken up more beautiful friendships. A luger, isn't it? Yes. And if you don't mind, I'll be leaving. What happened to that lovely conversation we almost had? Suppose we have it some other time when there's no dead body cluttering the landscape. Unless, of course, the body happens to be yours. Mr. X. I see. And uh, what did you do after she left, Ken? Nothing much, Chief. Checked the body, got the police, and put in this call to you in New York. What do you think of it? Well, it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't it? Chief. Chief? If there's one spot in this shaky world that looks mighty good to people right now, all kinds of people, it's the United States. Oh, yes, of course, Ken. We all know the reasons for that. Freedom to come and go as they please, plenty of food, money. Right. And if there's anybody we don't want in the United States, it's troublemakers like Overbeck, Copy Gang Company. That's why I'm going to Luxembourg. Luxembourg? Paul worked in the government printing office there, where the passport and identification papers are made. And when I searched the body, I found all of Paul's papers. Huh. So what? So this. The dead man in the cafe was not Paul de Jerry. And welcome back to Luxembourg. Thanks. Any chance of my old room being available? Oh, for you, Monsieur Thurston. Everything in this hotel is available. Good. I'll be back to take up on that as soon as I look up an old friend of mine. Don't bother looking. Here I am, Jimmy, on the spot. Hey, gone. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I figured you'd show up after I told Paul the Jerry where to find you, huh? <laughs> and now that you have arrived... What's your record this time? You are now looking at Luxembourg representative of International and Worldwide Travelers Helper and Ticket Selling Agency. In other A words... Travel Bureau. Exactly. Mr. Thurston, do you feel run down, depressed, and unhappy? Are you overworked and tired? Don't answer. What you need is a vacation. <laughs> and we have some very special tourist deals. All expenses paid. Uh, how many tickets do you want? Pay on if you can arrange any... My, in my transportation from Luxembourg into the United States without passport or identification... I'll buy every ticket you got. See you around. Oh, sure, Mr. Thurston. I'll go to work and write and, um, hmm? Without passports? But, but... That's all right, Bill hmm? Schmidt. It can be done. Oh, that's different, I hear. Who are you? Sally Dennis. I was in that phone booth. I overheard your conversation. I'm interested in that trip, too. You are? Listen. When either you or Mr. Thurston finds out how to make it, I want you to let me know. 
If you get what I mean. Uh, could, uh, could, could, could that be money you're holding? Just a little advance on those tickets to the United States. <laughs> you see, I think that if the three of us took that trip together, it might be very cozy. Don't you? Oui, monsieur? Oh, sorry. I thought Walter Jerry lived here. Well, he does, monsieur, but he's not in just now. I am Antoinette de Langer, his fiancée. Could I help you? I think you can, mademoiselle. My name's Ken Thurston. Monsieur I'm... Thurston. Oh, come in, please. Please come in. Thanks. So you are Ken Thurston. My darling Paul has spoken of you many times. I had hoped someday to meet you, but... But not at such a time as this. What, uh... What's the trouble? Something has happened to Paul. I know it. You know it, too. That is why you are here today. Is that not so? Yeah, that's about it, Antoinette. What do you know about it? Very little, monsieur. Only that he has been missing for three days. There's been no word from him? Nothing, monsieur. And for some time I have suspected he was involved in something dangerous. I feel it somehow concerns his work at the government printing offices. Yeah. Did you ever talk about a man named Overbeck or Nastol or Kopig? The names are not familiar ones to me, monsieur. I don't even... Wait. Wait. It seems to me that Paul said something about... Yes. Yes, I am certain. Something might happen in the government offices this night, tonight. Let me check on that. No, oh, but, monsieur, that is impossible. The guards, the watchmen, you could not get in. Unless... What, Antoinette? Monsieur, the third window in the alleyway behind the building has a broken lock. The night watchman passes there at exactly 7.13 and does not return for eight minutes. How do you know about all this? It was while working in these offices that I met Paul. He used to get into the building that way while he was investigating this affair. All right, Antoinette. I'll let you know how I come out. Maybe I'll have good news for you. I do not expect it, monsieur, but I shall hope. Hello? This is Antoinette. Listen carefully. Ken Thurston will be at the third window in the alleyway behind the printing building at 7.13 tonight. That is correct. We. Oui. And I am certain you know exactly what to do. Hair over back. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Night cloaks the ancient city of Luxembourg. In the dark shadows of the alleyway behind the government printing building, Ken checks his watch. It's ten minutes past seven. In just three more minutes, he hopes to learn how some of Europe's worst criminals gain a legal entry into the United States. Then, as he waits... You? Oh, for you? Oh, Mr. Thurston. There you go. Yeah, well, you... Oh. Oh, here you are, Mr. Thurston. What? What are you doing here? Oh, I followed you from the hotel. I got it figured out how we can get into the United States without passports or papers. No time for that now. But it's so simple. Starting from Saigon in French into China, you stow away aboard a freighter to Vladivostok. Then from then, you take a sampan to Formosa, where some Chinese junks are waiting. Hey, gone. that's the worst drivel I've ever heard. But, Mr. Thurston... Oh, shut up. Oh. The watchman should have made his rounds by now. Let's check this window. Huh? What window? Now... Antoinette was right. Yeah, she was. Stand right where you are, monsieur. The watchman. Relax, Pagan. It's all right, Paul. It's Ken Thurston. Ken Thurston? Ken, mon ami. How happy I am to see you. Paul, what are you doing here? The same thing as you are, mon ami. I came here to invest... Look out! That car! Get down, both of you. Get down! (laughs) I'm dead. I'm dead. They shot me in the alley. They didn't touch you, you idiot. Paul. Paul, are you hurt? I... I am all right, Ken. I'm... Mr. X, look. He's been hit. Yeah, yeah. Ken, listen to me. Identification papers. 
Passport, visas. Stolen from the government. Huh? Overback and his men are using them to get into the United States. They can't get in on those alone, Paul. The quotas will stop that. How are they working it? One by one, they have left Luxembourg. Over back list tonight. Yeah? First stop, Lisbon. Lisbon? Where did they go from there? I I don't know. Didn't learn. Wanted to tell you in Switzerland. Uh-huh. But over back's man found me. Cafe. I killed him. So that's how it was. Then you put your papers on him to make Overbeck think you were dead. Then I was afraid to stay. I came back here to Luxembourg, hoping you would follow. I did it. Paul, where did you get this information? Who's behind all this? Is Antoinette in on it? Antoinette? My fiancé? Oh, sorry, Paul. What about Sally Dennis? Yes. Sally is... Sally is... Uh... Mr. X. Yes. He'll never learn what happened to those dirty crooks who killed him. There you go. I'm going to find out for him. Starting right now, in Lisbon. Hello, Miss Dennis? Yes? This is Pagan Zelschmidt calling. I got news for you. Oh? Has Count Thirst to learn how to get into the United States without a passport? We'll be leaving any minute. First stop, Lisbon. Lisbon? Are you sure? For my usual slight consideration, Miss Dennis, <laughs> I could be practically positive. <laughs> Before you board the plane. Antoinette, what are you doing here? I have just come from the government building, monsieur. I, I learned what happened there. Oh. Now I must take Paul's place. You will let me go with you, monsieur. Let me help you find those men. Please, monsieur. All right, Antoinette, climb aboard. Here is the official report, Senor Thurston. Yes, Miss Baker. Uh, during the past 60 days, 21 persons came here to Lisbon from Luxembourg. Nineteen of them, including one this very day, had passage booked through to Winnipeg, Canada. Winnipeg? See. Si. Oh, that ties in. The next lap on the trip. I beg your pardon, senor. Look, I want passage for three on the next plane to Canada. have moved so fast. We've come so far, and you have still told me nothing. Why have we come to this hotel in Winnipeg? It's as good as any, Antoinette. We might as well be comfortable before we close in on them. But close in on whom, Ken? Where and how? I suppose you go to your room and re- rest for a while. I'll give you all the answers later. Oh, but Ken, I... oh, Very well. I know I can trust you, as Paul did. And I am tired. I will see you later, Ken. Maybe she trusts you, but I don't. Luxembourg to Lisbon to Winnipeg, and not one ticket did you buy from me. You still haven't shown me how to get into the United States without papers, Pagan. But I'll give you one more chance. If Antoinette leaves the hotel, I want you to follow her. Mm-hmm. Let me know where she goes. Okay. Where will I find you? I'll be up in my room talking to the chief long distance, or I'll be giving the third degree to a beautiful young lady over a quiet drink. What beautiful young lady? The one just checking in at the desk. Sally Dennis. You know, Sally, I'm almost beginning to believe that yarn of yours. It's the truth, Ken, so help me. Sally Dennis, syndicate columnist. I'm not too bad a one if I say so myself. Yeah. How'd you latch on to this particular yarn? I recognized Overbeck in Luxembourg, and I smelled a hot mm-hmm. story. So I tagged after him for a while. That's when I learned that Paul de Jerry was telling him, too. What about that uh, cafe scene you played so well in Switzerland? Well, I lost Overbeck one fine day, and I decided to follow Paul. I'd overheard his phone call to you, and I was waiting for him when you came in. That corpse you found made it look pretty bad for me, so... Hmm. And you've been on the trail ever since. That's right. Are you sorry? I don't know yet. Well, why make a tough of yourself, Ken? I'll cooperate. Believe me, Mr. Thurston, it's not worth it. Hey, go. Why I ever left my little travel agency to travel with you, I don't know. Ha! What a life. You know what that Antoinette cookie did? Sure. 
She left the hotel. That's right. And what for? <laughs> to go to a no-good deserted farm 20 miles outside of town, with nothing in the place but the icicles growing in the fields. That's all I wanted to know, Pigon. Thanks. Ken, would you mind explaining what you two are talking sure, about? Sure, Sally. This traveler's little helper is going to show us how aliens are smuggled into the United States. <laughs> There's the farm now, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, I see it. I thought you said those fields were empty. That air transport sitting out there looks pretty substantial to me. Think it was hanging in the barn, Ken? Must have been. Hey, look. Look, Mr. Rex. It's taken off. Yes. With Overbeck and 18 of his pals aboard. There she goes, Mr. Rex. Right over our heads. So that's how it's done. They get into Canada on the fake papers, and that plane drops them off in the States. That's right, Sally. They're off in the last lap. Well, let's see what Antoinette can tell us. Hey. Hey, look. Here she comes now from the barn. Oh, Ken. Ken, we were too late. They have gotten away. I saw that. I tried to stop them. Believe me, I tried, but it was no use. Now they are gone, flying into the United States. And the poor lad died for nothing. You can drop the act, Antoinette. What are you saying? You stole the passports and identification papers while you were working for the government in Luxembourg. Oh. The tip-off came when that car ambushed me in the alley. You were the only one who knew I was going there. Ken, Ken, you can't believe that. Why, why, you even brought me here from Luxembourg yourself. Sure. It was the easiest way of keeping an eye on you until I could tie all this together. Oh, you are wrong, Ken. Paul would tell you that if he were still alive. Paul would now, tell listen, you... Now, listen, Antoinette. You've used him to cover you for the last time. When he died, he was lying to defend you. The only person in the world... He'd lie for. And he died because you couldn't see past those dollar signs in front of your eyes. How much did you make out of murder? Well, the plane is gone. You have no proof, so I do not mind telling you. Ten thousand dollars apiece. Not bad for a job well done. Well done. Look up there in the sky, Antoinette. Those Canadian Border Patrol planes. Plenty more around, too. And twice as many on the American side of the border. Patrol planes? What are they doing here? Hey, that phone call you made to the chief, That's eh? right, Pagon. <laughs> that transport doesn't dare put down anywhere. Oh. And when Overbeck and the others start figuring how you double-crossed them, Antoinette, well, we'll have all the proof we need. Well, you will never live to see it. Let's you will... have that gun. No, no, I will kill you first. I will... Oh. Uh, may as well relax, Antoinette. Oh, so. Well... Well, that's that. Yes, it is all over, isn't it, Ken? Yes, and you've got your story, Sally. But you know, it's not people trying to sneak across international borders who make the biggest story today. It's the people like Antoinette and Overbeck who don't know any borders, who don't care how many lines they cross or how many lives it costs, so long as it brings profit to them. When we get rid of them, we'll be a lot nearer to peace in this world. Our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. May I remind you again that America needs scrap metal in order to produce steel. Steel to make things you want and have been waiting for. To keep prosperity and employment at a high level. So this week, collect scrap metal around your home and turn it into your community scrap drive or to your local scrap dealer. Now, next week, our story has a kind of funny title. It's called The Pickled Chemist. But it's about a man who's not only deadly serious, but... Uh, very deadly. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt, so join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station... 
This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Well, you might as well sit down and take it easy, Ken. Unless the Bureau's called in on it, our hands are tied. Not a thing we can do. Yeah, I know, Chief. Two million dollars worth of radium. And somewhere between here and Manila, the stuff's going to be hijacked. I'm sure enough to bet on it. Uh, what time's the plane scheduled to leave, Ken? Oh, around 5.30 this afternoon. It's a charter line, so they don't have any set schedule. And you uh, say there'll be other passengers besides this uh, Don Louis Roof? Sure, three or four already. The flight's wide open for anybody who wants to buy a ticket. They're not even using a private plane. Oh, you'd think anybody with enough ability to run the radium supply agency would have the intelligence to realize what a chance he's taking. Dr. Mosley, it's not his intelligence, Chief. It's his attitude. He feels we're unduly alarmed. Oh. Of course, his responsibility is finished as soon as he turns the stuff over to Don Louis here in New York. And Don Louis doesn't want any protection either, eh? Considers it an insult to suggest it. Ugh. I suppose you told Mosley about Chief, the... Chief, uh... I used every argument I could think of. I told him that in spite of his secrecy, the whole underworld knows about the shipment. That Mr. Coco, probably the smartest international crook in the world, is supposed to be here in New York right now. And for one reason, to swipe that radium. Mr. Coco. I told it. Oh, well, what's the use? Uh, I know how you feel, Ken, but unless they call us in, it's simply not our job. If this thing were a private deal, I'd say, all right, let them pay for their cockiness. But it isn't. This shipment's being donated to the clinic by public subscription. Money kicked in by hundreds of citizens here as well as in the islands. They wanted to go where it'll do some good. And I hate to see people like that let down. Well, I can't see how we can... Pardon me. Uh, Hello? Oh, oh, put him on. Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Why, of course, we'd be glad to. Right, right, Ken Thurston. We'll take over immediately. Goodbye. What's up, Chief? That was Don Louis Roof, the man from the Commonwealth Clinic. Uh-huh. Somebody tried to tap his phone line at the hotel. Now he's plenty worried. Wait, you mean... That's right, Ken. He's yelling for help. Good. That's all we need, Chief. We're in it. Mr. Pagan Zellschmidt, Esquire. Who's talking, please? Is this the Zellschmidt who is a friend of Ken Thurston, the man called X? Huh? I mean, most likely you have the wrong number. I, I never even heard of anybody like Zellschmidt. that. Hmm? If you're the right guy, I'm ready to send you $100 by messenger. So, I'm very sorry, I... Uh, Zellschmidt, huh? I want you to take a message to Mr. X. Tell him if he wants to go on living, he'd better keep his nose out of this radium deal. Otherwise, my agents would be forced to eliminate him. Got it? Right. I shall go find him immediately. As soon as the money gets here, of course. You'll go now. Get the money later. Apparently, you don't realize who you're talking to. As a matter of fact, I don't think I've had the pleasure, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh... I'm sometimes known as Mr. Coco. <laughs> But this fellow is a very dangerous character, Mr. Thurston. If we get to this plane, maybe he's going to bump you off. Then what? In that case, Pagan, you'll have to carry on by yourself. Well, I would be only too glad... Huh? I'm not going. As a matter of fact, I just this minute remembered an appointment, though, or something. It's probably that hundred bucks. You'll be in seat five, Pagan. I've already bought your ticket. 
But, but... Uh... Fagon, you wouldn't let a close friend go into danger by himself now, would you? No, wouldn't I? Uh, Mr. Thurston, I only came to warn you. This Mr. Coco is not only a criminal crook, but he's also a very tough cookie. And he means business. Then if he gets us, we'll go together. Friends to the last. Oh, do, 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 don't say so. Uh, I beg your pardon, gentlemen. Huh? Uh, since we seem to be fellow passengers, permit me to introduce myself. I am the Baron Irving von Wolf. Uh, at your service. Hi, Baron. My name's Ken Thurston. This is Mr. Zellschmidt. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, I wonder if either of you know the reason for this delay. We should have departed three minutes ago. I believe they're waiting for another passenger, Senior Roof from Manila. Uh, highly inconsiderate of him. We should have been here on time. You seem to be in a pretty big hurry to get to San Francisco. Are you going on business? Oh, not at all. I do not engage in business, Mr. Thurston. I find the income from my baronial estate quite adequate. Mm, you're lucky. Oh, I just say. Ah, we're being honored. Here comes the princess. Princess, friend of yours? Oh, I met her a few minutes ago and found her most charming. Yeah, you can tell that from here. Uh, pardon me, Baron Wolf. Uh, do you know why we are being held up? Oh, there's another passenger, so Mr. Thurston tells me. Uh, uh, Princess uh, Katushka, allow me to present Mr. Ken Thurston and uh, uh, Mr. Zellschmidt. <laughs> I am honored. You going on this plane, too? I am, at any rate. Mr. Zellschmidt isn't quite sure yet. <laughs> Never any question. Oh, Princess. Uh... Along with Senor Roof, then we seem to be the passenger list. Is that right? Oh, there's one man already on board. I'm told his name is Dave. He's been asleep in his seat ever since he got there. <laughs> he snores most dreadfully. Well, I think I'll go on board. I will come with you, if I may. I hope we see a lot more of each other, Mr. Thurston, uh, during the trip. Oh, yes, yes, I'm sure of it. Uh, then, for the present, au revoir. Uh, we'll see you on board, gentlemen. Mr. Thurston, I'm like a new man. Recapitulated, huh? What a luscious little chipmunk. Chipmunk, eh? It could be. At any rate, she's probably not the Princess Katushka. You mean she's only pretending to... Hey, what's all this? Probably our prize package, complete with police escort. Yep, here comes Don Louis now. Pagan, take a good look at that briefcase. It's worth a couple of million bucks. Good evening, Mr. Thurston. Sorry to be late, but we were delayed by traffic. You know Dr. Mosley, of course. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. How are you, Doctor? No trouble so far, then? Not a bit, Mr. Thurston. In fact, I'm inclined to believe the incident at Senior Ruff's hotel was pure coincidence. It had nothing at all to do with the radium shipment. Well, that's possible. Shall we go aboard, Senior Ruff? Uh, I uh, wish you the best of luck, Don Louis. It's been a pleasure to deal with you, sir. So you're not going with us, Dr. Mosley. We have some pretty unusual people on board. I doubt there'll be a dull moment in the whole trip. Mr. Thurston, looks like we're going to land. Hey, what is this place, anyway? Kansas City, Pagan. Probably stopping for gas and a quick checkover. Uh, did you say Kansas City, Mr. Thurston? That's right, uh, Princess. Uh, uh, yes, um, quite a cattle industry here, I understand. You interested in cattle, Baron? Mm, only in a general way, Mr. Thurston. I have a large number on my stage, you know. Mm -hmm. Which reminds me, uh, maybe I could get a hamburger here someplace if I had some money, of course. No question about it, Pagan. If you had some money, of course. Oh, well, doesn't matter. After all, I did have something to eat yesterday. A small crust of dry bread, as I remember. Or was the day, day before yesterday? All right, here. Buy yourself a sack full of hamburgers. And while you're at it, send this wire to the chief. Mr. Thurston, I'm stricken with gratitude. I shall do it immediately. Well, wait till we land. Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, oh. oh, Mr. Thurston. What is this? We're landing? That's right, Don Lewis. Short stop at Kansas City. You had quite a sleep. Well, you may consider that an indication of my confidence in you, Mr. Thurston. I felt most secure. Thanks. That's more than I feel. Something's happened? Not a thing. That's what bothers me. Well, they seem to have arrived. Part of the trip's over, at any rate. I hope you're not too disappointed at the lack of trouble so far, Mr. Thurston. Not disappointed. Only surprised. This is Kansas City. We'll be here about an hour, so you'll have plenty of time to get out and walk around. What's the trouble, pilot? How come an hour? I'm only the co-pilot, mister. The home office radioed to us to wait here for another passenger. Coming in on the commercial liner from New York. Oh? Yeah, wait. Aren't you Pete Colon? Yeah. You read the newspapers, too, huh? Well, you did get quite a lot of publicity. Why not? When an heiress makes the kind of claim she did. Said I married her for her money, threatened her life, had homicidal tendencies and a criminal mind. 
Who wouldn't get publicity? Yeah, I guess you've got something there. Well, Don Dewey, would you like to get out, take a walk? Yes, yeah, an excellent idea. Uh, maybe somebody ought to wake up Mr. Davis. Might want a hamburger or something. It's amazing. Except for the little time at Cleveland, the man has slept through this entire trip. Oh, perhaps I'd better tell me we landed. Uh, Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. Don't Remarkable accomplishment, being able to sleep that soundly. Hey. Good heavens. What is it? Man isn't asleep. He's dead. <laughs> Look, Mr. Thurston, here comes your friend now. Apparently, he hasn't deserted after all. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagan, what the Sam Hill have you got in all those paper bags? Oh, hamburgers. Well, you only had five bucks. Must have taken most of that for the telegram. Oh, that? I sent it to collect. Uh, here, have one. No, thanks. Go ahead. I've got plenty of them. Twenty-five, in fact. I, I thought I might get hungry in the plane, you understand? I see. Mr. Thurston, do you think we'll be held here because of Mr. Davis' death? No, Don Lurie, we'll probably take off right away. Our new passenger was supposed to be on that liner that came in a few minutes ago. What do you think was the matter with him, Mr. Thurston? His heart, maybe? No, Pagan, I think he was poisoned. What? But, but you mean because of this? That's right, Don Lurie. Because of what's in that briefcase. Davis was the crook who used to run the Christmas gang. I recognized him in New York. But he'd never even glanced at it all during the trip. Hadn't got around to making his play yet, but somebody on board decided to cut down the competition. Poisoned him. Oh? What's this about someone being poisoned, Mr. Oh, Durden? Baron. I was telling Senior Roof that the late Mr. Davis was undoubtedly poisoned. But that's so silly. Who could have done it? Any number of people. Our co-pilot, Pete Colon, filled the water bottle at Davis's seat. I believe he had a drink with you, Baron, when we stopped in Cleveland. And I saw him eat some candy mints that you gave him, Princess Katushka. But there was no reason. Uh, none of us even knew the man. Of course not, Winston. Mr. Thurston, here comes somebody. Maybe the new passenger, huh? Yeah, I guess. Well, this is quite a surprise, Dr. Mosley. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Don Louis. To Mosley. I suppose this does seem a bit foolish, but I found your apprehension contagious and decided to come along as far as San Francisco. I caught the next... Oh... Well, hello there. I beg your pardon? Oh, sorry. You don't know these people, do you? Princess Katushka, Baron von Wolf, Dr. Mosley. But I... How do you do, Dr. Mosley? A pleasure, Princess Katushka. Well, I'd better get aboard. I've delayed you enough already. Perhaps we should all get aboard. An excellent suggestion, Don Louis. Unless you object to traveling with a poisoner. That's according to Mr. Thurston's theory, of course. Matter of fact, Princess Katushka, I've got more than one theory. Really? Such as? Well, one of them is that you may be the Prince of Katushka, and again, you may not. Oh, how interesting. And as far as Baron von Wolf's concerned, I seem to remember a celebrated jewel theft in London some years ago. The defendant used that name. <laughs> a remarkable coincidence, sir. However, we do seem to have a certain advantage over you, Mr. Thurston. How's that? Because I am quite sure that all of us are aware of your real identity... Mr. Coco. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X has watched the briefcase of radium like a hawk ever since the plane left New York. But so far, no direct attempt has been made to steal it. Right now, the plane is making a brief stop in Denver, Colorado. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, what happened to Senor Rupp? Nothing's happened to him, Pagon. He's sitting over there on that station bench, exactly 31 feet away. Why? Oh, Nothing. Except I always become very uncomfortable when I get close to a couple of million dollars. Uh, here's a telegram from the chief. How do you know who it's from? I'm very glad you mentioned that, Mr. X. You see, it's the humidity. The envelope came unstuck. I see, yeah. Keep, on, keep an eye on Don Louis for a second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Height about five feet six, age 37, dark complexion, black cur curly hair... Teeth, no visible fillings. Weighs some but Mr. Thurston, pounds. there is nobody on board like that. Yeah, so I've noticed. Look, somebody's talking to Don Louis. Yeah, Dr. Mosley. Hmm. 
Now he's picking up the briefcase and setting it down again. What is he trying to do anyhow? Hard to tell, Pig, huh? Attention, all passengers from Charter Plane to San Francisco, please come aboard. Come on, Pig, huh? Plane oh, maybe I should have stayed in New York. Only when I saw that princess, what's her name, uh, who... How could I know she was only a cold fish? Cold fish? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. Well, Dr. Mosley, you practicing weightlifting? Thurston? Oh, uh, I didn't hear you come up. I, I was just telling Don Louie here, this uh, briefcase must get uh, pretty heavy. All the uh, lead shielding in it, you know. Yeah, I suppose it does. Yeah, well, I was uh, just uh, going to carry it to the plane for Don Louie. Oh, I wouldn't think of letting you go to all that trouble, Dr. Mosley. Here. I'll be only too happy to carry it. Shall we go, gentlemen? Where do you think we're now, Mr. Thurston? I don't know exactly, Pagon. We're out of the Rockies. Somewhere over the desert, I guess. And the next stop, San Francisco. Ha! Not only does Mr. Coco doesn't show up himself, but he doesn't even have any agents like he said he did. Strictly one big bluff. I thought you'd all like to know we're running dead into a pretty bad storm. We'll bear off south and try landing at Rock Rim Emergency Field. Oh, uh, Mr. Colon. Yeah, Mr. Thurston. What's on your mind? I was wondering why we didn't wait this out of Denver instead of heading on into it. Would have if we'd known about it. This one came up unexpectedly. Uh, now, Mr. Colon. Yeah? I happened to see a copy of that storm warning the field dispatcher handed you in Denver. I'd hardly call this unexpected. You can't see anything in this dust. We'll get lost. We'd better stop. Oh, the building's over this way. Oh. If I know anything about the desert, there'll be a rain behind this wind. Oh, it's a very good thing I bought those hamburgers in Kansas City. <laughs> Fourteen left. Maybe I can make a little profit on it. Here, over this way. Here's the door to the field office. Ah, detestable climate, I must say. Nothing like it on your estate, Baron. Ah, there's shelter, at least. That's a relief. Hurry up, everybody inside. I want to keep the sand out. Oh, well. Isn't there anyone here? The place seems deserted. Yeah, it does. Hello, a note from the attendant here on the oh, desk. Yeah. In event of any plane being forced down here, entire facilities are at the disposal of the personnel. I intend to be gone three days, servicing flight beacons on the mountain range at the west. Yeah, yeah, there seem to be bunk rooms of some sort along the hall back here. Probably living quarters in the rear, they usually are. Uh oh, the phone's dead. Oh, there's a rather nice lounge. Well, whatever it is, it looks like it's ours for the night. We're stuck here until morning at least. Ah, eight people and two million bucks. This might turn out to be quite a night. Oh, would anybody like to buy a nice hamburger? Only 75 cents. What's the matter, Princess? Insomnia? Hmm? Oh, you startled me, Mr. Thurston. I didn't see anyone sitting there. You may as well make it Ken, since we've come this far together. Sit down. All right. Ken. Of course, that leaves me still wondering what to call you. You still think I'm an imposter, don't you? Aren't you? No more than you are. <laughs> Touche. I suppose our little friends are all tucked in safely. I guess so. Rather surprised at you letting Don Louis out of your sight. You followed him around like a shadow. A good reason for it. Well, of course, you know about that. I can guess. Ken, why do you dislike me so much? I don't. I've been avoiding you because I think you're dangerous. There's a big difference there. Dangerous, Ken? In what way? Well, the way you said that, for one thing. And the way you're looking right now. How am I looking? Let's say... Uh... Desirable. That covers a lot of ground. I don't go so much for just looking, Ken. No more do I. So, where do we go from here? San Francisco. Oh, that's for tomorrow. How about tonight? Tonight? That settles that question. And those were gunshots. That's right, baby. No, now you stay where you are. Mr. Thurston, that noise. Oh, it woke me up. What happened? I think it's a safe bet that somebody shot somebody. Yeah, well, uh, but we've got to do something. Where'd it come from and who was it? 
I believe I can answer that question, Dr. Mosley. Please stand for your arms, Mr. Colin. Don Louis. Well, Colin, that's quite an arm you've got on you. I don't think he's wounded seriously, Mr. Thurston. I'm something of an expert with a pistol. How did that happen, Don Louis? I woke up to find Mr. Colin going through my luggage. Since he had a knife, there was no other choice than to shoot him. Well, it's fortunate you woke up. Otherwise, he'd have had the briefcase. It's too bad Mr. Thurston was so engrossed out here in the lounge. Oh? I thought the shots woke you up. Well, at least you weren't where you should have been, with Don Louie. No. No more was the briefcase. Well, that's... That's... Where is it? Under those cushions there. You've been sitting under for the last five minutes. Oh? Since I was quite sleepy, Mr. Thurston was kind enough to take over my responsibility for a time. Uh, Mr. Thurston's well known on two continents for that sort of kindness, Don Louis. Hello, Baron. You always wake up with a brandy bottle in your hand? Oh, it's so much excitement. I thought a drink might be in order. Uh, I've even found glasses. How about one all around? Excellent suggestion. You can count me in. Well, here we are. Just a moment. Mr. Thurston, what's that gun for? Suppose we wait for our host to drink first. Well, Well, Baron. All right, put that gun on then. We can make a deal, Mr. Coco. Coco? But Mr. Thurston is the man called X. The Baron's been under a misapprehension. And I'll take that bottle now. I think it'll probably hang you, Baron Wolf, for the murder of a man named Davis. But, Mr. Thurston, think of the humiliation for the honorable name of Zellschmidt, traveling up here with all these bad characters, and your gun pointed at my back. Why can't I sit with you and Don Louis? Hey, on, for all I know, you may be one of Mr. Coco's agents. Mr. X! I swear by the father of my oh, father Oh, that... Anyway, you're a petty profiteer. Seventy-five cents for a stale hamburger. Stay right where you are. How long will it be before we reach San Francisco, Mr. Thurston? Oh, I'd say about half an hour, John Louis. Plenty of time to make connections with the clipper. I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Thurston. As soon as I can get in touch with the proper authorities, you're going to be very sorry for this treatment. What's wrong, Dr. Mosley? Aren't you comfortable? <sighs> Treated like a common criminal. A man of my position. Relax, Doctor. Colin and the Baron are in a tougher spot than you are. They're not doing any squawking. The stakes were big enough to take a chance, Thurston. When you lose, you lose, that's all. Quite a philosophy. You and the Baron should have worked together. How do you feel about it, Princess? I'm not a princess, and you know it. I showed you enough credentials to prove who I am. Sure, sure you did. Helen Bartlett, magazine feature writer. That was a new role, wasn't it? It was not a role, it's the truth. I admit it was a fool idea, but I had to get an inside story on this radium deal some way. Dr. Mosley backs me up. Yeah, I've noticed how willing both of you are to support each other's claims. Now look here, Thurston. You look here, Dr. Mosley. Thousands of people in this country kicked in money to send this radium to a Philippine hospital. All I care about is making sure it, it does go there. Compared to that, your little troubles don't mean very much. Is that clear? Mr. X, do you think one of these suspects could be Mr. Coco, maybe? Maybe. <laughs> Which one is it? That's a good question, Pagan. Which one do you think it is? Well, that looks familiar. You mean the clipper, Don Louis? No, the wharf there. That's where I first landed, coming over from Manila. Well, I guess we may as well see you aboard. And you ought to have a pretty quiet trip from here on. Well, at any rate, Mr. Thurston, it's quite a relief to be vindicated finally and see the proper criminals put into custody. Yeah, it's been quite an experience. From a dangerous femme fatale to a suspect to a bona fide magazine writer all overnight. Helen, you'd be dangerous anyway. But you still show me San Francisco tonight in spite of it, won't you, Ken? Uh, well, here we are, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Nice view across the bay. Yes, yes, it is indeed. Now I may as well take the briefcase... Mr. Thurston, neither I nor my people can ever thank you enough for your protection on the trip from New York. That's very generous of you, Don Louis. As I said before, my one interest in this affair is to make sure the radium gets to its destination. Those customs guards there, they have the same idea. What? Why? Those rifles are pointing at us. Oh, no, no. Not us. Every one of those rifles is pointed straight at you, Mr. Coco. <gasps> huh? I seem to have underrated you, Mr. Thurston. How did you find out? Your gun first, please. Thanks. Well, it was your top coat. You threw it across the seat in the plane, and I happened to notice a label. Gonzalez de Taylor, Manila. But, but Don Louis was from Manila. Around yes. it was a line of tiny pinpricks where another label had been ripped out. 
So I wired the chief for a description of the real Don Louis Roof. You didn't fit it, Mr. Coco. But, Mr. Thurston, I dealt entirely with this man. He presented all the necessary credentials. What happened to the real Don Louis? Well, Mr. Coco, any answer there? We'll find him all right. And when we do, I think we'll find a few bullets fired from this gun. And that ought to make a pretty tight case. Now that I come to think of it, Mr. Thurston, I thought this fellow's voice sounded familiar. Yeah, he's the one who called me on the phone. Here, you go and have another hamburger. Well, I don't mind if... Huh? Well... Yes, they're all such fools, Ken. But they never see it before it's too late. Helen, any man's a fool when he sets himself against humanity. That's the real man without a country. If such there be, go mark him well. For him no music's rapture swell. As a fool he lives and blindly dies, finding death his only prize. It's a beautiful sunset there beyond the Golden Gate, except for one dark shadow from that rock on the right. Mr. Coco, that's the rock they call Alcatraz. Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, our story is called Run, Thief, Run. And right this over, there's plenty of action and suspense in it. As usual, there'll be Leon Belasco along with Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Thursday, for the best in entertainment... Tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. The other tenants in the same building, of course, know very little about Ken. That's the way it is in a New York apartment house. But there are other people who do know, and some of them have rung the door buzzer and had been admitted to Ken's lodgings. Sometimes the caller has been an old friend, and other times it's been Pagan Zellschmidt. But you don't understand, Mr. Thurston. Why should I come here at one o'clock in the morning if I didn't have a good reason? I don't know, Pagan. The last time you wanted to borrow ten bucks. But this is serious. By morning, I may be a dead man. Maybe soon, if you don't get out of here. Let me get back to bed. Yeah. I bet you wouldn't talk like this if, if you would seen the ghost of your old dear friend, Jose Martinez. I haven't got any old dear friend, Jose Martinez. Neither have I anymore. He got drowned at the ship, the Papago. The one that hit a mine and blowed up. Papago? About six months ago. Yeah. I want him not to go around making like a sailor. Wait. You saw this man tonight alive? Well, not alive exactly. He's a ghost. 
And when I came to, somebody was throwing cold water over me. Just take a look at the shirt. I haven't been able to get much information, Chief. It seems that Papago is here to floating mine somewhere near the Azores and sank with all hands. The only wreckage found was mostly deck stuff, a couple of lifeboats. What cargo was she carrying, Ken? One that gives us plenty of reason to come in on the case. Medical supplies for Greece. Well, that's reason enough, all right. Only, what makes you think there is a case? Chief, the fact that Pagon saw a crew member of that freighter here in New York last night when everybody on board supposedly drowned. Looks a little screwy, doesn't it? Well, if Pagan really did see the man. Uh, who owned that ship, Ken? Some little layout called the Jordan Transportation Company. Offices of Los Angeles Harbor in San Pedro. They own a sister ship, the Pima. Supposed to be loading out there now for a run to the South China coast. But suppose the Papago did strike a drifting mine. Several boats have done the same thing since the war. Where's any case in that? Medical supplies are pretty good items on the European black market. But how can you sell anything on the black market when it's already sunk I in the ocean? I don't know. Maybe the same way a dead man can walk down the street six months later. Chief, I'm going to San Pedro. simply don't know too much about that Jordan setup. Well, how come, Dave? I thought you boys in the harbor police would know if anybody did. Well, as far as I know, they've never been tied up with anything crooked, so... Who's in charge of their office here in San Pedro? A fellow by the name of Myron Sharp. Sharp. And the name we have listed as owner of the company is E. Jordan. Likes to eat at the Casa de Seville in Santa Barbara. That's a very fine restaurant about 100 miles up the coast. Oh, yeah, I know the Casa de Seville. Used to go to Santa Barbara on vacation. Vacation, eh? Ah, uh, why don't we go up there for a week right now, Mr. Thurston? Quiet, they're going to shut up. Uh, you see, uh, as far as we've known, Ken, the Jordan Company is a small layout, operating a couple of freighters out of various ports. Only one now, Dave. They lost the Capago six months ago. Ah, uh, yes, I know about that. But they bought another ship about six weeks afterward, called the South Wave. Huh? Left here just last month on a South American run. South Wave, eh? Dave, when's the Pima scheduled to sail? In four days, if they get done loading. Mm-hmm. See, Mr. Thurston? We got time for a short trip to Santa Barbara. And that's exactly where I'm going. Good. I'll get ready right away. You buy yourself a pair of dungarees. You're going to stay here and try to get a job at the Jordan Company. But why should I want a job? I don't even know anybody here in San Pedro. Oh, you might run across an old friend around the docks. Jose Martinez, for instance. Say, I might have that. I always did like Jose. Hey, he's dead. Oh, no. It's good to have you with us again. How long are you planning to stay again? Not long enough, Pete. I'm not on vacation this time. I'm looking for somebody. Well, now, I'm sure none of the patrons here at the Casa de Seville could possibly... Oh, no, have... no, no, nothing of that sort. This guy is the owner of a shipping company in San Pedro. Let's see, the name, uh, E. Jordan. Jordan? Oh, yes, yes. Come on into the lounge, Ken. I'll introduce you. You've, uh, you've never met this guy, huh? No, I just got the name from the harbor police in San Pedro. Oh, I see. Over this way. Excuse me, Mother Jordan. Oh? Oh. I'd like to present an old friend, Ken Thurston. Mother Jordan, Ken. How do you do? Oh, hey. See you later, huh? Yes, Pete, yes. Sorry to break in on your piano playing, Mother Jordan. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Thurston. I just do it to make the time go faster. Did you want to see me about something special? Well, yes. I was told in St. Pedro that you own the Jordan Transportation Company. Oh, dear. I'm afraid you've had a trip all the way up here for nothing. You see, I just leave everything to Mr. Sharp down in San Pedro. He's an awfully nice boy, and I'm sure uh, you... Yes, I understood Mr. Sharp was your manager, but I thought I'd better talk to you about this first. Well, I, I'm afraid you think I'm not even very intelligent. You see, I only inherited the business from my... Well, my dear husband passed away last year. Oh, then it's Mr. Sharp who really runs the company. Yes, and I was awfully lucky to get him. He's always so nice, so polite, 
I'm sure he'll be able to take care of you. Yeah. Mother Jordan, have you ever thought somebody in the company might be doing something, uh, well, underhanded? Why, Mr. Thurston, what a thing to say. Why don't you and I go down there together, straighten things out? Well, now I would enjoy the trip. Only, young man, don't you dare go down to San Pedro and start a fight with anybody. Mother Jordan, I don't have the slightest intention of starting a fight, not the slightest. As far as I can see, Mr. Thurston, the whole idea is ridiculous. We lost the Papago through an accident, but that's no indication that people will run into any danger on this China trip. I don't know, Mr. Sharp. They've reported drifting mines north of the Philippines. Ah, I've been drifting mines all over the world since the war, Mr. Thurston. Several ships have been sunk by them. That's right, Captain Blake. But I doubt if any of the crewmen who drowned on the others ever turned up alive later. I've shown you the crew log of the Papago, Mr. Thurston. There were no Jose Martinez on board. Well, you could have signed on with another name. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. Gentlemen, please. At least Mr. Thurston is being nice and polite about it. Uh, sorry, Mother Jordan. Yeah, well, I guess I'll go on board. About my bedtime. When's the Pima scheduled for sale? Friday, if everything works. No, he'll... It'll be before midnight Thursday or, or else on Saturday. Oh? I start no voyage on Friday. Superstitious, Captain Blake? Uh, <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, Myron. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Oh, he's an awfully nice man. So strong and everything. He'd been with the company a long time. This is his uh, first trip. He was in the China coast trade. I see. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll just go on up to my room. You see, Mr. Thurston, my dear husband built a little apartment up over the office here, and I have some knitting I must work on. Good night, all. Good night, Mr. Mm. Oh, you uh, find her quite a trusting employer, don't you, Mr. Sharp? And just what do you mean by that? Oh, nothing may be true, isn't it, though? Anyway, I... Wait. Mr. Sharp! Sharp, I was... Mr. Thurston. What's wrong, Pagan? What's wrong? If you only knew what I just saw out there on the deck of that ship. Oh, I know, all right. Jose Martinez, or his ghost. Think he's up here on the foredeck someplace, Mr. Thurston? Oh, he could be any place by now, Pagon. I want to get away from Sharp. You any trouble getting a job? No. The Sharp guy said no chance. But I ran into Captain Blake when I was leaving, and he put me on. I'm a deckhand, whatever that is. Good. Now, what you find out? That that little storeroom next to the bridge is packed full of dynamite cases. Oh, so that's it. That's where I was when I saw the ghost of Jose's. Mr. Rex, it looked just like... <laughs> What was that? What I was don't that? know. On the other side of the deck cabin. Come on. I don't really care about finding out what it was, Mr. X. Yeah, give me that flashlight. Hmm. Nobody in sight. Well, in that case, why don't we get out of here? Look out. That hatch is open right behind you. Huh? Say, say somebody could very easily fall down. Look. Hmm. Looks like a dead man lying down there. Dead man? Dead nothing, Mr. X. It's been dead for six months. That's that ghost of Jose Martinez. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The freighter Papago struck a drifting mine and sank with all hands. But six months later, Jose Martinez, who'd been one of her crew, showed up in New York, alive. And now the trail has led Ken and Pagan to the dark hold of the Papago sister ship, the freighter Pima, lying out of wharf in San Pedro, California. They're bending over the body of a man who is dying for the second time, Jose Martinez. Easy, Pagan. Lift his head up. He's in bad shape. Blake, 
Capitan Blake. Look, Mr. Thurston. He's been stabbed in the back. Yeah. Jose, what about Blake? Blake. What about Captain Blake? He, he'll talk. Scared. Huh? Get Blake. <sighs> Mr. Thurston. Oh. Yeah, Pega. If you meet him again now, he will be a ghost. That reminds me, he looks as solid as anybody. I don't see how he Shh, could... quiet. Huh? Yeah, Pagan, he must have been dead for five or ten minutes. Too bad he won't huh? be able to talk. Uh, I don't uh, know. You, Mr. Thurston? What's the trouble, anyway? Captain Blake. It looks as if somebody had knocked off one of your crew, Jose Martinez. Huh? Well, that's, that's not Martinez, is it? It's a seaman named Tony Zork. Uh-huh. Come on, Pagan. Better not leave the dock, Captain Blake. And the same goes for Sharp if you can find him. What's that? Now, wait a minute. Where are we going, Mr. Thurston? A couple of paces. And Pagan, we've got to move fast. Sure, Ken. The South Wave lay over there at the Jordan Wharf for ten days or so. I saw her quite a number of times. Good. What does she look like, Dave? I mean, in a general way, the overall outline. Oh, I don't know. About the same size and shape as the Pima. She Mm -hmm. had a cleaner deck line, though. No after cabin, no superstructure above the bridge level. In other words, if you took those items off the Pima, she'd look pretty much like the South Wave, right? Sure, but I don't... Wait a minute. Papago was a sister ship of the Pima. Right, and, Dave. And the Jordan Company supposedly bought the South Wave six weeks after the Papago supposedly sank. Yeah, but how could they change it over that way at sea? Well, you could do a pretty fast, clean job of cutting steel with dynamite, if you know how. Where do they claim they bought the South Wave? Well, now, let me see. According to our registry from the Cochin Saigon line of Shanghai. Logs and papers all in order. A company on the China coast, eh? Hmm. Dave, I think I'd better make a phone call. Chief. There is a Cochin Saigon line in Shanghai, and they did own a freighter called the South Wave. Sold it two years ago. Who bought it? The Canton Steel Company. They broke it up for scrap. Scrap? What about Blake? Well, the Captain Blake was discharged by the Cochin Saigon line a year and a half ago, embezzling ship's funds. They don't know where he went. As for that Yangtze River business, you were right. All right. Thanks a lot, Chief. I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, but Ken, I don't see... So long, Chief. You're telling me you didn't know that Tony Zork's real name was Jose Martinez. Is that it, Captain Blake? That's right, Mr. Thurston. I sure wouldn't sign a man on this ship if I knew he was going around under an assumed name. Uh, what makes you think any different? Didn't you work for the coach in Saigon Line once? Why, yeah, that's right. I. What was that? What do you mean? I, I thought I... Well, nothing, I guess. Mm-hmm. How'd you happen to leave the Shanghai Company? Well, I... Uh... Got tired of the way that... What's wrong, Captain Blake? Look, there at the porthole. That face, it's Martinez. Oh, it's imagination. I don't see anything. Anyway, you uh, called him Tony Zork before. Uh, That's who I mean, Zork. Uh. It's gone now. Did you kill him? No. No, who did? No. I was here in my cabin. There it is again. Jose, no! Can't you see him there at the porthole? Why should I? I don't have a guilty conscience. Oh, yeah. He's gone now. Mr. Thurston, what do you think he wants? Maybe he wants you to start talking. Oh, I've got nothing to say. Well, then you'll probably go right on seeing him. You going to talk? No. What is it you want to know? How did you fake the sinking of the Papago? What do you mean? Well, we blasted off some of the superstructure, threw it overboard, and we headed south out of the shipping lanes... And Repainted the vessel and changed her name to the South Wave. What happened to the cargo? I, uh, sold it on the black market at Marseille. And we went back. What about the log and papers the South Wave was registered under? Forged? No, they were the real McCoy. 
I stole them from the coach in Saigon at the time they scrapped the ship. Uh, and I suppose the same deal was being planned for the Pima on this next trip. Yeah, that's right. We, we'd we already started rumors about mines being seen north of the Philippines. Only this time we'd changed, have our name changed and sold her to some China coast company. You don't need papers for that. And these medical supplies would have ended up on the Shanghai black market. Instead of going to the people they were meant for. Well, what are you going to do, Mr. Thurston? I'm going to smash this thing wide open. Who planned all this anyway, Blake? Who'd you take your orders from? Well, I... Sharp! He takes his orders from me, Thurston. Well, Sharp. Nice looking gun you're carrying. Yes. Shoots nice, too. What happened to Pagon? You scare him off? No. Caught him out there on deck, shoving Martina's body up to the window. Huh? He's either knocked out or dead. So that was it. I thought it was his spirit. You superstitious fool. First of tricked you and you started right in shooting off your mouth. I can't take any more chances with you, Blake. No, no, wait. I won't talk. You can trust me. I'll be able to trust both of you in about 15 seconds. Did you kill Martinez, Mr. Sharp? That's right. Didn't want you to identify him. Now you can tell him hello for me. No, no! I guess I must have hit him, Mr. Thurston. He fell down. You hit him, all right. Two shots right on the back of the head. Come on in, Mother Jordan. I heard the whole thing, and I simply can't understand it. He was always such a nice, polite young man. Oh, thank goodness my dear husband always made me carry this revolver in my knitting bag. Yeah. Pagan, are you all right? Uh, I wake up and find... I'm asleep with a dead body. My head feels like a cantaloupe. Hey, hey, what hit me anyhow? The late Myron Sharp hit you, Pagan. Hey, he's dead. You shot him, Mr. Thurston? No, Mother Jordan did that. You mean she could shoot somebody? Well, I had to, Mr. Zellschmidt. He was going to kill these two gentlemen. Oh. That's right, Pagan. And then, too, he might have spilled the fact that she's the brains behind this racket. What? Why, Mr. Thurston, what a thing to say. Isn't it, though? Suppose you explain how Sharp would pull all these deals without the owner of the company finding out. Well, I told you my dear husband always took care of things. Your husband. He wouldn't have been a man named Bully Jordan, would he? Head of a pirate fleet on the Yangtze River back in... No, don't try it. Dave Taylor's right behind you. Harbor police. I'll take that gun. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. Now, come on, let's go. You too, Blake. Come on. Just a moment, please. I think I'll need my knitting. Mr. X, when a nice, sweet-looking old lady like that turns out to be a dirty crook, oh, oh, then, then I'm completely disillusioned. That's the trouble, Pagan. You can't always tell by looking. There's a lot of things in this old world that look pretty good on the surface. But you have to go deeper. Sometimes you even have to think about them. And thinking isn't so tough once you get used to it. Why don't we do more of it? Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, America's production depends on steel. And steel depends on scrap metal. So please help increase the production of the things you need. And help to keep employment high by collecting steel and scrap iron around your own home. Turn it into your local drive or call your local scrap dealer right away. Now next week, our story is called A Ruby for Pearl. And it has to do with one of the smartest international rackets you ever heard of. As usual, the Belasco will be along as Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, where next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. 
All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other make. Now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. There was nothing unusual in the way it started. The girl was one of Pagan's big moments, and Ken had met the two of them accidentally in a New York supper club. All in all, a pretty ordinary incident, with not the slightest hint of the strange and dangerous things to follow. After all... How can you become involved in a murder just by saying... How do you do, Miss Martin? Oh, likewise, Mr. Thurston. Only why don't you just call me Pearl? Everybody does. Don't they, Pagan? That's right, Mr. Thurston. Of course, it's all right with me, you understand. Why, Pagan, you told me just the other day... Pardon me, Miss Martin. I, uh, been admiring that pin you're wearing. It's very unusual. Ain't it so? All them different colored jewels in it. (laughs) I, I just gave her that this evening, Mr. Thurston. Two hundred simoleons. Nothing but the best for Pearl. Oh, thank God. <laughs> 200 bucks, eh? Miss Mountains, I'll give you uh, 250 right now. Do you want to sell it? Mr. Thurston. Gee whiz. I, I mean, well, gosh, it's got a kind of sentimental value and all. Well, I just couldn't possibly. Gosh, let me get it unpinned. Pearl. Here you are. Five fifties. Thanks. Pagan, tell me about you and him going on secret missions. But he didn't say nothing about your being such a heavy expense. Yeah. Well, as a matter of fact, I came in here to look for Pagon. They're going to leave right away on a secret mission. Oh, ain't that the way it is? Just when the party gets started. But, Mr. Thurston... Come on, Pagon. Have it with you, Miss Martin. Uh, likewise. If you're ever around this way again, well... Mr. Thurston, in all my life, I've never saw anybody pull such a Pagon, downright... there wasn't any other way around it. I'll explain later. But I was trying to tell you. I was just kidding, Harry. I only paid ten bucks for that pin. I can get you a hundred like that. You better buy them, Pagon. You'll never get a real ruby any cheaper. A ruby? I, offhand, I'd say it's worth about a hundred thousand dollars. But then you bought. Then I gave. And then you... Oh. Telling you, I don't know anything about it, Mr. Thurston. Maybe some stick-up guy was in the shop. Looks more like a tornado. You say the owner's name is what? Reuben? Sure. Sal Reuben. Uh-huh. He's a very good friend of mine. Absolutely legitimate, you understand. Like all my friends are. Oh, sure, yeah. But I don't know why he went off and left the shop empty like this. Somebody's given it a going over, all right. <laughs> At least they didn't get the safe open. Yeah, it's still locked. Yeah. I'd like to get a look inside of it, too. Well, I, uh... Might just possibly be able to. (coughs) All right, go to it. This big old-fashioned kinds are a cinch. Uh, So I've heard, of course. Uh, Now, let's see now. Uh, Sagan, did mm -hmm. Ruben try to make you buy that particular pin? Oh, no. In fact, he said he shouldn't sell any of them until Mr. Smith had a chance to pick out uh, what he wanted. Who's Mm. Mr. Smith? Oh, some customer of South that's always one's first chance at the South American shipments. Uh Uh-huh. I think I'm getting somewhere. now. South uh, America, eh? You must have bought the stuff from this Estrella company listed here on the ledger. Hmm. Asuncion, Paraguay. Funny place to buy costume jewelry. Most of it hey, Mr. Thurston, I got it open. See? Look. Look. Yeah. Is that your friend, Rubin? Sure. 
But it's the first time I ever saw him inside a safe. Yeah, and it's probably the first time I ever saw him dead. Question about it, Ken. Dr. Sotolin says the ruby is pretty well known to gem experts. It's a part of the Herncastle collection. Herncastle? Isn't that the Nazi who died in South America a few years ago? Yeah, a couple of months after he was convicted of espionage. They confiscated all his property, including the $3 million collection of jewels. Wait a minute, Chief. That was. Sure. It was in Paraguay. That's right, Ken. Asuncion. And according to the wire I got just now from the Paraguayan authorities, the entire collection is still in their treasury vaults. Mm, there's at least one ruby that isn't. They had the stuff of praise, and it's held now as a part of the backing for their, their uh, monetary system. Three million. They might pay the dickens with their economy if anything happened to it. Yes, yes, I think their annual budget's only around eight or nine million. Chief, I think I know where to pick up the trail. Hey, gone. Oh, what was that? Yes, I must have dozed off a little. Well, doze back in again. We're heading for Paraguay. It's not possible, Senor Thurston. I'm aware that Dr. Sutherland here is a recognized authority, but it is simply not possible that these jewels are imitations. Gentlemen, please. I don't think uh, Dr. Sutherland has made any statement like that yet, Mr. Hernandez. Oh, but he is going to. I can tell it by his face. See, si. he has placed them on the table and looked at them one by one. And each time he shakes his head. It is not possible. What makes you so sure it isn't possible, Colonel Mazzaro? Because, Senor Thurston, I am in charge of the federal police in Asociación. The men who guard these treasury vaults. And with me in charge, such a thing could not happen. I see, Colonel. I, uh, I might suggest, however, that you ask the worthy deputy of economic affairs whether the real jewels were ever placed in the vaults. Well, Mr. Hernandez? I can assure you that they were, Senor Thurston. You may recall, my dear Colonel, that the collection was appraised by several experts at the time. Uh, Have you finished looking at them, Dr. Soderlund? Uh, yes, Mr. Thurston. And the results are... You have already anticipated my conclusions. These gems are imitations. Sacrisanto, the up. Senor Thurston, when this information gets to the public, the exchange value of the Guarani will drop to ten cents. It's your job to see it doesn't get to the public, Mr. Hernandez. Meanwhile, I'll talk over a plan of action with Colonel Mazzaro. Very uh, good. And uh, perhaps the talk should be a private one, Senor Thurston. Why, right, Colonel? Let's go. It might also be well if we had a private talk, Senor Thurston. Yeah, I'll see you later in the day, Mr. Hernandez. So long. I uh, I must warn you, this, this man, Hernandez, is, is not to be trusted. It is best not to tell him anything we are doing. Yeah. Well, I... Uh, there you are, Mr. Thurston. Uh, what did you find out? Tell you later, Pagan. Colonel Mazzaro, I got a couple of things I, I want to check on. Suppose I meet you at staff headquarters in about an hour. Well, excellent. Uh, as a matter of fact, I certainly recall an engagement I forgot. Well, at least you remember it, Carido. You're late already, you know. Felicia! Oh, boy. Pagan. Felicia, may I present Senor Thorsten from the United States? This is Senorita Ruiz. How do you do? I was in a very important conference, my dear. Well, in that case, I forgive you. I thank you. I'm sorry, I. This, I was admiring that pin you're wearing. It's quite unusual. Mr. Thurston? Thank you. It, it was made for me by a rather close friend. Mm hmm. Set with onyx. From Paris, isn't it? No. It's a local product. Oh. In the language of the gems, onyx means a happy marriage, you know? Which, of course, refers to me, Senor Thurston. Felicia and I are engaged. Oh, congratulations, Colonel. Well, I shall be in my office in about an hour. Come, querida mia. Hasta la vista, Senor Thurston. Goodbye, Senorita. Phew. I thought you were going to give, give her 250 bucks for it. What for? It was a phony. Come on, Pagon, let's go. sign over the door. Estrella Company. Dumpy little joint, eh? What's the rest of the time mean, Mr. Rex? Manufacturing jewelers. Come on, let's go in. Mm. 
Doesn't seem to be anybody here. Good. In that case, may, may... Look out, get down! <laughs> if I get out of that, if I get out of this alive, I swear by the father oh, of my father, you're I... You're all right, you're all right. You got away from the back door. Who got away? I don't know who, but he had on a police uniform. What was he trying to do anyhow? He was crouched down there in front of the safe, trying to try and open it. Oh, no. Not another safe. I guess, I guess I'd better go and get some lunch. Hey, right? gone. Yeah, but maybe inside. I mean, after all, who knows? Could be. Uh, Nobody in the shop. Come on, Jimmy Valentine, get to work. Continue with Bridget Ayers' Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. When a hundred thousand dollar ruby turned up in a worthless piece of costume jewelry, and the body of one Sal Rubin was found stuffed in his own safe, Ken Thurston decided the best place to pick up a lead would be down in Paraguay. Strangely enough, the trail down there has led to another safe. The combination of this one is giving Pagan some trouble. What's wrong, Pagan? He's been stalling around there for twenty minutes. Oh, who knows, Mr. Rex? Maybe the combination of this one is in Spanish. Well, come on, get on with it. Oh, please, quiet, quiet, please. I think something clicked just then. I stop that very much, senor. Hey, the tamale with the gun. You will both be so kind as to raise your hands. Well, I was looking forward to seeing you again this year, but not quite this soon. Obviously. May I ask what you are doing here? May I ask what you are doing here? My father happens to be the owner of the Estrella Company. Senor Ruiz, eh? So that's who makes this jewelry. Where is he now? What have you done to him? The only person here when we came in took a couple of shots at us and left. He was wearing a police uniform. Police? That is ridiculous. Is it? That gun makes me nervous, Mr. Thurston. Why don't you take it away from her? Any suggestions as to how? I do not wish to listen to this talk. You will tell me at once what has happened to my father, or I will shoot you both. Both? Now, 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 wait a minute. Maybe we can make a deal. The senorita is not going to shoot anybody. Drop the gun, Felicia. Oh, animal. Thanks, Mr. Hernandez. Come in. <laughs> Everybody's got a gun. Since you leave the treasury, Senor Thurston, I have concentrated and put two and two together. There is only one man in Asuncion who makes jewelry, Senor Ruiz, the father of Felicia. I have come to talk with him. So have I. Only he seems to have stepped out. My father is guilty of nothing. Manuel, tell me what this is all about. Manuel, eh? Is that uh, Colonel Mazzaro, your fiancé? I will tell you nothing. I demand you find my father at once. Senorita, that's exactly what we were trying to do. All right, Pagan. Back to work in the safe. Well, the truth is, Mr. Thurston, I mean, I I don't know just how to say this, but, uh, well, you see, it's like... Uh, if it will help any to find him, the combination is left, 21, to right, 236, left, 81. Hmm. What were you going to say, Pagan? Shh, 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 quiet, please. You, you see, I'm concentrating. Uh, uh, left, 21, right, 36, left, 81. Mr. Thurston, I did it. Open it up, then. Oh, no, not me. You remember the last time? All right, then I'll... Hmm. It... It's empty. Well, you can't find a body every time. Well, that's that. Perhaps somebody warned him, Senor Thurston. Could be. Senorita, with the color your eyes are right now, you're wearing the wrong kind of jewelry. Senor, I do not... Yeah. Instead of onyx, it should be sapphires. Sapphires? Yes. They are uh, very difficult to find. One would not know where to look. No, I suppose not. For the way, seen this before? A hotel key. No, senor, I have never seen it before now. Mm. Mr. Thurston, why don't we scrum out of this joint and find something to eat? Yeah. Mr. Hernandez... Why don't you stick that gun in your pocket and we'll all four talk this thing over at the nearest cafe? Whatever you think best, Senor Thurston. There, but I, I really think we should do something. I was before... waiting for you to do that. Felicia! There she goes, Mr. Thurston. She's escaped from us. She, she... Yeah. I kind of thought she would. What? But, but now she will rejoin her father. I doubt she'll get far. Asuncion's not a very big city. 
shouldn't be too hard to block off the exit. Well, I shall notify the police immediately. Good idea. But maybe you'd better get some of your own men out, too. Don't forget who's in charge of the police. Oh, Colonel Massaro. Mm-hmm. I will give the orders at once, and I shall watch the airport myself. Good, and you may as well limit the search to police here. Never mind, Senor Royce. But why not, Senor? Because he's lying dead over there behind that workbench in the corner. I hope you remember I still haven't had anything to eat, Mr. Thurston. You can order something out of the room, Pagon. Come on. Oh, just a moment, Senor Thurston. Oh, what is it? I have a call for you. Just came in. The party is on the line now. Oh, thanks. Sir. You can take it, yes. Mm-hmm. Ken Thurston speaking. This is Colonel Mazzaro. I've been trying to reach you. Oh, go on. A very bad thing has happened. I've just found the body of Senor Ruiz in the river. He has been shot to death. What? He's the padre of Alicia. He's a maker of jewelry. It's possibly some connection with this case. Yeah, I know. Where'd you say you found his body? Floating in a river at the south side of town. All right, Colonel Mazzaro. Meet me at the Treasury office in half an hour. Very well, senor. Adios. Pagon, take a taxi up to the airport and find Hernandez. We'll meet you at the Treasury office in half an hour. Okay, Mr. Thurston. Now, what do you mean, we? Oh, Felicia and I. Oh, well, I thought... Felicia? Hey, where are you going to find her? Unless I'm badly mistaken... She's upstairs in my hotel room. Senor Thurston, and Senorita Ruiz. Mr. Hernandez, I hope we haven't kept two gentlemen waiting. You captured her. Felicia, what is it? Have you been placed under arrest? Oh, no, Colonel Mazzaro. Not yet, anyway. At least have nothing to hide, Manuel. I am not afraid. All right. Please. We're all here together, so let's take a quick look at the thing. In the first place, somebody here stole the Hermit Castle collection of gems and substituted limitations in the Treasury vault. I hope you are not implying... Then they worked out the scheme with Royce to get the real stones out of the country into the United States. I cannot understand how my father would ever do such a thing. He would make up cheap costume jewelry for shipment to a man named Rubin in New York. And with each order, he'd include two or three of the real stones. Wasn't much chance of them being caught in customs. You mean my old friend Sal was mixed up in this I rocket? don't think so, Pagan. The New York partner was this Mr. Smith. Who always insisted on first chance of the Paraguayan shipments. He's the boy who killed Rubin when he found the real stone was missing from the last order. Thought Sal had got wise to him. Senor Ruiz, he was killed too. Right. If that was so I wouldn't have a chance to talk to him. But, Mr. Thurston, who is the big shot that's back of all that? It had to be somebody with access to the treasury vault. That lets Felicia out and leaves Colonel Mazzaro and Fernandez in. I will not be insulted, senor. You're ducking before your head, Colonel. You are accusing me by implication. Look, you're engaged to the daughter of a man we know was in on the scheme. She knew nothing about it. Pagan and I were shot at by a man in a police uniform. You reported finding Rice's body in the river. When I'd already seen it in the back of his shop. I did find it in the river. Senor, I told you Colonel Mazzaro was guilty. In New York... Everything was pretty carefully covered up. But down here, the whole case points to Colonel Mazzaro. Which adds up in my book to somebody else. What? Oh, gracias. Si. Si, senor. For instance, to Mr. Hernandez, maybe. In Paraguay, senor Thurston, we insist upon evidence. Well, how about the jewels themselves? They'll be pretty good evidence. And where do you think they are, senor Thurston? A man with a fortune concentrated in gems will probably keep them pretty close around him. Ready for a quick break. In your case, Colonel, they might be in the pouches of that cartridge belt. You are at liberty to look. With Senor Hernandez, I'd stay in that diplomatic briefcase he carries everywhere he goes. Yeah, I suppose we have a look. Uh, open that case. I'm warning you. Watch him, Colonel. One more, Hernandez, and I shall kill you. Hmm. <laughs> Little leather bag here in the bottom. I suppose we just... <gasps> oh. uh, well, there's your evidence. Just look at them jewels. Yeah. There's about a third of them missing, though. Your partner in New York ought to do all right with them, Hernandez. Since we don't know who he is. Senor Thurston, I, I'm well aware of the treatment I can expect from my old friend, Colonel Massaro. I have no desire that my partner should be free of the same difficulties. He is Martin N. Hill. You will find him at the Hotel Barstone in New York. Good. Then that winds it up. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Thurston. Hey, how did you know Felicia was going to be in your hotel room, huh? I sent her there, Pagan. 
by mentioning sapphires. Huh? Senor, in the language of James, a sapphire means escape from danger. And the hotel kid told me where to go. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Yeah, I get it now, all right. Okay, Miss Thurston. Well, let's blow out of this town and get back to New York. I want to see Pearl. Oh, but she's probably spent that 250 by now. Well, after all, Mr. Thurston, <laughs> money isn't everything. Why, big on coming from you. Sure, it isn't everything. But there are an awful lot of people who think it is. Who sacrifice their countries, even the world, for it. We've stopped Hernandez, sure. But we're letting others a whole lot smarter go on running loose. What's the matter with us? When are we going to wake up? Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Ladies and gentlemen, America needs more steel. Scrap metal helps make steel, but it is very scarce. So look around your home, won't you, for scrap iron and steel. Turn it into your local scrap dealer or to your local scrap metal drive. And thanks for being with us. As usual, I'm sure you all know that Pagon Zellschmidt was played by Leon Belasco. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, a very special broadcast. One that I'm sure every one of you will want to hear. A little off the beaten track, but of vital importance to every one of us. So be sure to listen. And, of course, join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Richard Ayer's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. And any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Whenever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find a man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Now, there's the report from Cochin, China, Ken, on the latest accident at the Mekong River Dam. Another dynamite explosion, Chief? Right. Destroyed the new anchor block. Uh, what does John Dreyer have to say? He's pretty sick about it. The French government requests his services from the Bureau of Reclamation because of his terrific reputation as a hydroelectric engineer. Yeah, and... Now Dreyer can't get to first base building that dam across the Mekong River because of accidents. 
chief out of the shove off a coach in China. Well, there are American business interests in mineral deposits there, and hydroelectric power could make it a pretty productive area. More than that, chief. With that dam built, a couple hundred thousand Anamite villages won't be flooded out of their homes every year. They get a taste of decent living conditions for change, of civilization. You're right, Ken. Let's see. The nearest town is Banom Bang. I'll have Miss Brooks get your passage in there. Yes, Miss Brooks. A cablegram for Mr. Thurston, sir, from Banom Bang. Banom Bang? Yes, sir. Uh, read it out to me, will you, please? Yes, sir. Have rooms ready for you at King Louis Hotel, Banom Bang. I'm making all arrangements for transportation to Mekong Dam. Best regards to the chief and Miss Brooks. It's signed, Mekong Belgium. <laughs> You see, Mr. Thurston, there I was in Shanghai attending my Uncle Ahmed's coming out party. His what? Coming out of the clink, you understand, when I read all about this Mekong Dam. So I stowed away. I mean, I, I caught a fast freighter and came here to Banambang. You didn't read anything about me coming here, Pagan. Oh, that. With this American engineer, John Dreyer, building the dam and plenty of United States money tied up in tin and copper and stuff, <laughs> where else would you go when there's a lot of accidents and big explosions? Yeah. And besides, I got a hot business deal for you. The only deal I'm interested in is transportation to the Mekong Dam. Oh, I got that too. Down there at the docks. Don't worry about it. But this business deal you're so excited about. Look, we sell insurance to the Anamite workers at the dam. We positively, absolutely guarantee they don't get knocked off by accidents or nothing. What happens if they do? We bury them. They can't lose. And I already paid off Hong Lin for plenty of protection. Hong Lin? Sure. Big shot with the natives. Takes care of the snakes. Religious stuff, you understand. Uh -huh. Anyway, anything he says goes. So I guess maybe you'd like to get on the basement, eh, Mr. Thurston? Or shall we say, uh, 500 smackers? Hang on. I'll put you the work of Bureau Scale. Twenty dollars a day and expenses. And your first job's getting satisfactory transportation. But, Mr. Thurston, I... I can assure you, Mr. Thurston, the transportation shall be more than satisfactory. Well? My seaplane is moored at the dock. We can take off at any time you say. See, Mr. Thurston, I told you I arranged for everything. Yeah. You seem rather surprised, Mr. Thurston. Oh, pleased might be a better word, Miss... Uh... Betty Delacosta. Miss Delacosta. Hmm. Oh, that perfume, quite rare, isn't it? And quite expensive. Yes. And your reasoning is quite correct, Mr. Thurston. My interest in flying you to the Mekong Dam is not financial. Of course not. This cookie's a big shot stockholder in the Hanoi Mining Company. They'll make a fortune when that dam is built. That's hardly the point. I'm going to marry Edward Kalender, the assistant engineer of the project, Mr. Thurston. And I don't like accidents, particularly when they happen around my fiancé. Well, that's understandable. That's why I decided to fly up there with you. Perhaps together we might do something about them. Well, I suppose I should feel flattered, but uh, why me? Oh, I'm glad to know that modesty is one of the characteristics of the man called X. Nice going, Pagan. Uh, uh, a clip of the tongue, you understand? Oh, sure. Would you have any ideas as to where we might start working together, Miss Delacosta? According to rumor, the Anamite natives <laughs> think the dam is a desecration of their sacred river, the Mekong. And they'll stop at nothing to halt its construction. Yeah, but you don't believe that. I believe that back of every destructive deed, you'll find someone reaching for a dishonest dollar. That's a very definite opinion. Any candidates? You might find it interesting to check the financial condition of the man supposedly most concerned with the building of the dam. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll warm up the engines for takeoff. Hey, there's only one guy she could be talking about. That's right, Pagan. The guy who was responsible for me being out here. The American engineer. John Dreyer.
You'll probably find Mr. Dreyer in the construction office over there, Mr. Thurston. You're not coming in with us, Miss Delacosta? Oh, I'd rather not. It's been two weeks since I heard why. I'm sure you understand. So if you don't mind... Oh, of course not. Boy, what a sweet pursuit, eh? And did you see how she goes for me? Oh, sure, Pagan. That's why she made a beeline for Edward Colender the minute we landed. Oh, probably just going to break the bad news to him. Me? Somebody make him with the guns, Mr. Rex. Yeah, in the construction office. Come on. One of my shoelaces is untied. I'll be right with you. Okay, let's have that gun. That's better. Now, I suppose we all relax and talk things over. Who are you, mister? My name's Ken Thurston. You, Dryer? That's right. And my name, sir, is Charlie Dong Ray. What went on here, Dryer? This two-faced crook was trying to get me to buy second-grade building material for the dam. Wanted me to take a split of the graft. When I told him what he could do with that kind of a proposition, he pulled that gun on me. I'm afraid Mr. Dreyer is falsifying before his own gods. He asked me to supply inferior materials so we could share the profits. When I refused, he threatened me. I drew the gun in self-defense. Why, you dirty low Dreyer. Dreyer. We won't get anywhere that way. You are quite right, Mr. Thurston. But it might be well to remember that inferior materials may go into the building of a man as well as a dam. In Mr. Dreyer's case, that could mean disaster to my people. That is something I shall not allow to happen, Mr. Thurston, even though it may mean I must deal forcefully with you as well as Mr. Dreyer. Good day, gentlemen. She is, Thurston, the Mekong River, the baby we're going to tie down if we have no more accidents. What about those accidents, Dryer? You got a theory? I don't believe in theories, Thurston. I work on facts. That sounds like you have a few. I have. About the Anamites? About Ed Colenda, my assistant. Oh? He wanted the dam built a hundred miles farther downstream. Because he thought it was a better location. That's what he said, but I understand he has an interest in rice plantations down there. I see. If you could sell his land as a site for the dam... He'd make a fortune. And ever since we started building here, he's been beeping about changing the site. Saying the Anamites here won't ever let us finish it. Which brings us right back to those accidents, huh? Uh, particularly the last one. The explosion. Colinda has charge of the dynamite stores in this job. Those enough facts for you? I think I might have a little talk with him. You'll find him in my tent. He's working on some reports in there tonight. I'm not certain that talk will be good enough, Mr. Thurston. Oh, well... Hello? Mamo. I thought I told you to stop hanging around here. Now get out before Wait I... Wait a minute, Dryer. Who's this girl? Her name's Mamo. Brought up in the mission Bannum, but she's full of the same cockeyed superstition that all the others have. About the Mekong being a sacred river. I have river. never said that I believed in my people's superstitions, Mr. Dryer. I do, however, believe in their right to worship as they choose. I bring a message to you, Mr. Thurston, from Hong Lin. Hong Lin? That's the uh, snake man, isn't it? Yes. And he speaks for my people. They ask that this desecration of the sacred Mekong cease at once. Now, you're an educated girl, Memo. You don't believe that the construction of the dam means that? I believe that whatever brings happiness and contentment to my people is good for them. Whatever brings them sorrow is evil. But that's why this is so important to them. It'll bring electric power for their farms, lights for their homes, modern civilization. You've got to make them understand that. I am afraid those things are not enough, Mr. Thurston. Not enough? What the... What more do you want? My people's happiness, Mr. Dreyer. What good is your modern civilization if it teaches them greed and destruction? Why give them electric lights to see by when all they will see is deceit and treachery? And you believe the dam is bringing all that to them, Memo? You are a wise man, Mr. Thurston. I think you may learn the truth of what I say from Edouard Colenda. Colenda? Meanwhile... Remember that my people still believe that if the construction continues, the curse of the evil one, Shiva, will descend upon them. They will do everything possible to prevent that. Good night. Hmm. What do you make of that, Brian? Those threats aren't going to stop me from building that dam. Maybe not. 
So we ought to take the young lady's advice. Now, look here, Thurston. If you think I'm going to I quit... I think we'd better have that talk with Glenda. There's my tent, Thurston. The one with the lamp lighted inside. Glenda's still in there. Yeah. Yeah, I see a shadow against the tent wall. Look at that. Supposed to be making out reports, and he falls asleep over the desk. He's not sleeping there. What do you mean he's not sleeping? He... Good Lord. That spear. Driven through the tent wall into his back. Yeah. So that's what Mamo meant. Her people thought Kalenda was responsible for the dam, and they killed him. No, Dwyer. To anyone standing outside this tent, the shadow on the wall wasn't Kalenda's. It was yours. Mine? Yeah. Somebody made a mistake. They killed the wrong man. Just a moment, we'll continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Think how you have to crowd things into the refrigerator you're using now, and then think of this. New Frigidaire refrigerators give you up to 50% more food storage space in the same kitchen space. Yes, Frigidaire's completely new design gives you a refrigerator that's far bigger on the inside. So no matter what the size of your kitchen or how large your family, now you can have that extra refrigerator room you need. You get a refrigerator that matches your needs exactly, too. Because Frigidaire offers you a wide variety of types and sizes, all with extra room for storing foods, all powered by the famous meter miser, simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. In addition, deluxe-type Frigidaire refrigerators, for example, give you such important features as a big, full-width super-freezer chest for frozen foods, a handy sliding basket drawer for eggs and small packages, special cooling system for keeping all foods at their best, and many others. Remember all the advantages that frigid air puts into the refrigerators it makes for you. And always remember, too, ask to see the name frigid air when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The giant dam being built across the Mekong River in Cochin, China, will bring the blessings of power and light of modern civilization to the long-suffering and backward Anamite peoples. But the Anamites have been told that the dam is a desecration of their sacred river. Edward Kalenda, assistant engineer, lies dead with a native spear buried in his back. Now it's the following morning in the construction office. Ken faces John Dreyer, the engineer in charge, and Betty Dallacosta, the dead man's fiance. You're sure you want to stay on here, Betty? I do not intend to leave, Mr. Thurston, until I learn who is responsible. I shall spend my entire fortune if necessary to bring him to justice. You don't have to, Miss Dallacosta. The blueprint's clear. The Anamites are behind it. I wouldn't be too sure, Dreyer. What effect is this going to have on the construction work? It'll make it plenty tough for me, if that's what you mean, but we can still go ahead. Matter of fact, we're going to pour the concrete for the new anchor block tonight. Good. Meanwhile, I'll pay a little visit to Hong Lin. Hong Lin? The snake man? That's right. How do you figure he fits into this picture? I'm going to learn if he's being paid off to stir up this trouble. If there's any western gold mixed up with the curse of Shiva. Island. Good. Let's get ashore. There's his hut, right up ahead there on the path. 
Yeah, I see it. Who else lives here with him, Pedro? Nobody. Just him and his snakes. Got them all locked up in cages. Boy, what a screwball. Him and that Charlie Dong Bay. Dong Bay? You know that guy who tried to bump off Dryer? One of his boys told me he visits with Hong Lin. Maybe they play chess or something. Uh Uh-huh. Here's the hut. Nobody home, huh? Let's go in and make sure. Boy, it's blacker in here than in my Uncle Ahmed's soul. And your eyes will get used to it in a minute. You uh, smell anything? How can I smell anything when I can't even see? And I got snakes in my brain so much, I almost think there's a couple of crawling around. <laughs> Look how big up. Relaxy, idiot. I got them. Two beautiful king cobras. Cobras? Oh. They're even worse than rattlesnakes. Boy, what a close shave accident. Accident? Look at those snake pens. Are they... Hey, somebody left them open. Yeah. Somebody expected us, Pagan. And left those snakes to welcome us. Chief Pagan, use the commissioner shortwave station of Banam. Then bring the answers back to me at the dam. But maybe the snake men's still after us. Uh, you, you might need me to protect you. I don't think so. Look back at the island. At the island? What do you see there but those two vultures settling down on? Vultures. Mister X. Yeah. I don't think we'll have to worry about the snake man any longer. right, Thurston. This native girl, Memo, she brought us the news, Ken. How do you know about it, Memo? The word has spread like a wildfire through the village, Mr. Thurston. It is proof to my people that the curse of Shiva has fallen. Nothing can stop them now from seeking the destruction of the dam. Except maybe the truth. That Hong Lin was paid to spread that story and was killed to stop him from telling me who paid him. It may be as you say, Mr. Thurston, but mere words cannot stop them maybe now. Maybe not. But if you'll take me to your village, I'd like to try. I have but one objective in life, Mr. Durston. To see that my people are made happy. Yes, I shall take you to my village. You're a fool if you go, Thurston. He's right, Ken. When I think of what happened to it, what? I'll take my chances. Dryer, get that concrete poured. Once that anchor block is up and no curses fall, we'll have proof of the Anamites. We'll start pouring at midnight, Thurston. Good. All right, Nemo. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Boy, have I got news for you. You got those answers from the chief? Have I got answers? You know what those re- radio messages say? Listen to this Never one. mind, Pagan. I'll read them for myself. Mm-hmm. So that's it. All right, Nemo, Pagan, let's go. By the way, Dryer, the chief says you filed a petition in bankruptcy before coming out here. Yeah, that's right. I'm an engineer, not a businessman. I made a few bad investments. What's that got to do with you? Oh, nothing. Only I'd hate to see anything stop that concrete from being poured at midnight. I don't get it, Mr. X. We start out for the village, and then all of a sudden you send that Maymore ahead. Well, we come back here to the dam. What gives, anyway? That's what I came back to find out. Huh? Suppose I ask you to stop that concrete from being poured a few minutes from now. Did you do it? There will be a slight consideration involved. Naturally. Then it's a sense. You see how they got the mixers way up on top there? 
And they're going to pour that cement down here into those giant mold things. I'll get a couple of sticks of dynamite from the powder house and put them at the bottom of the mold form. That'll do it fine. Wait for me, Mr. Thurston. I'll be right back. Don't bother, Pagan. Somebody else beat you to it. Huh? Look over there. Near the entrance to the mold forms. Near the... Mr. Rex. You see who that is? Yeah. Let's go over and pay our respects. Hello, Dongbei. Mr. Thurston. Kind of dangerous playing with dynamite, isn't it? Not if one knows how to handle it properly, Mr. Thurston. Milly takes a slight twist of the wrist. No! Oh! Drop that knife, Dongbei. Drop it. Oh, no. oh. Get it, Pagan. It's as good as God. Huh. You know, Mr. Rex, I knew all the time this no good was mixed up in this. Yeah. His shining words about his people got a little tarnished, Pagan. You know? With gold. Sure. He got mad on Dreyer because he wouldn't split the graph 50 50. He only tried that to frame Dreyer and get him thrown off the project. What he really wanted was to sell some rice lands to the French government, a hundred miles downstream. But Dreyer said Colanda owned those lands. No, Pagan. They belong to someone else. Yes, that is quite correct, Mr. Thurston. And in return for my freedom, I shall be happy to disclose everything to you. You won't get any deal from me, Dongbei. But as proof of my good intention, I can give you the name of that person now. In return, I owe you. Mr. Rex! Where did those chops come from? From the entrance of the mole forms. Hello, Betty. Is that father coming over to join me, gentlemen? We shall join Charlie Dongbei instead. Wouldn't think of it, Betty. You must be surprised to see me, Ken. Why should I be? Only you and Dryer knew I was going to Hong Lin's. One of you prepared that snake trap. And Dryer doesn't wear perfume. The scent was still in the hut? Yeah. You know, Betty, your window dressing was perfect. No one would suspect the rich, young Miss Della Costa of any ulterior motives. In what way do you think I had one? You went just a little too far. Talked just a little too much about your lack of financial interest, your fortune. There was only a phony about it. And the chief's radiogram told me where he was. Hey, that's right. It told all about the gambling she was doing on the stock market. All the dough she lost. You were losing control of your stock in the Hanoi Mining Company, Betty. I needed big money to recoup. Money you could get by setting that rice dam was a site for that dam. So you tried everything you knew to get it moved down there. Even... Even to killing Dryer. Dryer? But it was Kalenda who got bumped That's off. a mistake, Pagan. The shadow on the wall fooled the killer. Which one of your stooges did it, Betty? Hong Lin or Dong Bei? It happened to be Dong Bei, Ken. Not that it matters. The knowledge will do you very little good now. Betty, better check with the commissioner from Benam before you pull that trigger. His men have this place surrounded. Sir, what is this, a trick? It is no trick, mademoiselle. I have warrants for your arrest on charges of sabotage and murder. You will please to surrender at once. Surrender? I don't think so, commissioner. Sit down, Pagan. Monsieur Thurston, you are all right. Yeah, but never mind me. Get the girl. But she has run into the mold forms, monsieur. She will get away at the other end. No, commissioner. No, she won't get away. Mr. Rex, that noise. They... Yeah. They... That's right, Pagan. They've started to pour the concrete. She's buried. Buried under all that concrete. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Yes, ma'am. You heard? Everything. As did the council for my village. My people and I, we shall never be able to thank you enough. Don't try. When that dam gets built, I'll have thanks enough. You need worry no longer, Mr. Thurston. Good night, and may God bless you and your nation for what you have done for us. Mr. X. Huh? That girl's really still alive. Of course she is, Pagan. Mama was reared humbly in the heart of Asia. And Betty Della Costa among the advantages of a modern world. But one thought only of her people. The other only of herself. Which one was really civilized? Sometimes it makes you wonder... Presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. 
to invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. A Frigidaire automatic washer? That's what I want next, Mr. Niles. You'll like it as well as your Frigidaire refrigerator, and that's saying a lot. When you're at your Frigidaire dealers, ask to see the new Frigidaire automatic clothes dryer and electric ironer, too. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Many people in Europe and elsewhere are desperately in need of food and clothing. If you would like to help, send $10 to the relief organization, CARE. And a well-chosen package of food or clothing will be delivered in your name to some needy family in the country of your choice. That's CARE, spelled C-A-R-E, and the address is simply New York City. Thanks for being with us. Next week, The Girl Who Didn't Remember, a most unusual story filled with mystery and suspense about a $15 million theft and a secret locked in the mind of... Oh, but why not listen to it and hear for yourself? As usual... Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall and Maurice Zim. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Now, Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Ken Thurston first saw the girl in the lobby of a New York building in which the offices of the Bureau were located. She was pleading with the elevator starter, pleading in a dazed, frightened manner. The man who is known as X. I must speak with him. It is about Maggiore, you understand? Per favore, please. I must speak with him. I... I must! A 
few minutes later, the girl sits quietly, a little frightened, in a private office at the bureau as Ken talks to her sympathetically. So you want to talk with this man called X? See, si. see, si, the man who is X. You know him, senor? I think I can help you find him, if you'll help me. Now, suppose you stop by telling me your name. My, my name, senor? Yes, that's right. But I do not know my name. That is strange, is it not? I, I do not know my own name. Oh, it's not important. It'll come to you. Do you remember why you came here to see him? But I have told you, senor. It is about Maggiore. You understand, senor. About, about Maggiore. Maggiore? No, no, you do not understand. But this man who is ex, he will know. See, he must know. Of course, but when we see him, you must tell me where you're from, what is troubling you. But I cannot do this, senor. I do not remember. I can remember nothing. Only that I must see the man called ex. About Maggiore. Please, per favore, take me to him, senor. He must help me. Please, please. Yes, I'll take you to him. But first, you'll rest a bit. Now, here, come with me. Come this way. Miss Brooks, will you see that the senorina rests comfortably for a half hour or so? And get in touch with Dr. Bowman at the hospital. I want her placed in his care. Certainly, Mr. Thurston. Here, you come with me, dear. Now, everything will be all right. Everything will be fine. Gracias. Did you get it on the dictograph, Chief? Yes, I got it, Ken. An amnesia case, eh? Sounds like it. Hmm, think it might be a fake? Dr. Beaumont will tell us. Mind if I use your office phone, Chief? No, go right ahead. Hello, Westman. Thurston. The uh, Spartivento sailed from Naples last week en route to New York. The Maggiore art collection was aboard. Oh, the Maggiore mm-hmm. art collection, of course. Yeah, now check on it and see where it is now, will you? Thanks. So you think the girl was talking about the Maggiore collection, eh, Ken? Could be. What do you know about the collection, Chief? Well, let's see. It's world famous, looted by the Nazis, recently recovered, and it's coming over here for some kind of public exhibition, isn't it? That's right. It's going to tour the country. Proceeds going to a rehabilitation fund for Italian war orphans. Yeah, but if that's what the girl was talking about, why should she look for you? The Bureau hasn't any interest in an art collection. I think we have, Chief. Huh? That collection means a new life for thousands of Italian kids. A chance to dig themselves out of the mess the war left them in. Well, sure, Ken, That's but I... why the collection is our responsibility. We've got to see that those kids get that chance. That they grow up as the next generation's decent citizens. And not as stormtroopers. Thurston here. Oh, yes, Thurston. Yeah. I see. Thanks. Spot event or doctor this morning, Chief. The Maggiore collection went through customs about an hour ago. And what do you want us to do, Ken? Chief... The truck taking the collection to the Norris Art Gallery was hijacked. The guard and driver killed. And the paintings are gone. Where are we going anyways, Mr. Thurston? Well, I'm not sure you want to go, Pagon, but the chief thought you might do a little job for the Bureau. Mr. X, that's out. Definitely, positively out. I don't want no jobs with the Bureau. That's what I thought. Well, can I drop you anywhere before I get to the Norris Art Gallery? The Norris Art Gallery? Well, that's where the Maggiore collection is. That's where it was going to be, before it was stolen. Stolen? But that thing's worth ten million bucks. Yeah. I'll drop you at this corner, Pagan. Ten million simoleons. Should be a pretty good reward for getting that stuff back, eh? Oh, the insurance company will pay off pretty well, sure. But as long as you're not interested. <laughs> uh, why should we be so hasty, Mr. X? Naturally, I don't want a job, but uh, I'll be glad to help you out. Yeah. Uh, just for old lang time, you understand. Uh, and 20 bucks a day in expenses, of course. Got it straight now, Pagan? Oh, sure. It's a cinch. While you talk to the manager, I make like a big shot art expert. Good. There's the gallery. Let's go in. There's the office, Mr. Thurston. It says 
Muriel Bowen, manager. Yeah, okay, Pedro. I'll see you back at the car. You understand, Miss Bowen, that I consider the loss of the Maggiore collection to be the result of unforgivable negligence on your part. I'm not particularly interested in your thoughts on the subject, Mr. Cameron. Well, as manager of this gallery, you should be. The dividing line between unforgivable and uh, criminal negligence may be a very narrow one. Good day, Miss Bowen. Pardon me, please. Certainly, yes, sir. May I come in, Miss Bowen? Why not? You're practically in now. Thanks. Did you enjoy your little eavesdrop? Sorry, I didn't mean to move in on a private conversation. That was J.B. Cameron, wasn't it? One of the uh, sponsors of the Maggiore Collection? I'm sure that Mr. Cameron and I don't know nearly as much about you. Oh, my name's Ken Thurston. I'm interested in the collection, too. How nice. An official interest? Let's put it this way. There's a good deal of money tied up in it that will be lost if it's not recovered. Only an insurance man would be interested in the money involved. I gather that Cameron seemed to think that you might be. What else have you gathered, Mr. Thurston? Only that you're the manager of the gallery and that your name is Muriel Bowen. I'm 28, single, and I've been here ever since I left art school six years ago. And I know absolutely nothing about the robbery. Does that help you? It might, if I could rely on that information. You will have to decide that for yourself, Mr. Thurston. Miss Goose, senor. That is a problem with which perhaps I may assist you. Oh? I am Luca Rosselli, senor. Representing the Italian organization which sent the majority collection over here. Well, I'm glad to know you, Rosselli. Senor Rosselli is also a carbon copy of J.B. Cameron in a way, Mr. Thurston. Go ahead, Luca. Tell the man how dishonest I am. Oh, I do not say that, senorita. I accuse no one of anything. I know only that it is of vital import that those paintings be recovered. You sound like an art lover. Art? I know nothing of art. I'm here to collect revenue for displaying those paintings. Money that is needed badly in Italy for the war orphans. Well, at least someone here realizes that those children will suffer the real loss. You're a very unusual insurance man, Mr. Thurston, placing the interests of Italian orphans above that of your company. This is a very unusual case, Miss Bowen. Yes, I know. You see, the real insurance man was here 15 minutes ago. That makes your interest in this matter most unusual. <laughs> Pagan, what luck did you have? Can always depend on his elsewhere. You know that Cameron guy? What about him? He thinks I'm a big shot art collector. You know, he's a collector himself. Specializes in Da Vinci painting. What's so important about that? Well, maybe I can pick up a bit of change. After all, I've got a friend who paints Da Vinci's even better than Da Vinci. I think you can make a better deal with Cameron. I can? How? Find the Maggiore collection for him. That's got two genuine Da Vinci's in it. the hurry-up call for me to come here to the hospital. They're going to get some answers from that little Italian girl. Oh, and she was faking amnesia. No, no, Bowman's given her an extensive examination. She's undergone traumatic shock with loss of memory. Yes, but where does the connection with the Maggiore robbery come in? Chief, I'm convinced that girl's mind holds the key to it. We've got to unlock it. But if she's got amnesia... Bowman's going to try sodium pentothal. Sodium pentothal? The stuff the army psychiatrists use for battle fatigue. Yeah. This girl has what amounts to the same thing. Some horrible shock has, has blocked her mind. But Beaumont's going to get her now. And within a few hours, we should have the answers to everything. Oh, hello, Beaumont. All set to go. I'm afraid not, Thurston. What's the matter? Something wrong? Well, I went to get that girl a little while ago. The room was empty. Empty? Well, how'd she get out? I don't know. I ordered a search. It's failed to turn her up. I'm sorry, Thurston, but that girl's disappeared.
just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Here's something to remember about the new Frigidaire refrigerators. They're made to fit. Made to fit your kitchen. Made to fit your needs. Because, you see, Frigidaire offers you a wide variety of refrigerator types and sizes. There's a size for small apartment kitchens, a size for big farm families, and many different sizes in between. These wonderful new Frigidaire refrigerators give you more room, up to half again as much space for storing foods, yet take up no more space in the kitchen. There's lots of shelf room, special places to keep things like tall bottles, fruits and vegetables, meats, eggs, and other small articles. Generous room in all models for safe storage of frozen foods. And to fit the most important requirement of all, your need for utmost dependability. Every one of these new Frigidaire refrigerators is powered by the famous Frigidaire Meter Miser, the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Remember how the new Frigidaire refrigerators are made to fit into your home, into your way of living. And always remember, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Maggiore art collection has been stolen. Thousands of Italian war orphans will be without rehabilitation unless it's recovered. And the girl who didn't remember, whose mind holds the key to the mystery, has disappeared. Now, an hour later at the Bureau office, Ken is talking to one of the Bureau's agents over the phone. Yeah, keep the knowledge gallery covered, Esmond. I want to report on everything that Muriel Bowen and Luca Rosselli do. Right. Call me back when you have anything. Oh, hello, Chief. Anything new? Not a thing, Ken. The girl seems to have dropped off the face of the earth. We've got to find her, Chief, before it's too late. Ken, are you sure we're not kicking up a big cloud of dust over nothing? Those paintings are bound to show up when they're offered for sale. They'll never be sold on the open market. There are collectors who will buy them purely for personal satisfaction. Yes? Oh, for you, Ken. Thanks. Hello. Hello, Mr. Thurston. This is Muriel Bowen. Yeah, I recognize your voice. How flattering. How do you get this number? A delightful friend of yours, the art collector. I believe his name is Zell Schmidt. I might have known. Well, don't feel too badly about it, Mr. Thurston. You see, you don't have to bother about the Maggiore collection anymore. Oh, why not? Because it was just returned to the gallery not five minutes ago. <laughs> Trying to get into the gallery, Mr. Thurston. Nobody's home. What are you doing here, Pagan? Oh, I just came back to get Mr. Cameron's address. I got a painting to sell him. A brand new Da Vinci. Strictly a part of my job for the bureau, you understand. Yeah, well, forget about it. Your job's over. Huh? The Maggiore print paintings have been returned. They're in the gallery now. Oh, no, they're not. What do you mean? Oh, I was just inside there. By accident, the key I just happened to have in my pocket fit at the back door. <laughs> and I know a Bellini or Da Vinci when I see one. And I didn't see one. Let's get to that rear door. Sure. It's right down in the back of this driveway. There it is, Mr. Thurston. Right where that big truck is parked. Yeah, let's take a look at that truck. So it's a truck, so what? A closed panel job. With a few bullet holes in it. Bullet holes? Mr. X. Yeah. This is the truck that was hijacked. Hey, then maybe the paintings are still in there. Well, Mr. X, are they? No, but somebody else is. Huh? What? A bureau agent named Esmond. With a bullet in his head. (laughs) 
Yes, what? Well, Mr. Thurston. May I come in, Muriel? Why, of course, Mr. Thurston. I'm honored. Say. I, uh, I suppose you stopped by about that telephone call. An explanation might help. It was merely a stupid mistake. One of the attendants told me the truck had been returned. I misunderstood, thinking he meant the painting. I called you before I checked. Yeah, that could happen to anyone. You should have told me you were going to drop in. I'd have had the apartment more presentable. Or you wouldn't have been here at all. Why, Mr. Thurston, how can you say such things? Those suitcases and half-packed clothes said them first. Ah, the evil finger of suspicion. It moves, it writes, and still spells my name. Why not try erasing it? Never erase a line once drawn seeking perfection. The line may be improved, but the soul of art destroyed. My art teacher taught me that once. Art school? The Matisse and Picasso on your wall? Painting means a lot to you, doesn't it, Muriel? Ah, you've uncovered my scarlet secret, Mr. Thurston. Yes, it means almost everything. My job at the Norris Gallery. I wonder if you can understand how I feel about it. As though it were a sort of trust. I can understand that. Then can you understand how I felt when the Maggiore collection was stolen? The collection I was responsible for? You can't run away from responsibility, Muriel. There's no law that says a person is a criminal because he can't face his own conscience. No. But there is a law against kidnapping. Kidnapping? That nurse's uniform on the Devonport. Too bad you didn't get it packed before I came in. Where's the girl, Muriel? In the bedroom? Yes, Ken. Yes, she is. Think of it, Mr. Cameron. Where else could you pick up such a bargain? A genuine Da Vinci. And for only, uh, shall we say, uh, 5,000 bucks? That is quite a bargain, Mr. Zellschmidt. Why let it go so reasonably? <laughs> you hit the nail on the hammer, Mr. Cameron. Yeah, You know how it is when you need some ready cash. Or need to get rid of a stolen painting. Stolen? But I swear by the father of my father, uh, Mr. Cameron. What about that, Roselli? Is this Da Vinci part of the Maggiore collection? Senor Cameron, that painting was never in any collection. You're so right, Senor Roselli. <laughs> it was passed down in my family. From hand to mouth, you understand. It, uh... <clears throat> Your pardon, Mr. Cameron. There's a Mr. Ken Thurston to see you. Oh, no. Uh, show him in, please, William. Yes, sir. This way, please, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Hope you don't mind my barging in on you like this, Mr. Cameron. No, not at all, Mr. Thurston. You're the uh, insurance man Roselli was telling me about, aren't you? I'd like to talk to you about the collection. Oh, yes, of course. Roselli dropped in for the same reason. Frankly, we got nowhere, and uh, we're just amusing ourselves listening to a sales talk about this Da Vinci copy. Copy? Any fool would know that, Zellschmidt. Well, look look at the necklace on the portrait. The links in several places are not even joined. Now, do you think that Da Vinci would ever make a mistake like that? But the... A copy is bound to look pretty shabby compared to the paintings you have here, Cameron. Yes. They are pretty fine, aren't they? Yes, that Franz Hal, for instance. One of the best I've ever seen. <laughs> I practically had to kidnap the owner in Amsterdam to keep the Frick collection from getting it. And that uh, coil. I don't think he's ever had a finer feeling for the haze of twilight than in that one. No. No, it cost me 10000 more than I wanted to pay. Old man Carpenter was bidding against me. But I got oh, it. Oh, senores, please. This is all very interesting, but we should be discussing the Majora collection. Art is not as important at this time as those children in Italy. You're right, Signor Vaselli. And I've good news for you. We found a young girl, an amnesia case, who apparently knows all about it. Why, that's wonderful, Thurston. But if she has amnesia, how can she tell you anything? She's going under sodium pentothal at the hospital tonight. I think she's going to tell us all we need to know. Sixty-four. Sixty-three. Sixty-three. Sixty-two. Sixty-four. 
Lights, please, nurse. All right, Thurston, she's ready. We can begin. Now, you understand the procedure? I think so, Doctor. we have got to make a face the thing that brought on the traumatic shock. Bring it out in the open. You're here because the man called X is the one thing she's clinging to. So when she talks directly to you, answer her. But when we reach the point where the trauma began, I'll take over and reconstruct the situation with her. I understand. Good. I'll ask her if she can hear you. Can you hear me, Signorina? This is the man called X. Can you hear me? I can hear. Senor X. You were looking for me, Signorina? See. Si. See, si, I was looking for you. Friends. Friends. Friends of yours told you about me? Children. Neighbors. You helped them. Ask her why she needed help. Why do you need help, Signorina? It is about Majori. About Majori. The Majori art collection. I see. The paintings. I've come for the children. Nothing can happen. Nothing. You must help. You must help. Help with what? What help did you need? Where? The boat. The boat from Naples. It... And... You're aboard the boat, Signorina. You understand? Aboard the boat. No! No! You're aboard the boat sailing from Naples to the United States. No! Aboard the boat with the Maggiore Art no! Collection. No! You cannot do it! You cannot do it! Why can't I do it? The children! Nothing can happen to them! Nothing! What do I care about the children? What do they mean to me? What do you say, that? You of all people, how can you say that? Those children mean nothing to me. Only those paintings matter. I do not believe you. No. After the war, what we've been through together, you cannot steal it. You cannot. I'm going to steal it. Do you hear me? I'm going to. You can't stop me. No. I will not let you. I will not let you. What do you care whether I steal those paintings or not? How can you say that? How can you? What does it matter to you? Why do you care? How do I care? Are we not? Are we not? Why do you care? Why do you care? How can you say that? Look, look, at me, fratello. Look, at my own brother. How can you say that? Bravo, sir. So the secret's out at last. Keep quiet, you fool. You'll endanger the patient's welfare. Do not endanger your own welfare by any foolish moves, doctor. Look, look, at me, fratello. My own brother. Stealing. It's all right, Nina. It's all right. There's nothing to be afraid of. Quiet now. Everything's all right. Just wait. Just wait. No, do not move either, Thurston. I will not hesitate to use this gun. I know, Rosetta. Just like you use it on Espen. When you caught you driving the truck back to the gallery to throw suspicion on Muriel. I see. It is unfortunate that you discovered my sister. Otherwise, you would have suspected only Signorina Bowen. No, Rosetta, you gave yourself away. By trying too hard to convince me you knew nothing about art. And we're only concerned about money for the children. But you slipped when you told Pagan why his copy of Da Vinci was a fake. No amateur would have noticed. Muriel suspected you too. Signorina Boyne? Yes. That's why she tried to get Nina out of town. She was afraid you'd find her and kill her to keep her from talking. And you would have too, wouldn't you, Rosselli? <laughs> She's a fool, Signor. Why should I not kill her? Sure. What's a little murder compared to money? Esmond, your sister, thousands of kids in Italy whose future depends on those paintings. Well, you're not going to get away with it, Rosselli. Oh, brave words, Signor Thurst. But words will not stop me from pulling this trigger and disposing of all of you. I figured that. Okay, Chief, turn on the lights. You bet, Cam. Yeah. Oh, hold those men. Watch what? it, Chief. He's going to shoot. Oh. Nice going, Ken. The trap worked out perfectly. That's all the proof we need. Except one thing. He didn't tell us where the paintings are. I think we'll find them at Cameron's, Chief. Cameron? Yeah. In some secret gallery where he can sit and gloat over them. They didn't represent art to him any more than they did to Rosselli. To one, possession. The other, money. Then it's all over, eh, Ken? No, Chief, it's just beginning. For some thousands of kids in Italy. You know, those kids are like a blank canvas. And we're the painters. 
What we put into that canvas will determine its future. Maybe a masterpiece whose effect will be felt for generations. Maybe a worthless smear that will wind up in the junk pile of the world. I wonder what it's going to be. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Mr. Niles, you mentioned Frigidaire electric ranges just now. Not only mentioned them, but invited you to visit your Frigidaire dealer and see for yourself how wonderful it is to cook with a fast, clean, fully automatic Frigidaire electric range. And now Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, the story of a hundred displaced people who dream of a promised home in Burma, only to be rudely awakened by someone's ruthless desire for power. As usual, Leon Velasco will be along as Pagon Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Our Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Behind the switchboard in the outer office of the Bureau, Miss Brooks is usually able to prevent visitors from getting past her into the Chief's office. But there's one exception. Pagan Zellschmidt. But what's the difference, Mr. Chief? I knew you'd be happy to see me, of course, so why should I wait to have myself announced? Well, Schmidt, get out. Where's Mr. Thurston? Australia. You can get a plane out in 30 minutes. If I didn't know you so well, I wouldn't know you were trying to get rid of me. But this is important. So just tell me where he is now. Oh, Chief. Ken. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, hello, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, I just found out that... Look, Chief. Have you seen this morning's paper? Why, no, Ken, I was... uh... But, Mr. Thurston, do you know that... Later, Pagan. Here, Chief, take a look. Hmm? Down at the bottom of the page. Oh. Oh, Rangoon, Burma. Though few details are yet available, apparently a condition of serious unrest prevails in the Principality of Tavoy, 500 miles south of here, following the shooting yesterday of a man named Paul Zolly. Zolly died a few minutes after... Paul Zolly? Ken, that's not the... That's right, Chief. The leader of that group of displaced persons who left Poland to find new homes around Rangoon. Mr. Thurston, just let me well, tell you... It must I... have been six months ago, Ken. About that. They landed near the south end of the peninsula and started over land through the jungle. But they never reached Burma. Well, uh, what happened to them? We know what happened to one of them. 
He's dead. In Tavoy. Won't somebody please? I knew Paul Zali, chief. And I know what that chance of a new life in Burma meant to him and to the rest of those homeless people who went with him. We can't sit back and leave them in trouble over there. I'm going over. Have a look at it. Mr. Thurston, I've been trying to tell you. I got an old friend in Tavoy. Oh. Who is it, Pagan? Prince Khan, the guy who runs the joint. The prince, eh? You know him pretty well? Oh, sure. I lived there in the palace for six months. All right, then. How about coming along with me? The um, usual expenses, of course. Must be something wrong with the acoustics in here. Can't hear a thing. Plus a couple of hundred bucks. A couple of hundred? No, I can hear you as plain as anything. Mr. Thurston, when do we leave? We'll have to land at the coast 40 miles from Tavoy. And the road's no good. They let everything run down during the war. Even tore up the railroad to Rangoon. Mm, it sounds as though Tavoy was pretty well isolated. Oh, it's clear off the map. Nothing new in a thousand years. Well, there's at least one new thing. A gun. You know, I think some bandit probably bumped off Paul Zarley. The jungle is full of them, Mr. X. Then what's the matter with the prince? Can't he clean him out? Too lazy and don't like to be bothered. He's got the right idea of how to live, Mr. Thurston. Just loafs around all day, listens to music, and drinks champagne. While a stranger in his country, a man tried to take care of a group of homeless refugees, gets shot to death in the city streets. Oh, the prince probably doesn't even know about it yet. Troubles gets him all upset, uh, so the only thing he... Hey, that's right. He's a sucker for stud poker. Maybe I can take this 200 bucks and run it up into... Hey, gone. How did you meet this prince, anyway? Oh, I was loafing around Mandalay and heard he was looking for a jingoist. Huh? So I came down to Tavoy and spent six months learning him how to talk good English. Palace Gate, right there at the corner of the square, Mr. Thurston. I told you this place was a regular paradise. Looks more like a powder keg. I can't understand it. These people didn't used to be so unfriendly. I'll have to ask my old friend, the prince, what's wrong. I hope he's your old friend. We may need him. <laughs> well, if ever I saw a town that was smoldering under the surface, this one is. What happened? Somebody threw a rock. Broke a shop window over there. They're starting a riot. A riot? Holy smoke, what's happened to this town? It's flaring up pretty fast. This is the kind of thing that... There go the palace guards, Mr. Thurston. They ought to be able to stop it. Mm. Fired over their heads. Looks like they're breaking it up, all right. Good thing they were right here. But if one's got out of hand, it's hard to tell what might have... What's wrong with you? Why did you not help? Huh? Why should you stand here with... Oh, you're not one of us. Who do you mean by us? I made a mistake. I beg your pardon. No, 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 you wait. My name's Ken Preston. I'm Helen Zali. Zali, that... Then was Paul Zali... He was my father. I'm sorry, Helen. About what happened to him. My father was shot in the back, Mr. Preston. Here in this very square. He died not more than 20 feet from where we stand. You know who killed him? I know who had him killed. Neruda. Neruda? A Burmese native, sir. Leader of the sugar farmers here in Tavoy. Oh, Mr. Strong. Hope I'm not intruding, Helen. Oh, no, Mr. Strong. This is Mr. Thurston. How do you do? How do you do? Are you one of this homeless group, Mr. Strong? No, I've made my home here in Tavoy for the last two years. I came here from Cuba. Mr. Strong has been the one friend we've had here. Had it not been for him, we should have starved. And unfortunately, one friend for a hundred helpless people just isn't enough. I, I could certainly use an ally, Mr. Thurston. That means helping a group of people who never should have been kicked around in the first place. Then I am an ally. Perhaps you're making a mistake, Mr. Thurston. We're the most thoroughly hated people in Tavori. Why did you stop here, Helen? I understood you were going to settle on new farmlands around Rangoon. We were. Till Neruda's men attacked us in the jungle as we passed through here and robbed us of everything we owned. We're penniless now. 
So even though we starve here, we're unable to travel on. Maybe I ought to have a talk with this Neruda. He seems to be the... Mr. Thurston, look. Here comes my buddy, the prince. Evidently you heard the disturbance out here in the square. The greetings and felicitations, old pal. How you been anyway? I, uh, I, uh, uh, you do remember me, don't you? Quite well, Mr. Zellschmidt. I have thought of you often during the last eight years. <laughs> well, that's better. You see, Mr. Thurston, particularly in connection with a very interesting deck of cards I found in your quarters after you left. The deck had uh, six aces. Well, of all the low-down tricks, hmm, somebody must have been cheating us. Yes, probably so. Uh, good afternoon, Miss Darley, Your Mr. Highness. Strong. Your Highness. Mr. Thurston... I'd like you to meet my dear pal, uh, Prince Khan. Your Highness. I yes. hope you will not judge us by the incident which just occurred here in the street, Mr. Thurston. I dislike trouble of any kind. Then you should do something about Rudin and his people. They started the fight without the least provocation on our part. Ah, Miss Zali, is it not always the very beautiful who cause the most trouble? Well, whenever trouble is involved, the name Neruda seems to turn up about as often as anybody is. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Thurston. I overheard you express an intention of visiting the man. I must advise you not to. In fact, I shall assign a guard to make sure you refrain from it. Any particular reason, Your Highness? Uh, yes. Such an action is only likely to create a disturbance and cause more trouble. I must go look into this matter. May I suggest you seek a formal audience tomorrow? But how go about the game of... Uh, how about the... Well, anyway, he... He's gone. Yeah, your old pal. Oh, just give me some time to work on them. Uh, I've got to be going now, too, Mr. Thurston. Uh, dine with me this evening, if you're free. Fine, Mr. Strong, I'd love to. Uh, it's the house on top of the hill. Make it about eight, if you can. Yes. I suppose that includes me, too. Well, Helen, that was quite a story you gave the prince. I mean, about the way the fight started. I do not understand you, Mr. Thurston. Oh, come now. I stood right here and watched you pick up a rock from the street. And then deliberately throw it through that shop window. Don't you think that's pretty strong provocation? See, Mr. Thurston, the lines between the two factions are pretty clearly drawn. On one side, uh, around a hundred of these homeless people from Europe, led by Helen Zali, now that her father's dead. And against them, several hundred Burmese tenant farmers with their unofficial leader, Neruda. Just what is the basis of their hatred for each other, Mr. Strong? Well, I'd say it is lack of understanding, suspicion more than anything else. Difference of race, languages, different ways of life. That's the hardest thing in the world to fight. Well, the Burmese have the idea these people may try to move in and take their tiny farms that they rent. Things have been getting worse for weeks, but Zali's murder really touched it off. Neruda, you think? Oh, I don't know. Of course, Helen blames him for it, as well as for the bandit attack some months ago when they first reached here. The bandits couldn't have been some of Prince Khan's guards by any chance. Oh, it's possible, I suppose, but I can't see any reason why. It only means trouble for him and... That's the last thing in the world that Khan wants. Sometimes it's hard to tell what a person wants. Uh, when you look out of these windows, down into the heart of the city, you'd never believe what was boiling there. Hawaii could be the most beautiful place on earth. Yes. How have these people been able to live since they were robbed by the bandits? In charity. Helen has managed to get a little help from Prince Khan. And the rest from you? Well, yes, but what can one man do for a hundred people? Yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? Yeah, a good deal tougher on them, poor devils. They're at the breaking point, and will be until they find some permanent solution. From what I've seen of Tavoy, they'd better get it no later than tomorrow. It'll take just one more incident to blow the lid off.
we're five minutes early. Here's the palace. All he said about noon, Mr. Thurston. That's when he sent word for Neruda to come here. Still don't know how you did it. It wasn't easy. It took me till three o'clock this morning. Wonder where the palace guard is today. Nobody around the gate. Oh, probably eating lunch. Hey, get a load of this garden, Mr. Thurston. Yeah, it's beautiful, all right. That's the main entrance over there, past the fountain. The Khan says the palace was built over... Gee, what's all this racket out there in the square? I don't know. Sounds as though something happened. Mr. Thurston. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Helen, what's wrong? Out there, somebody was just shot. Shot? Yes, a little girl. There in the square outside the gate. Oh, huh? Come on, Pagan. That's funny. I didn't hear any shot, Mr. Thurston. Nor I. Boy, that crowd sure got out there in a hurry. Yes. Oh, there she is, lying on the ground. Gee, Mr. Thurston, she's such a little girl. I know. No more than five or six years old. Is she? I mean... Yes, Helen. She's dead. It should not be necessary to ask such a question, Miss Ali. Oh, no, Rhoda. I... My congratulations. Your assassin was an excellent shot. So you're Neruda, and the little girl, one of your people? Yes. And there will be a hundred bodies in the street by noon tomorrow, but they will not be my people. Neruda, listen to me. I know how you feel. Do you? Then you too must have once come to a conference to speak of peace, only to find that the one who is lying murdered in the dust is your own sister. Just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. There's an easy way to tell how good a refrigerator is. And that's to see what kind of a job it does in the summertime. Take a Frigidaire refrigerator, for example. With its extra storage space, you have plenty of room in the summertime for chilled salads, desserts, melons, and other treats. Plenty of room all the year round for all the foods you want to keep refrigerated. There's lots of room for frozen foods that make meals so easy in the summer and in any season of the year. Big hydrators keep fruits and vegetables fresh as can be for days. Frigidaire quick cube trays give you ice cubes without a struggle, so cool drinks are really enjoyable. And providing all the cold required to keep food good to eat, to freeze foods and keep them frozen, to keep you supplied with ice cubes, is the famous Frigidaire Meter Miser. You know the Meter Miser will do its work faithfully because it's the simplest refrigerating mechanism ever built has proved itself in over five million insulations, uses only a trickle of current. Remember how a Frigidaire refrigerator passes the all-important hot-weather test. And remember, for all the advantages you want all the year round, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. In a tiny principality on the Burma Peninsula, a bloody riot seems ready to break at any moment. On one side is a group of displaced persons led by Helen Zarley, and against them, several hundred Burmese sugar farmers led by a man named Neruda whose sister was killed in the street a half hour ago. Now Ken is sitting in a palace, talking to Prince Khan, the ruler of Tavoy. I have placed a line of guards between the native section of the city and the encampment of the others. But the number of guards I have, Mr. Thurston, are far too few. Has there been any attempt to break through the guard line yet, Prince Khan? Apparently not. And I doubt there will be before evening. However... Both sides have a few guns and many knives. Once darkness falls, nothing can prevent a riot. Then we've got to prevent it before dark. Why didn't you wire Rangoon for help? I, I did not wish to cause any trouble. Well, you've got trouble out there now, whether you want it or not. Plenty of it. And more coming. 
The guard will resist as long as possible. That won't be long enough. There. There is nothing else to do. Then in that case, I'll take over. You have some plan? I will have. Will you be here if I want you? Yes, Mr. Thurston. I have sent for Miss Darley. I hope I can persuade her to listen to reason. I think you'll have some trouble persuading her, but maybe you know that already. All right. I'll see you later. One cannot be sure. There is much danger, but let us hope so. Well, Mr. Thurston, how'd you come out? Well, hello, Pago. Mr. Strong. That city outside there is like a sleeping volcano, Mr. Thurston. I don't see what can be done now. No, I at the moment. Mr. Strong, how well do you know the prince? So, so, why do you ask? Well enough to force your company on him for about an hour, stick with him, and keep him from shaking you off? I think so. If it's important, I'll manage it. One way or another. It's important, all right. Then here goes. I may as well stop right now. What are we going to do, Mr. Thurston? I've got a job for you, Pagan. Here's a list of the landowners these Burmese farmers rent from. I want you to look them up, ask each of them a couple of questions. Meet me there at the palace gate in an hour, and we'll start the next move. Sure, sure. Anything you say. Well, this is a new reaction. Are you kidding, Mr. Thurston? I'm too scared even to bargain. What do you want me to ask these guys? If I had known this was what you were planning, I'd have never come back to the palace. I'd be halfway to the coast by now. Oh, relax, Pagan. Nobody's bothered us yet. No, no, but the way they look, they may any minute. This is a fine time to come prowling down here in the native section. Had to be done. Oh, that must be Eroda's headquarters there. What did you find off the landowners? Oh, it's about like you figured, Mr. Thurston. Farming is practically the only business here. Huh? The prince gets most of his taxes of the farm, and... Why don't we go back to the palace, hmm? I've got to talk to Neruda first. Come on. I don't think these guys at the door are going to let us pass. They will stop. Mr. Rex, what are they cocking their rifles for? Take it easy, Pega. Not sure. Very well. Come in, Mr. Thurston. This is really quite a surprise. Even the palace guards have not dared to come into this section since noon. Maybe they didn't have any reason, Neruda. I did. If it is talk you wish, the time for it is past. Why don't you wake up? Don't you know what will happen afterwards? Martial law. That'll make life pleasant for everybody, won't it? It is too late for talk. Well, you're right about that. It is too late. So let's go. Go? I do not understand you, Mr. Thurston. I came here to take you back to the palace, Neruda. Let's get started. Mr. Thurston. You plan to take me to the palace through streets filled with my own men? You are a brave man, Mr. Thurston. Let's trade compliments later. Don't have much time right now. You arouse my curiosity. I am inclined to go along with you in order to discover what you have in mind. <laughs> I never thought we'd make it. Oh, good. Everyone's apparently gathered there at the palace gate. Come on. You display an amazing confidence, Mr. Thurston. You know, of course, what would have happened had I raised my hand at any time. I know, Neruda, but I was pretty sure you wouldn't. Mr. Thurston, if I had known where you were going, I'd been a lot more worried than I have been for the past hour. There wasn't any real danger, Mr. Strong. Oh, Helen, glad you're here. Thought I might have to send for you. Prince Khan here did send for me, though I've no idea why. And I did not expect to meet a killer here. Are you claiming that I killed my own sister? It would not surprise me, Neruda. You would do anything to make it appear that there is a... This kind of thing needs no place. It's not over a half hour until dark. You've got a lot to do. Not much time to do it. How much longer must I follow your advice without seeing some result, Mr. Thurston? Not too much longer, Prince Khan. 
Right now, I want you to detail five men from your palace guard to work under instructions from Pagar. Well, a bodyguard? I feel safer already. Neruda, Helen, I want both of you to send word to your people not to make any move until they hear from you personally. I'm not sure my men will obey, Mr. Thurston, but I shall do as you say. I can promise you that my people will do exactly what I tell them to. If you think for one Never moment... Never mind, just do it. Mr. Strong, is it all right if we meet at your house? It's the only neutral territory I know of. Yes, of course. Neutral territory? But why not my palace here, Mr. Thurston? No, Prince Khan, not the palace. All right, get moving. Oh, this is that most is strange. strange. Now, Pagan... Here's what I want you to do. It's grown dark outside. What is it you're planning, Mr. Thurston? Nothing, Helen. Until Pagon gets here. Uh, let's have a window open. Never knew this city to be this quiet. Let's hope it stays this quiet for one more hour. Helen, why did you break that window and start a street fight yesterday? It was a bakery shop, Mr. Thurston. Have you ever been starving and looked through a window at loaves of bread? I know the feeling, all right. And it's the same feeling that's behind this whole thing. Your people without enough food and without hope of getting any more... The rudest people afraid you might try to take theirs. Hunger and fear. The powder keg combination. And in a country ruled by a man who dislikes trouble. Okay, Mr. Thurston. It's all fixed up. I got everything taken care of. Good work, Pagan. Set the box on the table. Okay. He wants 30 seconds to get clear after he puts it up. My curiosity is increasing, Mr. Thurston. Why, Neruda? It's the same old story. The love of power. Ambition to be a dictator. And hungry, desperate people ready to be used for that ambition. But why was my father killed and Neruda's sister? To bring about the very thing that's ready to break out down there in those quiet streets tonight. Riot. Bloodshed. And then martial law. You seem to forget one thing, Mr. Thurston. I inherited the throne of Tavoy from my father. I am already a dictator. Are you really, Prince Khan? There's a signal, Mr. Thurston. The temple bell. Yes. Yeah, and there's the light. Yeah, I see it, Pagan. What is it, a flashlight? Sure. And it's on the top of a pile about six feet high. Good. Here. Take my gun and keep everybody covered while I let this box open. What? It's a rifle. It's the best gun in the arsenal. Got a telescopic sight, a night glass. The works. Except for a silencer. But we can get along without that. I put a full clip in, just in case, you understand. Ah, thanks, Pagan. Well, I suppose we have a try at it. I do not understand what you're doing. It's a hit. Set it on fire with the first shot. Look, a flame. What's burning down there, Mr. Thurston? A pile of timber soaked with kerosene that Pagon set up. That was an incendiary bullet I used. But what is the meaning that of it? That flame is burning in the square on the exact spot where Helen's father was killed. And the rudest sister died 15 feet away. But then in that case... That's right, Helen. The killer fired the shots from this window. No, don't bother trying to open that cabinet, Mr. Strong. I took your rifle out this afternoon while you were watching the prince. Do you mean that Mr. Strong is the one who... Who else could it have been? He's the only one who had a reason. But he was the only one who wanted to help us. Sure, he wanted to help everybody, including the landowners. According to them, Strong has been very generous, made loans to all of them, and he's ended up controlling their properties. But I still do not understand his reason, Mr. Thurston. That's what I said before, Prince Khan. If a riot had started, you would have been declared... You would have had to declare martial law. But Tavoy is a one-industry country. Your taxes come from the farms. So, the man who controls the land controls you. Now, it's about time you woke up. Boy, what a racket. Never do. Thank heaven neither of us was guilty. I am sure we can work out a decent life now, Miss Sally. That's right. It's too late to help your father, Helen. Or your sister, Neruda. But it's not too late to teach your people once and for all that very often when a man says he wants to help you, all he really wants to do is help himself. 
Your people down there are still blaming each other. So go on out and tell them the truth. Presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer, we invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. I'm glad to hear that Frigidaire makes home freezers, Mr. Niles. We've been wondering what kind to buy. Yes, you know you can depend on Frigidaire's years of experience and on the meter miser that makes the cold in a Frigidaire home freezer. And now, Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, a story called Contraband, in which the goodwill of two nations is threatened by one person's greed. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zelschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. It all started with that long distance call from Monterey, Mexico. Pagan Zellschmidt was on the wire. After all, it's really nothing, Mr. Thurston. Just a small teensy favor. All you have to do is drop down here for a couple of days and get me out of jail. So Pagan's in jail in Monterey, Ken. That's right, Chief. For being mixed up in a smuggling ring. Ah, good riddance. Well, as a matter of fact, I was thinking of flying to Monterey and seeing what I could do. Now, wait a minute, Ken. That chiseler's not worth five minutes of bureau time. Maybe not. That smuggling racket is. Huh? Chief, about a year ago, the Mexican government stopped all non-essential imports. Yes, yes, I know. They need to conserve their dollars for farm machinery, irrigation projects, industrial equipment. Right. To better living conditions for the Mexican people. So what's happened? There's a steady stream of luxury goods being smuggled across the border from the United States. Draining off those mighty precious dollars. That's all true enough, Now, now, please, Ken. Now, Chief, the Mexican people are starting to blame us. They're good neighbors for the fact that luxury goods are available and the essentials of living are not. And if there ever was a time in history when nations have to be good neighbors. Mm. Okay, Ken. You'd better get started from Monterey. Now, 
Naturally, with your credentials, Senor Thurston, we shall be happy to release Senor Zelschmidt into your custody. Thanks, Inspector Martinez, but uh, how'd you happen to pick him up? Well, there is a place on the border road to Laredo, Texas. We have suspected for a long time of being a rendezvous for the smugglers. We prepared a trap two nights ago. And Zelschmidt walked into it, huh? See, si. We have held him incommunicado ever since. However, I am pretty well convinced by now that he knows little about this smuggling. Yeah, but maybe we better, we better learn just what that little is. I was hoping you would remain here and work with us, senor. With the goodwill of the people of both our countries affected by this smuggling, it is imperative that... Oh, pardon. Yeah. See? Si? Senor Angala. Bueno. Uh, there is a senor Angala here who owns a small ranch nearby. He called a short while ago saying he had some information that might concern the smuggling. I thought you might care to meet with him. Of course, Inspector. Buenas tardes, Inspector. ¿Cómo estás, eh? Bueno, gracias, Angala. Senor Thurston, this is Senor Angala. Glad to know you, Senor. And uh, you, Senor Thurston. Welcome to our city of Monterey. He means that, Senor Thurston. He has a soft spot in his heart for Los Americanos. Si, sí, Senor. Are we not all Americanos? Oh, of course, Angala. And I know that is the reason why you are here now. You can speak freely before Senor Thurston. Ah, bueno. Senores, yesterday at twilight, while riding toward a remote arroyo near the border of my land, I came upon a band of men with pack horses. Pack horses? Si. Sí. What were they doing there? Well, when I rode toward them to inquire, they greeted me with a hail of bullets. Mm, pretty rough thanks for your hospitality. Si, si. Particularly as that lonely arroyo might be quite useful as a hiding place for smuggled goods. You, uh, you could ascertain nothing definite? They outnumbered me. But perhaps you could learn something from this man Zelchmidt. Or you might go out and investigate for yourself. I only hope it will prove to be of use to you. Now, senores, if you will excuse me, I have supplies to purchase for my rancho. Uh, Senor Thurston, I extend to you the hospitality of my rancho. Oh. Please to avail yourself of it, eh? Adios, senores. Adios, Angelo. Well, Senor Thurston, shall we ride to the rancho? I think I'd better stick around with Zelschmidt, Inspector. As you wish. Though I do not believe he will be as cooperative as Angala. Maybe Angala was a little too cooperative. I am not certain I understand, senor. If Pagan Zelschmidt was held here incommunicado, Inspector, how come Angala knew he was under arrest? to you, Mr. Thurston. It happened like I say. I was down here temporarily embarrassed for funds when this guy Carlos came up to me and gave me a C-note to carry an envelope to somebody on the border road. What was in that envelope, Pagan? Nothing. It was empty. And for this, that Martinez character tosses me into the clink. <laughs> Some miscarriage of justice, huh, Mr. Thurston? I'll let you know when you turn up Carlos for me. Well, uh, there's El Café del Oro where I met that joker. Maybe he isn't there right now. Let's go in and see. I don't see hide nor seek of him, Mr. Thurston. Maybe he... Hey, there's Stu Harding. Stu Harding? Sure, a Texan. He knows Carlos. Anyway, he said hello to him. Let's talk to him. Hello, Mr. Harding, my amigo friend. Well, howdy, gents. This is Mr. Thurston, one of my oldest, dearest friends. Glad to know you, Thurston. Sit down. It ain't every day I get a chance to shoot the breeze with folks from back home. Thanks, honey. What are you doing in these year parts, Thurston? Well, no, right now I'm looking for a man by the name of Carlos. Carlos, huh? Oh, the man Zelsmith was talking to the other night. Huh? That's the guy, Mr. Hardy. Do you know where we could latch on to him? Nope. Ain't seen him since that night. I knew it. See, Mr. Thurston? That crook knew something was wrong, so he used me for a guinea hand. You saying that Carlos is a crook? Sure. <laughs> Seems like I've been running into nothing but crooks out of the border here. Well, uh, I don't like to lock horns, El Schmidt, but I kind of like these Joes down here. Don't seem no different to me than nobody else. Just trying to get along in the world like you and me. 
Well, sure, Mr. Harding. I, well, I, I didn't... Way I to figure me... it, don't matter much what country a man's from, just as long as it's real people. How's that hit you, Thurston? I'll swing along, Harding, but that's not getting us any closer to Carlos. Yeah, that's right. But maybe Juanita could help you. Juanita? Yeah, the girl sitting at that table over there. Hey, look at that boy with a torrid tamale. Yeah. Juanita knows just about everybody who's ever been in Monterey. Why not ask her about this, Carlos? Thanks for the tip, Harding. I will. Sure, I- I'm right with you, Mr. Thurston. See you later, Peg. But, Mr. Thurston. Buenos noches, senorita. May I join you? It took you long enough to ask, senor. Oh? I've been hoping you would join me for ten minutes now. Any particular reason why? A handsome senor from the United States. You are fair game for Juanita, senor. Well... That's being frank enough. Why not? You find me attractive, no? Very. I find you the same. Oh, thanks. So? What is it you wish of me, senor? A song to buy me a drink? I'm a very agreeable person. What is your pleasure? At the moment, a very simple one. Some information. Oh, you please support me, senor. Sorry, but I was wondering if you knew a man around here by the name of, uh, Carlos. <laughs> Do you know a man in the United States by the name of Smith? No. <laughs> Not many are familiar with the border roads of Laredo. So, you know, senor, there is nothing Juanita would not do for a friend. Do I qualify? That would depend. On what? On how much it was worth to you. Mm Mm-hmm. What is the price of friendship these days? I think I could be a very good friend for $200, American. Happy? Gracias. You know, I'm a Carlos, senor. The marketplace? See. Mm-hmm. The cattle stores at the north end. If you will be there in two hours from now, I think you will find what you seek. I can depend on that. How could you doubt it, senor? After all, are we not friends? <laughs> your pardon, but it's important that I speak with you, sir. That's all right, Angola. What's on your mind? Oh, I was returning from the marketplace when I saw you leaving El Café del Oro. I feel that I must warn you, senor. Warn me? What about? Well, there are certain people who frequent that café who have no love for those from the United States. Believe me, I found that out. Yeah. I wonder if Stu Harding knows that. Uh, senor Harding? You know him? I see. see. He owns the ranch directly next to mine. We have become quite good neighbors. That could be very interesting, Angola. Oh? Huh? What do you mean, Senor Thurston? That ravine where you saw those men and pack horses. Didn't you say it was near the border of your land? See, si, see, si, that is correct. It lies directly between. Senor. Between your ranch and Harding's. See, si, Senor, but I, I never gave it a thought. Yeah. He has been such a good neighbor. I guess it's hard to tell sometimes just what. just how far good neighbor policy will go. <laughs> go with you to find this, Carlos. Hmm? After all, I could be back at the cafe giving that Juanita three or four degrees. Forget it, Pagan. I want you to identify him. But it's so dark here at this time of night. Why did Juanita have to pick such a lonely spot anyways? Now, these cattle stalls are just up ahead. We'll know in a few minutes whether or not... Get down, Pagan, get down. Good neighbors. Somebody's hurt up there, Pagan. Come on. But I'm perfectly happy here with the car, Mr. Thurston. Come on. Uh, uh, hey. Hey, that's Carlos, Mr. Ricks. Boy, you really got him. No, I didn't get him. He was shot in the back. In the back? Yeah. Uh, Carlos. Carlos, can you hear me? Who shot you? Can't. Can't tell. Carlos. Somebody double-crossed you to keep you from talking. Now, who did it? Who's back of this? Do not know... 
Then who do you get your orders from? Can you tell me that? Orders? Get orders from... Yes. Get orders from... Angala. House is all lit up. That Senor Angala must be expecting us. Then we won't disarm. Take on. Come on. Take on. Come on. Hey, the ranch house is all lit up. That Senor Angala must be expecting us. Then we won't disappoint him. Take on. Come on. like that. Nobody home. <laughs> and I thought this job was over. Did you, Pagan? Look over there near the window. Over there near the... Mr. X. Yeah. His face. What, what happened? A shotgun blast. At close range. But the clothes say it's Angala. Then, uh, then what Carlos told us don't mean a thing. If this Angala has been murdered, there must be somebody else mixed up in this. Hey, maybe somebody who was giving him orders. Yeah. That's right, Pagan. This job isn't over. It's just begun. Just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Lots of people take one look at a Frigidaire refrigerator, notice all its extra storage space, generous room for frozen foods and many other advantages, and say, that's the refrigerator for me, a Frigidaire. But if you would like to take a little longer to think about such an important purchase as a new refrigerator, then think about this. More Frigidaires serve in more American homes than any other refrigerator. So when you buy a Frigidaire refrigerator, you get extra refrigeration experience. Experience which costs nothing extra, but does assure extra satisfaction. Just one example. The famous Frigidaire meter miser, a product of Frigidaire experience, is the simplest coal-making mechanism ever built. And think about this, too. Your Frigidaire dealer is a substantial member of your community in business to stay so you can depend on him to advise you correctly when you buy, to be at your service always. Yes, here are three things to think about when you buy a refrigerator. The refrigerator itself, the manufacturer who makes it, and the dealer who sells it to you. You'll be sure on all three counts if you follow this one simple rule. Ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> Now to return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. The Mexican government has stopped non-essential imports in order to use its precious dollars for the betterment of living conditions among the people. But the smuggling of American luxury goods across the border threatens to drain away those precious dollars. That's why Ken Thurston flew to Monterey... Now, an hour after the discovery of a Senor Angala's body, Inspector Martinez has taken over, and Ken and Pagan are driving away from the ranch house. You've got everything straight, Pagan? Oh, sure, Mr. X. It's a cinch. That baby will fall for me like a ton of lead. I'm not interested in that. Now, when you're through, report back to me at the hotel. Okay, but where are you going meanwhile? Pay a little call on Stu Hardy. The guy from Texas? What do you want to see him for? He's a neighbor of Angala's, Pagan. I just want to see how neighborly he can really be. So Angala's been murdered. Thurston, that's 
downright hard to take. I didn't know he was such a close friend of yours, Hardy. He wasn't. But I, I always figured him to be a right nice hombre. Uh-huh. Ever have any business dealings with him? Nope. Didn't even ship our cattle together. Kind of a shame, too. Why is that? Well, we both shipped to Laredo. Both got cattle in there right now, as a matter of fact. We saved money by sharing the same cattle trucks. Why didn't you? I didn't know these people were going to be so friendly-like when I bought this place a year ago. So I got my own. Yeah. Well, if there's nothing more, you can tell me I'll be on the way. By the way, Hardy. Yeah? That's a can of gun oil on your table. You wouldn't have been feeding a shotgun recently, would you? Matter of fact, I was, Thurston. A coyote was bothering my chickens. Just got the critter tonight. No harm in that, is there? No. Just as long as the coyote's name wasn't Angala. Good night, honey. So, senor, you have come back to visit Juanita a little while, huh? That's right, baby. I thought maybe we could smooch over a couple of things or two. Anything Juanita can do for you, you have got a name and it shall be yours. <laughs> now you're talking, baby. For a price. Naturally, for it. A... Hey, who was talking about money? Unless you care to speak to Juanita with cold cash, senor. You're but wasting your time. Oh, now, babe. Adios, senor. Now, hey, wait a minute. Okay, okay. Hey, how would you like a slice of 10,000 American simoleons? And where would you get 10,000, senor? I got inside information we can get as a reward. Now, look, baby. That Inspector Martinez and Mr. Thurston got a hunch that Stu Harding is mixed up in it. If you latch on to some evidence that'll help me pin it on him, <laughs> we'll split the reward right up and down the middle. 60-40. <laughs> You're a fool, Senor Verschmidt. I know nothing of this. And if I did, I most certainly would not tell you. But, baby... I think perhaps you'd better leave now. But, Juanita... Before I have paid or throw you out. Good night. But... Good night. <laughs> Thurston speaking. Hello, amigo. Hello, Anita. This is a pleasant surprise. Is it, Senor Thurston? Do you doubt it? Of course not, Senor. And I think you will find it even more pleasant. I have some information for you. Oh? The cattle trucks of Senor Harding will return from the railroad tonight. What about them? It might pay you to check into them very carefully. What would I find if I did, Juanita? Enough to make a check payable to the amount of $10,000. Hasta la vista, amigo. <laughs> Except, uh, Inspector Martinez? Si, Senor Thurston. My men have blocked the road from Laredo. Nothing can get by. Good. I only hope you know what you're doing, Senor. Don't worry, Inspector, I do. You see, I got the tip from a uh, very good friend of mine. These are pretty high-handed goings on, Thurston. Inspector Martinez knows what he's doing, Harding. But, man, it just don't make sense checking my empty cattle trucks to smuggle stuff. Maybe he's right, eh, Mr. Thurston? They've almost finished and they haven't found nothing yet. And they ain't going to, neither. Man alive, you think I'd be crazy enough? Senor Thurston? Yes, Inspector? Would you and Senor Harding come over to this truck, please? Well, Harding? Sure, why not? What is it, Inspector? Look here, senores. This section of the flooring... Hey, look at that, Mr. Thurston. There's another bottom underneath the bottom. Precisely. A false flooring on the truck. And here, senores, I shine my flashlight inside. You see? Boy, take a couple of ganders of that. Radios, cameras, perfume. Yes, all contraband goods. Brought in the Mexico and empty cattle trucks from the radar. Well, Harding? There's something plenty wrong here, Thurston. That truck ain't mine. It belongs to the Angala Ranch. It won't wash, Harding. You told me yourself you never used Angala's trucks for your cattle. Inspector... You better put him under arrest. Oh, 
I don't get it, Mr. X. We clean up this smuggling racket thanks to my invaluable services and start back for USA. Only instead of crossing the border, we stop at this this jerk whistle hotel. Yeah, that's right there, young. Here's the elevator. Two, please. Russia. Come on, Pagan. But what are we doing here anyway? One of Inspector Martinez's men told me an old friend was stopping here. I want to say hello. Here's the room. Hey. Hey. The pretty pepper pot. Hello, Juanita. Mind if we come in? Mind, senor? You know you are always welcome. Please do. Thanks. I am very happy that you are here, but how does it happen, amigo? Oh, it was simple, baby. After I slapped that no good Harding in the clink for smuggling, I had nothing in my hands but time. So... Harding arrested? Then my information was of some value, Ken. It helped, Juanita. Help, ah, bueno. I'm so glad for your sake. And not for yours? Mine. I thought your only interest was in that little check. So you have come here merely to pay me. I must confess I'm a little disappointed. You'll be more than a little disappointed, Juanita. You're not getting any check. Not getting it? But if Senior Harding is under arrest... You didn't lead us to any evidence against him. Sure, you're joking. Did I not inform you to stop his trucks? Yes, sir. And we found the one with false flooring and the contraband. Ah, then you admit I let you do the evidence. It's evidence, all right. But not against Harding. Now, I know you're joking. Who else could it possibly be used against? Against the person we're really after, Juanita. Angala. Angala? Mr. Thurston, it must be this Mexican heat or, or something. That Angala character is dead. No, no, Pagan. He wanted us to think so because he was afraid we were closing in. That's why he killed Carlos and murdered one of his ranch hands with a shotgun so the man couldn't be recognized. And Gala dressed the body in his clothes. So we jumped to the proper conclusion. You really can. How can you possibly believe that? Because the same thing that started him smuggling, that made you work with him, gave you both away. Gold. Gold? What gold? The extra $10,000 I offered Juanita. It looked like a soft touch. $10,000 for pinning their crimes on someone else. So they tried to frame Harding by slipping one of Angara's trucks with his, his convoy. And just how did that give us away, Senor Thurston? Sir Rex, it's Angala. Yeah. So you in the next room, Angala? You will answer my question, Senor. Oh, I see the gun. I'll answer. Who else but you would have known about the false flooring in that truck? Or could have slipped it into Harding's convoy? And Juanita should never have made that telephone call to call you about it. Martinez had it traced. I see. Juanita, get behind me. Open the door into the hallway. See, si, Angala. You can't get out that way, Angala. Martinez and his man are out there. Martinez. He's bluffing. Open the door. But if he's not. Open the door. See, si, see. Si. Angala. You're under arrest, Angala. Drop the gun. Get out of my way, you fool. What did you pick up? So. It's all over, Mr. X. No, Pagan. It's not over. There are others besides these two, many others. But they'll give themselves away someday, just as these two did. You see, Juanita and Angara thought of their neighbors only in terms of money, not as fellow men. They didn't know that man can't live without the faith and goodwill of others. Well, they've learned now, all right. Yes, they've learned that man can't live for gold alone. Star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Excuse me, Mr. Niles, but can you tell me something about Frigidaire electric ranges? I'd be glad to, but uh, say, here's a better idea. See these wonderful Frigidaire electric ranges for yourself. Learn all about them at your Frigidaire dealers. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Worth Your Weight in Gold, the story of modern piracy off the China coast. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return 
There's a man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall and Maurice Zim. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Service. You're twice as sure with two great names. Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Pirates? Did you say pirates, Chief? That's what I said, Ken. Pirates. You don't mean those jokers with trick hats, patches over one eye, and knives in their mouths. That's from Technicolor. This is 9048. Bill Smith, the modern pirate is a little different. He uses two-way radio, machine guns, and diesel engines. And he looks like any other ship's passenger. You you mean these pirates are for real? Mr. Thurston, you told me we were going on a little cruise. We are, Pago. A cruise down the China coast. Now, this gang of pirates have taken more than $2 million in gold from China coast steamers in the last six months. The Chinese Maritime Bureau expects to hear from them again soon. And they've asked for you, Ken. But they didn't ask for Zeltschmidt. So I'll get my money back on my yachting suit. No pirate is going to make me walk the plunk. I resign, please. That's too bad, Pago. My Mandarin dialect will do up north, but farther south in Hong Kong, I could use your knowledge of Cantonese. Hong Kong? Well, why didn't you say we were going to Hong Kong? I would draw my resignation. Huh. The black marketeer's heaven. Who's afraid of pirates? Excuse me now, please. Okay, Chief. Now, look, Ken, I know Pagan's a hard man to keep a secret from. But no one, not even the captain of the ship, the Manchu Queen, which you're boarding in Tsing Tao... We'll know there's a thousand pounds of gold aboard her. Well, at the present price of gold, that's over a million dollars. Yes, and it belongs to the China Food Mission for the purchase of grain. With China's ruinous inflation, gold or foreign currency is all that can be used in business. What do you say, Ken? Well, if I don't go and the gold isn't delivered, it means a couple of million people won't live out the winter. That's what it would mean, Ken. Starvation. Well, that's a strange thing about gold, Chief. You ever notice that where gold is dear, life is cheap... Hmm. Well, I'll tell Miss Brooks to make your reservations for Ting Tao.
ship ready to sail. What a place, this Tink Town. <laughs> I make my first good profit in a year, a nice little deal, and what happens? Don't tell me Pagon Zellschmidt didn't get his money. Oh, no, I got paid in Chinese money. Twelve million dollars to one American buck. I need four boats to take my profit with me. Hey, how are you doing, Mr. Thurston? The leader of this piracy outfit, the one we're looking for, would very likely book passage through to Hong Kong first class. There are only three such bookings to Hong Kong. And one of them is really first class. Oh, what a cookie. Miss uh, Bay Bao, you saw her? Like a ripe peach, Bay Bao. Ah, that means precious one. Never mind the precious one. What about the other two first class passengers? Well, there's an American James Bliss and another Chinese, a man, David Mao. Hey, look at those people coming aboard in steerage. That bunch wearing brown nightgowns and those baskets covering their heads. They're a religious order. Taoist priests, I think. That's right. Wear those baskets over their heads to shut out the evil of the world. I'm Captain Durfee. You're Thurston? Yes, I am. Glad to know you. My owners asked me to look out for you. Those holy men. You poor devils. You half starved. They've been on a pilgrimage. Praying for the end of China's inflation. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Thurston? Well, just get us to Hong Kong safely. <laughs> You've been reading the newspapers. Stop worrying. We've no gold aboard, and even if we did have these beggars, no better than to try anything on Captain Durfee's ship. Very reassuring, Captain Durfee. Tell me, though, how can a modern ship be pirated in this 20th century? The pirates come aboard as passengers, the leader in first class, his gang spread out in second, third, and steerage. With 20th century weapons, they overcome the crew, seize the gold, and make off in diesel-powered junks. Mm, not much chance of beating an organization like that. Oh, I've found a 20th century weapon that takes care of them. Machine guns? No. The high-pressure fire hose. Fire hose? That's right, fire hose. A hundred-pound, three-inch stream of water crushing their bodies and washing them over the side is deadlier than bullets. And, best of all, ten fathoms of shark-infested water provides swift justice. Justice. Oh, you're casting off. I'll see you at dinner. Thurston and Mr. Zeltschmidt will be with you all the way to Hong Kong. Hi. You are interested in business in Hong Kong, Mr. Zeltschmidt? Oh, sure, Miss Precious. Uh, maybe you know someone who wants to buy some imported Chinese money? Miss Bay Pao, we're just touring out of San Francisco on American passports. Last Wednesday, due back in New York in November. That is almost a thumbnail dossier. Why not? Since we're all strangers... Heading for one destination to save a lot of time if all of us told who we are, where we're going, and why. Straight out. Well, my story is hardly worth telling. I am an entertainer, a singer. I cannot live on my salary, the horrible inflation. I must find work in Hong Kong or I cannot live. And you, Mr. Mao? I am a businessman. A rug exporter in Tsingtao. To watch the misery of my people starving under the inflation is much more than I can stand. I sold out my business, and I am retiring to Hong Kong. Running away, I suppose. Well, what's your story, Mr. Bliss? Is this part of the fair? I thought I paid for my passage in gold. Oh, come, come, Mr. Bliss. That kind of attitude only focuses greater curiosity on you. I'm sure we're all wondering how you got your arm in that cast, if nothing else. Okay, you want my biography? Bliss. Sucker. Ex-flying tiger pilot. Age 28. Now on the beach, broke with a busted wing. My business is war, and I'm on my way to Hong Kong to sell my services. To whom, Mr. Bliss? The side that bids the most and the hardest money. Well, now that everyone knows one another, how about a drink? No, no, no just a second, Captain Durfee. Let's hear about you. Me? Well, I'm just the ship's captain. Yeah, but I've heard this is your last voyage. That you're retiring. That's true. China's inflation has me on the run, too. Like Miss Baybow, I can't live on my salary. Moving to Hong Kong to look for a job ashore. And I always thought you could get rich with inflation. Now, uh, you can, Pagon. Depends which side you're on. Oh, by the way, not that I expect any trouble, but if you have any valuables, it'd be wise to put them in my vault. Boy, bar boy, the drinks are on me, folks.
That bliss fellow or that precious one, even the captain, all broke running from inflation. All but David Mao. Right now, I'd say he was almost like the candidate for the piracy leader. But he is rich. Why should he want to get mixed up with piracy? Just because he's the only one who's gotten rich out of inflation. Selling rugs for American dollars and paying off the rug makers in paper. A good, safe business and strictly legal. Why should he run off to be a pirate? I, it doesn't make sense. A man running away from hard money and gold could only be running to harder money and more gold. Come on. Let's have a talk with this tomorrow. <laughs> was in his cabin a little while ago, I saw him. Come inside, close the door. Well, look at this. A picture of Miss A. Bow. To my precious one, David, from precious one. <laughs> a dream puss like that should even be able to handle my inflation. Interesting. Mr. Mao and the precious one pretended to be strangers. Door. Behind that closet curtain, quick. Good evening, Mr. Bliss. Ah, Thurston. What are you doing in Mao's cabin? It's sneaky. I had a proposition to make to Mao. And you figured a little inside information wouldn't hurt. Information never hurt any proposition. You wouldn't mean piracy of a gold cargo by any chance? Guess you and I are working on the same side of the street, Thurston. I figured Mao for being head man, too. But he's your property now, Thurston. You got here first. If you can use a pilot with a broken wing, call Bliss. Just a minute, Bliss. You know that every ounce of gold taken off this ship means the lives of hundreds of Chinese people. Lay off the Boy Scout routine, Thurston. The cheapest thing in China is people. I learned that risking my own neck for 250 a month. 250 and a reason, Bliss. You fought for the right side, remember? Okay, sucker. Is a sign of Mao yet, Pagan? Been out of his cabin for almost an hour. Let's get some sleep, Mr. Thurston. Anyone can see nothing's going to happen tonight. This is it. They're breaking loose in steerage. Someone gave the signal from the top deck. Stay here, Pagon. I'm going to the bridge. To the stations. To the stations. Passengers remain in cabins. Where's the start, Captain? These so-called holy men in steerage. Sly devils. They had guns stashed away in a lifeboat. I heard the shooting. I ran. Attempted piracy, Miss Baybow. Nothing to worry about. I think we can handle it. Captain Durfee, D-Deck under control. Steerage passengers disarmed. Nice work, Captain. Chief Swanson and D-Deck, bring those pirates up on A-Deck. Starboard side. A-Deck, starboard side. Yes, sir. We are out of danger now? Everything under control now, Miss Baybow. I thought there was no gold aboard, Captain. That is what you told us. My owners told me nothing of a gold shipment. Who gave the signal to start the uprising, Captain Durfee? Come over to the radio shack and see. Let me out! Let me out! I demand you open this door! David! No, no, it's impossible! David Mao! Caught him breaking up the radio room. Uh, I demand an explanation. David, what happened? I came up to deposit my valuables as the captain suggested. He seized me and threw me in here. I caught him destroying the radio. You lie! We checked I came the valuable story, found nothing in the stateroom. You lie! Untie my hands at once. The radio room is wrecked, all right? It couldn't have been, Mr. Mao. I will vouch for him. You'll all have a chance to do some vouching in the Admiralty Court at Hong Kong. You're flying there under my custody. Mr. Mao is going to the brig tonight. Flying? That's right. Mate, take this man to the brig. No, no! Let me go! Let me go! This is disgraceful, Captain. Now look, I am Mr. sure that... Coming on the deck below. The pirates from Steerage. You poor devils. Are you taking those pilgrims in custody to Hong Kong too, Captain? Mr. Swenson, pressure on the fire hose. Captain! You can't watch those men overboard. I'm Captain the ship, person. I know how to deal with these scum... Captain, 
just a moment, we continue with A Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. If you're a homemaker, you know that whenever there's a two- or three-day holiday, like this Labor Day weekend, you need extra room in your refrigerator for things that you have to buy ahead of time. That's when you really can be grateful for Frigidaire's new design that gives you up to 50% more food storage space in the same kitchen space. Yes, even in a small kitchen, you can have more room to store foods than ever before. In any size kitchen, you can have more refrigerator room for your money. All the new Frigidaire refrigerators bring you this extra storage space along with a meter miser, simplest cold maker ever built, quick cube trays for instant ice service, glass-topped hydrator for fruits and vegetables, and many other important advantages. Frigidaire Deluxe Refrigerators give you such extra features as a full-width super freezer chest that holds up to 50 pounds of frozen foods and a unique sliding basket drawer for eggs in small packages. Remember how Frigidaire refrigerators give you more room, make housekeeping easier in countless ways. And always remember, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. Now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. An attempt to seize a million dollars worth of gold at sea belonging to a famine relief organization was blocked by the ship's captain. David Mao, a passenger, has been charged with destroying the ship's radio as part of a piracy attempt and is now in the brig. It is the next morning. The ship is in dock at Shanghai, and we pick up Ken, Kagan, Miss Bay Bao, Bliss, and Captain Dorphy on their way to the ship's brig to take David Maho ashore with them. It is ridiculous and cruel. I am sure Mr. Mao can explain everything at the Admiralty Court in Hong Kong. That's why we're flying to Hong Kong this morning, Miss Bay Bao, to get explanations. Here we are to the right. The door to the brig's open. He's gone. Mao's escaped. What's that? No, he couldn't. The guard, cold as a herring. Well, Miss Baybow? Uh, I... Slugging the guard and escaping kind of ties in with your catching him in the radio room last night, doesn't it, Captain? Where could he have gone? Whoever helped him would know. Are you insinuating... Captain, do you mind if I meet you at the airport later? I have a car waiting for all of us. Mr. Zellschmidt and I will go up in a cab. Uh, suit yourself. Only don't hold up the flight. See you all later. Where could that Mao fellow be? We've only been in port two hours. David Mao is dead, Pagan. The Shanghai police picked up his body an hour ago. Pan American Airlines, flight number seven, leaving Shanghai for Kobe, Osaka, Yokohama. I'm sorry, Thurston, but... As dispatcher of this field, I have to tell you that the old two-engine bomber's capacity is 2,000 pounds and won't take even 100 pounds of overloading. I thought I made it clear that Mr. Mao's body must be on the plane. But, Mr. Thurston, that body with the box weighs 150 pounds. And the shipment of gold weighs 1,000 pounds. That's 1,150. That's 850 pounds to go. Look, Mr. Thurston, you, your partner, Bliss, Captain Durfee, Miss Baybow, and the pilot are a good 900 pounds. So that puts you 50 pounds over the 2,000. Thurston, if you've got to risk overloading, leave the dead man here and take a live guard with Mao's him. Mao's body goes with us. I'll get rid of 50 pounds by stripping the passengers of luggage. Don't you understand? It's your life you're risking, Thurston. That plane is 10 years old and the floor under you is the door of the old bomb hatch. Put the gold on Mao's body aboard before you take the plane out of the hangar. Uh, okay. The box with the body and the goal will be locked up in the cargo compartment aft. Better get your passengers lined up. Flying that thing, Mr. Thurston? I'd rather walk. If it crashes, Pagan, you'll go to a glorious death. You can tell your grandchildren you were buried with a million dollars in gold. Now, go get the container of food and bring it aboard. Who wants to eat in that place? Did you know we were searched for firearms, Mr. Thurston? Yes, Miss Baybow. And I'm sorry, we're overloaded. You'll have to leave that overnight bag here. All right, if I must. 
Has there been word of David Marr? Not yet, Miss Bebow. What do you mean, telling them I can't take my logbook aboard the plane? Sorry, Captain. We're overloaded. Every ounce counts. It's bad enough that my owners didn't tell me there was a gold shipment aboard. But the least you could have done first was to tell me you were in charge of it. Suppose we discuss it after the Admiralty Court hearing, Captain. The dispatcher back there took my pistol. Weighs too much. Let's get in. This old bomber was a flying coffin in 1940. Here's the food container. Thanks, Pagan. I'll take that bag of silver coins fastened to your right leg. Oh, Mr. Thurston, a few pounds. All my profit. Why, that fellow Bliss's cast weighs more than my silver. Five or six pounds, I bet. More, Pagon. The cast on Bliss's arm must weigh 12 pounds altogether. 12 pounds? Yeah, he's got a pistol in that cast. A pistol? Then why don't Get you... Get inside, quick. Ready for takeoff. nothing to run away from, Mr. Thurston. Maybe he was running to something, Miss Baybow. I'm getting hungry. Have a sandwich, Thurston? Old container full of them back aft. No, thanks. Pagon, you look hungry. Go back with the captain. Who, me? Oh, sure. I'll take a sandwich, Captain. Okay, Zellsmith. I didn't like that takeoff, Thurston. This old crate's overloaded. That was a close shave over those trees. That guy Mao did us all a favor by running out. Another 150 pounds, we never have cleared those trees. Have a sandwich, Mr. Thurston? No, thanks, Pagon. Not hungry. You'd better get hungry, Mr. X, and lay your gun on that tray. The food container. He had a gun in it. And I, I brought it aboard. There you are, Captain. My gun. Say, what is this? Take Thurston's gun from the tray, Baybow. Yes, Captain Durfee. And you, Mr. Bliss, get down on the floor quickly. Oh, uh, you know what to do, Baybow. You stand guard over these men. I'll take care of the pilot and handle the plane. I assume, Captain Durfee, that with Miss Baybow's help and a million dollars worth of gold in the cargo compartment... We'll not be going to Hong Kong. We're going to Bing Ching. Cargo stop just ten minutes from here. But I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. Now, Mr. Thurston, what's your signal to the pilot? Three knocks. <coughs> Bliss, pull the pilot away from the door. And no funny stuff. Now, down on the floor, all of you. Please, Miss Baybow, your gun pointed at someone else, huh? If you have any trouble, Baybow, just call me. I am sure there won't be enough time for Mr. X to make much trouble, Captain. Ping Tsing, that's an abandoned American airfield. Durfee's going to pick up the gold from the last three piracies. You are clever, Mr. X. None of that loot has ever appeared on the world gold market. This is his last chance to get it out of China. The piracy attempt last night was a fake. Purposely miscarried for Durfee to get rid of some of his partners. Duffy's only problem now is weight. He needs space for another thousand pounds of gold. Not a hard problem to solve, Mr. X. Not if the Bombay doors we're lying on still work. They work. How much do you weigh? Oh, oh not me. I'm anemic. Light as a feather. Please. As soon as we open the bomb hatch doors and drop you, Mr. Zellschmidt, Bliss and the pilot, and get rid of that box of cargo in the rear compartment, we'll have room for another thousand pounds of gold. Your arithmetic is poor. The four of us and the box of cargo back aft weigh only 850 pounds. Duffy needs another 150 pounds to get that gold out of Ping Sing. What are you driving How at? How much do you weigh, Baybow, precious one? Duffy and I are partners. Up here, you're just 130 pounds of human life, precious one. The cheapest commodity in China. Your weight in gold means $145,000. I think you're worth that to Durfee? I have reasons to trust Captain Durfee. I know. That is why you let him use David Mao to cover up the slaughter of 22 other partners in steerage last night with a fire hose. Stop talking or I... Durfee told you he put Mao in the brig and let him escape to join you later. And he did let David escape. I am joining him. I'm afraid you are a precious one, but not in this world. David Mao's dead. Durfee killed him. You lie. You cannot provoke me with your lies. Look in the cargo compartment in the big box. You see Mao's body. Liar! You take me for a fool! David Mao was the fool. He loved you. He knew nothing of you and Durfee or the gold. You are trying to provoke me to open the cargo compartment so that you may get off these Bombay doors. I'm telling you the truth. Go and see for yourself. You can lock the cargo doors behind you. We're still stuck here. I will look. Do not move. She locked it. Break open this cast on my arm, Thurston. A pistol. No. Not yet, Bliss. When she comes out, I'll nail her. Durfee would hear the shot and dumpers. Wait. You 
Closing the bomb hatch doors. Now he's putting the plane on the automatic pilot. Yeah, I could feel it take over. Now break open that cast of yours, Bliss. Get the pistol out. Bliss. Shh, shh. It's Duffy. He's coming in here after the gold. Let him have it, Bliss. I'm ready. Oh. All that gold and no partners left. Yeah. A million here, another million waiting at Pink Sing. You've got the gun, Bliss, and you're a pilot. This is what you came aboard the Manchu Queen looking for. Please, Mr. Thurston, don't invite him to Nakaso. This is the big chance you've been waiting for, Bliss. Please, Mr. Thurston, let him make up his own mind. What are you waiting for, Bliss? Just two human beings standing between you and two million in gold. Shut up, Thurston. Remember? Only a sucker thinks human life can't be measured in terms of gold, Bliss. I said shut up. Here. Take my gun. Let me get up to the controls before we're all killed. He... He didn't accept your invitation to kill us. There's hope for this sorry world, Pega. Hope even for China. As long as there are men like Bliss who can pass up the big payoff they've dreamed of. So that millions of humans may have a chance to live. Star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called Next is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer who invites you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Mr. Niles, does Frigidaire make home laundry equipment as well as refrigerators? Lady, you should see the new Frigidaire automatic washer with live water action that washes clothes cleaner, rinses them brighter than ever before. When you have a Frigidaire automatic washer installed in your home, you'll say goodbye forever to wash day work and worry. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Dangerous Island, a tiny spot in the Indian Ocean where an atomic scientist is trapped with a killer. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as a man called X. Good night. Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by George Corey and Ruby Sully. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Station. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're 
twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, The Man Called X. Australia? Why in the world do you want to leave of absence to go to Australia, Ken? Take another look at that newspaper clipping, Chief. Ken, those fairy tales about sea monsters have popped up every year since I can remember. Sure, but this one was reported in Kangaroo Bay, Australia. Well, what's so different about that? Chief, do you remember Clark Kirby? Kirby? Uh, that uh, engineer friend of yours? Yeah, he's working on a practical, economical method of converting seawater into fresh water. Now think of it. Fresh water in limitless quantities. Every desert on Earth. Turned into fertile soil. Oh, sure, Ken, I know. But what's that got to do with this sea monster business? I just got a letter from Kirby. He says the experiments are progressing well. He's sure he's on the right track. Only now he's afraid that, as he puts it, some unbelievable fantasy might put an end to the entire project. Unbelievable fantasy? Now, wait a minute, Ken. Where's Kirby making these experiments? That's right, Chief. In Kangaroo Bay, Australia. <laughs> I never thought I'd make it. Hang on. What are you doing here? Miss Brooks at the bureau. She just happened to let slip you were going on a trip. Now, relax. This is one time you're not going with me. Mr. Thurston, I just thought you maybe could use this movie camera. Huh? What makes you think I want a movie camera? Oh, just an idea. Uh, Mr. Thurston, have you heard from your old friend Clark Kirby recently? He writes every now and then. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, maybe you saw this thing in the morning paper all about some kind of a sea monster down in Kangaroo Bay, Australia. What are you driving at, Pagan? Well, he happened to be going down under to visit Mr. Kirby and were wondering maybe about the sea monster. I guess you could tell if it was a fake or not if I took some movie pictures. Ah, you might have something there. If you have the price of a fare to Australia. Well, you see, my oldest, dearest... Yeah, 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 that's what I thought. So long, Pagan. I have to pick up my reservations. Oh, don't bother, Mr. Thurston. I picked them up for you. I see. Two tickets for Brisbane, Australia, charged to my account. They are? Uh, uh, now, how do you suppose that stupid ticket agent made such a mistake? Oh, well, uh, shall we get aboard? Kangaroo Bay, eh? Boy, what a joint. Nobody's around, not even kangaroos. Uh, Mr. Thurston, I thought you sent a wire from Brisbane Sir Kirby would meet us. I did. Something must have held him up at the laboratory. Let's see if there's a phone in that tobacco shop across the street. Look out, me Hi there. Hi, yourself. Rather warm to be daydreaming in the middle of the square, isn't it? Or perhaps you're just lost. Can I help? Maybe you can. We're looking for transportation. Why anyone would want to travel around this ghastly place, I can't imagine. But I'll be happy to give you a lift. 
That'd be appreciated. I'm Margaret Williams. My name's Ken Thurston. And I'm Pagan Zelschmidt. Oh, that handles the proprietors nicely. Hop in. Thanks. Well, don't you want to know where we're going? Well, that's hardly necessary. Oh? There are only two places to go. The desert or the cove of Kangaroo Bay. You're hardly the desert type. Well, thanks. Americans, eh? Naturally. Can't you tell by our accents? <laughs> Why two Americans should come down here, I'll never know. With New York to live in, Paris and London only an overnight trip away. Why, Mr. Thurston? Just visiting an old friend of mine, Clark Kirby. Clark Kirby? You know him, Miss Williams? Are you another fool dreaming of turning sea into fresh water? Mm, I didn't know that only fools dreamt of that. Well, there's nothing sensible about wasting a fortune trying to bring dead land back to life when the money might be better spent in enjoying life that's available. I'd call that a rather short-sighted attitude. Well, call it what you will. If you want my advice, you'll turn right back for the States. Any particular reason for saying that? Yes, Mr. Thurston. You made your trip for nothing. Last night, Clark Kirby was drowned in Kangaroo Bay. Clark Kirby's laboratory, Pagan. Boy, what a gloom-looking place. Nothing happening here but seagulls. Are you going in there? Yeah. Take the camera down to that cove. Shoot some test film of the bay. Maybe you'll get some shots of that sea monster to make the trip worthwhile. Okay, Mr. Thurston. I'll meet you later. Stand right where you are, please. Well, you always greet guests this way? Who are you? What do you want here? My name's Ken Thurston. And I'd like a little hospitality. Without firearms. Ken Thurston? Clark Kirby's friend? That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thurston. Please, come in. No, that's better. I, uh, I'm George Llewellyn. Clark Kirby's associate here. Please pardon the melodramatics, but I, too, have no desire to be murdered. Murdered? I thought Kirby had drowned. Well, he went for a swim in the bay. He was a strong swimmer. Yet he made only one dive and never came up. His body hasn't been recovered. That doesn't spell murder, Llewellyn. No? I guess not. But after all the trouble we've had here, the, the possibility our laboratory might close, I, I guess I just can't think straight any longer. Suppose you tell me a little more about it. Well, didn't Clark write to you about Lee Williams? Lee Williams? Who's he? He's a very wealthy man, Thurston. He's the one who's financing our laboratory here. Any relation to uh, Margaret Williams? She's Lee's niece, his only heir, and the one person who's liable to put an immediate end to our experiments. Well, how could she do that? By getting her uncle declared mentally incompetent by the courts because she feels he's squandering money that's rightfully hers on these experiments. Mm, surely she isn't getting anywhere on that basis? No, but Lee is elderly. His mind's not as keen as it once was. So when this sea monster yeah, I, story... I was wondering when that, when that was coming up. Lee Williams is the only one who claims to have seen it. No one else has. I see. And Margaret figures that his fantastic story or hallucination may be the final proof she needs. Exactly. Yes. Certainly one more incident of any kind involving him would be enough. That would mean this laboratory would be closed. And it can't be, Thurston. We're too close. I'd commit murder myself to keep it going. I'd... Help! 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 Someone's in trouble outside that door. Come on. Llewellyn, help. Good heavens, it's our neighbor, Captain Malchus. He's a bad scalp wound he's got. Uh, Here, give me a hand with it. That's right. Get him on the couch. Put him down there. Easy. Easy. There. Thank you. What happened, Captain? How'd you get that wound? It was a boomerang, Llewellyn. Boomerang? Yes. It was coming here from my house. Someone. Someone tried to kill me. You have any idea who it was, Captain? I didn't. I, I didn't get a chance to look. But I'm sure it was Lee Williams. My 
Thanks for seeing me back, Mr. Thurston. But you didn't have to bother. I was heading for the cove anyway, Captain Malquist. And I wanted to hear more about that attack. Well, I've told you all I can. No reason for it I know of. I always figured old Lee was a good friend. Still do, for that matter. There's my place now, near that inlet. How'd you happen to settle down here to retire, Captain? Seems like a pretty lonely spot. No spot of dry land's too lonely for a man who's been sailing for 30 years. Now, I have a little oyster bed down there. It keeps me busy. Finest eating oysters on this side of the equator. So quiet and peaceful here. Or was until the last few days. Yeah? Too bad about Kirby. He was a fine man. I only hope Llewellyn can carry on. I'd like to see those experiments work. It's a great thing. I didn't know you were interested in them, Captain. Mr. Thurston, in my days at sea, I've known too many men who've died of thirst with undrinkable water stretching to the horizon all around them. Uh, that's a pretty good reason for having an interest. Best I know. Well, I'll be saying goodbye now. Drop around to my diggings any time. I'd like to shoot the breeze with you. Goodbye, Thurston. Goodbye, Captain. Pagan, what are you doing hiding behind those rocks? Watching a crazy man, that's what. Crazy man? Sure. Look at him over there, staring at out of the ocean like it was a chorus girl or something. And he keeps muttering about that sea monster, a real screwball. That must be Lee Williams. Let's have a talk with him. Good evening, Mr. Williams. Oh, good good evening, sir. You, you haven't seen it, have you? Seen what? The sea monster. No, Mr. Williams, no, I haven't. But someone has to see it. Someone besides me. I I have to prove that it really exists. Do you understand? Or do you two think I'm crazy? I wouldn't say that. Tell me, what does a sea monster look like? Oh, it, it must have been over a hundred feet long, undulating like a snake, a, a ferocious head with, with horns that could gore a man to death like a vicious bull. It was just this time of day, at twilight, some 50 yards out to sea. 50 yards out? But it's getting so dark you can hardly see even that log that just was ashore. It could be anything. It could be a... It could be... Mr. X. That's no log. Let's go over there. Mr. Thurston. It... It's a dead man. Yes, Pagan. That's the body of Clark Kirby. But what happened to him? He looks like he was, uh, he was gored to death. Maybe by a bull or by... Yes, my friend, exactly. Or by some strange monster of the sea. Just a moment, we return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. It's the mechanism that makes the cold, that makes the big difference in refrigerators. That's why it's so important to keep in mind that Frigidaire refrigerators and only Frigidaire refrigerators are powered by the famous meter miser. For here is the simplest cold-making mechanism ever built. Not a single belt or gear or pulley. And of course... Parts that aren't there just can't cause trouble or wear. Why, so sure is frigid air of the meter miser that it's actually sealed in steel, oiled for life. And this, in turn, makes trouble-free operation of a meter miser even more of a certainty, for no dust or dirt or moisture can get at it. Yes, this is the marvelous device that makes the cold in frigid air refrigerators, a mechanism as accurately made and assembled as a fine watch yet with all the power needed, even in the hottest weather. Remember, it's the mechanism that makes the cold that makes the big difference in refrigerators. And remember, for the meter miser, for all the other advantages that only Frigid Air can give you, ask to see the name Frigid Air when you ask to see a new refrigerator. <laughs> And now to return to Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Clark 
Clark Kirby was working toward one of mankind's brightest dreams, a practical method of turning salt water into fresh. But his last letter from Kangaroo Bay, Australia, said that something strange threatened to halt the entire experiment. And when Ken flew down there, he found Clark dead, his body gored as though by a ferocious bull or some monster of the sea. Now, later that night, Ken is in the laboratory talking with George Llewellyn, Kirby's associate, when the door opens. Greetings, gentlemen. May our lonely wayfarer seek shelter from the terrors of the night? Your dramatics possess little humor, Margaret. Come in. I trust you take more delight in my presence than George does, Mr. Thurston. Why so happy this evening, Miss Williams? Why, haven't you heard about my uncle's little boomerang-throwing party? The attack on Captain Malquist? Well, why were you so elated about that? Who would suddenly and without provocation attack anyone with a boomerang? Unless the attacker were insane. Insane? Now, just a moment, You can Margaret. save your breath, George. Between sea monsters and homicidal attacks, I'm afraid Lee Williams is totally incompetent to handle his affairs. The constable's looking for him now to place him in custody. And what happens to the laboratory if you take over the estate? You know the answer to that, Mr. Thurston. There'll be no more money thrown away on ridiculous experiments like this one. There's nothing ridiculous about wastelands being made fertile. About fields of grain replacing rocks and sand. Foolish dreams, Mr. Thurston. Not nearly as practical as mine. Paris, London, New York, living the way I want to live. <laughs> no, you can forget about this laboratory. From now on, it's Margaret Williams first, and flowers blooming in the desert be hanged. Thanks, Captain Malkert. This is a pleasure, Mr. Thurston. Uh, uh, sit down, sir. Sit down. Now, only a minute, Captain. I just wanted to tell you that Lee Williams is going to be arrested because of that attack on you last night. Why, that's nonsense, Mr. Thurston. I, I won't press charges against him. I didn't think you would, but uh, Margaret Williams will. Oh, the insanity hearings again. That's right. She thinks that attack will be the clinching argument. Yes, perhaps it will. And she'll have the money in Clark Kirby's dream. Well, there's nothing we can do about it. I see you've quite a collection of mother-of-pearl articles, Captain. Yes, I make them, Mr. Thurston. Knife handles, buckles. <laughs> Keeps a man busy during the off-season. Now, now, look at, look at this one here. Just finished it yesterday. A sea serpent with a horned head. Yes, I made it from poor Lee's description. Uh, what do you think about that? Did he really see it? Your guess is as good as mine. Oh, something like that could have gored Kirby to death, couldn't it? And if there was any way to prove it, or maybe that would be proof that Lee isn't crazy after all. Good theory, Captain, except for one thing. Kirby was not gored to death. What? The autopsy shows the horn wounds were superficial. Death was caused by a blow in the head. No sea monster killed Kirby. He was murdered. <laughs> But who goes swimming at 7 o'clock in the morning, Mr. X? I never heard of such a thing. That water looks like liquid ice. What do you care? I'm going in. You're not. Sure, but the very thought of diving into that stuff gives my goose pimples. Just keep your eyes open. I want to learn what Clark Kirby ran into. And I don't want any trouble from above the water. Don't worry, Mr. X. I'll keep my... Clark Kirby? Is this the place he took a dive? That's right. So watch it. But Mr. Thurston... Oh, how can he do things like that? Perhaps he's looking for the spot where the body's buried. <laughs> oh, Miss Williams, don't say things like that. Yeah, and where did you come from? I came down here looking for my uncle. He seems to have disappeared. I thought he might be down here trying to see that imaginary monster of his. That story smells like fish to me. Mr. Thurston's coming up now, and as soon as he... Hey, what's going on there? He's not coming up. 
He's fighting something under the water. Under the water? Hey, the sea monster, maybe. Well, do something, you idiot. He'll drown down there. You know, if I only had a gun or something. Come up, Mr. Thurston, come up. Oh, I can't look. Save your tears, Pega. Mr. Thurston, you... You're all right? Yeah. Huh. Well, Margaret, come down to watch the fun. What happened down there, Mr. Thurston? Something came out of a bed of grass behind me. I didn't see it, but whatever it was, it gave me quite a bump on the head before it left. Then that's what happened to Clark Kirby. Not quite. He didn't come up again, you remember? However, I've learned enough to take your advice, Miss Williams. I'm going back to Brisbane. Pagan Zelfmith speaking. Hello, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, are you still in Brisbane? Yeah, that's right, yes. What happened since I left? Practically nothing. That screwball Lee Williams is still missing, and so is my exposed movie film. Some no-good crook stole all of it. Yeah, I know. Look, Pagan, I'm coming back tonight. I have Margaret Williams, George O'Brien, and Captain Malquist at the laboratory. What do you want them for? Pagan, I'm going to show them the worst monster they ever saw. ridiculous thing I've ever heard of. No one forced you to come, Margaret. Mr. Llewellyn's right, baby. Must be pretty interested in what Mr. Thurston's going to spill. And from what I've seen of this Thurston, he'll not be wasting our time when he shows up. Perhaps, Captain. Don't worry, Llewellyn. I won't waste it. Oh, you Hello, Mr. Here. Thurston. I see you got here all right. Yeah, everything's set? Oh, sure. The movie projection machine's all ready. Fine. Put this wheel of film on, will you? As good as did, Mr. Thurston. Come on in, Mr. Williams. Uncle. So, old Williams himself. has been my host in Brisbane these past few days. How sweet of him. And he's going to prove to all of you that I am not insane. Isn't that right, Mr. Thurston? It's quite right. I see no examining board of psychiatrists with you. All I need is to show you a few feet of film. Ready, Pagan? Everything's hanky Mr. Thurston. Good. Then turn off the lights. We'll get started. That's some film of that cove along Kangaroo Bay, isn't it? Hey, sure is. That's the film I shot. The stuff some dirty crook stole from me. Nobody stole it. I took it to Brisbane for processing. I must say it hardly seems worthwhile. Light's poor, photography rather amateurish. That's because Pagon shot that film near Twilight, Llewellyn. The same hour of the day that Lee Williams was wandering near the cove. The same hour of the day he looked out toward the sea and saw something. Something strange, weird. Swimming out there in that haze. Something that looks like it might be the a... The sea monster! The sea monster! There it is! See it! The monster! He's right. There is something out there. Thank hey, God, it looks like a snake. A huge snake swimming out at sea. All right, Pagan. Stop the projector. Turn on the lights. Oh, it was there, right on the film. Just as I saw it that evening. The rest of you saw it, too. Didn't you? Yes, they saw it, Mr. Williams. But I didn't take no pictures of anything like that. Of course you didn't. It was all a trick. Admit it, Mr. Thurston. It was a trick, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a trick. But I proved that Lee Williams didn't have to be insane to see a sea monster. He saw what all of you just did. A herd of sea cows. Sea cows? Are you serious, sir? That's right, Llewellyn. That was an old travel log shot of a bull manatee leading his herd. It was processed with pagan shot to the bay. And those eight creatures, swimming single file, seen at a distance in twilight... Looks like one giant sea serpent. I should have thought of that myself. I've seen them many times in New Hebrides. Well, that might explain my uncle's hallucinations, Mr. Thurston. But it doesn't explain Clark Kirby's death. Or the attack made on you in the cove. No, Margaret. Another kind of monster was responsible for those. One that walks on two feet. That sounds strangely like some human being you're referring to, Thurston. If you can call anyone human who killed Kirby, tried to kill me, and was willing to destroy an experiment that could open new eras of prosperity for the entire world... And just to preserve a secret. A secret, Mr. Burstyn? It must be a very valuable one. Indeed. Valuable? That depends on how you look at it. Judge for yourselves. Look at that. Oh, Mr. Thurston, that's a pearl you tossed on the table. Yes, take on a pearl. The answer to the secret that Kirby discovered was a fabulous pearl oyster bed lying in the cove of Pangaroo Bay. Isn't there, Captain Malchrist? You'll never prove it, Sally, for guns now. Captain 
Captain Balquist. Yes, Margaret, my old friend. Everything he did, even to faking that boomerang attack, was to close the laboratory so that he could have the cove all to himself. But how did you know, Thurston? His mother of pearl handiwork gave him away. Thick layers like that are found only in pearl-bearing oysters, and it took someone with a diving rig to stage those underwater attacks. So there wasn't any sea monster after all? No, Pagan. But there was something else, something even more frightening. Mouseworth would have denied the world a chance to live in security. Would have sacrificed the future of millions to satisfy his own personal greed. You know, Pagan, no sea monster ever conceived as a brain of man can be as frightening, as monstrous, as a man whose soul is possessed by greed. star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. I invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. Mr. Niles, how does the Frigidaire electric range compare with Frigidaire refrigerator? Lady, it's just as good at making things good to eat as the Frigidaire refrigerator is at keeping things good to eat. It's fast, it's easy to use, it's a beauty. I hope you'll see it soon at your Frigidaire dealers. And now, Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Saturday, September 18th, has been designated as Air Force Day in recognition of the first anniversary of the Air Force as an independent arm. The celebration reminds America that air power is peace power and stresses the importance of air power in this nation's security program. We salute the Air Force. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Dangerous Island, a story of science and murder. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagan Zelsner. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach. The music is composed and conducted by Johnny Green. The like story was written by Marie Zim and Sidney Marshall. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons... This is CBS of Columbia, broadcasting... Price is sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and... This association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in... Mi Frigidaire and Holmes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete defendability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. 
more Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And now Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. That's all right. What's up? You remember Dr. Alfred Brenner? Brenner? Yes. Nuclear physicist. Retired about 20 years ago, didn't he? Yep. He's working again. Oh, nice going for a man his age. Yep. And there's a young man with me here named Ellsworth Gilbert. Claims he's Brenner's assistant. Also claims that Brenner's on the verge of making an important atomic discovery. Oh, what else does he claim? That both Brenner and his discovery are in great danger. Ken, I'll be right over. Where are you? In your office. My office? The night watchman called your secretary when he found this Gilbert trying to break in. Must I repeat this over and over again like a parrot? While you're sitting here wasting time with these questions... Heaven knows what they're doing to Dr. Brenner. Mr. Gilbert, when a man's caught trying to break into this office at two in the morning, I think some questions are in order. I had to get in here. I'm going back to join Dr. Brenner in Madagascar tonight. I had to see somebody no. before I... Tell us something about Dr. Brenner's discovery. He's working on a method of using common metals like iron or lead for nuclear fission. It's not quite perfected yet. That's why the doctor sent me to America to get all possible information on atomic energy. And did you? This information I have is all Dr. Brenner needs to complete his experiment successfully. Why do you say Dr. Brenner's in danger? There's a man who owns a nightclub in Madagascar called the Black Rose. His name is Rocky Grant. He's a cheap racketeer, but a dangerous one. Especially when he wants something. Something like the doctor's discovery? Yes. Hand me that telephone, Chief. Sure, Ken. Pagan, this is Ken Thurston. Tell me all you know about a man named Rocky Grant. Rocky Grant? That bloodthirsty gangster who would kill his best friend for a quarter, Mr. Thurston, I've never heard of him. That's all I wanted to know, Pagan. Meet me at the airport in half an hour. Where are we going? Madagascar. I wish somebody would be good enough to tell me what I am doing here in Madagascar. Sorry, Pagon. I have to bring you along. You know enough about Rocky Grant to be useful. Who is there? Hello, Dr. Brenner. Gilbert, I am so delighted to see you. Oh, doctor, uh, this is Mr. Thurston. How do you do? And Mr. Zelschmidt. Hello. Oh, please excuse my bad manners, gentlemen. I'm so happy to see Gilbert, I forget common courtesy. It's a pleasure to meet you, Doctor. Uh, Gilbert, I'm impatient to know. Was your trip successful? Oh, more successful than we dared hope. Come, show me what you brought. We've come all the way from America to talk to you, sir. Talk to me? But why? You're in danger here. We want to take you where you'll be safe. Oh, I'm merely an old man tinkering with science for my own amusement, Mr. Thurston. Who would possibly want to harm me? Possibly, uh, Rocky Grant. Rocky Grant. Oh, I see that Gilbert has been telling you tales. Is that another way of saying you won't return to America with us? As you see, I'm getting on, my friend. I cannot afford the time to become enmeshed in these plots of intrigue. Believe me, I'm more than grateful for your deep concern about me. But you won't leave. No, I won't leave. Tell me, Mr. Thurston, what are we doing in the Black Rose nightclub? We're waiting for the proprietor. Oh, you know him? No, you do. This is Rocky Grant's place. Rocky Grant? You're using me as a piece of bait. A worm and a fish hook. Well, this worm is not only going to turn, it's going to scram. Well, if it isn't Pagan Delschmidt. Benoit, 
Aren't you going to introduce me to the lady, Pagan? This is my friend, Mr. Ken Thurston. So you're Ken Thurston. Won't you join us, Miss Vanois? Oh, thanks, I will. I've got a few minutes before I go on again. You work here? I am the floor show, if you please. Then perhaps you'll tell me where I can find Rocky Grant. No, I couldn't. Rocky left here a few minutes ago and said he wouldn't be back tonight. Pagan, um, aren't you a little late for your appointment? My appointment? With the doctor. The doctor? Oh, yes, that's right. I, I'll see you all later. Pagan's changed. When I used to know him, he never ran around with respectable persons like you. Well, thank you. But you don't even know me. Don't I? Would you like me to tell you what you were doing on September 23rd of last year? I couldn't even tell you that myself. A man named Ken Thurston had just won the semifinal round in an amateur golf tournament at the West End Country Club. But he lost the finals by default because he was mysteriously called away on urgent business. How did you know that? That story was an AP dispatch. Yeah, but do you remember everything you read? I remember everything. That's my profession. I have a memory which retains everything I see or hear. Vinoy, the girl who never forgets. What's the matter? You're looking at me as though I were a freak or something. Well, I was just thinking a memory like yours could be invaluable to certain people. Who, for instance? Oh, someone who wanted secret mathematical formulae, for instance. You might have something there. Yes, Miss Renoir. I might have something there indeed. Mr. Thurston, I, I, I've got to talk to you. Mr. Gilbert. You've got to get Dr. Brenner out of Madagascar tonight. I have no way of forcing the doctor. The doctor changed his mind. Grant just threatened to kill the doctor unless he give him the discovery. Where's Dr. Brenner now? At the airport. He's waiting for us. Where's Rocky Grant? Uh, I don't know. Well, you should never let the doctor out of your sight. Come on. <laughs> Thurston, I'm still not so sure I should leave with you. Maybe we are acting too hastily. Grant threatened to kill you, didn't he? Yes, but leaving Madagascar like this with so much work still undone. You have your notebook with you, Doctor. Look, Mr. Thurston, over there, that automobile racing across the field. It's coming right towards us. Mr. Thurston, wait. Then what? You must take me with you. Please don't say no. Don't say anything. Just take me. I've got to get out of Madagascar now on this plane. You have a trick memory, Miss Van Well, How do I know you don't have a few other tricks up your sleeve? You don't. Except for that gun that's now in your hands. I'm just desperate enough to use it, Mr. Thurston. Oh, in that event, um, step aboard. After you, Mr. Thurston. Far enough away from Madagascar now for you to stop pointing that gun at me. Okay, Mr. Thurston. You know, I'm so happy to be flying away from that Rocky Grant, I can't begin to tell. Then don't even try, Peg. Rocky. Small world, isn't it? <laughs> How did you get in here, Grant? Got awfully uncomfortable back in that little baggage compartment, so I decided to come in with you. As I look around me, I see a lot of my old friends here. Don't look at me. Dr. Brenner, Mr. Gilbert, Pagan. And the lovely Miss Vanois. Stay away from me, Rocky. I was disappointed when you ran away last night without saying goodbye. It hurt me. You didn't mean to hurt me, did you? <laughs> you hit her. <laughs> Next time, please say goodbye when you're going any place, my love. What's the matter, Mr. Thurston? Don't care for my manner? Your manners are the least offensive part of you. I see this gun doesn't frighten you. But this is a friendly gathering. Oh, sure, very friendly, yes. I imagine even the pilot is some kind of friend of yours. No, he surprised me a little. I actually had to remind him of what he owes me before he let me come along. And maybe getting ready to crash into that island just ahead is his own idea. What island? We're going to crash. That pilot lost his mind. Get down on the floor. Look out! Oh, oh, there you are, Mr. Thurston. 
You disappeared right after the crash. Yeah, I wanted to have a look around. Well, where are we? I don't know. Some tiny uninhabited island in the Indian Ocean. We'll be lucky if we all don't starve to death. If Rack and me are stuck on a small island, I ain't gonna die of starvation. Where's Dr. Brenner and the others? Further down the beach. All except the pilot. He's somewhere inside the wreckage trying to fix the radio so that we can send for help. Wait here, Pagon. I'm going to speak to the pilot. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Know anything about fixing radios? Captain, I'd like to know why we crashed on this island. Well, it's hard to explain. Yes, lies are always hard to explain, Captain. You would have done the same thing if a man had a gun at your head telling you he'd blow it off if you didn't crash. What man was that? Ellsworth Gilbert. Gilbert? Well, you can ask him yourself. I'm afraid I can't. I saw him a little while ago on the beach. Ellsworth Gilbert is dead, Captain. Murdered. Just a moment, we continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Wherever you live, you hear of Frigidaire refrigerators that have been on the job for years with no time off for bad behavior. Mrs. Louise Axdahl of Alameda, California says, I used my Frigidaire for 16 years without one minute of trouble. Now I have a new Frigidaire because I needed more space, and I'm truly very happy with it, too. And from Richmond, Indiana... Mr. and Mrs. O.E. Goodman report that their 23-year-old Frigidaire refrigerator is still going strong. Now, if this is the kind of service you would like to enjoy, just make sure that your next refrigerator is a genuine Frigidaire. In fact, you can be even more certain of long service than were these purchasers of former years. For today's Frigidaire refrigerators are powered by the famous Frigidaire meter miser, and the meter miser is the simplest coal-making mechanism ever built. Not a single belt or gear or pulley to get out of order and demand attention. Remember the good reports you hear about Frigidaire refrigerators that have served for years. Remember the modern advances, like the meter miser, that make today's Frigidaires even more dependable. And remember, for all the advantages you want, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken Thurston was flying Dr. Brenner from Madagascar back to the United States because Rocky Grant, a racketeer, had tried to seize the doctor's atomic discovery. While in flight, Grant entered from the baggage compartment where he'd been hiding. Suddenly, the plane crash-landed on a small desert island somewhere in the Indian Ocean. The pilot explained to Mr. Thurston that he'd been forced to land there by Dr. Brenner's assistant, Ellsworth Gilbert. Mr. Thurston was unable to verify this since he had just seen Ellsworth Gilbert on the beach. He'd been murdered. But now it's the following morning, and Mr. Thurston has just awakened from a troubled, fitful sleep. He sees Miss Van Waugh working busily over a small fire. Good morning, Miss Van Waugh. Hello, there. You're just in time for some coffee. Coffee? Where did you dig up such a luxury on this bleak place? We formed a salvaging party early this morning to look for food. And somebody found a pound of coffee in the plane. Mr. Thurston, I... I'm sorry for the way I acted last night. But I just had to get out of Madagascar. Why? Remember, you suggested that I might use my memory on secret formulae. Well, someone else came to me with the same idea last night. Only wasn't suggesting he was demanding... Coffee's ready. Aren't you having any? After you. We only have one drinking cup. All right, thanks. Tell me, was the man who demanded that you memorize formulae our friend, Mr. Grant? I think I can answer that question. I was crude enough to eavesdrop from behind those bushes. He's got a gun, Mr. Thurston. Don't worry, Valois. That memory of yours is too valuable for me to kill you. But I'm afraid I'm going to have to deprive you of your companion, Mr. Thurston. Don't be a fool, Grant. Sorry, Thurston. The talkative Miss Valois has told you too much for your own good. So long. What the... Why doesn't it shoot? 
Hey, Grant. You look awfully silly standing there shooting an empty pistol. Empty? I unloaded it last night while you were asleep. I'll kill you for Stay that. where you are, Rocky. Well, where'd you get a gun? Oh, now, wait a minute, baby. You wouldn't shoot me. Why not? Now, put, put the gun down, baby. Put it down. Why? I've seen you kill people so often I'm used to it. Oh, now, Thurston, stop her. I don't know if I can, Grant. Look, I'll do anything you say. Just give me a break. Why did you stow away on that plane? I... I knew Brenner's discovery would be worth millions. I tried to lay my hands on it, that's all. Why did we crash on this island? I had nothing to do with that. I had no idea why we crashed here. I suppose you have no idea why Gilbert was murdered. No, no, I don't. I didn't kill him. Who did? I don't know. All I know is I didn't do it. Thurston, you've got to believe my story. I didn't do it, I tell you. I oh, didn't... get a hold of yourself. Huh? Here. You better drink my coffee. You need it more than I do. Huh? Thanks, Mr. Thurston. Thanks a lot. Feeling any better, Grant? Yeah. Yeah, I I feel fine. I I, I feel just just like oh. He fainted. Water somebody quick. Well, the dangerous killer passed out from fright. He didn't faint. That cup of coffee had enough poison in it to kill all of us. Grant's dead. Dead? Poison? Well, who would have done that? A very good question, Miss Van Well, you don't think that... You're not accusing me. I'm not accusing anybody. Where did you get that copy? I told you, from the wrecked plane. And you had no idea it was poison? Of course not. I was going to drink some myself. But you made sure to give me the first cup. You said there was a salvaging party. Yes, everyone was finding things in the plane and handing them out to me. Who handed you the copy? I I don't remember. I was so anxious to see what they were giving me, I didn't even look at their faces. All I remember is hands. Strange. A girl who earns a living by feats of memory can't remember who gave her a pound of coffee less than an hour ago. I can't remember. I just can't remember. Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish, I've been looking all over for you. Boy, have I got bad news. The radio's busted. The radio's been busted since the moment we crashed here. Yeah, but it was fixed, and now it's busted again. That was our last chance. Now nobody will ever know what happened to us. Apparently somebody knows. See that small boat out there? Boat? Where? I see. See, I see. We're saved. They found us. Oh, hi there. We're over here. Sure. Mr. Thurston, he's got a gun. I suppose he thinks we're wild savages. Hey there, mister, you don't need the gun. All right, everybody. Stand back, get your hands up. You're making a big mistake. Shut up, you. Didn't you come here to rescue us? What do you want? I want Brenner's notebook. Give it to him, doctor. If you say so, Mr. Thurston. Brenner, I think I'll take you along with me. And if I refuse to go with you? Look, my boss wants the information in that notebook. He wants it absolutely exclusive. So there's nothing else to do but take you with us where we can keep an eye on you. What shall I do, Mr. Terst? You have no choice but to go with him. He has the gun. Well, goodbye. Goodbye and good luck. Good luck to you, Doctor. Listen, mister. If you leave us stranded here, we'll all die. That's the general idea, Mac. Okay, Brenner. <laughs> I'm beginning to envy Gilbert and Grant. At least they're not dying slowly like we are. Now, it's entirely possible that within a few minutes we'll be picked up by an American destroyer. Mr. Thurston, you sound delirious. Maybe. But look out there across the water. Tell me what you see. There's a... Could it be a mirage? No. No, it's a boat, Mr. Thurston. A destroyer, like you said. A beautiful American destroyer. <laughs>
Well, I'd call this the happy ending, Mr. Thurston. Now that we're being taken back to America by courtesy of the United States Navy. You feel perfectly safe and, su- and secure now, don't you, Miss Van Roy? I can't feel perfectly safe in the presence of a man who can predict destroyers dropping from out of nowhere. It's uncanny. Not so uncanny. On the island, I sent out a call for help over the radio. This destroyer picked it up. The radio was smashed. How could I you? always kept an eye on the pilot and his progress with the radio. When he finally got it fixed, he ran off to find me. While he was gone, I sent the message for help. Then it was you. Yeah. I smashed the radio. Once I was sure that help was on the way, I destroyed it to keep the person who was after Dr. Bernard's discovery from using it. Do you know who that person is? Don't you, Miss Benoit? How should I know? You still think I... Oh, here you are, Mr. Thurston. I've been looking all over to you to tell you the good news. I already know the good news, Pega. You captured the boat that took Dr. Brenner off the island. You see, I told the captain of this destroyer to be on the lookout for that boat. Well, they're bringing that gang of crooks aboard now. And I thought we ought to see if Dr. Brenner is all right. Good idea, Pega. Won't you join us, Miss Benoit? Sounds more like an order than an invitation. The fresh sea air may do you good. After you, Miss Benoit. I can't wait to see the surprised look on Dr. Brenner's face when he sees us He's here. He's coming on deck now. Good evening, Dr. Brenner. Is it just surprised, Doctor? Very pleasantly surprised. Now, perhaps we can all put our heads together and figure out who killed Gilbert and Grant. Now, problems like these are a little out of my line, Mr. Thurston, but I will do my best. Miss Benoit? You think I did it, nothing will change your mind. What possible reason would I have? We'll examine your motives later, but first... I'd like to see if Dr. Brenner might have had some reason. You are accusing me. Not at all, Doctor. But as a scientist, you know that one must study every possibility before reaching the correct solution. Well, of course. Now, let's take a hypothetical case. Suppose, Doctor, that you had decided to sell your atomic secret to the highest bidder. Now, Grant threatens your life. You would have had to leave Madagascar with me just to shake off Grant. But before you left, you might have made arrangements for someone to pick you up on an island somewhere. You might have forced the plane down by convincing your assistant, Gilbert, it was, the th- it was the thing to do. Gilbert had too much respect for you to doubt you. Once we crashed, it's possible that you murdered Gilbert, since he could be of no further use to you. Now, mind you, this is, uh, this is all hypothetical. Oh, it's closer to sheer fantasy, Mr. Thurston. May I trouble you for a cigarette? Here, Doctor, have one of mine. Oh, thank you very much, Miss Venoir. Those hands. I remember now. Those were the hands that gave me the coffee. I am afraid your extended stay on the island has affected your mind, Miss It all Benoit. comes back. I see it. What made me forget? You didn't forget, Miss Benoit. You remember that the doctor handed you that poison coffee. But your conscious mind refused to accept the idea that he could be a murderer. Well, Dr. Brenner? Oh, I, too, have a hypothetical case to present, Mr. Thurston. Supposing I did commit those murders, do you think that society can afford to destroy a man like me? It can't afford not to. Look out, Mr. Thurston. He's reaching for a gun. Oh, no, gentlemen. I have here in my hands a much more potent weapon, my notebook. With your assistance, there is still a chance for me to get away, Mr. Thurston, and no one will blame you. I'll trade you this notebook against my freedom. It's no deal. Now, consider carefully. I'm an old man. It is a small triumph for justice to deny me my few remaining years, and a great triumph for progress to have my life wisdom contained in this notebook. There was no wisdom in your life, Doctor. There's knowledge, yes. And it's in that notebook. Well, it's useless to us as long as you're alive and free for even a single day to sell it to the highest bidder. No, Dr. Brenner, it's no deal. All right, then... He did it, Mr. Thurston. He actually did it. He threw it overboard. It's lost. Yes, Pega. It's lost. In other hands, it could have made all our lives happier. But rather than permit Dr. Brenner to use his knowledge for destruction, it's better that his precious notebook should lie at the bottom of the sea. Perhaps someday, somewhere, maybe at this very moment, some scientist is making that discovery again. Let's hope that that man will use his knowledge for good instead of evil. Let's hope for the best, Pagan.
Frigidaire star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment. Frigidaire's Man Called X is presented each week with the best wishes of your Frigidaire dealer. We we'll invite you to come in and learn about the famous line of Frigidaire electric appliances. Refrigerators, ranges, water heaters, home freezers, the new automatic washer, dryer, ironer, and many other Frigidaire refrigerating and air conditioning products for homes, farms, stores, offices, and factories. I've always wanted an electric water heater, Mr. Niles. Well, then take my advice and buy a Frigidaire electric water heater. Ask your Frigidaire dealer about the wonderful new magnesium rod that makes tanks last years longer. Ask about the new 10-year protection plan on Frigidaire electric water heaters. And our Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. It is my great pleasure to announce that our own Johnny Green has been signally honored by Downbeat, the nationwide newspaper of music. To make a special presentation, we have in the studio Mr. Eddie Ronan, West Coast representative of Downbeat. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. On behalf of Downbeat, I am pleased to award to Johnny Green, musical composer and conductor of The Man Called X, the special scroll for outstanding achievement in the creation of original dramatic music for radio. Thank you, Eddie Ronan, and thank you, Bart. Nice going, Johnny. <laughs> next week, next week, Laughing Lady, a story of the dread Sicilian Mafia, a terrorist organization operating in a traveling circus. As usual, Leon Belasque will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called Rex. Good night. <laughs> Frigidaire's Man Called X is directed by D. Engelbach, with music composed and conducted by Johnny Green. Tonight's story was written by David Shaw. Until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigidaire, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting Center. Your attention, please. During this program, Frigidaire will make a very important announcement. Please listen for it. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, and all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. And it is this association of Frigidaire and General Motors, this association of experience with experience, of skill with skill, that makes Frigidaire America's favorite refrigerator. Remember this when you choose your new refrigerator. Remember that millions of Frigidaires in millions of American homes have established Frigidaire's reputation for complete dependability, for lasting satisfaction. Yes, you're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. For Frigidaire refrigerators are made only by Frigidaire, a division of General Motors. More Frigidaire refrigerators serve in more American homes than any other make. And our Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Listen to this new dispatch from Rome, Chief. 
The Italian government today announced the beginning of an all-out drive to destroy the secret Sicilian organization known as the Mafia, whose systematic terrorism against the Sicilian people has defied Italian law enforcement agencies throughout the years. It's been rumored, Ken, that the guns and ammunition the Mafia are using have been smuggled in from America. Yeah, that means a special responsibility in finding out how the Mafia is getting those guns. And since this is out of the Bureau's jurisdiction, I'd like to take on this assignment on my own. Okay, but it's a tough one. The Mafia is hard to put a finger on. They've existed for generations, terrorizing their victims to the point where they're afraid to go to the law for protection. I'm sorry, but officially we won't be able to give you any help. Well, something done up this morning that might be a lead. Take a look at this. Hmm. A pair of tickets for the circus at Madison Square Garden tonight. Yeah, Chief, look at what's written on the back of the tickets. Importante. Parilli. Importante. Well, uh, who's Parilli? Here's a report I just received on him. Alfredo Parilli, famous Italian acrobatic clown, owner of a bankrupt circus, just arrived from Palermo, Sicily, came to this country to earn money to keep his circus going. Palermo, Sicily? Well, that's the base of the mafia organization. That's right, Chief. It's only a hunch, but a f- but fear of making a direct contact with me could be a clue. Well, I think I'll pick up Pagon, stopping at Madison Square Garden to see the circus. Look at it, Mr. Thurston. It's more like a musical comedy than a circus. Even the clowns are wearing nylon costumes. Now, when I was in the circus Look, business... going up to the top. That's Parilli in the clown suit. That trapeze is six stories up and no net. <laughs> I get dizzy just watching him. What's he going to do? Parilli swings from a trapeze bar by his mouth. He uses a steel and rubber bit and has been known to do as many as 50 full loops hanging by his teeth. The guy could get pink toothbrush from doing that. There he's up on top now. There he goes. One. Two. There must be an easier way of making a living. Three. Oh, Mr. Carson, be careful. Quick, to the artist's entrance. Doctor, may I have a word with him? It's very important. You better hurry. He just has a few moments. Yeah. Now, really, this is Mr. X. You wanted to tell me something. Please? Mr. X, the shame of it, the mafia. What about the mafia? Did they try to murder you on the trapeze? No, no, it was an accident. What about the mafia, now, really? The laughing lady. Mafia. What about the laughing lady? The mafia. Well, there's no laughing lady. Parilli! Parilli! He's dead, Pagan. Was he murdered, Mr. Thurston? Parilli told me it was accidental. Accidental murder, he means. Pagan, pick up a ticket for Palermo tonight. Me? Alone? What'll I do in Palermo, Mr. Thurston? Go find out about the laughing lady. Then call me in Rome. I'll be at the embassy. Hello? Ready with your call to Roma, Signor Selschmidt. Go ahead. Hello, is that you, Mr. Thurston? Yes, Pagan. I found the laughing lady right here in Palermo. Go on. The laughing lady is the name of Parilli Circus. It's called that because the main attraction is a laughing lady clown. What about her? Uh, there's a price of 10,000 lira to anyone who can insult her and makes her stop laughing. Boy, the things I've said to her. What about the mafia? Any signs of it or, or, or the guns? I've taken a job running the shell game in the sideshow, but I've seen nothing suspicious yet. Well, keep your eyes open. And remember, not a word to anyone about the Willis' death. I want to see the reaction personally. Now, meet me at the airport in Palermo in the morning. I'm coming to buy a circus. <laughs> I 
the jeep, Mr. Thurston. In Sicily, it's practically Rolls Royce. <laughs> Lucky I was able to swipe. I-, I mean, borrow it. Sicily knows real poverty. Twenty years of being robbed by Mussolini, and now the mafia is picking its bones. Can't say that again. And Perilli's circus is the first good love they had in years. I wonder. The report I got in Rome indicates that after the laughing lady circus leaves the village, the mafia terror begins. Or maybe Parilli could have been killed because he found this out and wanted to tell you. We'll know more about that when I hear from the chief. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Thurston. This radiogram came for you this morning, and I didn't even take a peek this time. And this time I know you're telling the truth. I am? How can you tell? Because you still think Parilli was murdered. Of course he was murdered. The chief's wire says new evidence established. Positive proof, Perilli, death was suicide. Suicide? But it couldn't be. Why should he? What was that? Someone over there on the olive tree. Just missed welcoming you with a shrug of steel. Where? I don't see anyone. Besides, nobody knows you're here. <laughs> Look. Bullet landed here in the back end of this tree. Maybe we should leave. I don't think they're like strangers here. Look at this. I'd rather keep my head down under the seat. An American made bullet. 22. The mafia. We're probably going to be killed. Oh, let's go home. This is no place for a brave man. Keep going to the circus, Pega. We can't turn back now. I think the laughing lady is expecting us. You don't think she had anything to do with that shot? Harry's last words were... Mafia, laughing lady. I don't think it would make sense, her being with the mafia. Why not? Because the laughing lady is Parilli's sister. Parilli's sister? Yeah. I told you the whole thing didn't make sense. First, this Parilli kills himself. Then he sends us after the mafia with the clue that it's the laughing lady that's connected with it. Then we find her. What have we got? His sister. It's it's crazy. You're wrong, Pagan. Parilli's suicide is just beginning to make some sense. He must have found out something between the time he sent me the tickets and the time I arrived at the circus. Found out something he'd rather die than live with. There's the circus. You mean he must have found out that someone in the circus connected to the mafia was close to him? Someone near and dear. You mean maybe like a wife or a brother or... Or a sister. (laughs) I'm Ken Thurston, Signora Perilli. I knew your husband in New York. Alfredo, mi è caro, mi è Alfredo. I'm afraid to call, Mr. Thurston. Come on the show. I'm afraid Signora Perilli is too upset to talk. I'll come back later. Oh, please, please, you stay here. Why do you come here? Oh, please. If the American is a friend of Alfredo's, he is welcome. Signor Thurston, this is my sister-in-law. I'm a Signor Perilli's sister. Oh, the laughing lady. In this hour of grief. Must we talk to strangers? I'm sorry, Signorina Perilli, but I understand your brother made great sacrifices to keep the circus going. Sent money from America. What a business is that of yours, oh, Signor Thurston? Please, please, the gentleman speaks the truth. Alfredo went to America so the circus might bring joy to his people. Now, I, I don't know how we would carry on. This show never made any money. It's an awkward time to speak of it, but I came to offer to buy the circus. Buy it? What would you want with a circus that has no profit? No, 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 please. That I cannot speak of now. Excuse me, please, Senor Thurston. I do not know who you are or what you want. But my advice to you is to get out of Sicily now while you are still alive. I'll think over your advice. Say, Mr. Thurston. Yes, Cole. Sure good to see another American here in Sicily. Yeah, I was surprised to see an American here myself. I feel I ought to tip you off, Mr. Thurston. This circus isn't anything you ought to buy. You lose your shirt in it. Think so? Worse than that. These people here don't take to strangers. Cole, if there isn't any money in this circus, and if it's tough for strangers here, why do you stay? Can't go back to the States. Federal indictment. Thanks for the advice, Cole. Well, at least I could do for a countryman. Drop around to see my act. Pistol, rifle expert. Use a human target for my finale. Kind of sensational. <laughs> Oh, 
I was snooping around the side shows like you told me uh, when this gypsy dame came up and said she wanted to see you. Read your fortune free. Her wagon is at the top of this hill. Might be a good idea. I'd like to ask your gypsy friend why Perilla's widow and his sister, who own this banquet circus, won't sell. Well, maybe it's sentiment. The Parilli family have owned the circus for years. Could be. Then again, it could be the circus is bringing in money from another source. The mafia, for instance. Here we are. Knock on the door of this wagon. She's inside. You wait outside. Fancy. I was told you wanted to see me, Signorina. Never mind the Signorina, Mr. Thurston. What's the gag about buying this broken-down circus? Well. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Jane Bishop, Miss Omaha of 1937. I tell fortunes with the show. And what makes you think, Miss Bishop, that my wanting to buy this circus is a gag? Because buying a circus is a pretty expensive way of finding out how the mafia is using it. And who in the circus is working with the mafia? You know a cheaper answer to those two questions? Much cheaper. For the price of two tickets to New York. A ticket for you and who else? That's my business, Thurston. Oh, fair enough. How soon do you talk? How soon can you get the money? In an hour, say three o'clock. Meet me here in the wagon. I'll sneak away from the show just before the pistol act goes on. Pistol act? Yeah. I've got another job besides telling fortunes. I'm the human target in the pistol act. <laughs> Must be a good racket selling fortunes. No overhead. A crystal ball and a new bunch of suckers every day. I got five minutes after three. She said she'd meet us here in the wagon at three o'clock sharp. I told you to leave the dames to me, Mr. Thurston. Step outside, see if you can see her. Hey, this door. It won't open. Maybe it's stuck. Kick it. It's locked from the outside. The wagon. It's moving. Someone's taking the brakes off and pushing us down the hill. Well, our gooses are cooked this time. We're heading for those olive trees at the foot of the hill. Hold on, take on. Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston. You all right, Pagan? On your feet? Yeah. Where are we going? Back to the circus to find Jane Bishop. The only person who knew we were in that fortune telling wagon. just a moment, we will continue with A Man Called X, created by J. Richard Kennedy. This is Wendell Niles speaking. Every good cook knows how much trouble it saves to have everything handy right where it belongs and easy to get at. Frigidaire engineers know that, too. That's why Frigidaire refrigerators are designed the way they are. The Frigidaire Deluxe, for example, has a super freezer chest that holds up to 50 pounds of frozen foods. For fresh fruits and vegetables, there's the big Frigidaire Hydrator, glass-topped so you can see what's on hand, easy rolling so you can get at things quickly. A sliding basket drawer stores eggs and other small articles. And as for all the other foods you keep in a refrigerator, well, Frigidaire's new design gives up to 50% more storage space in the same kitchen space. And think what you could do with all that extra room. Of course, foods must be safe as well as handy. And that's where the famous Frigidaire meter miser comes in. It's the simplest coal maker ever built. So simple, it uses only a trickle of current. So powerful, it keeps even the biggest Frigidaires filled with cold. Remember how Frigidaire refrigerators keep everything handy. And remember, for all the advantages you want, ask to see the name Frigidaire when you ask to see a new refrigerator. In a few moments, Frigidaire will tell you about a great new radio show that starts next week. 
Be sure to listen for the announcement. And now to continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Ken is in Sicily trying to find out how a small circus is being used to supply the dread mafia terrorist organization with American-made arms. His only clue, two words, laughing lady, spoken by a dying clown, leads him into a dilemma, where he finds the circus is called the laughing lady, and its star performer, a woman clown, is called the laughing lady. Ken and Pagan are returning to the circus after an attempt has been made on their lives while they were waiting to meet a Miss Jane the human target in the pistol act. Hurry, Pagan. We've got to get to Jane Bishop before she goes on. If she offered to sell information to us, she could just as easily get a higher price from the mafia not to sell. Well, business is business. If she comes now, grab her, Mr. Thurston, quick. Signorina Bishop, the world's most beautiful human target. We can't get to her now. The mafia would identify us. The lovely Signorina is lighting a cigarette. She won't look this way. Now she is smoking it. And when the lovely lady tells me she is ready, I will shoot the cigarette from her mouth. Ready now, Signor Cole. She is ready. I take aim. Silence, please. He hit her. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. I couldn't kill Jane. A thousand people see him bump off the dame and listen to him. I didn't. I couldn't. Believe me. Please, senor. It was an accident. You lie. It was no accident. He killed her. He wanted to get rid of her. Why did you want to get rid of her? I hated her. I wanted to get rid of her, Thurston, but I couldn't. I couldn't miss my target. Oh, please, senor Thurston. Have pity. Leave him alone. It's uh, your fault, senora. For years I tell you to get rid of this foreigner. Always you say no. Now we are in trouble. The police will come. Alfredo, he insisted Senor Cole stay. I still want to know why Cole wanted to get rid of Jane Bishop. This is not your affair, Senor. You go, please. It is my affair. Someone tried to kill me a few minutes ago. I swear I didn't kill her. I wanted to be free, but I didn't kill her. She was my wife. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, they've tried to kill us twice, and you're out here in this dark looking at trees. Let's get back close to the circus light. Quiet, Pagan, and hold that flashlight. There we are. What is it? A bullet. An American 22. The same kind someone let go at me in the Jeep. But the tree's 50 feet from the tent, and Cole was. It may not have been Cole's shot. You mean Cole didn't kill Jane? Someone else fired a shot at precisely the same moment he did. Someone's coming. Have you not to cause enough trouble, Senor Thurston? Oh. Senor Bonaparelli, did you ever see cartridges like this before? Oh, they are the kind we use in the pistol act and the shooting gallery. You're sure? Certainly. I have a charge of the circus ammunition. Before it is too late, Senor, get out of Sicily. Perhaps I'm still interested in buying your circus. If that is what you're staying for, you may leave now. The widow of my brother and I sold the circus today. Senor Thurston, this is the bullet taken from the dead woman. 
Another American 22. Thank you. Matches the other two. Now, would you take me back to Senor Cole's cell? Si, si. Follow me, please. Thurston, isn't it just like an American to help a countryman in trouble? Thanks for coming. I'll try to help you, Cole, but I want the truth. How could I lie to you now? Well, you did all right with that cock and bull story about a federal charge keeping you from going back to the States. I checked and found you were lying. I love Alice Perilli. That's why I don't go back to America. Alice Perilli, Alfredo's widow. Yes. Yeah. She needs me now. The laughing lady hates us both. What do you know about the mafia? How is it using the circus and who's connected with it? The mafia? I don't know. I swear. You're lying. Your wife, Jane, knew about the mafia and was going to tell me. She made the mistake of telling someone else and got killed. But I didn't kill Jane. I couldn't. If you didn't, whoever did is using you for a fall guy. Who was it, Cole? I don't know, so help me, I don't. Okay. Just have to sit in jail here until I find out. No! Don't leave me here! Senor Thurston, a stranger just came with 50,000 lira for Senor Cole's release. 50,000 lira? The only one around here with that kind of money is the mafia. You think Senor Cole is with the mafia? I don't know. But I'm sure the mafia is getting guns tonight from the circus. I'm going to need you and your men. Wait till tonight, Mr. Thurston. Grab the laughing lady. I have no proof she is the mafia agent yet, Pedro. But Parilli said she was the mafia agent. She has charge of the circus emanation, and now she sold out her share of the circus. Yes, but Parilli's widow sold out her share of the circus, too. Oh. And someone in the mafia just bailed Cole out of jail. Well, maybe all three of them are in the mafia. You can find out how much each of the women got for her share of the circus. I'll know which of the three is the mafia agent. Well, that's easy to find out. But please, Mr. Thurston, arrest the laughing lady now. I can't. I've got a few questions I want to ask her in front of the townspeople tonight. You'll never make her stop laughing. Never. No one will ever get the 10,000 lira prize. You find out how much each of the women got for the circus, and I'll stop the laughing lady. <laughs> Hard to get inside to you, Mr. Thurston. Here, on this paper, the amounts the two women got for the circus. Paper right up, folks. A win of 10,000 lira. Make the lady stop for laughing. Thanks, Pagan. Stick close to Cole. You are a big faced thought, laughing lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, you look like a donkey, laughing lady. <laughs> Tonight, while you laugh, laughing lady. Terror is being planned by the mafia for the people of this village. <laughs> and you and the widow, Alice Perilli, know that the mafia is using your circus to distribute arms. You, laughing lady, are permitting this crime out of fear of the mafia. You think your partner, Alice Perilli, also fears the mafia. Your brother knew the truth and killed himself out of shame. When he found out it was his wife, Alice, who was connected with the mafia. You lied. Out of fear, you sold your share of the circus for a few hundred dollars. But Alice got $100,000 in gold from the mafia. You and your brother were betrayed. Tell the citizens here where the guns were hidden before it's too late. Ah, in the livestock tent, buried in the bales of hay. Pagan, grab the widow. Alice, the mafia? No, she couldn't. The widow killed your wife because Jane was going to tell me about the mafia. You were blamed for it. But she she bailed me out of jail. To make the story stick with the laughing lady. Your beloved Alice was leaving for Rome alone. Mr. Thurston, you won the prize. Ten thousand lira. What a way to stop the laughing lady. I'll forfeit my winnings this time, Pagan. The laughing lady is going to need it. Don't tell me she's going on with that phony laughing gag. I hope so. Now that the false laughter, the mask for terror is cleared away, the people can get the joy of laughter they really try to give them.
Here is the big announcement Frigidaire wants you to hear. Next week, Sunday, October 3rd, Frigidaire will present the new Lum and Abner show. A full half hour of comedy with those two delightful Pine Ridge characters. Yes, Lum and Abner, the favorites of millions of American families, will bring you a new half hour show starting Sunday night, October 3rd. Listen to Frigidaire's new Lum and Abner show over most of these same stations, Sunday, October 3rd. See your newspapers for the exact hour. And now, in saying goodbye to the man called X, we say goodbye to our good friend, Herbert Marshall. Bart, on behalf of our sponsor, Frigidaire Division of General Motors Corporation, thanks for the grand job you've done and for the fine performances of the entire cast. Leon Belasco, Ted Von Elts, all the rest. And I'd just like to add, for all of us here in the studio, thanks, Bart. Thanks for being such a swell person. Oh, thank you, Gwen. Thank you. Thank you for myself, for Johnny Green, who composed and conducted our music, for the many writers who contributed scripts for The Man Called X, and for our director, D. Engelbach. Will you please express our appreciation to Frigidaire for a most happy association? It's been a great pleasure to be with you. The best of luck from all of us to you on your new show. So long, Bart, and so, folks, this is Wendell Niles saying good night for Frigidaire. See you all on the new Lum and Abner show next week. <laughs> CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Transcribed. The National Broadcasting Company presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Far south in the vast reaches of the great Pacific Ocean, at the very back door of Asia lie tiny hidden islands of mystery called the Islands of Spice. Java, Sumatra, Borneo, Bali. Nearby, across the treacherous swirl of the Java Sea, moves a vessel whose cargo is death. But of course, Pagan Zellschmidt knows nothing of these things when he answers the phone in his room in New York. Mr. Pagan Zellschmidt speaking. Listen carefully, Zellschmidt, to what I'm going to tell you. Huh? Who are you? Listen, one week from today, the fish peddler will arrive in Batavia by boat. Got it? Sure. The fish peddler arrives in Batavia by boat in a week. So who cares? Mr. X might care. Huh? Why should he? M- Mr. Who? I-, I-, I don't know anybody with a name like that. If you know what's good for you, you'll get this information to Ken Thurston right away. But, but, if you wanted him to know, how come you didn't call him yourself? Because he'd have figured some way to trace this call. You're not that smart. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hello? Hello? Hmm. Hang up on me, will you? Well, I'll tell you a couple of things or two. So you think you're wise, eh? Well, it was very nice of you to give me a hundred dollars, Mr. Thurston. But, of course, I-, I didn't really expect anything, you understand, just for delivering your message. Oh, sure, Pig. I'll be forced it on you. Well, I... Yes. Ken, this could be the break we've needed for two and a half years. Chief, it seems almost too good to be true. If it is true... It is the absolute truth. How could I make it up? I don't even know who is this, this fish peddler. Uh, that's the trouble. Neither do we. Huh? Pagan, we know what he is, all right. Or what she is, maybe. Yeah. The worst international crook in the whole dirty racket. The fish peddler's been back at the scenes and the taking over of every country in Eastern Europe for the past ten years. Buying and selling information. Bribery. Assassination. You can throw a good chunk of Asia into that pot, too, Chief. And come up with a winning hand. China, Korea, French Indochina. Oh, but how could one person do all those things? He or she has got a string of agents scattered all over the world, known as the net. And we don't know who any of them are. But this may be the chance, Chief. It wouldn't be the first time one of those boys got soured up on that kind of a setup and did some straight-from-the-shoulder talking. Yeah. You think that accounts for the phone call? Could be. Anyhow, 
Pagon and I are going to the East Indies and find out. Huh? But Mr. Thurston... Pagon, I... if this turns out to be one of your bum steers, I want to know exactly where to lay your hands on you. Chief, I'll wire you for Macassar. Macassar? I thought that message said the boat would arrive in Batavia. The Dutch Airlines office says the only boat due in Batavia one, one week from today is a cargo liner from Macassar. Makes a three-day run across the Java Sea. And I'm going to be on board. Person. Smells like a fruitcake. Spice market, Pagan. If you want a ton of cinnamon, here's a place to buy it. <laughs> what would I do with a ton of... Ooh, look, Mr. X. Over then, that blue sarong. Pagan. Pagan. Well, I was only... Here hidden. now. Here's the Ristoffel Cafe. Come on. Is this where that Captain Janssel hangs out? That's what the shipping agent said. Let's go in. Thanks. We're looking Always for... Always glad to see a new face. Step right in and shake hands with Michael Joseph Zichitella, the tomcat of the keyboard. Hiya. The world's greatest hot piano player, bar none. Sit down, sit down. You ask me about Ellington, Jelly Roll Morton, I never heard of him. Here, take a listen. You don't know this character. How about it? Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, right. It... Use that as my theme for 16 months at a nightclub off Piccadilly. Went from there to the Follies Berger. Played a full season back in 27. Hey, remember this one? Ah, it brings back memories. Oh, sure, sure. Now, look, Just I wonder... Just call me Joe. Everybody calls me Joe. This cafe job's only a fill-in, you understand? Yeah, yeah, sure. Got a sure. big engagement over at the Opera House in Batavia next week. A solid 30 minutes. Yeah, that's the... great. Great, Joe. Maybe we'll catch your act over there. But right now, I want to talk to Captain Janssut. Uh, Janssut? Uh, somebody want to talk with Janssut? Wait here, Pagan. Yeah, is that you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Captain Yonsu. Cargo liner Nampark, uh, Macassar to Batavia. My name's Ken Thurston, Captain. <laughs> Happy to know you, my dear. You want passage, maybe? Yeah, for two. You got room? Yeah, yeah, plenty of room. Only three, four passengers so far. We, we sail in the morning. Fine. Then if you've no objection... If you will pardon me, Captain Yonsu. Huh? Perhaps... I should be going now. Ah, oh, forgive me. Uh, Monia Thurston, permit me to introduce Dr. Mohammed Singh. Uh, Dr. Singh is a... Uh, uh, how you say it again? Uh, a zoologist, Mr. Thurston, specializing in the study of reptiles. I have collected some specimens from the jungles here to take back to Batavia. Yeah. I understand there are all kinds of strange reptiles around here these days. I hope you're satisfied with the specimens you've collected, Dr. Singh. Oh, yes. Yes. Quite satisfied, Mr. Thurston. They will make excellent additions to my collection. All of them are quite vicious. Quite deadly. Ah, snakes in boxes. <laughs> it's a funny business. Yeah. You're sailing with us then, Dr. Singh? That is correct, Mr. Thurston. I trust the voyage will give us time to become better acquainted. And perhaps if circumstances allow, you will be able to make the acquaintance of my reptiles also. I'm certain you will find them most interesting. Yeah. Thanks for the kind invitation. It will be my humble pleasure, Mr. Thurston. I will see you later then. Sure. See you on board, Doctor. Ah, it is a funny cargo sometimes, I carry. Yeah, especially funny on this trip. Huh? Captain, one of your passengers happens to be wanted. Wanted, money? Yes, by almost every one of the Western nations in the UN. You mean he is. Uh... Oh, yeah, I see. And uh, you know maybe who it is? Not yet. I may need your help. Money? It is my business to haul cargo or passenger. It's not my business to catch criminal like this one. It, it, it no bother me. Uh, I no bother him. I no want trouble with nobody. I, 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 I Hello, just Bob. mind... Going to take me to dinner? Oh, you are? Well, I, I, I forgot you coming here. Uh, Mania Thurston is uh, Johanna. 
How do you do? Is this your daughter, Captain? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe we go eat now. Glad you, Pop. I'm starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, come, come, I'm come. I'm happy to meet you, Miss Janschult. Are you going with us in the morning by any chance? What? Why, well, yes, Mr. Thurston. I am, as a matter of fact. Why do you ask? Oh, let's not bother with it now. We'll have a lot of time to talk about it before we get to Batavia. There she is, Pedro. The cargo liner Nambox. Macassar to Batavia. That? <laughs> Looks like a rusty old bust up my uncle Ahmed once gave to my aunt Zenobia for a birthday present. Yeah. Not as trim as most of the Dutch ships will see in these waters. Maybe this Captain Janssold has got worries in his mind that don't pay attention enough to business. Could be, Pagan. Here, let's get aboard. Oh, sure. How that old geezer ever got such a luscious lollipop for a daughter like that Joanna? I'll Going know. somewhere, mister? Yep. Aboard the Nambok. Any objection? Maybe. What's your name? Ken Thurston. And I'm Pagan Zelschmidt. We're both of us going Yeah, to... yeah, I know. Maybe someday the skipper will learn that passengers are bad luck on freighters. Never seen any yet that didn't bring trouble with them. Sounds like you're expecting some on this trip, mister. Who are you? Anderson, first officer. And you're right. I am expecting trouble. Plenty of it. Any particular kind? With rusted boilers ready to blow... Bow place ready to split wide open if we hit even a lemon crate? What's your guess? Well, sounds like all the makings of a pleasant little journey. <laughs> Mr. Thurston. Yeah, Mr. Thurston. Welcome aboard. I should have that little cookie in the blue sarong on this trip, Mr. X. <laughs> I never saw such moonlight before. Yeah, it's like daylight, Pagan. You can almost see the Java coast over there. You do what I told you to? Mr. Thurston, I've been buying drinks for all these characters in the lounge, trying to get them to talk. Well? Well, Joe plays that piano and talks about Broadway back in 1926. All that Dr. Singh cares about the snakes. Captain Yansel talks about eating. Johanna? <laughs> She spends all her time with you. Yes, yeah, she's, um... She's very interesting. Mr. X, these people don't know from nothing. I don't think this fish peddler crook is even on board. Anyhow, I'm practically broke. Yeah, the only chance you'd have of making any money is a way that's out of the question. Huh? You, you, you mean there is a way? Well, the fish peddler will probably pay plenty to find out who I am. You mean... Oh, oh, oh but... <laughs> Like you said, Mr. X, it's out of the question. I wouldn't tell a soul. Oh, I know that. Of course you wouldn't. No, Pagan, as a matter of fact, I don't know who he really is. Tell me about it. He's the man called X. What do I say? How about that? Well, maybe it's worth about 50 bucks to find out, huh? Joe, my friend? As a matter of fact, Pagan, my friend, I was wondering if I could borrow about five from you. Just until we get to Batavia, of course. Of course, I wouldn't tell this to another soul, Dr. Singh, but Mr. Thurston is really called Mr. X. So? I find this most interesting. Most interesting. So maybe it's worth about a uh, hundred bucks, eh? Mr. Zeltsmith. To a poor scientist, such an amount seems staggering. Oh, my good friend, please take my advice and never become a zoologist. Financially, it is most unprofitable. You mean Ken Thurston, the man called X? Oh, sure, I know him for years. But then, who else have you told about this? Oh, not a soul. I only thought you might like to... Hey, hey, wait! I'll see you later, Mr. Thurston. What? What? Oh. Ken! Ken! Ken? Are 
are you in here? Is that you, Ken? Who are you? Who are you? Wait! No! No! Oh, uh, Captain Janssel. Huh? Only a person. That's right. Uh, I, I don't see you come up here. You look for me, maybe. I thought you'd show up here on the bridge sooner or later. Uh, here, mister, you take the bridge. Uh, I suppose. Uh, why you want to see me, my dear? Same thing. The fish peddler. Fish peddler, fish peddler. I tell you, it's no my business. Somebody that vicious is everybody's business. But you tell me you don't even know who is a fish, this uh, fish peddler. I may know pretty quick. Oh? And uh, just how do you intend to Mr. prove? Thurston. Mr. Thurston! What is it, Baker? Mr. Thurston, come quick, down to your cabin. What's the matter? It's Joanna. My daughter, what has happened? Well, she, I mean, she's... Uh, oh, come on, let's have it. She's she's lying in a door at your cabin, Mr. Thurston. Somebody killed her dead. Blood all over. How about carrying her into the wardroom, Captain? Didn't I see a couch in there? Uh, yeah, my dear Thurston. Mm. Right this way. Oh, my poor... Uh, easy, Big on easy. Watch your step. Poor little Petunia. I wonder who could be such a dirty no-account. Yeah. Here, the wardroom. Right over to the couch with her peg on. Easy now. There. Now, Captain, what about your first aid equipment? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Right here it is. But uh, will it be enough for my poor little girl? We'll soon find out. Now, let's see. Oh, boy. Hand me that roll of gauze, Pagan. Here you are, Mr. Thurston. Uh, uh, thank heaven she is not dead. When you Zellschmidt, you, you come to bleach and say my daughter is dead, and uh, I, uh, I think I'll die too. Right, right there. Well, she looks kind of dead. No wonder. Whoever did that wasn't fooling. Oh, Money, Thurston, if I, if I ever find who has done this, with these two hands, I break his yeah, yeah. bones into... And my, I know my... someone who will lend you a helping hand. Uh, yeah. That's the best I can do. Uh, do you think she, she will be all right, Money? I'm no doctor, Captain. My guess would be that the sooner we reach one in Batavia, the better. Well, I, I will order them full speed ahead. If the boilers I burst, I will get my young hands... What is that? Hey, sounds maybe like a torpedo or a pirate or a mine. Or maybe somebody called the fish peddler, Pega. Huh? The fish peddler? Hey, now the engine stopped. Oh, Emil, what is happening on my ship? I think we better find out. Come on. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, man. You must get those engines going here. Otherwise, by your hand, I might... might... Well... Doctor. Good day, Mr. Thurston. How long have you been standing outside the wardroom, Dr. Singh? Standing, Mr. Thurston? You are mistaken. I was approaching the door as you opened it. Uh. It was my intention to inquire as to the well-being of the young lady. My daughter, Johanna? Yes. I trust her injuries are none too serious. Is that just sympathetic solicitude, Doctor, or a more personal concern? I fail to grasp your meaning, Mr. Thurston. Do you? Then how come you knew that Johanna had been injured in the first place? It was your most estimable friend, Mr. Zeldsmith, who informed me. That's a lie, besides which it isn't true. I didn't tell nobody enough. So, so then if nobody was telling you, there is only one answer. You were the one who... With these hands of mine, I will take hold you it, and Captain. I... Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let's get an answer first. All right, all right. But it had better be an excellent one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Dr. Singh... What is your answer? The one I gave you, Mr. Thurston. I heard Mr. Zeldsmith informing you and Captain Jan Sult of the unfortunate occurrence to Miss Johanna. It was purely sympathetic solicitude, as you put it, that prompted my inquiry as to her present state of health. Now do I receive an answer? Uh, if we can repair those engines and get to Batavia first, she'll be all right. Ah, excellent. Thank you for relieving my mind. Now, with your permission, 
I shall remove myself to the lounge. Good day, gentlemen. Not near Thurston. I don't know. Dagon, why don't you go to the lounge with him? Go with him? But he could be this fish peddling guy. Yes, but maybe he's not. And the real peddler might pay a visit to this wardroom while you're here with Joanna. Sure. That's just what I'm talking. He might? Make up your own mind, Pagon. Come on, Captain. Let's take a look at that engine room. You're the new Thurston. Those engines, we must get them running again. But Mr. Thurston! But Mr. X! But Mr. X! What has happened down here with the engines? That explosion aft damaged the rudder. She wouldn't answer the wheels, so the first officer had to stop the engines. Just where was that explosion? Aft somewhere else. The first officer's checking on it now. All right. Keep steam up. They're going to need it. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, Captain. Let's see what the first officer can tell us about this. Maybe he... Not here first. Yeah. Let's get up there. Fast. <laughs> There's the first officer now, my dear Thurston. At the head of the companion. Right? Yes, I see him here. What's going on up there, mister? Why, uh, somebody took a couple of shots at me, sir. While I was trying to check the rudder controls on the bridge. Well, who was it, do you know? No, sir. They were fired from the shadows. At ten to one, it's the same guy who took care of the hatch covers. The hatch covers? What about them? They're all battened down. The whole crew's locked down below decks. Except the engineer... Captain, can we reach the crew's quarters through the engine room? No, uh, there's no possible way. Oh, then we can't get them out now. Whoever tried it will be too easy a target out there in the moonlight. That's right, sir. Do you have a gun? Uh, no, sir. What about you, Captain? Uh, I, I do not carry one. Uh, but we have weapons in a lock in the radio room. Three pistols, one rifle. Good. That should be enough to hold off the fish peddler while we radio Batavia for a seaplane to bring a doctor and a police inspector. Isn't the radio shack just after this companionway? Let's see if we can make that without being shot at. Yeah, I'm with you, my dear. Uh, come along, mister. Okay, sir. So far, so good. Either he hasn't spotted us or... Oh, there's the door to the radio shack. Come on. Oh, no. What's the matter, Captain? Radio. All smashed to pieces. What about the gun locker? Oh, there it is, my dear. Look for yourself. Yeah. Forced open. Empty. Then that means... That means the fish peddler is doing a pretty thorough job. But why, Manier? Why is this person acting so now? And what is on his mind for the future? I think he's found out who I am and feels he's getting pushed into a corner. So... Oh, him again. Manier Thurston, I made that mistake before. I think criminal is not my business. This mistake I, I do not make again. That's what I figured, Captain. But he is adrift on this ship along with the rest of us. Well, what does he hope to do now? Let's pay a little visit to the lounge and find out. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Everything is under control. Yeah, I can see it is, Pagan. Step right in, gentlemen. Bend the knee. Won't cost you a cent. Thanks, Joe. Glad to find you and Pig on in such a cheerful frame of mind. Why not? We're going to get mitered, we're going to get mitered. That's all. Why don't you have a little drink, too? No, thanks. Pig on. Where's Dr. Singh? Uh, who knows? I was keeping a very close watch on him. But all of a sudden, poof, he was gone. Oh, sure. Then except for him and the crew below decks, all of us are right here in the lounge. Your Honor! Well, we forget about your honeyman here. Is she all right, you think? I locked the wardroom door, Captain. Ah, it's right. I, I forget. Well, <laughs> what we do now? We identify the man I'm after. Uh, how you find out? Who is he, Mr. Thurston? Right now, he's probably the only person on board beside me who's got a gun. That's all I wanted to know, Thurston. Don't move. Ooh. Well, Joe... So you're the fish peddler. Smart guess, Thurston. Only it's a little late. I'll take your gun. Thanks. All right, now just take it easy. Maybe no one will be hurt. You try to kill my Johanna. Shut you... up, Pop. 
Your daughter shouldn't have barged in on me while I was going through Mr. X's cabin. Uh, well, Joe, what are your plans? Very simple, for a spur-of-the-moment idea. It's less than ten miles to the Java coast, so I'm taking the power launch and heading in. I see. And with the ship's radio knocked out and the motor's dead, we don't have much of a chance of contacting anybody before sometime tomorrow. That's right. Hmm? Now let's go out and lower the launch. If you do a good job of it, maybe I'll let all of you wave goodbye to me. Cheer up, my friends. In five minutes, I'll be gone and off your hands. Now, here. Uh, gentlemen, what is happening? Dr. C. Been looking for you, doctor. Come on, fall in with the rest of them. Uh, Mr. Thurston, why does this man have a gun? Tell you about that later, doctor. Right now, we've got to help friend Joe get this launch into the water. All right, Captain Janschult. Push out that stern deficit. Uh, to help murder escape is fat fishing. I'm afraid we haven't got much choice. All right. Let her down. Glad you're so good-natured about this, Thurston. I was afraid I might have a little trouble with you. What's the use? You're the one who's got the gun. Well, there she is, ready to go. Good. My deepest thanks to all of you. Now move back down the deck. I don't want to get slugged with a wrench when I drop down into this launch. That's it. Keep moving. Are they yet? He'll get away. Is nothing can be done. Don't be too sure about that. No. What the... Mr. X, and this coil of rope. Guns. Guns. Here you go, will you shut up? Oh, you found him, huh? Hit the deck, fast. Give me that gun. He has hidden behind that ventilator. Yeah, he's undercover, but he can't move away from oh, it. Oh, but these guns. I found them where he'd hidden them before we went into the lounge. I was waiting until he went over the side. All right, Joe. Game's over. Come on out. Thurston? I think we can make a deal. Not a chance. Not even for the names and addresses of the net? The rest of my organization? Huh? I've got a list of all 26 of my agents here in a notebook. Well? I can toss it to you, or I can throw it overboard. It's up to you. What do you want for it? Your word that I can leave in the launch without being shot at. It's a deal, Joe. Let's have the book. I thought so. Here. Maybe we'll run into each other again sometime. So long, chums. Got money at first? I'll trade one for 26 any day, Captain. <sighs> but this is the one who has killed my Johanna. We cannot get hold of Batavia in time now. There's plenty of time. She only had superficial cuts. She's all right. All right. But, but you said... Just trying to get reactions from those aboard. And I wouldn't worry about Joe getting away. We'll have him back by the end of the week. There's no place for him to hide in Java. If you will pardon me, Mr. Thurston, might I disagree with you slightly? In what way, Dr. Singh? I should like to express the probability that Mr. Zichitela will never reach the coast of Java. Oh, well, why not? <laughs> I overheard what was happening in the lounge. <laughs> what a character. He's got ears like a couple of elephants. I took the liberty of emptying one of my specimen boxes into the bottom of the launch. Those snakes? Yes, snakes. Quite deadly. They were rather sluggish, but perhaps by now the heat of the launch motor has made them very lively. Ooh. And he won't even know about them until one of them hits him. Well... Well, it serves him right, Mr. Thurston. He'd just as soon kill anybody as look at them. Yeah, you may be right at that, Pagan. Anyway, there's nothing we can do about it now. Isn't an old proverb here in the East Indies something about the conscience of an evil man being sharper than the fangs of a venomous serpent? Maybe Joe could tell us if that's true or not. Right about now. Now, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, our story is called A Journey to Xenophon, a journey that is started by an innocent old lady and ends with Mr. X encountering one of the most vicious international rackets of his career. And as usual, where rackets are concerned, we find his playmate, Pagon Zellschmidt, portrayed as usual 
by Leon Velasco. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production and is directed by Jack John Stone, with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Les Crutchfield, with additional scenes and dialogue by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents used on this transcribed program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. The chimes ring for Dennis Day and Judy Canova tomorrow night on NBC. Dennis gets himself into more merry mix-ups, but still has time to sing in his beautiful tenor voice. And Judy Canova goes operatic tomorrow because her guest on The Judy Canova Show is H.C.O. Pinza. 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 Stay tuned for Herbert Marshall as the man called X transcribed. Screen stars Joan Fontaine and Herbert Marshall will appear in this Sunday's Theater Guild on the air presentation. It's A.A. A. Milne's fascinating story, Michael and Mary. Another Sunday night chime favorite is the authentic Tales of the Texas Rangers starring Joel McRae. Remember this Sunday night on NBC for the Theater Guild on the air with Herbert Marshall and Joan Fontaine and Tales of the Texas Rangers... With Joel McRae. The National Broadcasting Company presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. It began near the island of Xenophon, off the coast of Greece in the Aegean Sea. It began when a giant transport plane came plunging helplessly down from the clouds to the sparkling blue waters below. One day later, in Athens, Greece... The disaster that hit that plane caused another. And it was then that a gray-haired, simply-dressed woman paid a visit to the chief and me in the offices of the Bureau, high up above the teeming streets of New York City. Now, just why did you come here to the Bureau, Mrs. Masters? You see, it was because of my son, Arides. He live in Athena in Greece, where I come from. Your son is a reader's master? Yes, yes, a doctor. Sure. Chief, you remember Dr. Masters, one of the greatest research men in the world. Worked with us during the war on battle fatigue, war neuroses. Oh, sure, Ken, of course. Come to think of it, I saw his name in the papers just a month or two ago, didn't I? Yeah. He's doing some advanced work on cancer research in Athens. On the track of something, too, according to the article. Yes. My son wrote me letters telling me about some medicine, miracle workers, he called them. The name I have here. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. What are they, Ken? Radioactive isotopes, Chief. Isotopes? Miracle workers of science is right. They've been using them as tracers to determine the cause of certain diseases. Chief... Radioactive isotopes might hold the clue to curing any number of diseases. Tuberculosis, cancer. Apparently, Dr. Mastos is going to use them in his cancer research. No. No, Arides will never use them. Oh? You see, my son is dead. Oh, I'm sorry. He was shot to death. Shot? Then that's why you came to us. You want us to find his killer? No. No, I do not believe in revenge. What is done is done. My son is gone. But his work must live on. And yesterday, I get another letter from a friend in Athens. 
these things my son want have never arrived. I see. Go on, please. So I go to the company today. What company, Mrs. Master? Uh, the Sedor Mercantile Company. Sedor Mercantile Company. Uh, they are the ones who were to send these things to Athens, to my son. But the man will not help me, will tell me nothing, only to come here for the government to assist me. You will help, please. You will see that my son's work can continue. I promise you this, Mrs. Mastos. Everything your government can possibly do to help is going to be done. Ah. So, that is good. I will go home now. You know, I'm very proud of my son, of his work. Almost as proud as I am of my country. Well, what do you think, Chief? Ken, the Bureau has already got a report on those missing isotopes. Huh? Sure. A hundred units were shipped to Athens 60 days ago. They were lost overboard while being transferred to another ship near the island of Xenophon. Xenophon? That's all that lies behind this. An unfortunate accident. I wonder. Hmm? Chief... What do you think a hundred units of isotopes would bring on an international black market, say, in Eastern Europe? Oh, probably a couple of million dollars. Ken. Chief, I'm paying a visit to the Sador Mercantile Company. Pay the man out of the petty cash, Herman. It's only two million dollars. Shush, 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 shush. Don't be so impetuous, Prince Klepunik. You'll have to stand in line with the others. Pagan. Pagan. Oh. Get your feet off that desk and wake up. <clears throat> I'll have your head for waking me up like this. I. <clears throat> Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagon, what are you doing here at the Sador Mercantile Company? Where? Oh, oh, you mean here? Why, I'm the vice president and general manager in charge of mercantiles and things. So you're the one who sent Mrs. Masters to see me? Of course, I didn't know what she was talking about. Besides, I wanted you to find out about, about my salary. <laughs> that big fat man hasn't been back since. What big fat man? The one who hired me three days ago. He hasn't been back since. And the joint is clean as a thistle. No papers, no supplies, no nothing. I think I got a fast brush up somewhere. Yeah. Were there any phone calls, any, any mail? Telephone is unconnected, and the only thing in the mail was this. I uh, opened it accidentally, you understand. Oh, you're sure. Huh? Mm-hmm. Pagon, this is a shipping invoice. Three days ago, 50 units of radioactive isotopes were shipped Air Express via Rome to a Dr. Mitter of Athens General Hospital. What does that mean? It could mean that the Sador outfit muscled in on three million dollars worth of isotopes and are going to shoot them into Eastern Europe. But, but, but... That's right, Pagan. They flew the coop after this last shipment and left you holding a bag. Oh, Mr. Thurston, then I'm working for crooks and not even getting paid on salary. Oh, I feel sick. Yeah, so do I. And I'm going to see a doctor. Hmm? What doctor? Dr. Mitter at the General Hospital in Athens. Oh, thanks, nurse. Well. You seem surprised, Mr. Thurston. I, I am. I didn't expect Dr. Mitter to be so feminine. Someone should have told you that the name is Eleanor Mitter. Won't you sit down? Thanks. You wish to speak with me concerning radioactive isotopes and our interest in them here at the Athens General Hospital. That's right. What can you tell me about them? We had a great man working at this hospital, Mr. Thurston. Dr. Aridus Masters. I know. Do you also know that he was very close to determining the cause and the possible cure for cancer? 
So he applied for radioactive isotopes under the ECA grants to Greece. He did. And the hospital contracted with the Sador Mercantile Company to send the isotopes from the United States to Athens. A hundred units of them? Yes. It's a pretty large order for one hospital to handle, isn't it? Cancer is a pretty large order for humanity to handle, Mr. Thurston. Ah. What happened to him? The first shipment was lost at sea. Wasn't another 50-unit shipped by Air Express a few days ago? It was. But the plane crashed off the island of Xenophon two days ago. Oh, Xenophon. That was the scene of the first loss, too, wasn't it? It was. Coincidence? What else could it be? They were both accidents. Yeah. What about Dr. Masters' death, Dr. Mitter? Was that a... Was that an accident, too? Dr. Masters was murdered, Mr. Thurston, while resisting a bandit who was attempting to rob him. You're sure that's what it was? I am not interested in theories about murder. Only in carrying on Dr. Master's research, if I am able. Could you persuade your government to ship us still additional units of isotopes? Asking us to stretch our generosity a bit, isn't it? We have no place else to turn. There's always the black market, Doctor. Mr. Thurston, there is no black market in radioactive isotopes. Yeah. Oh, well... Thanks for the information, Dr. Miller. I'll see if I can do anything for you. Bye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mr. Thurston. And thank you. Sparta, 2573, please. Mm. Hello. This is Dr. Miller. A Mr. Ken Thurston was just here. He might possibly be taking the steamer to Xenophon. And it is also possible that Mr. Thurston is the man called X. Mr. Thurston, how long do we have to travel in this cattle boat? <laughs> Already my stomach is telling my nose to move away. Cheer up, Pagan. We'll be in Xenophon in 24 hours. Now, oh, this should be our cabin. Here. Yes? Hello, you, you must be Colonel Creighton. And if I am? The passenger agent tells us we'll be sharing this cabin. The ship's pretty crowded. And... Yes, yes, I've already been informed of these miserable arrangements. The very idea of a member of the king's personal guard being forced to share his quarters with strangers. We're not complaining, Colonel. Why should you? Just bear in mind, please, that this enforced proximity does not entitle you to any social amenities. Now, if you'll excuse me, I shall leave for dinner. I trust the cabin shall be in an orderly condition upon my return. Well, <laughs> what a stiff shirt. <laughs> Am I going to tell him a couple of things or two? Yeah, sure. Let's put our bags away, Peg. On the... Yeah, come here. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Your pardon for this intrusion. My name is Demetro Sador. Mr. Thurston, it's him, it's him, the big fat man. <laughs> yes, you recognize me. My girth is difficult to disguise. <laughs> you crooked, no good, cheating me out of my salary. I'll have the I'll have the law on you. I'll, I'll punch you black and blue. I'll Mr. Thurston, do something. That won't be necessary. <laughs> quite right, sir, quite right. My apologies, Sir Smith. A cable from Greece, an uh, unexpected business emergency. No time to notify you. Perhaps this uh, will suffice for back salary. <laughs> that measly little hand. A sea note. A hundred bucks? <laughs> yes, exactly. Are we still uh, enemies, my dear sir? Oh, how did you ever get such a silly idea, Mr. Sador? My dearest friend. <laughs> now, if there's any little job... All right, Sador, let's have it. You didn't come in here just to settle up with Pagan. <laughs> you have a keen mind, sir. A very keen mind. No, I came here as a friend to warn you. There is someone aboard this ship, sir, who intends to take your life. What makes you think so? My sources must remain a secret, sir. However, this much I can tell you. There is no one named Colonel Creighton connected with His Majesty's guard. Ah. At the moment, the colonel is dining with a last-minute passenger... The lovely Dr. Eleanor Mitter of Athens. <laughs> there you have it, sir. My uh, gesture of friendship. You mentioned two names as homicidal suspects. How about adding a third? A third, sir? Yeah. Dimitro Sedor. <laughs> yes, yes, my dear sir. You're quite right. It's quite right indeed. <laughs> Good night, my friends. <laughs> Good night. 
Part of this rail, Dr. Miller? Uh, the deck is free to all passengers, Mr. Thurston. Oh, thank you. A bit lonely out here at this hour of night, isn't it? That's why I chose it. I prefer quiet and solitude on the nights before I operate. Operate? That is why I'm traveling to Xenophon. The pilot of the plane carrying the isotopes had his skull fractured in the crash. Oh. Funny thing about that crash, Doctor. Oh? Yeah, I checked on it. The weather was calm and clear. Too bad if the pilot died during the operation and couldn't tell how it happened. There are other things more dangerous to human life than a scalpel in the hands of a trained surgeon, Mr. Thurston. Now, if you will excuse me, I think I'll retire. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Hmm. Mr. Thurston, Mr. Thurston, we're going to be killed, murdered, even die, maybe. Whoa, well, well, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pagan. Who's going to commit all this mayhem? Uh, the phony Colonel Creighton. That's who. I, I saw him in the, the cabin just just now cleaning the cannon. Anyway, caliber 88 automatic. He's going to kill us. Whoa. <laughs> Don't get down. <laughs> all right, Pagan. Dig your nose up out of that deck. Whoever it was is gone in the shadows. Whoever it was, huh? Yeah. Who else could it be but that no good colonel? Dr. Mitter left in the direction of those shots. Hmm? Look over there now. What do you see? That darkness? Nothing but a big shadow. It, uh... Mr. Thurston, it's... It's moving. It's coming towards us. Mr. Thurston. A pleasant journey, this one to Zedophon, is it not, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> yes. A very pleasant journey, indeed. Mr. Thurston, why don't we get off this floating cattle car? Dr. Mitter sneaked the shore. Special priority. She's got an operation coming up. Huh. Maybe if I play sick, too, we can... Mr. Thurston, look. Look out, somebody's jumping on us. Relax. That's nothing but the shadow of the cargo net swinging overhead. Imagine that. But why do they have to keep swinging that thing over our heads all the time? Couldn't they... Oh, my dear Thurston. Viewing the harbor, I see. That's right, Sado. I was wondering where that plane of yours crashed. Oh, yes, yes. Unfortunate accident. Uh, notice that mooring buoy in the bay? The ship anchored nearby? That marks the spot. Hmm. Looks like that boat has diving tackle rigged on it. <laughs> your eyes are as keen as your brain, sir. Yes, that is a sponge diving boat. One of my fleet, Mr. Thurston. Oh, so you're in the sponge business, too, eh? Quite right, sir. I find it a dull venture, but uh, quite profitable. As profitable as handling radioactive isotopes on the Eastern European market? <laughs> you joke, of course, sir. No, no, I do not think the sponge business would be as profitable, but uh, perhaps far less dangerous. <laughs> that is my answer, sir. A good one, is it not? <laughs> yes, <laughs> a very good one indeed. <laughs> What's so good about it? He didn't answer nothing. That's why it's good, Pagan. Huh? Well, anyways, with him and Dr. Mitter out of our way, we got nothing to worry about. Hey, Mr. Thurston, the cargo net stepped right over us. Hey, look! Jump, big on the next hey. living. Jump, man. Jump! Oh. Mr. X, those crates fell right where we were standing. Tons of them. Yeah. They yeah. couldn't mash us. Flattered and flat, Jacks. Yes, even flatter. Hmm. What an accident. I wonder if Colonel Creighton had caught it that. Huh? Colonel Creighton? What's he got to do with this? I don't know, but he's standing over there beside the donkey engine. Beside the... Mr. Thurston, that engine... Yeah. It handles the cargo net that spilled over our heads. Pagon, here, take this money. Circulate around the village. See what you can buy with it. Learn if there's any black market for American goods. You know, cigarette, money, anything. Mm-hmm. 
Then meet me back here at the hotel. Mr. Cax, you don't depend on that. <laughs> but what are you, what are you going to do? Check on an operation. Huh? I want to see how dangerous a scalpel in the hands of Eleanor Mitter can really be. So, Ken, you've come to the hospital to check up on me. Not quite, Eleanor. I want to talk to your patient, that pilot, about accidents to cargoes of isotopes. That is, if he's still alive. You talk like a fool. Do you think he deliberately fractured his skull in such an accident merely to make it look legitimate? No, I think the fractured skull was the only accidental thing about that plane crash. I see. And I suppose an unsuccessful operation would mean I deliberately let him die in order to seal his lips. Did he die, Eleanor? The operation was successful. Come. I will take you to see him. I hope this will end these suspicions you have, Ken. This is his room. Kind of drafty, isn't it? Oh, that stupid nurse left the window open. She knows the patient is vulnerable to pneumonia. Don't, don't, don't bother him. He's not vulnerable to anything. What? He's dead. Ken, it must have been post-operative shock or an embolism. Yeah. All that knife sticking out of his chest. <laughs> Let me see. Mr. X gave me 200 clams. Uh, I spend only 100. Mm -hmm. If I give him back 30, that makes a profit of 70 bucks. And not bad, not bad. Hmm. Maybe I better figure out again, see that I don't cheat myself. He gave me 200 simoleons. Good evening, Mr. Zell Schmidt. Oh, oh, hello, Colonel Creighton. Nice night, isn't it? <laughs> now, let's see. 200 clams. Uh, that's right. Colonel Creighton. Your identification is correct, Zell Schmidt, despite the darkness of this side street. Have you noticed no one else is around? Yes, well... <laughs> it was nice seeing you, Colonel. Drop around again sometimes. I... That knife. Be careful with that knife. I shaved once already today. I'm going to ask you one question, Sir Schmidt. If you wish to live, you will answer it correctly. Who is Ken Thurston? Oh, is that all? Oh, well, that's a cinch. He's the... Ooh. <gasps> no. No, 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 I can't. Answer, Sir Schmidt. Who is he? That, that, that knife. On my throat. Who is Ken Thurston? He is... He is... Oh, forgive me, Mr. Thurston. He is the man called X. Ah, Mr. Thurston. Come in, sir. Please come in. Thanks. Oh, welcome. Surprise, sir. Most welcome. <laughs> I must confess I expected you to call. Yes, we've got something to talk over. Perhaps we have, sir. Perhaps we have. What uh, subject did you have in mind? Radioactive isotopes. <laughs> My God, sir, I admire you. Straight to the point. No beating around the bush for you, eh? Well, what for? We both know you were behind those accidents. Why not admit it? Why not, sir? Why not indeed? The airplane pilot is dead. There are no witnesses here. I don't mind speaking frankly. Good. Then tell me if I've got the record straight. <laughs> Certainly, sir. You had a two-way purpose behind those accidents, Sador. Bleeding the ESA funds to Greece of some $3 million and seeing that those isotopes ended up in the country you're working for. <laughs> I said you were a brilliant man, sir. Your deductions are quite sound. Unfortunately, I've succeeded only partially. Both shipments were lost at sea. I found it impossible to recover them. Uh, so, you see, we've both lost. I have no isotopes. You have no proof of crime. Our little contest ends in a draw. Okay, Sador, that's that. Looks like I go back to Athens. And I, sir, return to my sponge diving business. And by the way, if you're not familiar with the process, why not drop around tomorrow? I'll take you aboard one of my boats. You might find it interesting. Maybe I'll take you up on that, Sador. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. <laughs> well, my dear, did you hear it all? You always were a talkative fool, Demetro. Why did you mention the diving? <laughs> my dear Eleanor, please be to be apparently frank, yet tell him nothing. 
Now he will leave Xenophon and we shall have nothing further to worry about. You mean I shall have nothing further to worry about? Huh? Does that mean I have? <laughs> Don't be foolish, my dear. What could it possibly be? Just this, Demetro. <laughs> Just this. <laughs> Diving suit telephone working all right. Clear like a shell, Mr. Thurston. Good. How's the motor operating the air pump? <laughs> that little putt putt is purring like a puppy. See that it stays that way. I'll keep it running smooth like a carpet. Unless maybe the crew of this boat is coming back. Don't worry. They've ordered to stay away officially. Then who is coming uh, this way in a speedboat? Speedboat? Well, what do you know? It's that pretty little pill peddler, Dr. Hello Litter. There. Hello. Is that you, Mr. Zeltschmidt? That's right, Miss Dr. Miller. Welcome on board. Oh, thank you. And Mr. Thurston, where is he? I must speak with him at... The air pump. The driving equipment is working. Sure. We're learning how to be sponges. Aren't we, Mr. Thurston? Oh, I see the diving rig phone is working. Let me have it. Dr. Mitter, you got a gun. You... Mr. Thurston! My hand is over the transmitter. He cannot hear you. Nor could he hear the sound of shots. Oh, <laughs> Move Shut. backward quickly and stay there. Ken? Ken, do you hear me? Eleanor, what are you doing aboard? I followed you from your hotel, Ken. I have important news. Oh? You were right. Those accidents to the isotopes were planned. The Metro Sado was behind it. He... Uh, but if you are diving out here, you know his plan. Yeah, that's right, Eleanor. He had his agents dump the isotopes into the ocean to make the accidents look legitimate. Then he'd recover them with his sponge divers. As you are trying to do now. The isotopes are right below the boat, Eleanor. A diver can get to them in the morning. So my work's almost over for the night. Ask Pagan to pull in the lines, will you? First, darling, I think you should know something. Demetro Sedor has a partner. I was working with him. Were you, Eleanor? But now that Sedor is dead, all the profits shall be mine. Said or dead? Yes, darling, I disposed of him. As I did with the pilot. And as I am going to do with you. Pretty confident, aren't you? Why shouldn't I be? You'll find it rather difficult to breathe down there with your air supply gone. Too bad it had to end this way, darling, but... Goodbye. Dr. Miller, the air pump, it stopped. Mr. Thurston... Yes, Sir Schmidt. And now it is your turn. Mr. Thurston, help! Oh, you fool. He cannot help you now. He's got... You're wrong, Eleanor. You! Better take our gun, Colonel. With pleasure. Let me have it, Doctor. All right, Thurston. You're alive. And, and Colonel Creighton. Of the Athenian secret intelligence. Sure. <laughs> you made a mistake not seeing the telephone wire going into the cabin. What? No, no, Pagon. Her mistake was trading in her physician's oath for a handful of money. She's going to pay for that mistake now. Yeah. So will all those who trade in the same kind of coin. Someone said it long ago, much better than I, remember? What is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? And now here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, we've planned a low-key mystery for you with a twist at the finish I think you'll find interesting and kind of startling. As usual, Leon Belasco will be along as Pig on Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. Starring Herbert Marshall is a J. Richard Kennedy production and is directed by Jack Johnstone with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's transcribed story was written by Sidney Marshall. Heard in tonight's cast were Will Wright as the chief, Alan Reed as Dimitro Sador, Joan Banks as Dr. Mitter, Dan O'Herlihy as Colonel Creighton, and Peggy Weber as Mrs. Mastos. 
All characters and incidents used are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. And so until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday afternoon chimes mean mystery and action on NBC. Mike Waring, better known as the Falcon, lends his debonair touch to the solution of another mystery, followed by that polite, diplomatic, and very deadly detective, the Saint. After the Saint, the big guy steps into mystery and danger, and your Sunday afternoon of mystery concludes with that new private eye, Charlie Wilde. 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 The National Broadcasting Company presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. The message was received by the State Department in Washington shortly before midnight. Within an hour after decoding, there was a feverish burst of activity in the offices of the Atomic Energy Commission, counterintelligence, and at the Bureau in New York City. So Professor Chorney has disappeared. That's right, Ken. It apparently happened three weeks ago. Where, Chief? At Los Alamos? No, much worse. At Linz, Austria. Hmm, on the border of the American-Russian zone. Yeah. What was Chorney doing there? His family disappeared there during the war. A month ago, he took a leave of absence from his nuclear fission work at uh, Los Alamos. One last stab at finding them. That's so, Chief. Ken, I don't have to tell you that Professor Chorney is one of the greatest living experts on nuclear fission. Yeah, I know. Why, his mind contains secrets that would be worth, well, almost anything to certain interested nations. That's right. For Pete's sake, Ken, what's the matter with you? Don't you realize what this might mean? Chorney disappears only 25 miles from Czechoslovakia. Well, what if he's being held somewhere behind the Iron Curtain? Being questioned. Well, officially, the Bureau can hardly go into Czechoslovakia on the strength of a guess. I know we can't. That's why I wanted to talk to you. Don't you have any suggestions? Uh, Chief, what do you know about music boxes? Music boxes? Yeah. Like the one I got here. It came to my apartment, Air Express, this morning. When you phoned me, I thought I'd bring it along. Now, wait a minute, Ken. What are you driving at? It's an interesting little gadget, Chief. Listen. You like it? Ken. Sorry. By the way, did you know Professor Chorney made a hobby of collecting these things? He did? Yeah. One he was very fond of played Brahms' lullaby. Hmm. Who did you say sent you that music box? I don't know. There wasn't any name or return address on it, only the name of the manufacturer, the Batava Toy Company. According to the postmark, they're located in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia? Yep. Yeah. Keith. Yeah, Ken? I've been working kind of hard lately. Hmm. I don't suppose you'd care for a little... Why, thanks, Chief. A vacation is just what I need. That's what I figured. Any idea what you'll do with your time? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I'll start collecting music boxes in Prague. Bratava's toy shop. Thanks. Is the owner around? I am Papa Bratava. Is there something I could do for you? Maybe. My name's Ken Thurston. Ah, an American? That's right. 
And what is it that brings you to see me, Mr. Thurston? Oh, you have quite a reputation back in the United States, Papa Batava. Oh, that is most pleasing. Yep. You've been recommended to me as an excellent manufacturer of music boxes. Oh. You are interested in music boxes, Mr. Thurston? That's right. A friend of mine has one that came from there. I could use one just like it. And the name of this uh, friend? Could you tell me that? Yeah. Professor Chorney. Well, Papa Padava? Mr. Thurston, there is down the street from here a caverna, a cafe known as Flecus. Flecus? Yes. If you will go there, please, and wait for me, I will join you within an hour. Why an hour, Papa? It will take me that long to... to make up my mind, Mr. Thurston. Oh? Uh-huh. What about? If I should give you what you seek, or if I should kill you, at Fleckos within the hour then, Mr. Thurston. <laughs> Ah, here is a table such as you wish, sir. Quiet, secluded. Yes, thanks, sir. I don't suppose you serve martinis. A uh, martinis? No, never mind. I'll settle for a glass of Pilsen. Yes, sir. Pilsen it shall be, sir. Hello, Mr. Thurston. Oh, no. I'm some classic fiddle, eh, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, I never heard such atrocious caterwauling in my life. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Mm-hmm. Better even than the music box, eh? What do you know about a music box, Pagan? Huh? What do I know about it? Who do you think sent it to you anyways? You? Certainly. I knew you would be interested in learning about a certain Professor Chorney party. Not mentioning any names, of course. So I said it to you. Pagan, if you had anything to do with Professor Chorney's disappearance... Oh, I I swear by the father of my father, Mr. Thurston, I didn't have absolutely nothing to do with it. Only I I got friends, you understand, with ears hanging to the underground. They told me. What did they tell you? Mr. X, do you think I'm the kind of a guy who gives away his friend's secrets for nothing? Uh, After all, there are certain miscellaneous expenses involved. Okay, pal. Pagan, you'll get paid. Now, where can we talk? Well, uh, I got to play here another 15 minutes. And my public demands that you understand. Oh, sure, sure. No, but there's an alleyway behind this gypsy juke joint. I'll meet you back there when I get through. Now, now, if you will excuse me, I'll go tear a few more hearts out with my music. Well, I might have known. Ah, here is your Pilsen, sir. Thanks. Two. I didn't know I looked that thirsty. The other one is for me? Well... Do you mind? Mind? Sit down, please. Thank you. Here, keep the chain. No, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My name is Ilsa. What is your name? Ken Thurston. American? American. I like Americans. I like you. Well, thanks. You would like to be friends with Ilsa? You always make friends this quickly? Why not? Life is too short to be wasteful of it. I like you. If you like me, why should not we be friends? Well, that seems to make sense. Only I was wondering. What? About your real reason for coming to my table. Ah, oh, you sound almost as suspicious as Kumlov. Kumlov? You do not know him? Well, should I? No. But I will not spoil this moment of our meeting by discussing him. Goodbye for now. Well, that was a pretty short friendship. Oh, no. It has hardly begun. Here. This is my address. I will see you there about 8 o'clock tonight. You seem pretty confident that I'll be there. Of course. We have much in common to talk about. Kumlov, ourselves, a missing professor. Uh Hmm? Uh Hmm? Yes. I am quite confident you will visit me at 8 this evening. Mr. X? Why did I pick such a dark alley to meet Mr. X anyways? 
I should have had my head examined. Things I do for that man out of the goodness of my heart so he can do things for me. Oh, why do I stick my foot out into it? It's like this anyways. I... So you can chisel a few bucks, Peter. Oh. 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 oh, it's only you, Mr. Thurston. Who else were you expecting? Who can tell in a dark place like this? Must be plenty of people jealous of my fiddle playing. But anyways, right now, that's neither here. You got my payoff for me? I've got it. But first, I want to hear what you know about Professor Chorney. Uh, you almost talk like uh, you almost don't trust me, Mr. Thurston. Start talking, Peg. Huh? <laughs> well, uh, well, I was in Bratislava a couple of weeks ago, playing my fiddle in a very exclusive joint. That's when I heard this uh, couple of guys talking. Wait they a minute, were... Pagon, wait a minute. Huh? Hey, hey, that car. What are they doing? And flashing their flashlights in my eyes. They could be looking for us, Pagon. With guns in their hands. Now, that's ridiculous. Why should they... Guns! Do not move, either of you. We will fire at the first motion. Mr. Thrashen! Better do as he says. Surround the two of them. At any sign of resistance, shoot. <laughs> so, uh, which one of you is Pagon Zellschmidt? <laughs> Pagan? Oh, Pagan Zellschmidt. Now, now, I've never heard of that character. You lie. But, but I swear by the father of my father. Like like my great-great-uncle George Washington Zellschmidt used to say, I cannot tell I... <laughs> Dobra. Dobra vich. Take him away. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, do something, do something. With these guns in my back, sorry. Oh. You speak very wisely, my friend. You are not able to do anything. Uh-oh. Hey, look what you've done. You knocked him subconscious. You... Okay, let go. Let go of me. Into the car with him. Now, to headquarters. They are most anxious to question him. Yeah. Comrade Kumlov is anxious to question him. You are conscious at last, uh, Mr. Thurston. Oh, uh, what? What? Oh, it's uh, Papa Potava. Ah, <laughs> I am pleased you are able to recognize me, Mr. Thurston. Yes, oh my. Where are we? In a room behind the Bratava Toy Company. Oh, why? I was going to Flecos to join you as agreed. I saw the car with those men turn into the alley and watch them. When they left, I brought you here. Thanks. Well, you haven't killed me. So you've apparently made up your mind to work with me. That is quite right, Mr. Thurston. Since last we were together, I... I have spoken with them. (laughs) It would seem they recommend you most highly. Well, that's nice. But just who are they? The people's underground, Mr. Thurston. Oh. The democratic resistance movement here in Czechoslovakia. Uh, some of them work with you during the war against the Germans. I remember. And now they're still working. As long as there are those like Kumlov who seek to deprive us of liberty and freedom, we shall continue to work and to fight. Kumlov again? Who is he, Papa? He is head of a secret police organization in Czechoslovakia... Terrorists and cutthroats all whose one aim is the destruction of everything democratic. Sounds like a pleasant soul. He wouldn't happen to be the one who's got Professor Chorney. He is? Ah, you know what that means. I do. And Professor Chorney's knowledge must be put to work for the benefit of mankind, not for its wholesale destruction. You must get the professor back to the United States before it is too late, Mr. Thurston. That's what I'm here for, Papa. What help can you offer? An underground escape route. Uh, We use it for loyal patriots who have become known to Kumlov and must leave the country to preserve their lives. Good. What is the route? (laughs) I can only tell you that from here, one goes to the Radkani Kaolin mines at Benistov. Our uh, contact there is Pietkev. Pietkev at Benistov? Yes, He will have to direct you from then on. Each station knows only the next one along the line. So, if Kumlov questions one of us, he cannot possibly get information about the whole system. What else have we got to work with? There is uh, Joseph Ataka. Ataka. One of our men who has succeeded in getting into Kumlov's secret police. He has been made a deputy commissioner. 
he can help us locate the professor. Good. And lastly, we can supply you with forged credentials. <laughs> Though that will take some time, a week perhaps. Oh, that'll be too long, Papa. Kumlov's already had three weeks with Shawnee. We've no time to waste. We'll have to... Expecting someone? Yes, Joseph Ataka. He was to come here as soon as he finished his tour of duty. I shall be right back. Come in, Joseph. I have... You. What are you doing? No. No, don't. No! Come in, Ken. Thanks, Olson. We are to be friends, then. Or are you here merely because of what I said at Flacus? That'll pretty much depend on what they, what you say now. You'd better get started, Olson. I have a hunch time is running out. Oh? Why do you say that? Papa Butaba just had a very convincing demonstration. Yeah, I know. You know why? I will answer that, comrade. Well... That gun in your fist looks familiar. Ah, you recognize me then? The alley behind Flacos wasn't that dark. Where's Pagan? He's being detained, awaiting questioning. Hmm. I suppose I'm next in line. Would your question be answered, Mr. Thurston, if I put this gun away? So, no. Oh, do you not understand, Ken? The gun was but a precaution to prevent you from some hasty action when you recognized Joseph. Joseph? Attica? That is correct, Mr. Thurston. Now, do you see, Ken? Joseph and I are with the Czech resistance movement also. Well, then why that double talk at Flerkos about Kumlov and Chorny? I recognize you from your work here during the war. I know you must be here on one or both of those matters. And I could not talk there. So... Yeah, well, you got me here. And apparently you know about Papa Potava. That is so, Mr. Thurston. I was approaching the toy shop when he was killed by one of Kumlov's men. What about the arrest of Pagan? Kumlov's orders. He seemed quite interested in obtaining information about you. Uh-huh. Do you think Pagan will talk about you? Oh, he'd talk about anything if there's a price tag attached to it. And that's what I meant by time running out. If we're going to get Professor Chorney, we've got to do it fast. Do you know where they're holding him? Yes. At the detention cell of the secret police. An old brick warehouse in the Vlakava River near the outskirts. Who's in charge there? At night? Only the captain of the guards. Squad of men. Good. Good. What do you have in mind, Ken? Attica is Kumlov's deputy. What if he and I walk in there with a signed order to release Chorney into our custody? Oh, that is impossible. Joseph may be Kumlov's deputy, but he would hardly sign an order for you releasing the professor. Wait, Ilsa, wait. It can be done. Yes. I can obtain forged documents in an hour. Orders, credentials for Thurston. A police car for us to escape in. Then get him, Attica. We're going after Chorney tonight. <laughs> The detention warehouse, Ken. Good. Keep the motor going, Ilsa. The minute you see us at the gate, get there fast. Yes, Ken. Okay, Attica. Let's go. Here is the professor's cell, comrades. Open it, Captain. Of course, Deputy Attica. All right, Chorney. You have visitors. Get up. I said get up. Get up! You're wasting time, Captain. Those drugs and all the questioning have left him only semi-conscious. We'll have to help him, Deputy. Of course. Come on, Chorney. On your feet. On your feet. Come along, Professor. Oh, you who? You who, Mr. Thurston? Oh, no. Thurston? Don't forget me, Mr. Thurston. I want to get out of this my stuff, too. What is that prisoner saying? It's the third cell on your right. I'm all packed up and ready for travel. There is something wrong here. God! 
Drive the report to the frat. Hey, what did you hit him for, Mr. Thurston? Isn't he on our side? Shut up, Pigar. Keep your gun handy, Attica. Looks like we've a long way to go. What has gone wrong in there? It is almost 15 minutes now since they left. Still they have not... Shot. There is trouble outside. Get to the gate, sir. The gate. All right, Joseph. Let's get him in. Come on, Professor. In the car. In the car. Mr. Gersh. Stand back, Pigar. What is it, Ken? What went wrong? Time for that later. Okay, out of car. <laughs> Hey, go and get in. Yes, sir. Hit it. Hit it. How's the professor? It'll be all right, Thurston. The questioning was uh, painful, but without any permanent injury. Good. Boy, it sure is lucky for you I broke out of that jail joint, Mr. Thurston. Well, those guys didn't want to know about you. No, I'll bet. This is the road to Venice of Ken. It is there we will find the first station of the Underground Railway. Yeah, at the Kaolin Mines. Our contact's a man named Pietkev. And from there, Thurston? Pietkev will have to tell us. Each station knows only the next one along the way. Say, maybe this underground railroad will be a cannonball express, huh, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, you better pray that it is. Because Kumlov's going to try to wreck us all the way down the line. Go on, Pietkev. Our next shipment of Kalin goes to the Rudka porcelain factory at Merovici in the morning, Mr. Thurston. Your party will be aboard one of the freight cars. Good luck to you. There it is, Pagan, the riverboat that will take us from Merovici to Tin. Riverboat? First I bum around the freight car wrapped up in clay, and now you want me to make like, like a bilge in a boat. I, I, I wouldn't do it. I'll travel on a train by myself. Okay. I'll be sure to give my regards to Kumlov when he spots you. Mr. Thurston, welcome aboard. You are certain that is the Kutna shoe factory just ahead, Ken? According to the directions of Tin, it's got to be, Elsa. And the Austrian border must lie just a short distance beyond. Yeah. The professor's journey back to freedom is almost over. Why are you always worrying about him? He's been sleeping practically the whole trip. After what he's been through, he deserves some rest, Pega. Hey, you sure this shoe factory is the place we go, Mr. Thurston? No lights on inside. Well, the night watchman will be there. He's our contact. Come on, Attica. Let's find him. I'm with you, Thurston. Hey, me too, me too. I'm not going to stay out here in the dark alone with only a woman and an old man for company. Always the gentleman, eh, Pagan? Oh, sure. Let him go with you, Ken. The professor and I will be all right. Okay, sir. Come on. Believe you me, Mr. Thurston, I'm going to be one happy chump when he leaves this wedgie workshop and get across that border. Huh, what a way to get from one country to another. Kumlov would be willing to give up everything he has in Czechoslovakia if he could destroy this escape route, Zerschmidt. Ah, here's the door, Thurston. But I do not see any sign of the watchman around. No more do I. Door's open. Let's go in. Hey, it's darker in here than in the dark outside. There's a, oh, here's, there's a desk here. There should be a lamp on it. Yeah, there it is. Ah, that's better. Now let's see if we can find that watchman. I would not worry about that if I were you, Zellschmidt. You were never going to cross the border anyway. <laughs> that's what you think. Believe me, the quicker I get out of Czechoslovakia, the faster I... Mr. Thurston, he's got a gun. Yeah. What's that mean, Atakar? A glance through the window will show you what it means. A glance through the... Mr. Thurston, there are lights out there and men and guns. Yes, Zellschmidt. You have reached the end of your travels. Mr. Thurston, what's the matter with this joker anyways? 
Has he blown his noggin or something? That's pretty simple, Pagan. Kumlov's learned what he'd give his soul to learn, if he had one. The escape route. The members of the Underground Railway. The names of resistance leaders in every town we've visited. Kumlov? Yes, Zilschmidt. I am Kumlov. Oh, no, oh, no. Let's... You had it all carefully planned, didn't you, Kumlov? Even to the master stroke of letting us rescue Professor Chorney. Why not? There was no risk involved. When I learned our destination at the last stop, I sent word to my local deputy to meet us here with his men. Besides, you did not know us for what we were. Ilse and I could have killed you at any time if necessary. Ilse? You, you, you mean that pretty Petunia is working with this no good? Sure. She had to be pagan. Kumlov had every little detail carefully worked out except one. I doubt that I overlooked anything, Thurston. Do you? <clears throat> then maybe you'd better take a look out of that window. Huh? Those men out there aren't your secret police. They're members of the resistance. The resistance? <laughs> You're mad. No, Kumlov. You're not the only one who made preparations at our last stop. I told the underground contact there all about you and Ilsa. What you hope to gain by this fairy tale, I do not know, Thurston. How could you possibly have known about us? Ilsa said she recognized me in Prague because I'd worked there during the war. I recognized her too, Kumlov. She was working for the Nazis then. Go on. But Tarver said it would take a week to get Ford's credentials for me. You got them within an hour. There was no time to forge them, so they must have been real. And who but Kumlov could have put the genuine signature on them? You are telling the truth, aren't you, Thurston? These things you say, they are the truth. That's right, Kumlov. You and Ilsa are the ones who reached the end of your travels. Yes. So it would seem. But you're going to end yours also, Thurston. Mr. Rick! Down, Pagel! Oh, Mr. Rick! He shot me. I'm dead. I'm dead. Dying even. Oh, relax. Those bullets didn't come within three feet of you. But everything's gone dark. That's because I smashed the lamp, you idiot. Oh, then everything's... Hey, hey, where's Kumlov? He beat it out the door. Then he's getting away. He's He is getting away. No, Pagan. His kind never get away. You know, Kumlov thought he could destroy an escape route to freedom. But nobody can do that. There's nothing powerful enough to close the doorway to freedom for the peoples of this earth. I guess our job is to see that nobody tries. Come on, Pagan. We'd better get Professor Chorney home. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, the mysterious disappearance of an obscure plantation owner leads Ken Thurston to a rendezvous in Rangoon. That becomes a rendezvous with death. And need I add that Leon Velasco will be along as Pagan Zelfrit. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production and is directed by Jack John Stone with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. Heard in tonight's cast were Jeanette Nolan as Ilsa, Tony Barrett as the guard, Lou Merrill as Bratava, Gerald Moore as Atacar, and Will Wright as the chief. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. So, until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying goodnight for The Man Called X. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Sunday is a big day on NBC. It's a big day because of the big show. Tallulah Bankhead is MC, and your stars in Sunday's hour and a half broadcast include Fred Allen, Jimmy Durante, Ethel Merman, Frankie Lane, Mindy Carson, Meredith Wilson, and a host of others. All this in Tallulah, too. Yes, it's the big show, an hour and a half every Sunday on NBC.
Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all of the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Now is the time for all wise men to treat themselves and their families to television. Of course, you're planning to buy a television set someday. But in the meantime, your family's missing seven days a week of the most wonderful variety of entertainment which ever came the way of the human race. That situation's pretty hard for families to take. As a friend of mine discovered recently, when his children pointedly began leaving him out of their prayers and substituting the name of a neighbor generous with his television set. Don't make your family wait for the fun. Visit your RCA Victor dealer tomorrow and choose your RCA Victor television masterpiece from 18 beautiful new million-proof models of all sizes and styles. Like the more than a million American families who now rejoice in the perfection of RCA Victor television, you will find your RCA Victor set the lasting pride and joy of your own life, as well as the best investment you ever made in the happiness of your family. It began a few minutes before midnight in the small, dimly lighted cable office in Rangoon, Burma. Began when an elderly Burmese handed a laboriously written cable to the yawning clerk and then walked out into the blackness of the Asiatic night. Sorry, this office is closing now. We won't be able to... That's the story, Ken. The cable clerk was killed and a man named Lal Rao has disappeared along with the original cable he'd written to you. Luckily, the Rangoon police were able to make out the message from the impression left by Lyle's pencil on the pad of message blanks. Here's a copy of it. Thanks, Chief. The shadow from the north spreads swiftly over this land. For the welfare of all our peoples, I pray that you will come at once to Rangoon. Signed, Lyle Rao. Oh, Chief, you remember Lyle Rao? Sure. He worked with the Bureau of the Japs who are in Burma. Practically ran the underground resistance there, single-handed. Yep. Nothing meant as much to him as his country's freedom. Yes, I know, Ken. But what about this cable? Chief, the United States has slapped an embargo on strategic war materials from Asia. Rubber, tin, antimony. Yeah, no. So what's been happening? We get reports of ten cargoes of crude rubber turning up in Budapest. A thousand tons of tin are dumped at a Baltic port. Borneo oil turns up in Sofia. I know, Ken, I know. It's obvious we've been giving priorities to somebody who's been selling us out. Rerouting strategic war materials and shipping them behind the Iron Curtain. Well, what have we been doing about it? You know the Bureau's got men in every ECA country in Europe working on it. Sure. But we don't have any in Burma. Burma? What in blazes is... Oh. Yeah. Take a look at your map. See what lies to the north of Burma. Lauro tries to warn me about a shadow coming from the north. That he disappears. And when you tie that in with the fact that he owns some pretty big rubber plantations... Hmm. Well, Chief? Miss Brooks, book passage for Ken Thurston on the first plane for Rangoon. I beg your pardon... But this seat next to yours, it is unoccupied. Well, yes. Oh, do you mind if I take it then? Mine was so close to the engines, and the noise was... Oh, please. Please do. Oh, you're very kind. Uh, you are traveling to Rangoon, Mr... Uh... My name's Ken Thurston, and the answer is yes. Oh, how fortunate. I am Olga Marovna. Mm-hmm. Why fortunate, Miss Marovna? Well, I, I've always found this journey from Bangkok to Rangoon a most tedious one. Apparently, my luck has changed. Uh Uh-huh. Yes. You see, I am engaged in what you might call a very specialized field of endeavor. I am a professional hostess. That sounds interesting. How does this business of yours operate? 
Well, there is little that a woman who is bored can do in Rangoon, except give parties. A number of us are very keen rivals in being the first to host the celebrities at our affairs. I see. I planned a party at my home for this very evening. I should like very much to have you there. Well, that's awfully nice, but I'm hardly a celebrity. <laughs> Perhaps not, but you are obviously an American businessman and one who will be new to Rangoon society. It will be a conquest for me. <laughs> Besides, I will be satisfied in, in knowing that I have helped an American to feel more at home in a strange land. Will you be there? Well, after that, how could I refuse? Oh, you're very gracious. And I think you will enjoy it. Oh, there will be other businessmen there, possibly with similar interests to yours. Nitrates, tin, rubber. Oh, I'm certain that you... Pardon, Mr. Thurston, but the radio officer would like a word with you up forward. Oh. He said it was quite urgent. Uh Uh-huh. Excuse me, Miss Morovna. Certainly, Mr. Thurston. This way, please. Thanks. Oh, Mr. Thurston. Radio call for you from the States. Apparently important enough to bypass regulations. Uh, you know how to operate? Yeah, thanks, yes. Hello, this is Ken Thurston. Hello, Ken. Chief, what's up? Ken, we've had a certain suspect under surveillance for some time as a possible international agent. I just learned that this suspect took passage from Bangkok to Rangoon this morning and is aboard that plane with you. Huh? It may be coincidence, maybe not. But if that agent is mixed up in the sellout of... Strategic war materials. Yeah. Let's have his description, Chief. It's not a he, Ken. It's a woman. By the name of Olga Morovna. All right, then, Inspector Tegu. What have the Rangoon police found out about the disappearance of Lao Rao? We have placed a suspect under arrest and are holding him for questioning, Mr. Thurston. He is in the next room, even now. Good. What's the story? He had been lurking around Lao Rao's offices for several days prior to the disappearance. He had followed Lao Rao to the Lotus Bloom on a number of occasions. The Lotus Bloom? Yes, a nefarious palace of drink and of pleasure that is located in the dark area. I see. In addition, he has been most curious concerning passengers arriving on international planes. Well, let's talk to him, Inspector. Certainly. Come in here. So I guess you've seen the mending of your ways and are going to slip me my release, eh, Inspector? What? Ah, it was about time you learned you can't go around arresting every innocent crook that you see. I'm pretty lucky for you that I... Oh, hello, Mr. Thurston. Pagan. You know this uh, person, Mr. Thurston? <laughs> Does he know me? <laughs> After all the years we've been friends together doing things for me? Inspector Pagan Zelschmidt is without doubt the most unscrupulous man I've ever known. And I trust him as far as I would an advanced case of the plague. Boy, what a terrific reference, eh, Inspector? Huh? Uh, what is your suggestion, Mr. Release Thurston? him in my custody, Inspector. I can use him. What? Oh, sure. You know how invaluable my services are, huh, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, you're going to be living proof that it takes a crook to catch a crook. Well, oh, thank you, Mr. Thurston. Huh? <laughs> You see, it was like this, Mr. X. I came here to Rangoon to be at my Uncle Ahmed's coming out party. Coming out party? Oh, sure. Coming out of the clink, you understand. When I ran into this Lal Rao. Oh, naturally, he was very grateful for how I'd practically snitched Burma from the Japs with a single handed during the war. Sure. How much did you chisel out of Lal? Oh, it was only ten bucks. Mr. Thurston. That's what I thought. But I didn't chisel nothing. He, he paid me for telling him where he could cable to you. And besides, I didn't get it. A dirty double-crosser got himself kidnapped to avoid payment. Yeah. In, the, in here, Pagan. Hey, well, what are we doing in this no-good Lotus Bloom joint anyways? To find out who's interested in shipping priority war materials behind the Iron Curtain. Huh? What's that got to do with, with finding Lal Rao? Here, yeah, let's take this table. I don't get it, Mr. X. I, I really... That Lal, Lal Rao didn't do nothing here except, well, talk to some strictly cornball characters about maybe selling his rubber plantations... Didn't say nothing about any kind of curtains. You wish to place an order, gentlemen? Yeah. For some information. Information, sir? You had a customer here during the past couple of weeks. His name was Lao Rao. 
This humble one does not remember all the gentlemen who are served here. He talked to some people here, maybe about rubber shipments. This one is not in the habit of listening to customers' conversations. Uh, maybe this will help your memory and your tongue. Mr. Thurston, a ten spot. I want to talk to the same people about the same things. If you find them for me, I'll double that. I will return with your orders in a moment, gentlemen. M- Mr. Thurston, if, if, if you have to be throwing money around, throw some my way. I could tell you for half what you're going to get from him. You could? Well, sure. Well, for instance, that character over there, going into the back room, oh, the, the one with the, with the sheer sucker suit, yeah. That's the one that Lal Rao talked to. Who is he, Pagan? What does he do? Well, uh, maybe I could find out uh, uh, for, let's say, 50 bucks. I'll give you five. It's a deal. <laughs> what will I collect? I'll be here, or I'll be at Olga Marovna's party. Olga Marovna? You know? Oh, that pretty petunia? <laughs> See you later, Mr. Thurston. Yeah. Uh, your friend is right, Thurston. Absolutely right. You're just throwing your money away. Throwing it away. Well, thanks for telling me. But what makes you think so? No, 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 Thurston. Let's not, not, not beat around any bushy, shall we? I heard you talking to the waiter. I'm the man you want. Mr. Stephen James. I am the man. Very interesting. Do you mind telling me why? Certainly not. I'm a broker, general broker. Imports, exports, insurance. That's me, Stephen James, general broker. Okay, you're a broker, so what? Uh, so you better see me at my office first. Number 11, Kaising Road, about insurance. Insurance? Right, life insurance. If you're going to play around with Lal Rao's friends, you might wind up quite dead. Very uncomfortable experience, you know. Goodbye, first. <laughs> I am particularly happy that you came to my party tonight. Oh, why? So that I may prove to you that my parties are much more enjoyable than those given at the Lotus Room. Oh, how'd you know about that? (laughs) I'm not a clairvoyant, Ken, but I do have friends. One of them is over there with the perpetual glass in his hand. Uh Uh-huh. Stephen James. Is he an old friend of yours? Stephen? Oh, yes. Very old. And once very dear to me. But those are not happy thoughts for a night such as this. Olga, but my I... dear, your reputation as Rangoon's number one hostess is rapidly becoming <laughs> tarnished. Really, Henry? Heavens, what a disaster. May I ask why? Simply because your guests do not like to see you spending so much time with but one guest. Oh. May I meet him, Olga? <gasps> of course, Henry. He is Ken Thurston. Ken, this is Henry Savadell. Mr. Thurston. Oh, and let me warn you about him, Ken. He is very shrewd businessman who is a good deal more interested in what profit you may turn his way than he is in my reputation as hostess. You are absolutely right, my dear. So if you will run along now, I shall see how badly I can best Mr. Thurston in a business deal. There, Ken, you have been warned. I shall return later to see how badly this wolf of finance has mauled you. (laughs) A charming woman, Olga, charming. Even if she is brutally frank. You seem to do all right along that line yourself, Sabadell. A competition among the shipping and export firms here in Rangoon is very keen, Thurston. And seldom gentlemanly or polite in its mode of operation. Uh-huh. You're in that business? Owner of the Far East Trading Corporation. Rubber, nitrates, antimony, and tin. Uh-huh. Olga has told me you're here on business. If it involves the sale of any such materials, please do nothing until you have an offer from me. I will guarantee both a profit and the arrival of that material at the proper destination. What do you mean by that crack, Salvador? As a loyal American, what else could I mean but what I said, Thurston? Well, oh. If you're interested, you can find me at the Far East Trading Corporation in the morning, number 15, Kai Sing Road. Uh, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Mr. Thurston. Good night. Mm. Good night, Salvador. Hmm. Mr. Thurston. Hey, Mr. Thurston. Come to join the party, Pagan? Party, Smarty. Who cares? I'm here to collect my 50 smuckaroos. It was five. Got some information on that man with the lotus bloom? Sure, already I know him like an old cook. Yeah, his name is Hawkins. And he's willing to spill plenty. All about shipments of stuff that wind up someplace where they're not going. Where's Hawkins now? Waiting for us at the place he works as a bookmaker. Some shipping joint down at the decks called the Far East Trading Corporation. <laughs> Yeah, there's the joint now, Mr. X. Yeah, no lights on. 
You sure Hawkins is going to meet us? <laughs> Believe me, that guy would meet my Aunt Zenobia at the altar, if there's money in it. Hmm. <laughs> See? Yeah, he's left the door unopened and everything. Come on in. Oh, Mr. Hawkins. Are you who, Mr. Hawkins? It's me, Zellschmidt. <laughs> Down, you idiot. All right, Payan, you can climb out of that wastebasket now. Whoever it was, gone. Who, who, who do you think the dirt and no good was anyways, Mr. Thurston? Wait, wait, people, hold it. Huh? What's the matter, Mr. Mr. X, the door. Somebody's at the door. Quiet. Thurston? That you, Thurston? James, what are you doing here? In my office, just a couple of doors away. Saw you come in. Heard that beastly racket. Guess you'll believe old Jamesy Wamesy now, eh, Thurston? Told you you'd need life insurance, didn't I? Sure, told you. in neighborhood, Mr. Thurston. Characters standing around would maybe cut your throat for a wooden nickel. Even less, maybe. Why do we have to pay visits down here anyway? Well, Hawkins is your friend, Pagan, not mine. And according to Inspector Tago's police records, here's where he lives. Well, he's not home. Why don't we go to a joint I know on a Queen's Road and have a couple of short beers? Oh, quiet. Hey. Hey, what do you know? He's not home. He looks that way. Hmm? Huh. One thing about your friend is he's got a nice habit of leaving doors open. The Jones is empty, Mr. Thurston. Absolutely. <gasps> Mr. X. Yes. Your friend Hawkins was at home. But... But why do you think somebody bumped him off, Mr. X? Maybe these papers he was working on can answer that. Hmm. Hmm. What are they, Mr. X? Shipping invoices from an outfit called the Astor Warehouse... Asta? Yeah. So what? So they might tell us what happened to Lal Rao and who's racketeering strategic war materials behind the Iron Curtain. Uh-huh. Then, uh, then why don't we figure out uh, what they mean? I'm going to try right now, Pagan, at the Asta Warehouse. <laughs> What a joint this warehouse is, huh, Mr. Hicks? Huh. Big enough to float the Queen Susie in. And all that rubber and, and metal and stuff. <laughs> what does anybody want with all that junk anyways? Any country that wants to start a war needs plenty of that junk, Pagan. Huh? Sure, but, but look where it's going to. France, Switzerland, Italy. Nobody's got a chip on his shoulder there. I know. If that's where it's going. You don't think so, Mr. Thurston? I think La Rao could tell us if we could find him. I think... <laughs> Mr. X, what was that? What? <laughs> He's up on that rock, Pagan. Let's get up there. Can, can you see anything, Mr. X? No. I thought I heard a door close somewhere. Our friend's probably gone again. Let's look around. Friend, he says. Such friends I wouldn't wish on just that. There should be a law against... Oops. What is it, Pagan? I just tripped on a sandbag. Sandbag? Yeah, I'll check with this flashlight. <gasps> Mr. X. Yes. La Rao. Huh. Looks like James was right. We're going to need plenty of life insurance. Unless we get some answers. Fast. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll continue with The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Everywhere today, people who for years have sought a fast-acting way to relieve the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia are turning to Anison. And it's interesting to know that these remarkable tablets work with incredible speed to relieve the pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, 
Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. In fact, thousands of people have been handed envelopes containing Anison tablets by their own physicians or dentists. If you have not already been introduced to Anison in this way, why not try Anison next time you suffer headache, neuritis, or neuralgia pains? On this generous basis. If the first few tablets do not bring all the relief you want as fast as you want it, return the unused portion and your money will be refunded in full. Anison is spelled A-N-A-C-I-N. Easy to take Anison tablets come in handy boxes of 12 and 30 and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. And now we return to Herbert Marshall as the man called X with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Well, uh, I'm sorry, Ken. All I've got is some file stuff, but uh, here it is. First, Henry Savadell. What about him, Chief? He was mixed up in a couple of shady deals during the war. Gray market stuff. Strictly legal, but plenty sharp. His Far East Trading Corporation looks clean. No adverse reports. Huh? Stephen James was cashiered from the British Foreign Office about two years ago. Too much attention to drink and women. Other than that, reputation's okay. Then there's ASTA, Aster. I bet that record's clean, too. You win, Ken. Duly licensed for priority materials. Operates eight tramp steamers. Has never cleared for an iron curtain port. Who owns it, Chief? That's an interesting question, Ken. The officers and stockholders of record are all clerks, accountants, secretaries. Obvious cover-ups for the real owners. But there's one exception. Huh? What's that? The three original petitioners for incorporation. Two of them are bookkeepers. The third is Alga Marovna. Ken. You mind if I come in for a minute, Olga? Why, no, please do. Thanks. The party has been over for some time, Ken. Yeah. I just came back to check on a theory. Theory? About these parties of yours. Tonight your guests were businessmen and government officials, military men. Hmm? Pretty valuable contacts for making friendly deals. Oh? Yeah. Deals involving war materials shipped through licensed American firms to Marshall Plan countries where, where dummy customers, we ship them behind the Iron Curtain. But uh, what do you think of that for a theory, Olga? Do you mind answering for me, Henry? Not at all, Olga, my dear. I should be happy to, so long as Mr. Thurston maintains his distance. I won't argue with you, Savadell. Or with that Colt automatic. Excellent judgment, Thurston. As excellent as your deductions. Olga did hold these parties so I could make contacts, get customers, arrange private deals, but you made one mistake. Did I? Yes. I stressed the point once before that I was a loyal American. I am. My dealings have been and always will be for the benefit of my country. Well? Uh-huh. And so, my dear Thurston, your accusations are false. I shall protect Olga from them at all costs. The door is directly behind you, Thurston. All right, Sabadell. I'll go. I got it all figured out, Mr. Thurston. That invoice stuff that Hawkins was working on was a system to beat the bank at Las Vegas. No. Sure. Like I say, I got it all figured out how he was going to work it. Oh, well, all I need is a little capital to get started on, you understand. And you and me, oh, we'll, be, we'll be rolling in silver dollars. Believe me, Mr. Thurston, it, it's the chance of a life. Yeah, sure. Huh? What's this place? Number 11, Kai Singh Road. Let's go in. Still in the mood to talk about insurance, Mr. James? Well, well, well. So you decided to take my advice, eh, Thurston? Very smart, very smart. Nothing like life insurance to insure your life, I always say. <laughs> Pretty good, eh? Pretty good. I'm talking about a different kind of insurance, James. Different kind? Yeah. Insurance to protect a free world. Huh? What do you mean by that, Mr. Thurston? Ames is an export broker. He'd contract the priority materials and ship them out through Astor. A licensed shipping firm he owns through dummy stockholders. What's that? What's that? He'd send the stuff to dummy customers in legitimately cleared countries and then reship behind the Iron Curtain. You must be crazy or something. It must be Olga. She owns Astor, sure. 
Olga does. Her, her name's on the list. Sure, because you played her for a sucker when she was your girlfriend before Savadol came into the picture. Another cover-up. Huh? That gorgeous Gardenia was... Was this character's girlfriend? She let it slip at the party, Pago. And here, on this desk... Well, ask for invoices. The same kind that Hawkins had when he was killed. You are doing a great deal of surmising without evidence, Thurston. It all ties in. Hawkins could have been one of your agents who decided to double-cross you. La Rao, a customer who got too suspicious. The invoice numbers, a code for the real destination of your cargoes. Even if what you say were true, such operations would be perfectly legal. The only ones breaking any laws would be the customers overseas who were guilty of reshipping. Hey, is this character right, Mr. Thurston? I'm afraid he is, Pagan. We can't touch on any of that, but we can get him for murder. Murder? Yes. The murders of Lao Rao and Hawkins. And that gun you're wearing in your shoulder holster will give us all the proof we... Well, get that gun all right, Thurston. Look out, Mr. X! Let's have it, James. Come on, let's have it! I said let's have it! Grab it, Pagan. I got it, Mr. X, I got it. All right. You have it. Let go. Let go. Sure, I'll be glad to. Oh! Oh. Boy! What a smackeroo. <laughs> He's out like a couple of lights. Well... Well, I guess we cleaned this one up, all right. Yeah, I guess we did, Pagan. Sure. What a pushover. Thinking he could pull the wool over his sheep's clothing by acting drunk. Well, that's the trouble. It wasn't an act. Huh? James and all those like him, they're never acting. They're all drunk. Drunk with greed, with power. James thought he could get away with murder just as long as he held a gun. He found out different. And you know, Pagan, that holds true for certain countries, too. And now, ladies and gentlemen, here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Ken goes to the forbidden city of Lhasa, high in the snow-covered mountains of Tibet. As Ken Thurston, a warm welcome awaits him. As Mr. X, sudden death. And, of course, Leon Belasco will be along as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. It's the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you five nights a week by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, and by Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anacin, Coronos, Bicidol, and other fine products. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and Fanny Bryce, Groucho Marx, Ezio Pinza, Jane Powell, Hanley Stafford, John Agar, David Bryan, Frank Lovejoy, and Meredith Wilson. And until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. For a maximum of fun, here at Tallulah and the big show tomorrow on NBC. <laughs> Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance. In all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It is a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. 
Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means try Anison. You like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A N A C I N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist's. In the middle of Asia, astride the highest Himalayas, lies the secret land of Tibet. For centuries, its capital, Lhasa, has been the forbidden city. Its lamaseries secure in their mountain fastness. But now, terror has begun to creep down the caravan route past Gartek and Darjeeling, and brought with it a small cylindrical object that has found its way to the offices of the Bureau in New York City. Hmm. A Tibetan prayer wheel. Ken. Small, but a pretty good specimen. Didn't know you were a collector, Chief. I'm not. I just thought you might like to read that strip of paper inside of it. I'd like mm-hmm. your opinion. You mind? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. He who does not call for a light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. Hmm. It's an old Buddhist proverb. Yeah. It was passed to one of our men by a curio dealer in Darjeeling, an Anglo-Indian woman who worked for the Allies during the war. Name's Awani O'Hara. Awani O'Hara? Believe it or not. Said she bought the prayer wheel from an old monk who said he had received it from Karai Lama himself. Karai Lama? Chief, remember reading about red agents infiltrating south into Tibet? Yes, Ken, of course. All right. It can mean only one thing. They're trying to move in on the Lama's government. Trying to soften it up so the puppet crooks from the east can take over without a fight. It's an old trick of theirs. Yeah, there's no way of making sure, Ken. Westerners aren't even allowed inside the Patala Palace, you know. What's more, we can hardly interfere in the internal affairs of another power. Well, we've said that before, Chief. In Romania, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary. Look what happened. Besides, it's not just Tibet they're after. The Karai Lama's the spiritual leader of half of Central Asia. Northern India, Bhutan, Mongolia, Manchuria. Yes, that's true. Two it is. And if they can pressure him into swinging over to their side, we might as well give up any hope of keeping the Iron Curtain from dropping over the whole Orient. Ken... Do you suppose that little proverb means the young Lama needs our help? Could be, Chief. But what can we do about it? Send a Sherman tank across the Himalayas to bring him out? And how could a man get into Tibet these days, anyway? Same way the little prayer wheel got out. So long, Chief. I'll send your postcard. To buy an elephant? Souvenir of that jilling? What? Card from ivory from the Mughal dynasty and made by the ancient craftsmen from... Mr. Rex, you got here. You made it. Oh, I can't believe it. I... Hey, Gong, what are you doing here in Darjeeling? Mr. Thurston, I'm a Rocky Mountain guide in business with my cousin, Kai Ming Lu. Kai Ming Lu? Well, <laughs> he may not exactly be a cousin, but uh, he has the Zellschmidt nose. And probably the Zellschmidt eth- ethics. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Thurston. Thank you. Say, uh, how about a tour of the city? Nightlife, strange oriental delights. Uh, Pagan, I'm looking for a lady. Well, why didn't you say so? Now, now there's a pretty little petunia who dances at the Café Karachi. Her name is Madame Awani O'Hara. Awani O'Hara? Oh, sure, I know her very well. Yeah, she's a hostess at the, at the Cobra Club or something. Just hail a rickshaw, Mr. X. She runs a curio shop. Huh? <clears throat> Oh, sure, sure, yes, of course. <laughs> I know her place like the back of my head, yeah. Look, uh, look, you go two, two blocks down this way. Uh, then, no, you turn at the next corner, then go about... Here, Mr. Thurston, you hold the elephants, will you? I'm sure I've got a map of the city right here. <laughs> Madame Awani O'Hara? I am she. Oh, my name's Ken Thurston, madame. I'm a hobbyist of sorts, and just now I'm interested in Tibetan prayer wheels. I was told you might be able to help me. I see. Prayer wheels. They're very rare now, you know. 
good specimens are hardly ever removed from Tibet. Sorry, Mr. Thurston, but I'm afraid I haven't a single one in stock. Oh, then probably you could uh, tell me where I might find one. Quite possibly. What kind of prayer wheel were you interested in? Uh, a friend of mine in the States had one. I think he said it came from your shop. It was quite small. Brass, I believe. Uh, in labor silver. I think that it would be best, Mr. Thurston, if you came back tonight. Say about eight o'clock. I may be able to give you the information you want then. You, um, you'll obtain this information in Darjeeling? I did not say that. No. If you'll excuse me, it's time for my nap. Oh, certainly. Uh, Madame O'Hara, just one question. I heard a proverb the other day and wondered about its source. It goes, he who does not call for light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. Do you know it? No. No, I don't think I've ever heard it before. Good afternoon, young man. Hmm. Oh, you, Mr. Thurston? I found Madame O'Hara's shop for you. It's right where you just... Ca- oh, I guess you took a shortcut. Ah. You didn't buy nothing from the old witch. No. Why don't you tell me what you were looking for? Whatever it is, I can get a, a 10% discount. Thanks, Pagon, but I'm hunting for a genuine Tibetan prayer wheel. Oh, uh, hey, let's walk on the other side of the street, huh? Why? Well, this tall monk with the begging cup, he's been watching us. I think he's going to try to make a touch. A 32nd cousin of yours. Arms for the poor, arms for the hungry and homeless. Mr. Thurston. That's money you're giving him. Sob, I, I beg not for myself, but for those in need. For it is written that he who does not call for a light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. Come on, Mr. Thurston, let's not overdo no, wait, this. wait, wait, wait. That proverb, where'd you hear it? It is an old one in my country. It signifies only that men should aid one another in their quests through life. I heard you speak of a desire for a prayer wheel. Is it not so? Just where did you... Perhaps you may find what you seek at the monastery of Chai Zong, which is north 200 kilometers in Sikkim, on the border of Tibet. Thanks, I may try that. But now, where did you... Um, oh, wait. Uh, hey. hey, wait a minute. Uh, excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Mm. Hey, what a disappearing act, eh? But don't worry, Mr. Thurston, if you're so set on giving away money to needy people. <laughs> There's always me. Oh, funny. Shades drawn, no lights. Madame O'Hara said eight o'clock. I wonder. Ah, oh, maybe she flew away in her broomstick. Oh, why don't we come back when it's daylight? That side window's open, Pagan. Here. Let me heist you up so you can take a look around inside our shop. But, Mr. X, I can't do that. I always get claustrophobia in high press. I... Up you go. <laughs> now, see anything? I don't see nobody around, Mr. Thurston. Oh, we're wasting our time. But that Madame O'Hara sure is a lousy housekeeper. Going off and leaving all that broken crockery in the floor and, and everything all tipsy-topsy like... Mr. Thurston, come back! What did I say? Don't leave me! Oh. That... Mr. Thurston, that's breaking and entering and... It's, it's illegal, I think it's... Oh. That long yellow sash around her neck. Yeah. Been used as a garrote, Pagan. Oh, well, in that case... Huh? Yeah. To choke her to death. Oh. Pagan, you think some of your disreputable friends here in Darjeeling could promote us a couple of monks' robes, the kind pilgrims were on the caravan to Lhasa? Oh, sure, sure. Any color you like. Red, brown, plaid. Uh, why are we going to Lhasa? We aren't yet. We're stopping at a monastery of Chai Zong.
<laughs> what a joint. I've been in clinks that are better than this. Pagan, a monk's cell is supposed to be austere and simple. The lamas here at Chai Zong seek comfort for the spirit, not the body. Here, have another cup of tea. Tea? You'd think somebody tell these characters that bourbon's pretty good for the spirit, too. Come in. Mr. Thurston, look. Peace to you. I have been sent by Dao Sung, the patriarch of this lamasari, to bid you welcome. So our meeting outside Owani O'Hara's shop wasn't entirely coincidence. What is coincidence? Perhaps only the workings of the mind of God. Mm, perhaps. If you are free, Mr. Thurston, Dao Sung would like to extend his greetings in person. Why not? Pagan, you wait here. Oh, sure, sure, sure. This way, please. Dao Sung must not be kept waiting. I suppose you are somewhat surprised to see me here, Mr. Thurston. Not any more than I was at the way you disappeared in the crowd back at Darjeeling after suggesting that I come here. Wait, please. Oh, I thought you said we shouldn't keep Dao Sung waiting. That monk who stepped into the shadows at the head of the stairs. The one in the yellow robe? Yes. It is very odd. The members of our sect do not wear that color. He must be of a different order. Yeah, he must be. Unless the members of your order carry guns. Guns? Oh, Mr. Thurston. Look out, get down. Oh. All right, come on. No, Mr. Thurston, wait. Wait, why wait? But he ran up to the inner courtyard. What difference does that make? It is hallowed ground. What? If you, an unbeliever, were to walk there, it would be desecrated. Heaven all forbid right, such... All right, all right. He's gone now anyway. You sure you don't know who he was? Had I only been able to glimpse his face... But now, of course, there is no way to identify him. Unless Dao Sung, as the ruler of our lamasari, can find a way to apprehend this evil one. Come, we must hurry and tell him of this most untoward occurrence. Yeah. If he doesn't know about it already. <laughs> oh, Mr. Thurston... I cannot apologize sufficiently. In these times, even a monastery is not always a place without violence. So I found out. Uh, since you Americans prefer directness, I shall be direct. Until a few years ago, I was the tutor of the young Karai Lama. Peace be with him. Last month, I returned to Lhasa. I found the Lama surrounded by new advisors, men whom I did not know. Oh? And as his highness laid his hand upon my head in blessing, he presented me with the prayer wheel which has by now reached you. Alone, I could do nothing to help him escape, but with your help, I will make another pilgrimage to Lhasa. And with your help, we can bring the Karai Lama back with us, back to freedom. Freedom. These advisors you speak of, what do you know about them? Very little, but a friend more recently returned from Tibet knows more. With your permission, I shall call him. Mei Xiao. Dao Song, I have been awaiting your summons. It is my wish, Mei Xiao, that you speak with Mr. Thurston. Mr. Thurston. Yes, sir. And that you tell Mr. Thurston of the things which have happened at Lhasa. Alas, our blessed Karai Lama is a virtual prisoner. For another man has become the true ruler of Tibet. One whom they call the Gold Hat. Oh? Just who is this Gold Hat? It is said that he was well educated in Russia, then later in China. Ah. Unfortunately, his real name is not known, nor... Or his identity. Well, that's not much to go on. However, it is known that unlike the orders with which we are familiar, he wears a robe of yellow. Yellow. And a yellow hat. His followers affect a similar costume. I see. Dao Sung, what do you suggest? If Mr. Thurston should be willing to undertake the pilgrimage to Lhasa... How soon can we leave? <laughs> First, we have to walk all the way here to Lhasa. And now that we finally get to this Lama Palace, 
We have to crawl on our knees. Just be quiet and keep your head down. But I'm getting a creak in my neck. What's going on now? The Karai Lama is blessing Dao Sun. He's touching the old man's head with a tassel. Sounds like just a kid. Our turn is next. Now remember, crawl slowly and stay close behind me. Hey, what does he think it is? Halloween? The Karai Lama always wears a devil mask during these ceremonies. <laughs> what a joke. Hey, Don. Omni one on this car. Your Highness, he who does not call for light when the darkness surrounds him will fall into the well. The top of the south stairway at midnight. So be it. What does the bell mean? Uh, where is he going? The audience is over. Well, how do you like that? He didn't get around to me. Mr. Thurston. Oh, Your Highness. You are alone. That is good. This alcove, please. Let us waste no time. You have come a long way in answer to the summons in the prayer wheel. What do you propose? Plans have been made for you to join a native family traveling to the Indian frontier. From there, you will be escorted to the monastery at Chai Zong and safety. This has all been arranged by you? Yes, with the aid of Dao Sung. The caravan will leave at sunset tomorrow. Where is Dao Sung now? He uh, said something about returning to his lamasary. I see. Mr. Thurston, have you considered that it might have been a grave mistake for you to come here to Lhasa? Mistake? Yes. You see, you are now under arrest. Yeah. Yes, I see. And I shall be obliged to have you executed as a spy, Mr. X. We'll continue with The Man Called X in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. A real-life mystery which puzzles people who own television sets is how in the world they ever lived without them. Without those puppet shows and Wild West sagas which keep little children fascinated while mother's getting dinner. Without those comedy programs which draw teenagers home like magnets. Without those sports events which so magically erase the day's cares from dad's face. And without those wonderful plays which make a woman see her own life in proportion. Why don't you make this a television Christmas for your family? Naturally, you will want RCA Victor Television, America's favorite, already proven in over a million homes. So early next week, see your RCA Victor dealer and choose from 18 beautiful new million-proof models, the RCA Victor Masterpiece which will keep the cheerful contentment of Christmas alive at your house the whole year around. Now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall with Leon Velasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I've been expecting you. You've come to get me out of the clink, eh? Does it look like it, Pagan? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, welcome aboard, Mr. X. Say, you don't really think they're going to hang us, do you? No, Pagan. I know them. They're not. <laughs> I knew they wouldn't dare to do that. No, in Tibet, they execute by beheading. You mean... Oh, Mr. Thurston. What a messy way to die. Wait. May Shao. Aha! So they got you too, eh? Hey, wait a minute. You're... You're outside the bars, and we're inside. Yes, Mr. Zellschmidt. Quite simple, Pagan. May Shao is the gold hat. Well, sure, but that's no reason... Huh? You seem very sure of that, Mr. Thurston. It all adds up, May Shao. The infiltration boys found out about the prayer wheel. But when they traced it to Darjeeling, it was already gone. So the gold hat moved in on Dao Sung, 
and stuck around to wait for us. I bow to your brilliance, Mr. Thurston. How sad that such a fossil mine should serve the decadent capitalists of Wall Street. From whom you're planning to rescue the poor downtrodden Tibetans. And you are going to help me. Your execution will serve as an object lesson to those who would interfere in the internal affairs of my country. I see. Well, now that the Karai Lama is under your thumb, there'll be no one to stop you and the invaders from taking over. But I still don't understand why he should call for help and then have us in prison. Yeah, the dirty no good... It is very simple. The great Lama has come to see that our way is the right one for Tibet. Maybe. It was pretty sudden, wasn't it? He gave that prayer wheel to his old tutor only two weeks ago. Yeah, and when we come to help him, he sticks us in a hole in the ground. I tell you that Karai Lama is no good Joe. Matter of fact, Pagan, I've been thinking exactly the same thing. Remember when he blessed Dao Stung in the throne room? Sure. He touched him on the head with the gold tassel. The lowest form of blessing. Huh? Isn't that right, my Shao? The gestures of religion do not concern me, Mr. Thurston. No, I'm sure they don't. But in this case, it was more than a gesture. If the Lama had recognized his friend and teacher, he would have placed his hands on the old man's head. Well, maybe he couldn't see very good through that Halloween mask he was wearing. On the other hand, that same mask would have kept Dao Soon from seeing the Lama's face. From recognizing a false Lama. You mean, you mean they switched Lamas? Suppose you answer that question, Mei Sao. What possible difference could that make to you now, Mr. Thurston? That's true. We're scheduled for execution, aren't we? There will be no formal execution. Instead... No, no, please, please, point the thing out the other way, will you? It will be so much simpler this way, will it not? An American executed might require explanation, but if it were simply called a disappearance, hmm? Has it occurred to you, Mei Shao, that if I discover the imposture, Dao Sung will discover it too? What difference can it make? You seem to underestimate the efficiency of my organization. Come, closer to the bars. Look, down the hall. Even now, my soldiers are bringing your friend or son to join you. Well, Mr. X. Ah, yes, your efficiency. Dao Song. Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston. All is well. What about these soldiers? Well, as you suggested, I did not leave the city entirely, but camped on the outskirts until a loyal one here in the palace informed me of what had happened to my three friends. Three? And this joker still thinks Mei Shao is his friend. You were generous enough to come to my help. Now I have come to yours. These men who look like soldiers are, in reality, fellow monks. What? Wait, that was strong. Well, there is no risk. We were able to pass this sentry safely. And now we have only to leave as we came. There is one thing you have overlooked, Dao Song. Yes? This gun I hold. Mei Shao. God. God. Ring the alarm. I said, ring the... What? As I told you, these men are our friends. Yes, and I'll shoot any who stands in my way. Just a minute, Mei Shao. Thank you. Uh, what a haymaker. I know your religion disapproves of violence, Dao Stung, but I'm sure you won't mind an exception in the case of the gold hat. The gold hat? Oh, yes, Mr. Thurston... In this case, I do approve your very excellent uh, right hook to the jaw. Nobody in this cell over here. Keep looking. Okay. We'll go down this corridor now, son. Perhaps we are too late, Mr. Thurston. The true lama may have been killed. I don't think so. They're more efficient than that. Torture your enemy, break him in mind or body, but keep him alive. He may be useful. This is the only prison in Lhasa. If he is a prisoner, he must be here somewhere. What about this door? Here now. Ah, peace be with your highness. Dao Sung, revered teacher, rise and take my thanks, you and your friends. Now we must hurry, highness. If we are to be beyond the palace walls when the gold hat recovers from the effects of the uh, uh, right hook. Right? I'm sorry to disagree, Dao Sung, but the Karai Lama is staying here. So are we. But, Mr. Thurston, it was to aid his escape that we came to Lhasa. That may be. If we run away, we'll save his neck and ours. But the gold hat will stay in power and the false Lama be the leader of Tibet. Your Highness, the choice is up to you. We save your life 
or risk it trying to save your country? There is no choice, Mr. Thurston. My country. Good. Now, if the palace guard were assembled, would they still be loyal to you? Some of the officers have been bribed by the gold hat, but the rank and file are loyal to me. That is why my alter ego has never dared to appear before the people without his mask. Sounds like the old story, the organized few pushing around everybody else who didn't know what was happening until it was too late. Well, maybe we can give the bully boys a taste of their own medicine. But, Mr. X, that's the alarm gong. It'll bring the guards. Right, big on. Mr. X, I can't look. The price of treason is pretty high, Pagan. It's not what's happening to Mao Shah. Uh, that phony lama, it's, it's the heavy blade. It's so big and so sharp. And... Mr. X, they sharpen it for us. Oh. Well, Your Highness. Mr. X, when the gold hat and his people came and made themselves powerful here, I did not strike against them because I wanted peace and thought myself alone in a world gone mad. I shall not make that mistake again. Your Highness, it's taken us a long time to learn that in our world no man lives alone, and no country. That we must each of us bring light to those who cry out in the darkness, lest all of mankind fall into the well. Peace be with you and your people. Here is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Mr. X starts out on what looks like a fishing trip off Baja, California, but ends up with a strange combination of a beautiful woman, an important foreign agent, and a submarine, to say nothing of Leon Velasco as Pagon Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return to The Man Called X. It's a Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anacin, Codinose, Bicidol, and other fine drug products. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead and Bob Hope, Jimmy Durante, Eddie Cantor, Perry Como, Mindy Carson, and Jose Ferrer. And until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Jimmy Durante and Bob Hope clown tomorrow on The Big Show on NBC. present Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X, the Saturday night feature on NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia, and by your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find The Man Called X. Here's a word from RCA Victor. Are you still a television outsider? Still just reading about it, talking about it, thinking about it? Well, we'd like you to hear what some of the television insiders say. Here's what Robert J. Patterson of Bronxville, New York, writes us, for example. Television brings the family closer together, makes new friends of neighbors who come in to enjoy it with us, adds much to the joy of living. The Pattersons are just one of the more than a million American families who own and enjoy RCA Victor Television. Why not find out the facts about television for yourself? Look at the list of big new shows going on the air every week. 
Look at the new sets. 18 beautiful new RCA Victor receivers now at your dealers. Look into the matter of price, too. It may surprise you to find out how little it costs today to join the insiders who own America's favorite television, RCA Victor. It happened on a quiet fall evening just across the river from Washington, D.C., in a small frame house in the outskirts of Alexandria, Virginia. Long distance. Look, operator, I've got to call Mr. Ken Thurston in New York fast. What is the number, please? I don't know the number, but I want to talk to Ken Thurston in a hurry. And the address, please? Oh, for Pete's sake, I don't know the address. Get New York. Tell him he's the man called X. They'll find him. Now step on it. Oh. Who did you say he was, sir? Hello? Hello, sir? Can you hear me? Hello. Who did you say he was? Ken, you remember Colonel Blake of Army General Staff? Sure, Chief. How are you, Colonel? Glad to see you again, Thurston. The Colonel says he's got some business for us here at the Bureau, Ken. Oh? Yes. Thurston, do you know a man named Bill Pringle? Bill Pringle, he's an old friend of mine. You know him, Chief. Sure, cryptography expert. The one who helped us crack the Japanese code during the war. Well, he's in trouble. Oh? What kind? Maybe treason. Treason? Well, that doesn't sound like Bill Pringle. That's what we thought when we put him to work as a civilian expert, helping us develop the greatest defensive weapon in the history of warfare. Maybe one that could prevent future wars. An electronic deciphering machine. Huh. Electronic deciphering? If it works as we think it will... Any enemy cipher or code will be as clear as ABC to us. We'd never be caught flat-footed again by a march into Poland, Korea, or Pearl Harbor. Hmm. You said something about treason, Colonel. We'd suspected for some time that foreign agents were contacting Pringle. We'd had him under surveillance. Last night, there was a shooting scrape at his home in Alexandria, Virginia. The man who'd been covering him for us was killed, and Pringle has disappeared. I see. Then you think uh, Pringle sold us out to foreign agents? It doesn't matter what we think. We've got to know. Hmm. Well, Ken? Chief, I think I'd better visit Alexandria, Virginia. Yes? Is Bill Pringle at home? Who are you? My name is Ken Thurston. Come in, please. Thanks. You're another government man, aren't you? Well, uh... Why do you keep on wasting time here? Can't you understand that Bill's life is in danger? They may be torturing him, killing him. They... I... I'm sorry. You seem pretty upset about things, Miss... Uh... I'm Felice Pringle, Bill's wife. Mrs. Pringle. But why are you afraid that someone might be torturing him, maybe killing him? Because foreign agents were after him, trying to get him to sell out his country. What do you think happened last night? I don't know. Bill was supposed to be working late, so I went to a movie. When I came back, the, the house was filled with government men. And Bill was gone. I've been half crazy ever since. You're sure you don't remember anything that might give us a lead? Something Bill might have said or let slip? No, nothing. I'm going through some of his things now. Those notes and letters on that table. So far, there's nothing. Uh. Well, what's this map here, Mrs. Pringle? Map? California. For the town near Monterey, circled in red pencil, San Marido. Oh, I'd been trying to get Bill to take a vacation. Anything to get him away from his worries here. He'd just decided to go to San Marido next week on a fishing trip. And then last night happened. Uh, well, thanks for your trouble, Mrs. Pringle. If there was only some way that I could help. You've been a lot of help. Thank you. Yes. I happen to know that Bill hated fishing and he wasn't married. Good night, Mrs. Pringle. But if she isn't Bill Pringle's wife, who is she? I'll leave that up to you to find out, Chief. To me? But you're right there, Ken. Look, Chief, if Colonel Blake's right, Bill Pringle or some other country's agents may have the plans for the deciphering machine. Sure, Ken, and those plans are probably on their way out of the country right now. That's why I'm going fishing. Fishing? Yep. At San Marino, California. So long, Chief. Flight 7 from New 
York, Chicago, and Salt Lake City, now arriving on Ramp C. You want a private plane, Mr. Thurston, to fly to San Marito. That's right. Can you fix me up? Sure, easy. Can't get you all the way into town, but there's a farmer named Bronson who'll drive you in for a couple of dollars. How come you're so familiar with a little place called San Marito? I wasn't until night before last. Flew two men up there in a charter job. Oh? One of them named Pringle? No, nope. Smith and Jones. Then this morning, we got another inquiry about a flight up there. Funny name. I got it right. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Zell Schmidt. Zell Schmidt. Sure, who else? Hello, Mr. Thurston. Hey, Don. What the devil are you doing here in San Francisco? Oh, it's very simple. I'm here because I was in Los Angeles and wanted to go to Rio de Janeiro. So I put in a long-distance call to New York. What? Sure, I had to say goodbye to my dearest, my most favorite friend. Hey, Mr. Thurston? You mean you call, collect, or chisel some money. And Miss Brooks likes your accent. So you learned where I was going and came up here to wait for me. Well, the answer is no. But I didn't even ask you I'm yet, Mr. I'm not giving Thurston. you any money. But, Mr. Thurston... And you're not coming with me to San Marino. But, Mr. X! So long, Pago. But, but... Huh. How do you like that? Such ungratitude. Well, it's lucky there's more than one way to skin a purse from a cat's ear. Hello? This is Pagan Zelschmidt. I got news for you. He's here. That's right. And I can spell you plenty. For a slight consideration, of course. Yeah, here she be, Mr. San Marino. Uh, nobody lives here but them tunny fishermen. Portuguese, most of them. That's why I can't figure none why all you fellas want to come here all of a sudden. You're talking about the two men you drove last night? Yeah, uh, Smith and Jones it was. Where did they go, Mr. Bronson? Well, it ain't but one place to go in San Marino, mister. Madam called us. Madam called us? Yeah, this here spot right here. Eating place, drinking place, gambling place. And there's some that says a fellow with money can buy almost anything he wants in there. <coughs> Wouldn't know myself. Never been in the market for them kind of things. Well, thanks for the ride, Mr. Brunson, and for the tip. Oh, forget it, mister. Glad to do it. Nice night for a ride, anyway. So long now. Well, come in, mister. Come on in. Keep that night air out of here. That's tougher on a man's health than the rock that I serve in here. Oh, that's better, mister. So the first drink's on the house. After that, you're on your own. Okay, mister? I'll go you one better. I'll buy the first drink. Now, that's a switch. You being a sucker, or is there a string attached? Mm, there's a string. Okay, shoot. What is it? We have that drink alone in private. Is it a deal? Hey, that's the best offer I've had in ten years. I got a good bottle in my office. Come on. All right, mister, what's on your mind? I've had a tip that a man with enough dough can buy almost anything here, Madam Caldus. Like what? Like safe transportation out of the country. You don't have to pay for that. Drive down to Tijuana or over to Nogales. You can get across easy, for free. Sometimes it's not that easy. <laughs> it is if you're not hot. The feds ain't after you. And if they are? That makes it tougher on you than on me. I don't mess around with stuff like that. So let's have that drink, mister, and forget it. Okay, have it your way. I guess Bill Pringle gave me a bum steer. Who'd you say, mister? Bill Pringle, a friend of mine. You wouldn't know him. No, I wouldn't know him. Did you say you were buying this drink, mister? That's right. Some drinks come kind of high around here. Oh? How high? Maybe $500. Phew. Okay. Who do I pay? Name's Captain Braga. Skipper of the tuna boat Santa Isabella. Captain Braga. Where do I find him? He's aboard ship now, out in the harbor. I'll have Joe row you out there. Well, here's mud in your eye, mister, and a bond voyage. You keep the Santa Isabella pretty ship shape, Captain Braga. Uh, she's all right. Oh, I don't see much of a crew aboard, though. I thought these tuna boats carried quite a few hands. Your interest is not in fishing, no? You stay in your cabin. I handle this ship. 
Mm, fair enough. As long as you get me where I want to go. See. Si. Here is your cabin. You will go in, please. Sure. Well, I didn't know I was going to have company on this trip. I hope you don't have any objections, Ken. After all, I've come all the way from Alexandria, Virginia to be with you. Yeah. Does your husband know Phillies? Bill Pringle? I don't think he's in any position to care at the moment. Why not? Did you use that gun on him, too? How can you be so suspicious, darling? I'm only pointing it at you to welcome you aboard properly. Isn't that so, Captain Braga? Si. Welcome aboard, Mr. Ash. Oh. We'll return to Herbert Marshall as the man called X in just a moment. If you would like to know a quick, easy way to ease the pain of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, then by all means try Anison. Your own dentist or physician may at one time or another have handed you an envelope containing Anison tablets. Then you already know how incredibly fast and effectively Anison brings relief. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. For your own sake, try Anison. Anison is sold to you on this guarantee. If the first few tablets do not give you all the relief you want, as fast as you want it, you may return the unused portion and your money will be refunded. You can get Anison tablets at any drug counter. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30 tablets, and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. And now we return to Herbert Marshall as The Man Called X with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. Wake up, Mr. Thurston. Please wake up. Oh, why do you have to keep on acting dead this way? Wake up, Mr. X. Take it easy, you idiot. Huh? Oh, you're not subconscious after all. Not that subconscious, Pedro. Yeah. Well, I see Captain Brago and the beautiful Felice are gone. Are we locked in this cabin? Tighter than the bum. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Looks like we're on our way, Pedro. Hey, how come you don't even act surprised to see me here, Mr. X? Because I saw you make that phone call back to the San Francisco airport. Call? <laughs> what call was that, Mr. Thurston? The one you made to Felice. Swear by, by the father of my father, Mr. X. I only told her that... <gasps> Oops. Sure. Where did you meet with the airport? <laughs> that, that's right. Naturally, she went for me. So so when she invited me to go on a, on a fishing trip... <laughs> well, you understand how, how these things are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's just one little thing. One tiny thing I don't understand. What's this all about anyways? Hey, on. We're on our way out of the country. And they're all after the plans for an electronic deciphering machine. You mean we're not going fishing then? I think Felice is going fishing after those plans. And she figures on using us for bait. Huh? And Pagon, you better pray that she likes to fish with live bait. Sure, but what difference does it make? If she doesn't like to use live bait, she you use... <gasps> oh, Mr. X. Nice of you to invite me on deck for some air, Felice. You're here to get a briefing, Ken. So you'll know just where you stand. Oh, that'll be refreshing. We've dropped anchor off the coast of Lower California. Mexican waters. So? Captain Braga and I are going ashore at nightfall. Oh, nice. But I don't see any town over there. Someone expecting you? Smith and Jones, maybe? Or your erstwhile husband, Bill Pringle? I'm going ashore to get the plans for the deciphering machine. If I get them, Captain Braga will return alone. His orders will be to get rid of you and Zellschmidt. Hmm. What if we don't get the plans? We'll come back together and persuade you to tell us just how we can get them. Oh. What makes you think I'll cooperate? You might be interested to know that Captain Braga served a long apprenticeship with the Gestapo, questioning prisoners at Buchenwald. I think you'll cooperate, Ken. <laughs> But how 
can you tell them something you don't know, Mr. X? I can't, Pagan. But as long as they think I can, we're in pretty good shape. Pretty good shape? He says pretty good. <laughs> if they get the plans, they bump us off. And if they don't get them, they're going to... They're going to... Oh, they got us right between the frying pan. Not if we get the plans first. <laughs> Blame me that lock, Pagan. Give me a little time, Mr. X. After all, with practical only a toothpick to be working with, I... Hey, no bed, eh? Now, what do we do? Follow Felice and Captain Brago ashore. But who wants to go swimming at this time of the night? They're not going to swim, you idiot. There's a dinghy more to the stern rail. Come on. Okay. All right, Pagan. Over the side into that boat. Hey, I don't get it, Mr. Thurston. What are we doing here anyways? There's nothing in this wilderness but wilderness. There's got to be something around here, Pagan. Did you look at that jetty we tied up to? Well, maybe it was just put up there to fool people like us into thinking somebody used it for something. Maybe it was... <laughs> Mr. Hicks! <laughs> you know something, Mr. Thurston? I think we should have stood on that boat. Come on. We're going to find out where those came from. But, but somebody was shooting at somebody. With guns, even. That's right. But maybe they wouldn't like us to come crashing gate this way. After all, it could be just a quite a little shooting party between few friends. Yeah, a few friends named Smith and Jones. Huh? Ah, this is where these shots came came from. You mean this this old tumbling down shack? An old tool shed of some kind. Let's go in. But who wants any old tools? Well, well what do you know? No lights. The flashlight will fix that up. Do you always have to think of everything? <laughs> okay. Are you satisfied now? There's nothing in. <laughs> Mr. X. Yeah. Looks like that quiet little shooting party ended in murder. But, but who is he anyways, Mr. Thurston? Man named Jones. Or Smith. Those guys again. And look there. Against that wall. Huh? This ain't no tool house. It's a radio station. Short wave outfit. And a good one. <laughs> Very interesting, yeah. Let's give this Jones a quick sign off, eh? No hurry, Pagan. I want to learn what this set's doing so far from home. Huh? Take a look at that manufacturer's plate. Made in Moscow. around here, Mr. Thurston. You did what you wanted to. You did it with the radio already. We still haven't found Bill Pringle, all those plans. Bill Pringle's plans for crazy machines? Sometimes I think all this is a pigment of your imagination. You are wrong, senor. <laughs> Mr. Thurston, it's him. And with that cannon again. Yeah, I see. You were telling Pagon he was wrong about Bill Pringle and those plans, Braga. See, si, senor, that is so. For proof, I will take you to them now. It would only be justice that after all your trouble, you should see them before you die. So we meet once more, Ken. And as usual, you're at the wrong end of Captain Braga's gun. Looks like it, Felice. Well, don't feel too bad about it. I don't need you anymore. And it really doesn't matter if you get it here in this old ranch house or on the tuna boat. That sounds like you've got the plans. You really didn't provide too much competition, Ken. No. Nor did your pal back there on the radio shack. You found Andreev, then? Oh, that was his name. Andreev. I'm glad to know it wasn't really Jones or Smith. By any name, he was a fool, Ken. Thinking he could double-cross me. Then the two of you were working on Bill Pringle together. The old gag, I suppose. You made him lose his head over you, then Andreev blackmailed him. What was the pressure, Felice? The threat to turn you over to the government as a spy and this bill came across with those plans? 
Roughly, yes. It wasn't too difficult, either. Bill proved quite amenable. Yeah. So, what went wrong? Bill and Andre have disappeared two days before the time we'd planned. I figured it was a double cross so Andreev could get the cash and glory for himself. Then how come it took you so long to start after them? We'd arranged several exit routes from the country. I didn't know which they'd taken. Until you found that map for me. Mighty nice of you. Now what? You'll join Pagan and Bill down in the wine cellar where we've got them locked up. Then you'll be disposed of together. Before or after you get aboard that submarine? (laughs) There are times, Ken, when you show positive flashes of genius. How did you know about the submarine? You didn't figure out that tuna boat escape routine just to hibernate here with the plans. that will be some way to get into the country you're working for. Add that to the jetty, the, the mooring lines, and the radio. Well, it's not too tough to come up with an answer. Well, you've come up with the right one, Ken. It's due in about 15 minutes. Captain Braga will see me safely aboard. Too bad you haven't any answers for what he's going to do with you after he comes back here, isn't it? And if I hadn't been so smart and figured I could trap the two of them by myself, you wouldn't be in this fix now. Don't forget, I'm in this fix too, Mr. Pringle. And believe me, I'm going to sue you or, or something. Were you really trying to trap him, Bill? Andreev, yes. Felice, I don't know. That's why I tried to call you the night Andreev blackmailed the plans away from me. I thought maybe you could get me straightened out. Only Andreev and that government man got in a gun battle and I caught a slug in the shoulder. And that finished that. Yeah. I don't care about myself now. When I think of the mess I got you into and my country... Now he thinks of this, eh? When we're all locked up here in this wine cellar place waiting for the firing squad. We gotta do something, Mr. X. A little late, Pago. <laughs> so, senors, I see you are all here waiting for me. I am so happy I did not disappoint you by failing to return. We wouldn't be disappointed, Captain. Honest, we wouldn't. Go away and don't come back again. You see, I wouldn't be the least bit disappointed. Look, Captain, I'm the man you really want. Let these two go. I am afraid that would be impossible, senor. They know of our communications route between here and your country. I expect my tuna boat to be quite busy in the near future. Nothing can be allowed to interfere with its journey. No. Listen. Diablo, that's some. Aeroplanes, Mr. Rex, aeroplanes. That's right, Pagan. United States Coast Guard planes. And probably a squadron of Mexican flyers, too. That is not possible. How could they know about these planes? That shortwave radio in the shack, Braga. In case you didn't know, it can be used for other purposes than contacting submarines. So, you call for help and believe they will rescue you? You are mistaken, senor. By the time they arrive here, you will all be quite dead. Not if I can help it, Braga. You will only be first, senor. <laughs> not if I can help it, Braga. I'll get that gun, Braga. Ah! Quiet, Pega. Gather yourself together and come up behind those wine barrels. <laughs> of course, Mr. Rex. Of course. I was only trying to help you understand. Oh, sure. Hey, what's the matter with Pringle? He don't look very good. He's not, Pega. He took Braga's shot so I could get a crack at him. Oh, the poor guy. I guess that makes up for a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. But too bad he couldn't have stopped that Felice cookie from getting away in the submarine with those plans. That would have made him happier. But the way this... Mr. X, what's that? A death bomb, Pega. Death bomb? Oh. Then she's not getting away after all. No. No, she's not getting away. They don't get away. star Herbert Marshall will return in just a moment to tell you about next week's story. Ladies and gentlemen, America's newest car, the fine new Ford for 1951, is now on display at your neighborhood Ford dealers. And when you see it, you'll find that inside and out, in every detail of design and construction, the 1951 Ford reflects true fine car quality. And in addition, it offers 43 look-ahead features. Designed to keep the 51 Ford young in appearance and young in performance. For example, 
There's Ford's smart luxury lounge interiors with their exclusive color-harmonized Ford Craft fabrics. There's the new automatic ride control that automatically adjusts spring reaction to the type of road to give you a level ride and easy ride. And there's the automatic mileage maker that lets you get the last mile out of every gallon of gasoline for utmost economy. Visit your Ford dealers soon and see the 1951 Ford yourself. You'll agree, you can pay more, but you can't buy better. Now here again is our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week, Mr. X goes to Guatemala to fight against one of the most insidious threats to mankind known in the world today. And I don't mean Leon Velasco will be along as usual as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. It's the Saturday night feature of NBC's five-show festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. And by Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anacin, Cordinos, Bicidol, and other fine drug products. And by your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. Good night. The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production, with music composed and conducted by Felix Mills. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. All characters and incidents on the program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Be sure to listen tomorrow evening for The Big Show with Tallulah Bankhead, Fred Allen, Ed Wynn, Lawrence Melchior, Ed Archie Gardner, and Jack Carson. And until next week, same time, same station, this is Jack Latham saying good night for The Man Called X. Oh, and by the way, winterize your driving habits, will you? Drive slow in rain, sleet, or snow. Remember, Edwin and Fred Allen join the big show tomorrow on NBC. NBC.